Cringe. <laughs> what do you say? He does it again for me? Fring fr cringe sells windows or something? Cringe. Cringe sells windows? cringe. He sells his cringing services. He'll make you cringe so hard that you. I don't know. Dude, YMS <laughs> would love him. He, he makes like, a great gift. Oh. YMS sells yeah. cringe. Remember with the. Well. The thing that we watched, <laughs> he was—he's like—he's a cringe hunter. A cr <laughs> cringe, I hunt hunter. cringe hunter. <laughs> I bathe in the cringe. I love me some cringe. It's like Cruella, Cringilla Deville. <laughs> Cringilla Deville. Cruella, de I Cruella love the cringe. cringe. Yeah. I worship yeah. cringe. <laughs> ah ah ah! <laughs> That's pretty funny. <clears throat> You know what's interesting in that um, Van Helsing East Time movies is I say we should probably watch League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That was like a year ago. And then we did. Wow. It was. We wow. did. Wow. What How are the about odds? That? What are the odds? I guess they have both Halloween movies. Pretty good. How that works How, in a they're sense. They're pretty good. They're yeah. pretty good odds, yeah. Mm -hmm. The odds are pretty solid. I would call them both cinema. I would say cinema. so. Of course, now with Christmas coming along, are we going to watch the Home Alone remake? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a gay guy going into a bank. Home Alone? No, yeah. Home Alone. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. took me a second. It's Homo Alone, though. That doesn't... <laughs> it's all how you say it. You mm. know? Yeah, if you say it with your Welsh accent, it doesn't, it doesn't sound as, you know. Homo Malone. That's, that's Yondu. In Guardians Home Alone. One. Oh, that scene where he's like, Hello, blah, 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 blah. You guys remember that, right? You guys all remember That's that. That's racist. Wow. You bet. He's blue. That doesn't mean I think all blue That's... people speak like that. What's <laughs> interesting is that that line from Yondu is better than anything we've gotten in the last couple years, writing wise, <laughs> from in the MCU. <laughs> Just plays all of Phase 4 that is like, compared to Hallelujah, and we're like, <laughs> that's a uh, gibberish. Cinema. Yeah, yeah. gibberish. It makes sense, it's beautiful. Top notch. Alright, there's chat, I see you. Hello, everyone. Uh, Top show. You. Hello, chat, I guess. Did you guys uh, like the Van Holslums? Yeah! I haven't I did seen like it yet. Don't don't, don't spoil me. it, even though I was there. <laughs> don't spoil it. Don't spoil the bad housing for me. Um, I, I gotta know how it ends. Was, yeah. um, it was entertainment. Uh, um, That's some good stuff. Yeah. Thanks to yeah. Das, das Bullshit's editing, it really came to life, I believe. Yeah, I had to mm. shoot that sucker out in a week. I really wanted it to be done this Halloween. I didn't want to wait till the next Halloween. We were mm. referencing uh, Amnesia Rebirth and everything. I'm like, oh, dude, please, we can't wait another <laughs> year. This has to happen. <laughs> that that hideous property chases us quite a bit throughout just every <laughs> Yeah, you know what also popped up? It's the current humble choice, and I was very upset when I saw it in there. Mm. Yeah. Uh... Especially with the words, we try to get you the best games out there for a good... <laughs> It's like, you well, are lying. Lie. They, they, they you are lying. lying. <laughs> Liars go to hell! Why must you turn my office into a house of lies? I prefer the fucking <laughs> uh, uh, dead shot quote about lies. What does he say? It's like, that's a lie. She's lying to that's you. That's not true. That's a lie. She's lying to you. Yeah. Just top notch dialogue, but yeah. <laughs> um. Top notch entertainment heimers. I Did agree. Did you see? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, if the, is this the one. this this uh? They're making a Buzz Lightyear film, just like a film. Yeah, that yep. is... I saw a thumbnail I of that. Seen the like, trailer, why? Just the thumbnail. Isn't the idea that yeah. is there a trailer out? It's, it's a the film movie that is in the universe. By the yeah, the idea is it is the film that the toys are based off of. Yeah, um, mm. which is why Tim Allen isn't voicing him. Is the the no? Theory. It's Chris Evans. Yeah. Wait, what do you think I said? Mm. You said Tim Allen. He, I said Tim Allen isn't voicing him. Yeah. No, dude, it's Chris said, Evans. Yeah, it's, it's Chris Evans. He is playing him. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I think Tim what Allen he was Mahler. referring to is Tim Allen was the original Buzz Lightyear in the Toy yeah. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in Toy Story and 1, I'm... Toy Story 2, Toy Story <laughs> yes, 3, no, and uh, Toy Story yeah. 4, including but not oh. limited to additional shorts, likely. That's not that true. I would be completely sure of this. As well as potential video game adaptations, 
or you know promotional material tim allen was indeed the voice of buzz that's right. johnson lightyear buzz, is that his name was johnson? And, and i have to assume he's all american it's, it's, <laughs> it's safe for people to assume that it would be tim allen but no it's it's chris evans which uh oh. gotta wonder how that'll go over you know yeah exactly um, we are, i guess the we thing are... is is like you look at it and it's like I feel like at this point it's not even worth talking about like the visuals because that Pixar are just incredible at that. It's just like not even yep. worth commenting on. So like <laughs> you just gotta wait and see what it actually is. You know what's worth commenting on is I just found out thanks to tweeters that we got Army of sorry Army of the Dead came out. Planet we all, of we the all Dead. loved it. Um, Planet of the Dead. They they're making a good old sequel with Zach and it's called something that already exists. It's a Robert Rodriguez film called Planet of the Dead. But he's called it Planet of the Dead too. I'm sure it'll yeah. be way better. Oh. <laughs> anyway, just, to, just to remind uh. everyone, Army of the Dead is one of the worst movies that I've ever seen in Absolutely. my life. Absolutely. <laughs> I completely agree. I, I know I want to avoid shit. hyperbole when I say that, yeah. but it really is one of the worst movies that I've ever seen in my life. It's transcendently bad. Well, like, it is. It is movies, shockingly horrible. There are movies that score high in terms of like consistency, and then ones that score high in entertainment. Army of the Dead just like refuses to do either of those things at all. <laughs> Like, no. It's, yeah, the it stands thing, in stark opposition to the concept of quality. The, the funniest thing in it, I think, was when the paratrooper just drops down into an army of zombies. He's just <laughs> like, we, oh no, this was a bad oh, idea. Ah. I can't believe this happened. Ah. Oh, what a shame. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure the... Uh, I'd the, really like to... The... Oh, go, go for it. Oh, I just—I was just gonna say, I—I I really love the scene where they stop to have a heart-to-heart -heart about what the relationship could have been when there's a literal ticking time bomb because <laughs> a nuke is coming to destroy the city. It's only a nuke. Yeah, yeah, it's only a nuke. I'm sure you can get just out of range and it'll be fine. Yeah, just run. Uh, I'm pretty sure the uh the the heist prequel is coming out this week. We're not watching that, are we? Or... No, fuck that. I'll watch. Yeah, okay, I'll watch good. Planet <laughs> of the Dead. Which, by the way, man, do we have to? <laughs> Well, you know, I assume it'll be <laughs> better than to? Army of the Dead. No, you Why don't. would you why? assume that? Why? Why? Because Army of the Dead was I don't hideous. You when you say that, I know it's hideous. I think it might be Snyder's. It might be Snyder's worst movie. Uh, Army of the Dead. Yeah, I think that. I think it would be a fat choice for his worst. I think it's only <laughs> yeah. getting worse though. Well, true, because Snyder cut was hideous too. People keep encouraging him. <laughs> it's like he's a child. Like stop man encouraging needs to be him. Stopped. You need to tell him you know, the truth. You know, a lot of people get better as they get older, but he's like the Benjamin <laughs> he Button refuses. of he's film director. Benjamin Button of director quality. Oh, no. Snyder's worst movie is Man of Steel. Okay, look, an argument could be made for a lot of them. I get it. But Army of the Dead. Oh. <laughs> Army of the Dead hurt my eyes. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's going to be worth something. The Army of the of... Dead made me appreciate the real world and how clear it was. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that film gave me a headache, yeah, because someone was asking in chat. I, I think that happened. I was like, oh, same as Snyder Cut. There was the two fucking movies that gave me headaches. Both Snyder's. <laughs> like, nice. You know, no, at least talent. with Snyder Cut, oh, things were oh, mostly oh. in focus, you know? So then again, that. Snyder Cut had the <laughs> problem that it. hung on shots for too long. It was fucking a lot, four hours was, long. Uh, <laughs> Army, had the pro Army of the Dead had the problem where it had shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It could have been better if it were just black, yeah. If it didn't exist, it would be better as an audiobook. I'm not gonna lie, I thought Armored Dead had a decent premise, but the plot execution no, was not carried out well. The decent no, premise. Actually, big harsh. It depends is, what the. When you say the premise, it depends on what you mean by yeah. the premise. Zombies in what? Vegas, guys have to do a heist. Like, I guess that's. F yeah, but like, I don't that's know. That's fine. But... I don't know if you should give that much of a reward for creativity when you come up with something like that. It's like. There's a lot of movies that have, there's loads of B-movies that have premises like that, they're like, ooh, and then, yeah, they're executed real well. Right, it's like, how much is that worth that you came up with the idea but didn't really do anything with it? Mm-hmm. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, so there's that. There's also, because this needs to be mentioned on EFAP, um, apparently, there's no, like, 100% information, just confirmation from, uh, uh, Ruby Rose herself, that Dugray Scott is no suing her. No good news on this channel starts off with a sentence, apparently. This is good news. <laughs> Dugray Scott is suing right. Ruby Rose for $10 million. That's hilarious news. Oh, that, is, so she that, is, that is funny, though. <laughs> yeah. um, because that, she was said that he was... Proven true? Well, so she's, she's claiming it, and that would mean that he would have had to have... Uh, you know, it's like there would have been information sent to it. Likely, 
he's threatened to sue her if she doesn't um, undo what she said about him, but she's, uh, she's right. doubling down, apparently, so we could see that come to a more public level. Uh, mm. Obviously, what she said about him know. was that yeah. he was a little bitch on set, that he was abusive to, I think, stunt people? Or assistance. Yeah, like he like he actually physically assaulted someone is is her claim. Yeah, I think she so, said he assaulted a girl or something like that. Yeah. That's uh, a pretty ooh, that you do not want to lie about that sort of thing. That is a, that's well, a spicy one. Not only has he said she's just straight up lied, but Warner Brothers have backed him as well, saying that he was very professional, always is. He he asks, What did you bring me? and we provide it. Like there's never any kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. He asked what we brought, you know, we brought him things. Yep, Black he fucked on. up that laptop nice and proper. So, yeah, he did, man. Yeah, well, I'll steal that good. I think Javisi Leslie hasn't said anything about it, uh, the current Batwoman. And the other thing is I saw a trailer for The Flash Apocalypse. I think The Flash called, Apocalypse? What? Which is We're going the from next... Crisis on Infinite Earth to Apocalypse? Yes, uh, we're doing it a crossover event. Batwoman's going to meet up with all the heroes. They're going to save the day. That's coming out, I think, November oh. or December. We're doing that sure, again? But, yeah, we're doing that again. Oh mm -hmm. boy! We're gonna have oh to take. Boy. We have to watch Ryan meet up with all the fucking goobas from Great. Justice League <laughs> because Goobers. she's just got such a wonderful personality to play off of, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and everyone in like that because I had a look at this subreddit, see what they were saying about um all of this, the Batwoman one. And loads of them were like super excited because they were like, oh, it's going to be great for Ryan to meet all these heroes. <laughs> and, was, and then simultaneously being Fools. like, abuse on set is maybe bad. She, maybe she'll be learn mm -hmm. something. Maybe she'll learn something. <laughs> um, Doubt it. And by the way, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but um, in and among all the threats of what could happen next from Ruby Rose, she said that she will reveal the email that Caroline Dries, I think is the name of the person who wrote, she's, she's like the showrunner. Yeah. Um, that she's apparently said in an email at some point that they wish to monetize the LGBT community. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> now this should come across as no surprise. No surprise. To yeah. No surprise at all. It'll it'll be nice to have it in writing, you know. Yeah, I think that would be wonderful. I think it'd be so funny if she phrased it exactly like that too. Yeah, like <laughs> that'd be very strange. <laughs> They're all hooked up to some machines and so slowly siphoning cash out of them. Uh, um, but yeah, honestly, <laughs> this story has just been getting more and more interesting every day. Like, uh, Cabris Johnson, I think the guy who plays Luke Fox, was like... Oh, he had a great um, tweet. Yeah, well, to paraphrase, his tweet was basically just, uh, obviously, the, there's a reason one gets taken away when they're the fucking lead. Okay? That's, yeah, mic drop. It's just like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Damn. yeah, dirty laundry flying everywhere. I don't know. Yeah, boy. Man, who would have thought Batwoman is going to get that spicy when we watch it? <laughs> like, damn. Glad Batwoman is as terrible on the inside as it is on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got like three episodes to see, by the way. We, we fucking caught up, and now we're already three behind. Like, already behind. Oh, no. it. And it's not even my fault this time. <laughs> no, hey. not at all. But yeah, we'll look forward to that. Oh, yeah, you know, lots of things. Lots of things going on. Fun stuff. Is she gonna that, yeah. is Rubio's gonna be blacklisted? No idea what this will do for a career, but I doubt cool. the CW will like her anymore. Oh, I, <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. I mean, in a world that makes sense, companies should be going, Oh, do we want her around considering you know stuff and things? Like I don't know. everything. That's Ugh, she certainly garners like, oh, a level of sympathy because of the whole spinal injury, as well as just she has a lot of yeah. regular injuries. Cause this what do you mean, regular injuries? Like, um, sort of scrapes like and scraps and stuff. Or? It seems like she got hurt a lot and yeah. on that, while making that mm. show. She posted, like, a little montage picture of all the different injuries she got. And so, stuff Get like that. that show? Damn. Yeah. Well, that, that show has lame as fuck. And remember, remember, Rags, that there were a few people who were, like, other people who were seriously injured. Um, that's, try that's true, that's true, yeah. On that show. Yeah, to the you have that woman to... who got paralyzed to her leg. That's she got right, paralyzed yeah. from her waist down. And they had to do a GoFundMe because the I guess Warner Brothers was like, nope, we're not. From what I've heard, that no. happened because Warner Brothers hadn't yet figured out exactly how culpable they were because she was on her right. phone or something like that. Uh, okay. So, so still awkward though because she needed it thing, ASAP. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know. <sighs> so anyway, Squid Game. <laughs> 
Yay! Yay. Um, right, we watched a television show. Welcome, of course, to EFAP 150... Is this 9? Yes, nine. <laughs> 159. <laughs> uh, we... There was this TV show that came out that everyone was talking about, and I was like, fine! I'll watch it. And then I was like, ooh, hey, Fring, you should watch this. Hey, Mel, you should watch this. Hey, Rags, you should watch this. Yeah. And then Das Bullshit and Capital Opinions were like, oh, we watched it too, and I was like, ew. Mm. Uh, they said it was shit. They told us in private and emails that they thought it was really bad. They actually said yeah. they, they were hoping to come on EFAP and monetize the long community. So I was like, hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I still don't know where they got the, my email from, so I'm a little bit concerned, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. It's fine, it's fine. Um, yeah. So that's our intro. Let's talk about this show, I guess. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah. intro. I guess intro. the plan will be we'll go through it chronomagically. And then we will, um, I, I, I just try and do some, some breaking apart as we go, you know, a nice normal way Sounds of doing like things. Solid idea. But yeah. Should we, before doing such things, have a little summary? Introduce our guests. Um, oh no, yeah. these guys don't need introductions. They've been here loads of times. Fuck that shit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I, I, I thought I'd just put it out there, get it, get I it in a recording it, right? that I All right, share. let's do it. Rags, welcome to the show. Hi, you guys know who I am. I don't need an introduction. Oh, all right. So anyway, let's talk about Squid Game and how <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go. Would you want to go? We'll just do a summarization. And since we usually go left to right, how about we go right to left? Fuck it. Right, right. Do you want to go first? Talk about uh, just, just I don't know, in a, in a short amount of time. What, what did you think of Squid Game as a TV show overall? Me talk in a short amount of time. Uh, oh, boy. I meant relatively. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> so <laughs> this... So this show, right, I really like this show quite a bit. Um, the premise was interesting. I guess nothing like too high-minded, you know? It's just a nice, nice concept that was... It's kind of like... It, this might feel like we're sort of almost um, stacking on Train to Busan, where you get a decent buildup of characters... And you learn a little bit about them to really start caring about them. And you get character stuff filtered through the whole show. And it's got really solid acting throughout the whole thing. It's very, very impressive. Everyone was just sort of um, uh, just doing a great job uh, with one asterisk that we can get to later. Mm. But great premise. Good design for all of the like the sets and the outfits and everything. Uh, great dialogue and conversations and uh very emotional great show i i give it two two thumbs up out of how many um well, i i get a i two two out of two mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so you, you, how many limbs does a squid have then you can make a joke there uh 10 right I have no eight? idea. I've never even thought. Yeah, about I couldn't it. remember because I because oh, the octopus is eight, right? Yeah, I don't know what yeah. is, I don't. I don't know what I don't know squid, squid is the same. Yeah, I, they got the two ones uh, that are longer ten. than the rest. Yeah, oh, my so squid is knowledge ten. is on point. Fucking. You're a... So you should have said I give it ten tentacles out of ten. I yeah, I yeah. give it ten tentacles out of ten. <laughs> no yeah, there you go. There you go. Fucking yeah. Oh, Boy. Fucking nailed it. What's uh, it like? Kettle Mamanda. What did you think? of? What the fuck was that? Kettle <laughs> Mamanda that? sounds like a an African warlord. Kettle Mamanda. Yeah. Kettle Mamanda. I, I don't even know what to do with this one. Hey, look, I have to make new one. names at least once per month ish, I guess. Do you? He has a quota. Yeah. yeah. Oh, How many okay, names have I, I given you at this point, Mutlo? Like <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Mumbles. Better add that to the count. Mumbles. Don't lose track. Mumbles. Uh, yeah, uh, I was really happy with the show. Overall, uh, I don't know if there's anything to add to what Rag said without going into more detail, really. Uh, liked all the character, basically all of the characters, the acting was great, uh, sets were great, they build up the characters nicely. Yeah, without going into detail, I don't know what else to say, really, so yeah, that's, that's about it. Very well, I shall go next. Um, I like the show a whole dang lot of Rooney. I think the... The premise is an easy hook for the average viewer, but then they, they, they get you with them character arcs, them individuals going through this, this world that can easily be relatable for all the different kind of people who are going to watch this. I think there's lots to praise. I also think there's lots to criticize. 
And so we're probably going to get to that today, I'd imagine. Absolutely. I've seen all kinds of commentary for this show. Both, so I've seen <laughs> people love it, seen people hate it. I've seen loads of people say it's way overrated. I've seen some people say it's not even close to original. And I've seen a lot of people saying some stuff like, lol, you didn't even get it, and like, use it mm -hmm. as their sort of blood, it's, it's their weapon, you know? It's like, yeah. it belongs to my people, not yours. This is, yeah, this is not a, this is one of those shows that is not, it, you, I promise that you get it. You know, I, like I think, I don't does, think but... there's a show with a super complicated sort of message, you know? Yeah. But what um, team is bad. it for? Yeah, it has to be a team. It can't just be a piece of media that we all relate to and enjoy in some way. Um, this is all right. Pink team. Uh, Miser Dazabuli Shite, what do you think? I had a good time with it. Um, I, I feel, yeah, it, I, I like those types of shows and movies where there's twists and stuff, but all the puzzle pieces are like there. It's not sitting there trying to lie to you and stuff like that. So you're able to, if you were paying attention to certain things, uh, you could get reveals later on, which is nice rather than like, Oh, the, you just didn't see this at all, but trust us, this happened sort of thing. It wasn't any of that. Um, all of the characters motivations were pretty clear. And um, yeah, I just, I just, I had a good time with it. It's really, it's very well made. All the camera work is really good and it kind of shows you what you need to see, but kind of hides something in subtle manners if you're not paying too much attention. It's good stuff. Um, a few things that were, there were a few things that were pretty predictable. Uh, we'll go into it later, but um, other times um, it was pretty good stuff. They hid some things pretty well. Mm. Um uh, I don't got too much else to go on right now. Uh, we'll just go further in depth from there, but uh, had a good time with it. Very well. Uh, Fringoid, what, what is your commentary? Squid Game is pretty neat uh, as a show, but it ain't perfect. Um, <gasps> nope. It's, it's, it's a show that it's a really cool high concept that I think is meaningfully different enough from, um, from a lot of other, get, you know, shows and movies of this genre of like people competing in like a death battle um i think that it does a pretty good job of uh utilizing its premise to tell um super compelling story with a lot of great characters a lot of great characters the characters are really the um what make this show shine um the concern being that uh the plot i'm not so sure <laughs> But uh, we 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 can get into that. Um, and I guess yeah. to because Mola mentioned it, a lot of people have a lot of thoughts on this show. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a a lot of people think that this show is the show that supports their particular like <laughs> side of politics, and it's really mm. fucking annoying. If, yeah, I would prefer if we could just talk about the show. Like, the story, <laughs> the characters, nice. yeah. The story, the characters, the theme, the fundamental themes of which I think there's a lot to talk about in this show. It's it's a neat show. That would that would that's the take. It's uh it's neat, and I don't know if I want a season two, <laughs> but uh yeah. And finally, capital O opinions. What do you think? I think I might be the, the odd man out here. I thought there was a lot to like. I thought aesthetically it was quite strong. You know, all the sets, the colors and design of, you know, the pink men and the masks and all that fun stuff. I think the concept is really neat. I don't, I'm not as concerned as some people are about originality. I don't really care that it's similar to other, you know, death survival competition shows or movies. I think it's a really interesting idea and it's ripe with potential for interesting character dramas and arcs and stuff, but I uh, I would say there's more I didn't like than I liked. Overall, I did not really enjoy the show. There are things I liked about it, but I think they were outweighed by all the things that I had problems with, and we will go into those. So uh, I, was, I, was, I was hovering somewhere around a tentative 5 out of 10 for me, um, but the more I think about it, the more it slips towards a 4. I'm willing to be convinced it's a little bit better 
written potentially depending on the arguments from you fine folks so mm. we'll see how it goes uh i would probably i'll, I'll pr try and slap a number on it when we get to the end there's so much to discuss the as well as think about in terms of how much do these 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 flaws actually go how far do they go you because i'm not 100 percent sure myself but what we'll probably do is give the people watching who haven't seen it enough context to understand what we're talking about um as well as just recapping some events so that everybody has the capacity to talk about them as they prefer. Um, I suppose there's nothing else to do in terms of preamble than just start talking about Les Um Unless there's anything else anyone wants to say in terms of a... I guess to get started intro. off, no, I, I, I think that's a decent enough uh, starter for me at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm glad we've yeah. got someone who's a little bit more hypercritical of it, I guess. Uh, I say hypercritical, more critical than the rest of us seem to be, because it's just, um, I know a lot of people didn't like this show, so yeah. I, I want we'll them to see. be represented, you know? Diversity. I mean, yeah, I, I, I try not to think about the show um, too much because I knew we were going to EFAP on them, and I, and I watched the last uh, three episodes uh, this morning. I woke up and I watched them before... EFAP and stuff so mm -hmm. it's yeah I went over a couple of holes myself yeah I didn't go um, too much into my criticisms because I know we'll get to it so very well so we, we shall see <clears throat> we open on some kids playing squid game with a, a narrator explaining the rules and um, I suppose we'll probably return to talking about that little intro sequence when we get to uh, the last episode um, in terms of potential relevance anyway uh, th th there's there's little bits we'll probably try and put little flags in, and so we can return to them as we as we go. But yeah, that's the intro, and it's just helpful for exposition. And it's going to be one of those things where, um, funnily enough, I think I think it was Drinker I was watching this with that said um, when Game Six was coming up, he was like, oh, "I wonder what Game Six will be." And I was like, "Well, <laughs> uh, do you remember that first scene?" <laughs> do you remember um, the name of the show? I could forgive. If it were only because I I don't know how many people know Squid Game is even a game, but um, when you see that opening I've scene, I feel like it becomes like, oh, this will be relevant, mm -hmm. I man. Um, <laughs> is that a Game meet... of Thrones? It's Game of Squids. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Maybe that's the reboot. They'll try again. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so we got our character introduction. Um, so this mm -hmm. is the thing about this that we kind of did with Train to Busan, where we referred to everybody by their position in the story rather than their names. I'm going to try our very best to do that with not everyone this time. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some, because cause main character, I believe, is, is it pronounced Gihan? Is that how everyone Gihan, says it? I think. Gihan, I believe so. Gihan. So we will try and say Gihan, all right, everyone? Because I... Because we watch this with subtitles, and when they say the names, and I hear the names, I'm like, I do not. <laughs> All right, well, I will uh, take your word for it. It's just a different is, language. It's it's spelt Song Wu, but they say Song Wuo. Um, wow. So it's like, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Gihan is gonna be our our main lad. And um, what an what an intro scene you get straight away of essentially him being he's a complete child. Um, you got him kind like kind of yeah, he's mm -hmm. a bit of a man child. Uh, I I quite like how it's handled. Uh, the, she puts money down and he immediately assumes it's his allowance, and then she has to remind him that it's his daughter's birthday and that she's paying for the present he's gonna get. Yeah, Already, she's it's like her oof. butt off. He sucks yeah. so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's going off to work. He's in his skivvies in the living room, sitting and eating. And um, I can't buy her nice stuff with this money you gave me. Credit to the actor as well. He just the way that he delivers over his lies is such like uh, uh, it just makes me Whiny. think of children. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Like, very childish. Oh my god! Like, it, isn't shouldn't we have more money based on like some of the work I've done? And then she was just like, that didn't even pay off your monthly loans, which is just uh, we're sitting there like, oh boy, monthly loans, damn. Um, uh oh. And then he's like, you work too hard, you're gonna pull your back out. It's like, that, that's an interesting way to complain. <laughs> um, yeah, and the second she leaves, he steals her fucking bank card. <laughs> Goes yeah, and pulls money she out. She really doesn't want him to use, and she, he doesn't seem to care, he just wants to go to the horse races so bad. Yes, uh, which gives you, again, all the information you need about where his life is right now. He is mm -hmm. like a chronic gambler. <laughs> and he's certain yeah. that his life is going to turn around the second he wins. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then just it usually does, right? Yeah, that's many gamblers. gamblers totally, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> and um, what's interesting is the pin number has changed. It used to be his birthday, and he's panicking a little bit, and then he finds out that it's his daughter's birthday now instead. And his conclusion from that is, wow, she loves her granddaughter more than his son. It's like, oh. <laughs> Take the hint, loser! <laughs> um, so yeah, Could you, there be a reason for that? Uh, um, not a great first impression, in terms of just like, man, this guy is selfish. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we, because we, again, there's going to be stuff that we're going to miss in terms of summarizing it and talking about it, because it's fucking nine episodes that are mo all mostly an hour, except for like, is it just the one episode that's a half hour? Yeah, I was surprised by that one. Oh, is it? Yeah, the yeah, so second eight. to last one is the like thirty-ish minutes. Hmm. Um, I forgot that. But yeah, uh, they they he gets the pin right. He pulls out some money, bets on some horses, and he actually goes with I think it's his uh, daughter's birthday in terms of uh, month and year. And mm -hmm. um, at first he loses, but then he wins. Gets himself four million won, which is the first of the time in this show. Well, maybe not the first, but certainly one of the way a viewer is like, "What is what is that in real buddy though? What is, is that yeah. like, a lot? Or is that an old Yeah, lot? it's it's a little uh, it's a little uh, you, get, you get a little confused. And yeah, there was a spike in yeah, Google searches for uh, what is forty five billion won in uh, in whatever currency because that is an important number yeah. for this show. Um. So yeah, uh, he gets real happy about that, and he immediately, um, I think he gives, does he give 100,000 to the, um, the cashier? I think it's 10,000. 10,000, 10, which I believe is like 8 US dollars, something like that. So, hmm, I thought it was more. Four, mi 4 million won was, was the number, right? Uh, that's, that's what he won, yeah, in total. Seven, yeah, 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 so that's $3,417 in USD. Well... That's something. I so that's that. pretty yeah. considerable amount, actually. So I guess it depends yeah, well, on how much he, he tips owes. Her, he tips her ten thousand won, and that's eight. Yeah, eight and a half United States dollars. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, he gives her that. I think the friend is like, "What do I get?" He's just like, "Shut the fuck up." Um, they head out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, he's, I think he's on the phone to his daughter being like, I'm gonna buy you a great present, you're gonna have great food, and then before he can finish, he sees, like, I guess, Lone Sharks being like, hey, mister owes us lots of money. He's like, oh. And, uh, <laughs> begins, he starts running the fuck away, and bumps into somebody. Which I think on first viewing, you just be like, oh, how unfortunate. But then, uh, turns out. Uh, that, that that person has managed to sneak his wallet out of his... Oh, I think she cuts it out. She has a little knife that she mm -hmm. uh, does that yeah, with. She, yeah, she cuts the bottom of his pe uh, his uh, pocket. A nice thing, too, is, like, I thought that knocking her down was just a chance for them to realize, like, oh, he's not completely irredeemable. Look, he even tried... He, even though he's fighting for his life and running from people really desperately, he still takes the time to lift her up and fix her drink and everything. So I figured that was just a characterization moment, that, but it was it was mm. two-ply. I was going to say, oh, yeah, I, I, I still think you're right on that with... Um, He's literally running for his life, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay?" And it's just like, "That's that's important, I think." And he like puts the straw yeah. back in her drink or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so yeah, uh, loan sharks are like, "Gotta give us your money," and then he realizes his wallet's gone, and they just give us a little replay of that scene, and they do this. I think I noticed it. Um, they do it for that. They do it for something his daughter says, and then they do it for the detective realizing something about the card. Where they replay scenes in like a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. and you can always tell that it's from the POV of a character realizing something. So there's there's definitely room to be like totally chill with it, but uh, on rewatch it's just like oh, it's a little bit clunky. I kind of wish they yeah, wouldn't. But it's I, a... oh, Mallory has not yet begun to clunk. Well, there is. I, I think there's like. A... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I sometimes I feel like that might be a cultural thing. I noticed that, like in a lot of uh, Asian storytelling, they do those flashbacks a lot. So I don't know if that's just a thing that is common in their culture or something, and we just do it less, or at least we try to. So I don't know. Maybe I, I could be wrong about that, but I noticed that pretty common in that. Anyway, there's some that I think work because it's about discovering something new that happened in that moment. Like he, he, like. That's when he realizes that the wallet is gone. But there's other times 
where it feels like they just replay the exact same scene that you remember from like, you know, five to 10 minutes ago. And say, yes, I remember we didn't see anything new that time, you know, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, when it adds more information, it makes more sense. I think you could argue that seeing her bump into him again straight after gives you a better sense of like, oh, that is, uh, she could have taken it there. Yeah. 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 That one works for me. I'd say. The, There's the a couple card that don't. One. I can't remember them. The card one I found yeah, really awkward. Yeah. Someone in chat is pointing out a good uh, something that that might possibly uh, be an explanation. They they said that Asians actually have flashbacks in real life. Oh. So <laughs> that could potentially explain why that's done here. Like we wouldn't yeah. understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as a result of not paying his debts and not being able to pay anything extra today, they make him sign um, that he's giving away his bodily autonomy, I think, or something like that, like, uh, the rights to his body. Um, Organs, essentially, yeah. Yeah, like, the idea being that now that he signed that, they will take his organs next time if he doesn't pay up. Um, is that, because I'm very unfamiliar, is that a thing, or is that a dystopian thing for this fiction sort of thing? That you can do that? There's no way that would be legally binding. (laughs) Um, you know, because it's (laughs) under physical threat of punishment, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't know South Korean That's law direct. like that, but I, I really don't think it would be, it would hold up in a court. But that that's is, not really the point, you know. I, I, yeah, I guess we're not meant to, because yeah, that's duress, just a bit. Um. So yeah, he's he's obviously he goes back to the cashier and he's like, "Can I um, can I have that money Come back?" Money back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we we cut to him using one of them uh, grabby machines to try and get a gift for his daughter. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I quite like, and I'll try and bring up, and you're all welcome to do this as best you can, uh, criticisms or praise, just where you remember it, but yeah. I was... Um, gambling, uh, he's gambling again, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Gambling again. Even with, That's well, his... and it's and it's a children's sort of game, in a sense, which is going to be nice, and it's going to dovetail right thematic. in. thematic. Mm. Always and the... <laughs> And he sucks at it, so that's thematic, too. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, because I've seen that there was complaints about this from different sources. There's no point in trying to say who or what or anything, just that, um, what a dumbass. He could have bought a gift instead of trying to use one of these machines. It's like, he's clearly addicted to gambling. Like, it's something he fucking loves doing. And the the idea, if anyone didn't know, the idea with gambling is that you can pay less to get the same or more than what you bought. It's like, Uh you bet, and Mm -hmm. then sometimes you end up with more, and what do they say? Money won is sweeter than money earned, that's what they say. Yeah, see, yeah, because he he expected he was going to get something real quick uh, with less money, and then, like, his gambling addiction catch up with him, and he spends a whole bunch, because he just can't control himself. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, he only has, you know, eight and a half dollars. It's not like he could get something incredibly nice for her, but because he wants to be big spender man, he wants to get her something really nice. So he thinks, oh, if I, you know, bet, I could get something nicer than I could actually afford. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and like, it's around that the, fits with this character. We're into about ten minutes. We've gotten a whole explanation of all of his flaws, and now we're getting like another detail or another, I guess, layer, if you will, that he's very much invested in impressing and looking after his daughter. And you're like, ah, okay. Sands in chat says, I heard Squid Games is a critique of claw machines. It is. <laughs> the claw machine represents capitalism. Um, <gasps> Got him! The, the claw. So, uh, they have like a nice little back and forth about the relationship they have and how she's freer with him to be able to do whatever she wants, or at least he's, he's enabling that, like fast food and stuff. And, um, mm-hmm. I th- so this this is an exchange that I I've seen lots of people interpret, and I'm not gonna say wrong, but like I saw someone say that he thought he had bought her a legitimate gun and was handing it to her because he was yeah. like, well, it's a gun, and the, and I saw someone say like he talks about how women are in the war now, so he's okay with his daughter just handling a gun. I was like, I don't think he thinks the gun was in the fucking grabby no, he machine. Didn't. <laughs> he was yeah. making he a quick it up excuse, first. yeah, like this. Yeah, he was trying to take credit. <laughs> Yeah, he's trying yeah, he, to make he's, it, he's making an excuse. Yeah, he um, uh, he assumes if you watch the scene, it's just a gun, a, a fake gun, right, a toy gun. But then mm-hmm. it is also a lighter, and he and he's like, oh, it, it's a lighter too. There you go. Like he didn't think <laughs> he, he didn't think it was an actual gun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, when he I don't says, know what gun laws are like in South Korea, but I don't think <laughs> it's in the little grabbing machines. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I just I just like his attempt to be like, yeah, you know, women are in the army too, so little girls are like little toy guns as much as boys yeah. do. Woohoo, we did it. Um, it even has pink wrapping. And yeah, wow. um, and cool he says next year he's gonna get her a great little gift. And then she's just mm. like, next year. And if you're watching it, I guess, straightforwardly, you could imagine she's just sort of expressing a bit of disappointment and be like, oh, it'll be a whole year until I get something. But, but in actuality, there's a bit of, a bit of subtext there. It's yeah. going to come clear a little later. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that, that scene sort of um, comes to an end with him just struggling to make all this work. And so now it becomes a little bit more complex. Like, you could have condemned him just for being Mr. Gambler who's mean to his wife. But, uh, sorry. Mum. <laughs> but uh, he really is seemingly trying to make things work with his daughter, and uh, he's got a pretty bad relationship with his ex as well, who's just like, let me take her in. He's like, let me take her to the stairs at least. She's like, no. Because mm -hmm. uh, it'll form a bad habit or something like that. Yeah, and uh, um, he's 10 minutes late as well, which is unacceptable. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Bastard. Somebody made a good point in chat. He's weak, not evil. That's why I think this character works. Yeah, he, well, he's just he's an all-around human being, really. Um, yeah. yeah, bit of a loser, but, you know, there's yep. not something there. And then... Yeah, but he clearly stupider really than I'd does... like, but, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, but he, but he clearly really does love his kid. It's not like his kid annoys him or anything like that. He's just his, his habits are just such a problem. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, and then we get... Uh, he, he misses his train. He sits at the station waiting for the next one, presumably. Everything's going to shit. And we get... The best cameo in the whole in the whole show because mm -hmm. yeah, e businessman dad. You may remember not long ago we did a little EFAP on Train to Busan. The mm -hmm. Main character in that plays a small role in this show, but it was really nice to see him. I remember when I was first watching this show, I was just mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I remember you." When did he's okay after all? Train to Busan was twenty sixteen. Okay, so it's a good chance that he probably got this role thanks to that. I would I would imagine. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, and looks he looks kind of interesting. just like he does in Train to Busan. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like it, yeah. I like what they did with the gun. It was like, I think they, they used the gun as a bit of a red herring to make it seem like, oh, he's going to rob a bank now. I'm sitting here thinking like, here we go. He's going to rob a fucking bank, da 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 But he uses it as a quick joke and it's gone, so. Yeah. Yeah, he's just having a little meme. But it does make me wonder if, uh, if he had kept up the charade, maybe he could have gotten himself all the money in that briefcase. I don't know. Ooh, maybe. But that would be indicative of character that he does not have. Indicative. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this friendly businessman is like, hey, as long as zombies don't invade, I've got a wonderful <laughs> job of <laughs> Ooh, boy. offering people a chance to play... Uh, I, Dakji. There you go. That's what it's called. Mm, <laughs> yeah. you, you both have a little paper square thing. Dom and uh, you have to hit your opponent's square thing and flip it. And if you win, you get a hundred thousand won, which uh, what did you say that was worth, somebody? Hundred thousand won, so like sixty dollars. Is eighty five dollars. Oh, eighty five right. forty three. There you go. That's, that sounds pretty straightforward. Um, uh huh. And our guy is like, that sounds pretty great. I feel like I could do it. And he's like, if you lose, mm -hmm. you have to pay me that. And he's like. Uh, okay, because this sure. is just yeah, once again a gamble. Always a gambler. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Always a gambler. <clears throat> as soon as um, he hears you can go first, he's like, "Yeah, I'll take, I'll take that risk. Why not?" Yep. You know what's funny is uh, this. Uh, I don't know which. I'm pretty sure Dakshi came first, but uh, reminds me of Pogs back in the '90s. All you '90s kids. Pogs. Oh, Pogs. I remember. Poggers. Yeah. I remember. Only there wasn't remember. money on the line. It was like the physical Pogs. Well, then you, you put the play as. Have any of you ever, did you ever play Tiddlywinks? Yeah! What the fuck did you just call me? <laughs> yeah, can we have no slurs, please? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Tiddlywinks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh... I like he... the music during this scene. It comes up a couple times. Not enough, in my opinion, because it's a nice little yeah. fun, childish piece of music. It also, a side note, since we're on the topic of tiddlywinks, did you know <laughs> that the because um, you have the you have the the flipper disc little thingy and then you have the little ones that you try to get into the, the cup? Did you know? I know the names of them. Do you know the little ones are called winks? 
the ones that you try to flip through the air, and the big disc that you use to flick it up, that's called the squidger. Why isn't it called the tiddly? Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, where is, it, is it called the tittle? That'd be funny. No, it, it's, 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 just just called, it's called the squidger. I see. It's 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 squidg game. <laughs> so the squidger tittles the winks. <clears throat> the squidger it tiddling is it might be what the act is called where you like flick it up with the down. Yeah, it might be. Mm. It might be that the squidgler tittles the winks. Sick. That is a soundbite that now exists. <laughs> I'm I'm offended. <laughs> Everyone knows that a, a good squidger tittles winks. That's so nasty. he grabs on. he grabs that old his his one. Awesome to move aside and trainer Busan man. He's just clearly legendary at this and just fucking launches that thing down and it gets right into it and he's like, our character immediately is like, man, I don't mm. have the money. <laughs> <laughs> An all too familiar circumstance for him. I like that he kind of pats at his pockets, like, "Oh, money, right?" Um, <laughs> Got so caught Just up. So in happens, my I don't <laughs> have any. And he, and he says, "Like, it's okay. You can pay with your body." And he's like confused. And then he slaps him, <laughs> and just Gihad's face. What the hell? Bruise on one side. <laughs> what have you done to me? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so the angle here now is, you know, if you lose, you get slapped. If you win, you get 100, 100 grand, I guess, in the equivalent of one. Um, and so he's, like, determined now. And uh, we just get a fun little montage of him getting slapped, like, 20 times. Yeah, it's, it's indicative of how he just really doesn't care about his own well-being as long as he can get that fucking money. Yeah. And he's willing to be humiliated, too. Yeah, yeah humiliated, slapped around, doesn't give a shit. He needs that money. There are people walking by who are just like seeing this happen. Mm -hmm. He's, He's just, just on his own little world. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, he does win, and I think he wins more than once because um, we cut yeah, around. Yeah, he lives a good amount of times. Um, yeah, he wins. A, wins a, an amount. He gets a taste of it. He, he gets yeah. a taste of it. He do. And oh. and, and train of Busan man before getting on the train with his daughter is like this is my, my last job, and I got to tell you that there are more games. Okay, there oh, things. there's a there's a great little moment before that when he when he wins for the first time he wants to slap him because he completely forgot yeah about yeah the yeah. <laughs> yeah my turn yeah. And he's like oh, oh money <laughs> right got it that is actually a, uh, I'm glad you reminded me of that actually because yeah it, it's indicative of just like you can completely lose focus of the bigger picture he's like desperately yeah. in need of money but he's so annoyed that he's been slapped so much he's like let me slap you <laughs> and, uh, and I like um. The the businessman guy, he's just so chill about it. He's like smiling and clapping for him, but when he grabs his hand, he's still smiling, but like in a creepier <laughs> way. He's like, "Your money, idiot." <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, and yeah, he basically just says, like, you know, you want to make more money? You want to play some more games? Ring this number. Like, hmm. There's Maybe another thing where thing. like he. When he gets the money from the guy, he like flips it over to the back as if he's like, is this is this real? Like, did I really just like, did this just happen? Yeah, I'm not getting played, am I? Which is uh, makes a lot of sense that they would entice people by playing this game first because it's so simple and so, so little at stake. So it's just like, yeah, this works. If if people aren't willing to play this kind of game for money, then maybe they wouldn't, you know, be a good candidate for mm -hmm. the yeah, get them real desperate. They gotta know for sure. And uh, I've had a, I've had a couple of people tell me that I'm supposed to be hating. Why am I saying so many things are good? Well, because the show's pretty good at this point. I was about, I was about to say, <laughs> believe me, he's going to no... be racing between us all to criticize it when we get to certain points. Uh, this is I I think this is the best episode, or that it has the least problems. Uh, damn. Okay, I don't agree with that, but <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh. So yeah, uh, what's interesting as well is he's, he offers him and he's like, look, I'm desperate, but not that desperate. And then the guy's like, um, Mr. Gihan. And he's like, wait, what? And then he lists he, all of his, uh, like what he owes, how old he is, his history and stuff. And he's just like, the fuck? And then I think he hands him the card and says there's very few spaces left. Like, hmm. Which makes me think they must cap out at like 500, probably. 456, I guess. Maybe that is the number. Oh, maybe it is. 50. Yeah, it could be that. Is that? Is, yeah. Can you half four, five, six I, down to two? I doubt. Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I think, yeah, I th- we don't know. I, I think it's safe to say that there are 500 is the max and they were able to get 456 out of it. Because if you're at the last, you know, 10th or whatever of space is left, you're like, yeah, there's not much space left. So make sure you touch that. Or it's all bullshit. And he's just saying that to be like, oh, not much space left. Limited time off or dupe to do it to kind of put mm. pressure on him. To yeah, it could be. It. Yeah. Well, someone in chat, it's 456. Didn't you watch it? It's like, didn't you listen to anything we just said? Yeah, we literally, <laughs> Jesus. We literally just answered your question. So anyway, he's the last. I know he's the last number. Yes, we're talking about the maximum capacity for what these yeah, games. Yeah, when hold. we assume it to be five hundred, because four fifty six is an, a bit of an, a strange number to just have a cap. Yeah, of. unless there's a reason why it's four fifty six. I don't know. And four fifty six cannot be halved down to two. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, right then. So he's really happy with that set of money. And we get, um, on rewatch, uh, like, when you first watch this, I didn't quite get how important this would be, but I probably should have picked it up, because this is a fucking TV show. But he's like, oh, man, it's great, I got a high, I didn't even, uh, like, have to do anything crazy, like, the the woman he's talking to. Everybody I watch this show with assumes it's his mom, and I'm always like, it ain't, <laughs> but I, I assume the same thing. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's song Old mom. Asians look the same? Is that what you're I don't even saying? know. They clearly look different. I think it's a matter of we didn't see his mum for long enough, or her face for long enough, that this yeah, just naturally... It. And we knew she went to work, so it's like, so this is probably where she works then. It's like, it's really... I think they could have done a better job of making sure we didn't mix them up. Uh, because I, everyone I've watched this with mixes them up, and I was just like, no, 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 it's not, it's not, don't worry. It legit might be <laughs> because the... the voices and the language. Yeah. That kind of, I, I think they, that, because it is, like in, like when we when we watch Train to Busan, when we watch this, just names. It's hard for me to remember foreign names in the way that I could remember, you know, more Western names. It's just more difficult for me to latch onto those as names and remember them and put them to faces. It's just more difficult. Well, and you can compare that within the show. When you've got, um, uh, I think his name is Cho Sangwoo, is his full name, versus someone like Ali. You're like, oh. I think everyone's Ali's gonna remember really, Ali's yeah, name. Yeah, Ali, yeah. I remember yeah. Ali's name, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it might also just be because Ali is, like, a more... Like, if you live in an English-speaking country, there's a good chance, you know, depending on... Muhammad country, Ali. You, 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 there's just... Ali is, like, a name that you're aware of. Yeah, you know, yeah. an English name. Mm-hmm. Whereas, and of course, yeah, some, some people just get that Aladdin song stuck in their head, too, so... <laughs> well... <laughs> All right. Not, not pointing any fingers, but... Um, <laughs> what I will say is the scene does make it clear she's not his mum because he points out like, oh, how's Song Wu doing? And she's like, oh, I was doing oh, fine. Oh, your brother? Because I'm your mom? <laughs> <laughs> You're not my mother. It looks at the camera. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we just get a little bit of information about this Song Wu guy. It's like a guy who used to be, they were friends when they were kids and he used to uh, take him to school and because of that, he feels a little bit, like, entitled to... He says he's an ungrateful prick, and he should at least get him, like, a um, uh, a drink when he's next in town. Because to a, to a degree, he's responsible for having gone to... I think he says SCU, which is, like, a particular university that's really prestigious. It's, yeah, it's Seoul National University. Oh, SNU, then. Um, yeah, and and it's it's information that if you're just, like, treating this very casually, you might just forget. But, of course, it's going to be really relevant. Very later. important. Very um, important, yeah. And it, what's, what's funny as well is he's like, you can keep the change, la la la, and then she's like, you fucking <laughs> underpaid it, you prick. <laughs> 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 um, and I see. I think that that on its own could be seen as like, ooh, it was a bit selfish, but he legit probably thought he gave him more than he was supposed to, and um, yeah. he then sees a cat, and he gives cat some of the food that he's got, and you're like, add this to what we know about him, I think it's safe to assume that when he's doing okay for resources, he'll happily pass them out to other people. Old yeah, things, yeah, know. he likes yeah. being generous. Yeah. Yeah, he tipped the lady, he gave the cat, he got some, yeah. He seems like a chill guy who's just really down in his luck. Uh, yeah. And if not for the gambling, he'd probably have yeah. such he's a He's really bad at life. the thing he loves to do. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, he's very happy uh, to tell... Oh, go ahead. Oh. Nope, I lost it. Keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, like, happy to tell his mom that he's like, I got money now. And then she's just immediately yeah. like, what the fuck do you do to your face? And he's like, this is nothing. <laughs> just shut up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> get, and, and the trend continues. He gives her money back. He's like, now that I've got it, I'm giving more back yeah. to you. 
And um, yeah. I think she first assumes he gambled for it, and he says no, and then she says, did you steal it? And he's like, no, which tells you everything about their relationship pretty much. Um, so she's, how did you get money? Yeah, almost exclusively disappointed, and then she has to tell him. Yeah, she doesn't even think. Oh, you you got a you did a job. Yeah, like she doesn't even think about that. Like you, my yeah. son wouldn't get a job, like a normal Oof. son would, like all those better sons would. That's what she'd say. Um, <laughs> yeah, and she says she's like trying to get it out of him that it should have been obvious that something bad is happening with his daughter. Until she's just over it and says, like, they're going to America, the family. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting to see her, like, one of her primary concerns is that if she grows up in America, she might lose <laughs> the interest and the ability to speak fluently in Korean. And that mm. your daughter won't even be able to communicate with you properly. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's quite sad. Like, his, his mum is just desperate for him to care enough that his daughter may just leave the family. And that that's, like... This major aspect that he's going to lose, and uh, you can tell he's feeling nothing but guilt about it. And, um, and she's got to know that, you know, just his own self-interest, trying to get him to do smart things on that behalf hasn't worked so far. So she's like, you're going to lose your daughter. Surely yeah. you care about that, right? And I, I would go as far as saying she um, almost concedes on giving him more money. She lets him get away with a lot of stuff. But this is, I think, a subject where she's not willing to budge. She's like, you need to fucking do something about this. Mm -hmm. She even suggests going to lawyers to prevent them from taking the daughter. Um, because, yeah, he needs to prove he has financial support, which, when you've seen everything else that's happened in this episode, we now know probably where we're going. Mm -hmm. He needs money, and he needs it fast. Not just for uh, his own just existence, but now to be able to pay, to be able to prove that he's a worthy guardian, and to be able to uh, push back if they try and take her out of the country sort of thing. And an inn has been given to him. And so, he's looking at photos of him and his daughter, and then he eventually calls. And, uh, it's interesting, because we talked about this when I think we were first watching it, or at least, um, I did with some people, but... You get the hook. It's like, watch this show, it's a fucking crazy show about people killing each other for money in a big game, or whatever. Like, the first half an hour is just, you just learn about this guy. And it's like... Yeah. It's just classic storytelling, it's like, we don't really want to go into that whole thing until we have someone we know, I guess. Yeah, and I like how his backstory wasn't, like, painfully told to him in a way that, like, doesn't make sense. But it was given to him just to prove that they know all about him. And, like, there you go. That's his backstory and why he's in the slump that he's in right now, told to him by the Dakshi guy. And uh, it was done better than just reciting somebody's past, not even to prove anything, but mm -hmm. just because the audience is watching. So everyone's in chat. You're all jumping ahead to future episodes being critical and stuff. You gotta wait. Yeah, come on. Wait, wait, wait. Chill we'll so far, so good. We're halfway That's through episode your one. <laughs> for sticking through this long ass EFAP. Yeah, we get yeah. To, gotta get all the preamble get done. Okay. Don't be jumping. We're getting there, right? So he gets into this mysterious car and then he gets hit with gas. Because he, I think he comes in, and he's like, "Wow, everyone must be tired," and then gas. <laughs> 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 the great reaction right away. Oh man, you're all tired. <laughs> oh shit. Wow, <laughs> Bruce. Um, yeah. Oh, so. it's contagious. Now I'm sleepy too. Go it's nice. like when someone uh, yawns. Now everyone's got to yeah. do it. Um, it was. I just thought it was nice. See a little, little guy with a gas mask. It's good stuff. High five to show. Not enough shows do this. All right. Yeah. Good yeah. representation. Yeah. Uh, and it's very, it's very mysterious. We see these, these vans all collecting on a... Oh, no, actually, we don't see that until later. I think it just cuts to him waking up, actually. Yep, it I does. Guess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a very spooky environment. Everybody's in similar clothing. Everyone's in uh, just beds, and they're all slowly waking up at exactly the same time in this room. It's like a bunch of sardines, and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? Mm -hmm. um, and that's... Fishy's going on. I think it's important they do it that way because that's his experience, right? He went from that car just to here and it's like, the fuck? Yeah. Um, and that's true. Yeah, and, and then they give us a, a view of uh, the control room. And um, it's, I don't know how I missed it because I was watching it with um, <laughs> Metal and Rags. But uh, I, and seriously, this is one of the baffles me. The, um, the control sticks for everything in the control room and all the pads and stuff, it's all uh, arcade style. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all like arcades. So the only way that I could uh, explain this is that I was uh, looking at the screens every time they cut to scenes like that. I wasn't looking at the, the buttons and it's paddles. It's a neat design. 
you know, and it fits the theme. Uh, though, based on some things they do later at those stations, like deleting camera footage, um, it makes you wonder why you just press one arcade button and it does that. But Well, I was just going to say, you could just skip to the criticism of it doesn't seem very fucking useful yeah, exactly. to have it limited yeah, to that's, that's buttons. So and, practical. Yeah, practical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I was, just, like, I was um, citing that example specifically yeah. because they do complex things with those machines. Well, it, it, it's kind of like in the original series for Star Trek. <laughs> When you see all of the the but single buttons mm -hmm. and knobs and slider levers for this intergalactic spaceship, yeah, and you're like, I don't know. If you if guys that need a keyboard. Like, yeah, I think I don't know. It's, it's so funny because I, I I played the uh, Star Trek VR game with some friendos, and there, there there's the I don't know if it's a DLC or if it's just free content, but you can play in the original uh, on the original station with all those buttons and then you sit in front of these buttons it's like what which one are real like which ones are the ones i need to press to do things because they all look the same just different colors <laughs> it's like i don't understand so even this is like front, it just keeps being confusing maybe the people who work here the, maybe they're all really dumb <laughs> <laughs> and so they have to make the the all the buttons like very very simple with colors <laughs> and simple shapes. <laughs> if you want the if you want to do this, you got to press this button. Um interestingly as well, we get the angle that we had of him when he was waking up in the security screens and I don't know where their cameras are. <laughs> but like there's a lot of very small <laughs> cameras apparently that yeah. are located everywhere. Uh, which makes yeah, sense. Yeah, they're like underneath. They're underneath bunks and stuff. When you look at the screens, yeah. they're all over the place. Maybe they're all wireless. Or, I guess they'd have to be. But yeah, a lot of bizarre camera placements that are. Hmm. It's to, I think it's for us to believe they can turn this into a TV show. Like they can, you know, yeah, they're, in the universe. I they're mean, they're watching everything that mm -hmm. they're doing. Yeah, yeah. which is gonna no, be something we'll keep in mind for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're really watching them closely. So uh, yeah, we just don't miss a thing. Seeing all this crazy shit from his POV, and he and he walks past this old dude who's like counting everybody, and he's like, "Hey, idiot! There's a fucking number up there of all of us." And the old guy's like, "I know, I'm just counting. It's good for your brain. <laughs> good for the brain." And then he forgets. And he's like, "Fuck, um, <laughs> asshole." <laughs> yeah, and he says like, "Gotta avoid them Alzheimer's by counting. Apparently helps, which makes sense. I don't know a huge amount about uh, Alzheimer's, but I know a couple of things about what's helpful, and I'm pretty sure counting is probably one of them. Just get that brain. I've heard, I, I've heard it is. Yeah, just just keep your brain active, basically. It's and, um, really helpful. You notice as well that he is number one, player one, and uh, Yihan is number the one. four five six. In a sense, okay. is the last player, but only by the set of numbers, I guess. Um, and yeah, so just, uh, everyone's very confused. I, I, I think you'd be pretty scared having woken up here after, even with all the context you have with the number and the yeah. guy, you'd be like, the fuck has happened to me? Um, and I think, oh yeah, there's a little back and forth. I'm going to try and remember these exchanges, but, um, he's like, shouldn't you be at home with your grandkids, like cooking your food and stuff? And then, uh, or your, your daughter-in-law or something like that. And then he's like, mm. do your parents have your daughter-in-law cook for them? And this is super <laughs> awkward because he's like, oh yeah, my yeah. mum works her ass off to look after me <laughs> while my, her daughter-in-law is fucking moving to a different country. It's just like, yeah, th let's not talk about that. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to a different <laughs> um, Yeah, he definitely got over there. It's just like, you know, it, different, different goals in life, stuff like that. And yeah, and we get distracted because... Now, his name is Dyok Su, I believe, but we're probably yeah. going to call him Thug. Is pretty, <laughs> I'm going to call him Thug. Yeah, I was, I was leaning towards Gangster, but Thug is pretty good. I think she his calls him a Thug at one point. His number is 101. Yeah, she does. He's, he's thuggish. Mm. He is quite thuggish. He's a thug archetype. He's the kind of character you would absolutely include in this sort of thing. You want someone oh, who's yeah. going to be a brute. Um, yeah. And I like he's, him a lot. Well, uh... The, I, I don't want to say much. I like all characters. We'll go into that. It's fine. Uh, we got. He's uh he's beaten up a little lady, and he's like, really is a small world. You and I, because like I I I trade you in the force, and you betrayed me. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, says I took care of you. 
I taught you when you had nowhere else to go, and this is what I get. And then she says, um, you took more from me than whatever I could possibly owe. Something to think about. And, uh, yeah, he, he's going to go uh, try and beat the fuck up. But um, I, I kind of liked this when I was first watching it, because I was thinking to myself, this is a classic environment for the hero to be like, no, don't you beat this poor lady. <laughs> yeah. But it is it doesn't run that way because of what we he know about it. He grabs her. Yeah, he pushes <laughs> Deoxu Thug out of the way to be like, hey, you were uh, the one that stole my money. Like, stole my money. Back. <laughs> he realizes, I think, because of the scar on her neck, which is yeah. a great little indicator for him, but it's simultaneously a bit of history you can infer from whatever life she's probably led. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just what he just pushes him over and he's like, you fucking stole my money, give it back. And then Thug Guy, who's clearly dangerous as hell, he's like, who the hell are you? <laughs> like, what the like, what are you doing? Um, you damn big pocket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's just immediately like, I was the man, I was the man. Anyway, and then I think he says, like, are you two running a scam together? And I think uh, Gihad is just, like, panicking and he's like, this guy is evil, he's beating people he's up, gonna help. Punch me. <laughs> oh, help! 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 Um, help. <laughs> um, and yeah, it gets broken up because the Squid Game team roll out, which is, um, in terms of imagery, is getting around the internet. They're, uh, oh, it yeah. sure is. A group of people who, uh, dress in, is that, I was trying to, I guess you call that pink, right? Um, pink. I would. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> some, then, say, some would say maroon. Some sure, would say why not? salmon. I don't know. <laughs> don't call me a maroon. Who would say maroon? That's not maroon. Um, well, you never know. You never know. What a maroon. Colors. I do know. Um, yeah, and so you got a bunch of circles standing behind a square. And it's like, mm -hmm. you already get a sense of maybe a hierarchy. Um, oh, my goodness. I think it's circles of foot soldiers, triangles of, like, the weapons guys, and then squares of managers. Um, the more yeah, sides you like have. Soldiers, <clears throat> leaders, yeah. Yeah. So, Doers, workers, they, you know. They explain, yeah. they, they chill everyone out. They're like, yes, I know it was pretty weird you woke up here, but don't worry, you'll get all your possessions back. This is the best way to do it without letting you know where we are or what's happening beyond what you should know. And that um, it's time to sign some shit so that we can begin game one. And uh, don't don't panic. And I think, um, interesting, it's Song Woo, who's immediately like, you tricked us, we were kidnapped, this is bullshit. You can make as many excuses as you want. Um... Make sure nobody knows you broke the law here, but if you're going to make up for that, then we're going to need something more. And instead of pleasing him, they just tell him, Motherfucker, you got, like, millions of debt. So, yeah. <laughs> and, um... Just dabbing on them. It's like, hey, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine that imagery. One of the pink, <laughs> one of the pink soldiers just, uh, Get <laughs> poor and dab. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because everyone's watching it, it's like, oh, and then it starts skipping to other people. And basically the unifying factor for all these people is that they, they need money. Everyone here yeah. needs some money. And yeah. um, when they show Songwoo briefly, uh, it shows Jihan being like, wait a minute. And yeah, if you just remembered all the words from that scene where he was buying some fish, uh, Songwoo yep. is the son of that lady. Yeah. The one who's very successful and gone to university. So it's like, hmm. What are you hmm. doing here? Interesting. Yeah, and they say you called, you volunteered to participate in this game of your own free will, and this is it. You'll get one chance to choose, or one last chance to choose whether or not you want to participate. Um, and he says you'll go back to living your old and depressing lives, getting chased by creditors, or seize this last opportunity we're offering. Pretty mm. tempting. Oh, yeah. Especially because nobody's mentioned anything about death yet. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah, that's, all that's a detail they don't mention gotta, at the beginning. You're gonna yep, play yep, some yep. games and you have the chance to win money. And I was like, yeah, that's great. I don't know why they gassed me and got me here and undressed Take, me completely. Yeah. And <laughs> put another clothes on me. But man, this is gonna be great. <laughs> Yeah, they think Let's everyone is, they're deliberately vague with the language, and everybody's just distracted by the prize, being like, you can get a shit ton of money here, okay, everyone? They're like, ooh. It's a big old piggy bank up on the mm. ceiling. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's, it's safe that people wouldn't assume that, like, oh, I'm going to be killed if I lose. You yeah, know, especially with, yeah. Uh, they even show clips of it on the screen, but the game they played with uh, Train to Busan Man. It's just like, that's probably the similar thing we're doing. I think that's going to be a big deal for why everyone assumes this will be safe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, 
And then again, you read the, uh, the there's three clauses, and uh, one of them, I think, says, like, if you refuse to play, you'll be eliminated, which is, like, eliminated. Uh, hmm. <laughs> what do you mean with that? It's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's deceptive, because they, they frame it like there's only three clauses, no fine print, and so that means you can trust us, because it's simple, and we're not burying any clauses way down in there. You know, but be it is so vague and non-specific that it's actually more deceptive than a longer yeah. contract that defines terms would be. Well, the thing is, I think that's, yeah. you have to wonder, what if a player says, hey, by eliminated, you don't mean killed, right? What do they do then? It's a, <laughs> it's a good thing that no one there is a lawyer who would go, hey, you haven't defined <laughs> any of these terms. I'm not saying shit. <laughs> um, and clause, the, the interesting clause is that if uh, a majority of players vote... To end the games, the games will end. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they all split into a big line, and this is the thing, because this is only episode one, so you got to really get this stuff done. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, and we've seen the front man as well, who has a mask mm. that uh, is probably going to get around to, maybe for Halloween. Yeah. Who knows? Reminds me of Andros. Some other people might find other other yeah. references. Yeah. Like definitely mask reminds Batman. me of Andros. Um, uh, there's a strange thing that happens when we see the front man. Did he get into the elevator yet? Not yet, no. Uh, okay, we'll see. So yeah, we just I see like it. this sort of pastel M.C. Escher staircase. I don't I understand everyone, um, I don't the get... point of it, but I yeah, like it. I th is it to I'm confuse the, way. The, the people so that they won't know, they'll be disoriented when traveling from, let's say, storage to games? They'll... If Is they try to run, it, it's kind of like a labyrinth, so they don't stand a good chance of finding an exit. And yeah, that's that also could but be in terms of the design, the hallway. Yeah, that's true. I think it's more aesthetic, and I just think it's neat. Well, here's well, the thing: yeah. Is it aesthetic for any purpose in the game, or just the audience? Seems as um, aesthetic because that's been the whole theme of this entire facility. Is it's all very colorful and very candy coated, very game like. So I imagine it's just aesthetic thing. Because by it, the time they're in that hallway, they've already they're already in. Mm -hmm. So they've agreed to the game. They're taken to the game. Can't back out now. I I, I guess think I just it's just the the just organization the you know the people who designed this place are having some fun. Honestly, I I don't think it's more complicated than that. Yeah, I don't think I it guess. serves a, a way too practical purpose. It doesn't Except cause any problems for me. Yeah, we know. Well, yeah, so it's not an. It's not a problem. It's just one of those like, why? Yeah, I understand because it's a point of praise for everyone who sees this, and you do wonder like, is it just the fact that it's those colors, or is there any like practical reason why you think it's really interesting and substantive, or is it just it just looks cool? Just an, un yeah. it's a weird room. So I was it's... waiting for something to happen in these. Yeah, me too. I feel like it was a missed opportunity in that. But sense. then we we only get like later on like there is thing yeah you could argue there is around. something that happens here that that's the only reason why I mentioned. A potential reason other than that I, yeah I got yeah, nothing. Um, yeah. Oh, and if, when you get into oh. like side hallways that door with doors that lead to nowhere yeah who is no one's meant to open this if things go according to plan so i don't yeah i just don't it's weird not to mention there are vips watching these games so i bet i imagine the look is to entertain them i well, it's weird but they're like adults yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like they themselves <laughs> well, would yeah, be asking, we'll "Why have you uh, colored yeah. it this way?" And also, I don't yeah. think they was see this part these of the rooms budget? at all. I don't think they see these rooms at all because they they, they might do. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. I imagine they, um, no, they, they do. do. There's cameras there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, remember, they there. they receive a TV show more than likely in the same way that this TV show runs. Um, oh, so, oh, yeah. They mentioned that they they watched the thing, right? Yeah. So you know, they got the game show colors going on. But many yeah, no, of the environments in which they play the games could just be blank white rooms, but they decided to make them colorful and fun as part mm -hmm. of the show. So, yep. like a but child friendly aesthetic, but I guess uh, I can't well, say for sure what I would what I would put down as why they did this specifically. Not the make yeah. it. It's got to be for the entertainment universe. of the viewers. Yeah, it's it's important to note that there's a difference between this and like fancy opulence. This doesn't fall in that category. Because this is very, very mechanical in nature, uh, yep. especially when you think about what it must have, you know, to construct all of this. This isn't dressing something up. This is really just a really weird, creepy, strange 
staircase room with a lot of extra stuff that no one would ever see, but it's still done up to the nines. I don't know. Someone shouts it is intentionally odd. disorienting. Um, mm. <laughs> I don't I think like that would disorient me. Enough. It would just it'd be confusing because that's not generally how architecture is done. But yeah. I don't know about disorienting. Uh, only if anyone tried to like run away and escape in this part, you know, they get lost I, easily. But which that is the staircase, yeah. right? I guess, but uh, well, I, there I, I are feel weird, like, like you said, there's doors that go nowhere, and it's um, something like uh, that. But I feel like it's just disorienting enough, just not even knowing what game you're about to play. So they probably don't even need to do that. Some people are arguing is to make the players calm prior to the thing, but that's only going to work the first time. Yeah. yeah. Also, this <laughs> this room does not make you calm. Yeah. This is not a calm room. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a curious yeah. sort of situation. I, I would definitely, if we were all going to this place, I'd be like, why? <laughs> like, what what? I would be like, I hope I don't fall off of these stairs to my death. Yeah, can you put on some <laughs> guardrails on these? Like, yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is this, a, is this a Star Wars staircase where there's <laughs> yeah, no yeah, railing is allowed? And it would there's be a blue. bouncy castle floor at the bottom. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, they all, they all get their pictures taken, and then they... Actually, at this point, I was like, oh, I wonder if this is already... The first game, like if they don't smile, they just get just instantly killed. Oh god! Or something. <laughs> wondering if they go that route, but it's like, oh no, they actually just take pictures. <laughs> I love um, Jihan's smile. It's so it's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's so ready to have some fun and maybe win some money. He just doesn't know. And yeah, you uh, get all the faces up on the dare I say floorboard of the floor, so the front man can just view his players. I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't know how efficient that is as a system, but it looks neat. It, it isn't at all. <laughs> it isn't at all. <laughs> it's it's on one of those, faces. the point, the parts that aren't seen by the people, but yeah, you wonder who it's for, you know? Um, it, very yeah. strange. I think it's it's for the audience, I think is what it is. It's it's for the sake of an audience that doesn't exist in that world. Well, like, I, there's probably, there's cameras looking over the entire floor, right? Maybe there's like once again it's for the viewers watching. They'll just show it over the floor, Maybe. but I don't know. But then again, you would have to argue like why is it a physical thing on the floor when you can just overlay it on one of those arcade TVs, right? You, you, so, yeah. yeah, I don't know what purpose it serves for something that would have been hard to set up, you know. Mm -hmm. So My, uh, so the security system when he gets into the elevator scans his mask. Um, can we talk about how that's a, not necessarily the best security system to have? Yeah, in this place? It, well, it's kind of weird because like in a later episode that sort of comes into play and it's like they still are able to tell whether or not it's a yeah, we'll have to person. Yeah, it's, we'll it's we'll have to get there. Yeah, it's a reverse Star Wars face scanner. It's kind of weird. You have to have <laughs> a mask. You don't have to have a face. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh I guess they assume like nobody but the front man will have that mask, so it's safe. It was just like that sounds strange mm. as a system, but I guess the idea here is that nobody ever sees each other's faces. So yeah, but they're. I mean, it there leaves you open to, to way. sabotage, which happens <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. You think that of you would want to know exactly who all the people are who are working there. Yeah, you know, would. like you don't want them all to be anonymous. You don't want no. them all to be well, hidden at a glance. There's no way they hire these people without knowing everything about them, but at the same time, they're not allowed to let each other know about each other. Is that the idea? I guess the idea is compartmentalization, sort of. Um, You're on your own. But you maybe, know, sort of thing. Prevent, maybe for security, maybe you scan the mask and you have to have a key code or a password or yeah, something. Yeah, Just... that would be authentication. Or if the employees also had things in their necks, like we'll find out the uh, con like the competitors do. Mm, or just like fingerprints. They you know? probably yeah, wouldn't want to. Or just to fingerprints. <laughs> they probably Why wouldn't want to mark the them. them. If yeah. the clause is to let them go, if the majority agrees, they probably don't want to mark them. So, yeah. Um, so they enter well, they the. the them. They enter the field. It is um, very nice and quaint. This like, little big area. There's a weird thing in the distance. Don't know what that is. And uh, immediately Jihan is like, Song Wu, my bro, what's going on? You can't be in debt. And he's like awkwardly looking away the whole time, like, anyway, we'll talk. Yeah, and he says, We'll talk about it later. And he's like, oh, Okay. 
And yeah, um, I think at this point in the story, you might be tricked into thinking this is pretty chill, and you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, yeah. But I think it should be floating in the back of your mind, because this is the whole fucking reason you started watching the show, probably. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, everybody who's ever happen. talked about it immediately bring up that it's gory, so it's like, oops, well, that's the, uh, well, we, the reveal right there. I didn't know anything about it when I started watching it. Yeah. So, but you also thought they'd get killed if they didn't smile. Absolutely. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're all gonna die. <laughs> um, You're gonna get marveled. Oh, oh no. That's worse than dying. That is worse. <laughs> so, uh, the game is explained. It's good old red light, green light. Well, green light, hey, red light. I know that one. One. Yeah, well, I think most people knew this one. Yeah, That's probably why I know that one. It. I knew <laughs> more. I know, I know that more than Squid Game. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just, yeah, this a little robo girl, and she's gonna look, and if you run when she's looking at you, boom! You're out of the game. You are eliminated. Whatever that might mean. And it's like, hmm. And everyone's mm. pretty meh about this, you can tell, like, everyone's just like, okay, I guess I understand. And uh, there's two guys at the front who are like, hey, bet you a million I make it there first. And he's like, eh, game on, bud. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, and that's what the dub sounds like, right? Uh, fucking, I've Game seen so many clips on, of the bro. dub that make me cringe. The dub is, don't watch the dub, please. Right. <laughs> Game on, bro. Are you here? Understand? Auto. Am I right? Do me, I also, do me a favor, don't, everyone. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it it's it also has different dialogue too. So I noticed the subtitles don't match the um, English. Uh, Sometimes, yeah, perfectly true. either. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's, yeah, there's well, a bit of difference. You get the point, but there's definitely some difference. I, th I think there'll be lots for us to say on the English in this show. Uh, I think we will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it seems pretty normal, and just like, all right, let's just get going. She says, uh, "Green light," and I think um, at this point, you just like ev everybody's just like, "This is a game we're gonna try and do well." But if you don't, whatever, it's fine. And the uh, guy gets really far ahead, but oh, he's just, he, he loses his balance a little bit. So he's eliminated. And the guy behind him is mm -hmm. like, haha, I win. And then, um, I think they do it pretty nicely. There's a gunshot, but it's quick enough and confusing enough that everyone's just like, wait, what? And he just falls over. And everyone's just wondering what the fuck just happened. Yeah. And they yeah. don't quite believe anything yet. Good thing there was no exit wound. Well, yeah, there's no blood splatter, so that helps. Um, until he coughs you know there up is blood. For almost every other one. Yeah, obviously but, it's, it's, know, it's it's still nice. It's done for that little bit of subtlety because we're just getting slowly pushed in. And yeah, and I like that. Um, he sees the bloods moving slightly, and then looks up and it moves more and more until he realizes like, oh, I'm done now. I've got to run. Got to run. And then his shot just splatters blood all over a lady, and she's just like, Oh my god! And uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone. I say everyone. A lot of people start running. Um, <laughs> I think we see a good third of the crowd all move back while a lot of people are still trying to stay still and it's a um, yeah. complex scenario I think everyone's going to react differently if you understand very quickly mm -hmm. that moving kills you you'll stop moving mm -hmm. um, um, yeah I think yeah I I think it's certainly interesting the idea that we you just you just see someone get killed by a, a sniper and, and they were first killed by running <laughs> And yeah, and but I get. I think your mind just goes to oh shit! Like you, there's a there's an aspect of if there's if you're out in the open and someone gets killed by a sniper, a lot of people won't think oh I have to stand perfectly still in order to survive. Their their first instinct is to I need to run away. I need to get away from this. And of course, mm -hmm. the panic would like in the yeah know, the panic cascade like yeah. the herd mentality to everyone that else is running. Over. And people getting bowled over and everything like yep, that, yep. yeah. Um, you get a bit of a shot here. I'm gonna try and get it because I've seen people mentioning it in chat already, and I've seen it brought up before. Um, we lose, I think, half of the people from this game. About half of the people in the game, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, but like, are you saying the numbers after... don't line up on screen? Hey, like... I'm not saying it, but it's quite possible. That <laughs> first shot, um, that's after round one, and yeah. it it already seems like we're close, if not at half already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I don't know that the numbers fully line up. Yeah, yeah I don't think they do. <laughs> I didn't even you notice that, that, but there's yeah. three corpse piles at the exits as well, and it's like, damn, bro, that's a lot of people who are dead that's already. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, you I think can see 200... like 50, 50 people alive. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, doesn't seem like it lines up. 
because 201 make it through this and 255 die. And remember, there's still quite a few, like a ton that get killed in this game still. So mm -hmm. it's a... Um, maybe there was another maybe there was a B team room. Yeah, maybe. And, <laughs> yeah, maybe the you know that you know that disorienting staircase room. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. you know? They all ended up in different places, still play different games. It was just a big chunk of people. Uh but yeah, shit tons die, blood everywhere, and it's definitely gonna be if you didn't give anybody a preamble on this show at all and they had no idea what it's in for, I imagine that part's probably particularly fucking shocking. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you just get this really cool moment of everyone still frozen because they don't know what to do about this, but the old dude is just like, woohoo, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. You and, first. And he's got a big old remember smile. Remember that for later. Yeah. Yeah, remember that. Well, because it is odd. Uh, be like, why is he so engaged and happy when everyone yeah. else is fucking terrified? That's strange. And you just have to chalk it up well, to, you, I you guess, he's got brain tism. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, got, he's just an old brain. kind of guy, you know? He, he really he does get in... lost in his own world. Or maybe he just, yeah. he understood that this was a potential more so than anyone else did. And it's just yeah. like, hmm. Maybe I think he's I, a, I think a vampire. I think I mentioned <laughs> it when we first watched it, it was, uh, or at least I thought it, one of the two. It's like, uh, I wonder if he was in that game before. Maybe he's like a veteran of Squid Game that's, or something. That's sort of what I thought too because of his number. You know, yeah, it's all like, yeah. oh, he's a, he's a carryover from the last game, right? So now he's number one. Yeah, it's like, this old guy is the first one they got. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that so that was my take. An interesting point too. Um we were just talking about <laughs> the difference between the uh watching it dubbed and subbed. Um the dubbed version plays typical red light green light, but when you're watching it subbed, she sings a song. And I find it kind of interesting how it's all like, "Oh, you know how the song works. How are so many people still fucking this up?" <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It see, and also nobody, because we all think if I was there, what would I do? Nobody crawls. No one goes <laughs> on all fours and scurries forward, and then just um, like it's very easy to stay still after that. That's fair. No, I think it's I, I, the clock. I would, yeah, I would want, I would worry about I crawling, but I can't do it in time. Situation. Mm -hmm. That's not it's fair, true. Rags. You have four legs, and we don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah come maybe on. that's my. That's true. That's might be my mind going. You know to. I think, people, it, but but I think I agree. I think it could have been cool to see a couple people trying crawling in the crowd. Yeah, and he's like way behind, and the time runs out, and they get shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could show that the by crawling they couldn't quite make it. Um, Maybe yeah, you'd have to crawl fast, but mm -hmm. I still think I guess it's the risk. Do you want to go slower than running, but have it basically guaranteed that you'll be still when it's over? So yeah, up to you. It would nice to be see these explorations of strategies kind mm -hmm. of play out. What would this person do? Especially a bunch of, because basically everyone in this show is a fucking red shirt. It would be nice <laughs> to see that sort of, like, green oh, shirt. okay. You, green jacket. Oh, wait, white shirt, is it? What is, what yeah, white, white, jack, shirt. white shirt, green jacket, but they're red shirts. They're all red shirts, regardless of what they're wearing. I was just joking, it's okay. They're also green pants, white <laughs> shoes, yellow, well, Wait, was I? I thought you were gonna make a different point though <laughs> about the red shirt thing. No, no, no. I was just saying they're all red shirts. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a part that I like about this where the old man is the only one that's moving, and there's this shot where he stops and he, he looks kind of focused. There's this girl that's just next to him, and she's just looking around like the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just carrying on like okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, the game continues, and everyone yeah. starts moving forward. And what's cool, by the way, is if you've seen. The whole show, watching episode one again, you can see lots of characters that'll eventually be much more important. And it's just neat, because you're like, oh, there they are, just trucking yeah. along in game one. Alive one. ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, Gihan is freaking the fuck out, because he got pushed to the ground, and he's just shivering. And then Song Wu is like, bro, you can't stay there. We got a time limit, the doll senses how you move. Here's a tip, try and stay behind someone else, and um, yep. you'll have like a, almost like a bonus life at that point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, just just because uh, I've seen people be critical of that tip. Um, I saw I think it could have been Matt Pat's video, but he was like, the reason why that's a bad tip is the person in front of you might stop at any moment, and thus it would fuck you up. I was just like, it doesn't take a lot to be able to fucking be cognizant of your the person in front of you's movement. Um, well, especially yeah. considering that that's the whole point of the game. 
and he's right in front of you. I just I think it's a good tip because he's right. It's a, you freeze yeah, when yeah. you're supposed to freeze, but if you fail that, you've still got someone in front of you that might save your life just by freezing yeah. at the right time. It's like, yeah, it's a good tip. Uh -huh. And he's exactly. correctly pointing out that the motion sensor has one perspective. It's not yeah, it is. on yeah. all four it sides. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the doll. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's good shit because it's like this Song Wu guy with the glasses. He seems to be a smart boy. Uh, yep. And he's helpful with Gihan as well. We also have another interaction of um, yeah. Thug guy who was beating up the girl. She's right behind him and she grabs his hair and he's like, please, please, please don't move me. <laughs> like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> and um, yeah, she doesn't choose. She could have killed him, but she doesn't. Uh, she instead pushes him down. And uh, yeah, Gihan was using that tip, but the guy in front of him gets killed. And uh, so now he's yeah. kind of play by the rules. And then uh, someone I think who was spoke to him briefly at the beginning grabs his leg and it's just like, please help me. And it's just like, oh man, he's been shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, once you get green light again, he pulls off and they just, it's just nicely done with the cameras framed so that you can pan sort of and then you can just see him in the background struggling and he just gets shot down. It's just like, ah, down he goes. And then they kick off the jazz music. Yeah. Yeah, time to get weird. Yeah. <laughs> Which um I think this this can be jarring because you're like, wait, is that scene over? And it's like, no no no, it's just the, the guy who's chilling out and watching, he's putting some jazz on while he's <laughs> yeah. while he's watching. Yeah. To yeah. pair with this weird voice little scene. weird little plastic bin, because you know, yeah. why not get weird about it, right? I like to Everything imagine else he built weird. that himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um He's just admiring the show, and then we just yeah. watch as all of them very stressfully make it through this game, which, by the way, just everyone I watched this with the first time, including myself, it is a stressful fucking game to watch right out. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was a very good choice for the first one to, yeah. uh, to have in the show. Yeah, definitely establishes what's happening. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be yeah. guessing them. Like well, you, you're the the other games will probably be like this. This is a life or death scenario, well, serious business. I think one of the big things that works in favor of this is the first one is that it is a game that doesn't involve much interplay with other players. So for the first game where people don't fully appreciate the, you know, like the full scope of the situation, um, I think that like it gets the most out of that one whereas like the later ones start to rely more on how they interact with other players and like it's true directly with because one another. many of the contestants are still under the impression that like oh if i if i just can survive this game i'll just survive all the other games and then i'll yeah. we'll, we'll all walk well, yeah, out of so here alive I like i th i think that's one of the uh because i said at the beginning like that i think this show and the whole game itself is meaningfully different from like battle royale because it is not explicitly clear for a long time whether or not there's meant to be only one winner or like mm -hmm. the nature of how people can work together or you know how how long it's going to last or how many people will be left at the end there's like enough vagueness there to work with um, though i do think there's a certain point at which people still think you know like uh more than one person are going to come out of here alive and it does seem um, like they're being incredibly naive, but we'll get there. I, I don't know if it's naive. I think, I think it might naive. be possible. It might yeah. well be. I think it's... Uh, I thought it might be a possibility. I, no, no, no. I actually know. I'll push back on this one more. Like, I think it is us being familiar with stuff like Battle Royale that makes us believe that there must be one winner. Whereas in this world... Like, I Generally, don't know Battle Royals have still... a team, a team I, um, wins. Those, oh, honestly, no. I considered it my mistake when I was watching the show that I assumed it would be one winner, but then when re-watching it, yeah. I noticed the dialogue, and I was like, no, the, there is the potential for more than one winner with everything that they they yes. claim. Mm -hmm. and, and also, remember, we got shown that Squid Game can actually be played as a team game. Yeah. yeah. So and, like and team, people, right? Yeah, so presumably the that, prize money yeah. would be split, but, well, you know, we, we yeah. should, we'll get to all of this. <laughs> so. But, but um, I, I guess... As we're, we're watching them running for the line, and everybody's across except G Gihan, he's 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 got to go, but then he trips, and Giga Chad, Chungus Giga Chad. Chad incarnate, <laughs> like pure Chad energy, Ali grabs him by the yeah. collar and holds yeah. him saves still. his life. I just wanted yeah. to know saves his life. Most people we have any recognition of up to this point pass the line, including Oldman and his fucking face when he crosses it. He's like he's, having his grinning from I did it. Yeah. Absolute yeah. time of his life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
um, while everyone else is like, just looks like they're on death's door, yeah. stressed the fuck out. It's just an interesting juxtaposition because it yeah. makes you wonder. Um, but yeah, and it seems as though the only people that we have left at all that we recognize is the protagonist. Um, and he slips, yeah. as Fringy mentioned. But we get lucky in that someone decides to grab him, and it's it's so, you don't need anyone to tell you. He's fucking risking himself hardcore by doing yes, that. Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And he decides to to help him out, and it's it's quite wonderfully done as well. Because uh, for a moment when watching it, and I think I can't remember Metal if you were, you were talking about this as well, but uh, when he slips, I think as a viewer you're like, oh shit, is my, is, is this gonna be the is it gonna be that they kill the protagonist at episode make one? Out protagonist, not yeah. really. Yeah. Send it over to yeah. Song Wu, right? Like making yeah. him the protag after. Yeah, and, and, and I wouldn't even be that like I think that would have worked. It would have been so like we see this guy's whole life. And then he just gets killed here, right at the finish line, because he fucked up. Um, now but you, no. the perspective is now his friend, right? So it's like, ooh. Yeah, we could easily switch to a, another character. They did something with it, and it's just instant character development already, immediately. We know we we basically know who Ali is already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I think that most people wouldn't have done what he did. No, I, I think yeah. it's a clear indication. It's like, this guy right here, this this man, like he Ali is... Uh, is uh... Ali is really, really a yeah, big risk. Takes a big risk to himself. It's a big risk, and it also already highlights something that I guess we'll get referenced later. He's he's a strong guy. He's strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's yeah. strong. And uh, it's kind of interesting too. It's like you see him save uh, Gihan. You also have to wonder. It's like how far back was Ali, and how many other people did he save along the way that we just didn't get to see because we were maybe focused on uh, Gihan. The, Maybe yeah. it's it's a specific circumstance, and you have to be within range, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this, probably, is this... this is the kind of game where it's probably really difficult to actively help other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, someone in the chat saying Ali is dumb. Ali is not dumb. We, He's we, not dumb. We, we, we'll, you know why He's they not... say we'll get to it. Well, we'll get to <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll he, get to it. But unless they're talking dumb. about this specific instance, and this, this, uh, I could easily see a friend of mine doing this, and I might tell them like. You fucking could have killed yourself by doing that. You know that, right? And um, they could, yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't describe that as that's, dumb. It's well, that's the like, thing. Uh, if they acknowledge yeah. that, I'd be like, so what you did wasn't dumb. It was incredibly it altruistic was very, of you. Exactly. Altruistic, possibly to a fault. Yeah. Um, At least if your goal indeed, is to live. Yeah. If your goal is to, like, live through this. Um, that's a dick move by, the, by, the, uh, by whoever shot the last guy that didn't make it. There was like a little pause of like two seconds, like, uh, uh, then they oh, shoot him. Yeah, <laughs> so, I was gonna say, they pass over, it's very satisfying, but then we immediately cut to just all of these people who haven't yet crossed the line, and they're like, just like us, they're like, does, are we, do they get shot then? And it's just like, boom, 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 they all just fall. Yeah. Except for one dude who stands there for like two <laughs> seconds. And he's like, oh yeah, shit. Like, oh, oh, what I, I get a, what I gotta a bonus wonder life? Is... Hell yeah. Did I win? Yeah. <laughs> What I gotta wonder is, like, if it hits zero, they probably know what's gonna happen. It's like, why didn't they just make a break for the finish line? You'd think that at least they get one shot, or two right? people would have. Again, yeah, I think it would have been cool to yeah. show two, a few people going desperate. I can also yeah. see the logic of being like, I will do the rules whether or not the time runs out. Maybe they won't kill me. Maybe it'll just be that I've, yeah. I've failed this round instead of having to kill me. But yeah, they get killed. Yeah, because it's already an interesting thing where it's like, they've got one camera just looking. Right. From the girl, right? But they've got rifles all over the place. So it's like, why don't they have cameras all over the place? They're probably trying to, you know, encourage a little bit of ingenuity. Or like, you know, just a little bit of skirting of the rules. So I imagine somebody might catch up on that and try to at least make a break for the finish line even after the time ran out. So Yeah, definitely does make you wonder. So like once she turns her head, can I go? And like, how does, you know... Well, um, something I guess I find a little bit interesting is possibly a flaw, or it's just how the system works. A lot of people are moving as a result of other people in that opening round, and uh, the guns can't get to everyone. And so I wonder if it's just like... Because, you know, Gihan moves quite a bit when someone falls on him, but does the system yeah. distinguish between being pushed and falling? No, I think there's it can only shoot so many people at a time. I think by it's the that, time. yeah. It's just yeah. a matter yeah. of it has to get around to everybody. It, the system does seem to be overwhelmed by the amount of people moving. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I guess that means it doesn't remember that he moved earlier. Well, maybe it doesn't judge that as I don't know. Does it? How I don't does know. It, and also, that guy fell in front of him. 
Um, there's that yeah, too. you could argue that there's a bit of wiggle room there. I just wondered if it was yeah. um, she logs everything in a little computer brain, and then the guns just have to get to everyone eventually, or if it's just it's real time and you can escape yeah. if you're lucky enough. I mean, um, it makes you wonder the. I guess the only point of having the girl there instead of the workers is so they don't see all these men with guns in this box they're stuck in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the a lot of people just because the guns are really far away, so it's enough that they don't even realize they're there. Yeah, they're hidden. Uh, the they don't see the guns. Uh, they're still playing under the idea that you don't know that if you are eliminated, that means that you get killed. Mm -hmm. And that this hyper advanced computer doll that is tracking movement and highlighting you and numbering you and sending it to some database when this could be just, oh yeah, all the guys with guns, they're just looking for people who move after, you know, the time is up. This is kind of an interest. Um, I don't know if I want to. Oh, okay. So this is a bit of an interesting <laughs> take. Got a super chat here. It says asking, why are you Dumbo's watching Korean stuff? It doesn't seem in your realm. <laughs> not that you're tied oh, to any type of media it just seems weird <laughs> um we the storytelling's so, in our realm that's the answer yeah yeah like it's like that's just what it is it doesn't care yeah we, we like don't them, care where yeah. it's from it just needs to be a good story worth talking about and here well, it is well i don't know <laughs> i well because we've been this before fringy won't watch anything from chile yeah. i won't watch anything from paraguay uh you know we all have our limits i'm very anti martian content we'll, i feel like we yeah, should support yeah. Yeah. <laughs> content. unless unless it's doom then we're pro martial Oh, content, yeah, that's the exception, because that's like a yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but generally, we don't really care what it's from. And yeah. we get so... We've had almost everything we have is Western stuff, and so much of it has been shit. And let's be frank, Squid Game is in vogue right now. Everyone's talking sure about it. Yeah, Everyone's and... discussing it. So there's an aspect of, you know, we want to keep you know track on current things. Yeah, and and it, Spooky it, Ween comes up, expect those costumes, boy. I, I think a lot of people will be curious how how Squid Game relates to how we often look at stories. And it's like, well, you're going to find you're gonna out. You're going to find out. Of... Yeah, you came to the right place. <laughs> we're already up to nearly 2 hours. And we're done episode yep. 1. So it's like, we're <laughs> doing great. We're just now ending episode yeah. 1. Yep. Um I'm going to get a drink. Y'all carry ahead for fucking time's sake. So yes. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. I feel like this should get faster as we go. Who knows? I don't make any mm -hmm. promises. Anyway, um, that's it's episode one. Episode wait, wait, wait. Uh, quick, quick thought on the end of episode one. They zoom out to show the island. We don't see land masses around it, so I think it's fair to assume it's, you know, Distant. somewhere in the Pacific. Yeah. And we see... <laughs> The top of the stadium that they're playing in has kind of a painted top on it. Yeah. Now, may maybe this is just, you know, the budget level for the effects, but it was maybe a little obvious that it was fake. I mean, maybe <laughs> chance if someone flies by, you know, see They will that see stadium. that and be like, what the fuck? That is yeah, a fake tree. Unlikely. Yeah, um, but it, it, it did look a little odd. Maybe it's minor thing. Maybe it does fool satellite imagery enough. Maybe it like because yeah, I think I think you're right that there should probably be a better. You'd think they could just have it so that um, maybe actual some kind trees of, yeah, like top. actual maybe I don't know maybe that's too difficult to do. But uh, yeah, I I agree. They seem to have unlimited resources, so I I think you think they didn't even need that thing at all. <laughs> also just possible. Kept it closed. But, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think no, they maybe did. not because yeah, I, cause I would rather the cover small. than nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if it's all sure. wide open, oh my god, you gotta. There's gonna be like a plane going by that's gonna see that. Not but as to long mention as the rain. Form, yeah, that yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't want any rain interfering with the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, the super chatter comes back. He says, "I agree. I'm just saying it feels like your coverage is expanding. Something I'm very on board with." Hey. Oh, that's an odd way of phrasing it. Then. Well, don't worry. I guess <laughs> we, we can just we can just start talking about the MCU again if you guys want. <laughs> 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 I say that as if Hawkeye is an on its way, No Way Home oh. is an on its way. It's like, yeah, we oh will be. Boy. Um, so yes, episode <laughs> two opens pretty harshly with just all of the coffins, and they all go to the incinerators. And there's one with a person who's clearly not dead, and they just like push the care. fingers just... back in and just nail the box closed. Like, oh, I love that. That's <laughs> great. That's Gosh. one of my favorite little, just little bits in the whole thing. It's good. Um, it's horrifying. And yeah, and I, I just like that we cut into everybody is just sitting silent, terrified because of that whole experience. Um, 
and we see uh, Gihan helping, uh, appreciating both Sangwoo and Ali for both of them in a way help save his life to a degree, right? Like, um, obviously Ali way more, so he, I think he refers to him as a guardian angel. Yeah. Um, he is an angel. Yeah, and he says, you're alive and that's what matters. It's like, aw. Aw. Um, Go you, Ali. And yeah, because, to be fair, I probably should have mentioned, like, to end the episode as well, after they make it, but just so much death, it is such a just, like, fucking hell. But, um, because yeah. we're in the world of Netflix, we don't get a week to discuss it, we just go right into episode two. <laughs> like, <Right. laughs> next. Um, and yeah, so, they explain that, yeah, you just, a fucking shit ton of people just died, as if they didn't know. <laughs> and then, um, the, I think the way that this sort of runs out as a scene is, they assume as players now that they're almost caught in like a saw type situation where it's just like you're gonna try and fuck with us and kill us this isn't anything legit but um and so we start getting people to beg and i like that the first one to beg fucking forgot her name but she's quite the character in this show uh i kind of call her crazy bitch i don't know what else to call her well the reason i didn't want to say that is because it almost poisons the well until we see more crazy shit from her like, <laughs> like uh th and that's kind of important because at this point she comes across as j she says like i have a child please don't kill me like uh, this is horrible you can feel nothing but just sympathy for this person because everyone else starts to follow suit but it's interesting that she's the first one and she's doing what she yep. believes to be the best thing to do to live in this circumstance which is essentially a whole character, but um, yeah, it's kind of funny because the workers are just like, "Oh, you guys are no, no, no. We're not gonna like we're not here to kill you or, or make up for your debts or whatever mm -hmm. else. We're just playing a game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not here to harm you. Sure, it's yeah, sure. and it's the kind of thing where, especially on rewatching, you're like, "All right, look, I get that you you're doing the thing, but like." You do know that the way you've presented this is bizarre, yeah? <laughs> like, <laughs> At least, <yeah>. preach it. <laughs> you haven't exactly been straightforward. Um, yeah, they're consistently deceptive and vague on I think they're just obtuse. Them. I think, uh, I think that's the way to describe them. They're being obtuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, all very rational complaints. And I just, I really like that everyone is crying when they go home and stuff, and then, uh... Uh, he's like, consent clause one. If you fucking refuse to play, you'll be fucking killed. And they're like, oh my god. No. Um, and then Sung Woo is like, oh yeah, clause three, bitch. If we all vote to end this thing, it ends. And they have this little cut back to the square guy. And it, even though it's a mask, you, you get a sense of like, motherfucker. <laughs> like, why did you, make this? Did you <laughs> read the whole thing? Why did you see? Yeah, who reads you the whole read fucking all thing? Three clauses. <laughs> yeah, there were three things we didn't expect you to read. I'm back, by the way. We didn't well. expect you to read, you know, the third one of those three things. <laughs> Nobody reads the, the terms and conditions. Get... What the hell? <laughs> I got bored after the second one. Jeez. So, <laughs> they... but before we get to the, he was oh. like, I so wish I was a triangle right now. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a part where you know they say, but you killed those people, and they go, uh, they were simply eliminated for breaking the rules of the game. As long as you follow the rules, we will. Uh, you will safely exit this place with the promised prize money. They... Now, um, that's that's a bit of a lie, I'd yeah. say. Considering the other players can be responsible for the other people's deaths as a part of the game. Um. Well, I guess they would argue that as a part of the rules that, you know, certain things can happen. Rules do they you break couldn't. the rules if you lose tug of war? Yeah, that's 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 my <laughs> pedantic question. Is it? To, are you breaking the rules by not winning tug of war? That's a good. It's a fair question. Like, there's a lot of semantics in this. The way that they speak, you're like, hmm. Yeah. This is not the scenario where we need to be operating on an understanding. Yeah, we need to explicit as fuck. Um. But yeah, what I like about this scene though is just everyone's pretty much unified. Like, this is bullshit. No, don't like this. And we can end it with clause three. The guy's like, okay, well, let me show Here's you the prize, money buddy. You, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah, and it's just the way that everybody's it's, looking at all that money. The way that it's lit and everyone, yeah, just realizing it, it's just like, uh oh, I think we're starting to yeah. get an idea. Because like, even a thug character like moves someone out of the way, like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then, so uh, it puts things a in lot perspective. Of dongs or whatever they yeah, use. Yeah, because. And then, uh, then the the square guy's like, yeah. So the idea is that for every player square eliminated, guy. you get a hundred million. One hundred thousand, isn't it? Uh, I no, think it's a hundred million. million. Oh, okay. it's a hundred million. Yeah. yeah, it's a hundred million one. But 
if you, you know, like, decide to quit and leave, then that money gets given to their families, and you guys don't get anything. Yeah. yeah. Those families can do a lot with So anyway, $5, vote. $5. Yes, that, 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 <laughs> yeah. very deliberate, very nicely done. It's just like, you want to leave? Okay, here's some money, by the way. You can't have it. So anyway, yeah, let's do it. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here's, yeah, here's the money, I guess. And, and just uh, the oh, that, 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 glowing, that, that glowing, pig, uh, glowing, glowing piggy bank up there? That's nothing, really. I mean, it's... That glowing <laughs> little piggy, just like... I like hey. the <laughs> triumphant video game music when it comes down <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Chip Toonie. Um, um, and yeah, the first person to clarify how to get the money is the girl who was begging for her life and her child yes. just seconds ago. She's like, whoa. And it, it, that should already tell you something about it. It's just neatly done. Um, so, so yeah. uh, real quick, before we move on, one of the things she asks, you know, how much do we get at the end? And he's like, okay, bitch, let me explain the math for you. <laughs> we'll go over <laughs> this again. But one of the things he says, he phrases it interestingly, because he doesn't say, well, it depends on how many people... Yeah. survive to the end he says well there are this many players so the total will be this and i think i think it not that multiple people can't win the game but it's a clue as to the well, intentions of the people running it well to be clear what he said is there are 456 players so the total prize money is 45.6 billion that would be everybody yeah, he's not, so he's not, the, he's, but yeah. I think the the fact that he phrases it like that and not, um, you will win a hundred million won and also you'll split. I mean, it's a little wordy, but you know, you would split yeah, however he, many players yeah, he, have been Yeah, he deliberately leaves all, out all a lot his, of details. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of omission here in this Yeah, and so when operation. it comes to the idea of whether people believe that they'll be able to win along with other people it's my complaint is not that it's impossible for the game because you know uh based on the math we'll get into it but a maximum maximum number of 57 people can win the game we'll talk about why in a bit mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. th it seems clear that the people it, it becomes clear as it goes on that the people running the game are willing to bend and change the rules just to make things more exciting for them so i wonder yeah why late in the game people still believe the play the the people running the game will allow that to happen okay well um we'll be able to talk about it more as we go but uh because episode two is a bit different from the rest of the season in a sense the mm, it's yeah. true we conduct yeah. the vote and should like so uh uh, Gihan is first, and he votes no, and it feels very straightforward and just like, yeah, of course, this is fucking nightmare fuel. What are we doing? And then, like this, this, this little sort of old lady is next. And she's like, um, takes one look at that cash, and she's like, nope, which, continue. Which I think was just a tad over it, fell making wise. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned this to you, Fringy, or one of you guys. I don't know, but I was like, there's some shots later where you show people guessing as a, with a frame with the the. The money's right behind them, above them, if you know what I mean. And um, I just feel like you could, you had an easy opportunity to pan it so that she's looking at the options and the camera just pans nice and slowly so that the view changes from having that console with her to the money in the background and then we see the green light as she puts her hand down. Just a, yeah. Yeah, a visual like a high shot. Yeah, a high shot where the money is in the, like, the foreground and past it you could see her down below. Because mm -hmm. uh, instead they show her very deliberately turn around, look up, then they show, they cut to the piggy bank, they cut back to her looking and then turning around. It's just like, I, yeah, I get it. I, I I know what she's thinking about. There is, <laughs> it's fine. there is an element that I definitely get in this show. One of those, yeah, I get it. Trust me. I, I really get it. You don't have to be, but we'll get to that because it gets really bad later. But, you know, it, it does pop up here and there. Yeah, um, which, by the way, in terms of problems, I'm much more happy to have problems Very like minor. Yeah. yeah, very minor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, we start seeing the voting run, and it gets literally to the point of, I think it's 100 to 100. Uh, but also, wow. uh, not worth not glossing over, Songwu votes to stay. To continue, and Gihan's yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, um, the, well, that's the point I meant about putting it into perspective. You, we're now in a hypothetical world, because it's voluntary. It's like, do you want to risk your life to gain the kind of money that can fix your entire life? And it's like, you know what? I guess I do. Um, and that's what gets brought up when um, the lady with the kid, she easily presses yes, and someone's like, what the fuck? And then she's like, what the fuck? What? what? Are we going to go back to our lives where the same shit will happen, where yeah. we'll just get killed um, anyway? 
worthwhile to note, this episode is called Hell. Just, yeah. uh, ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, because someone's like, we, we gotta leave, can't keep doing this shit. And then, um, and she's like, what changes? Uh, mm. oh, yeah, it's just interesting to consider along with everything we've seen about her so far. Um, and yeah, so they're doing it in reverse order as well, which means you should already figure out who the last vote will be. Uh, <laughs> one... Yeah. I like the one detail uh, we were just talking about, Ali. Ali hits that X like nobody's business. <laughs> <laughs> and, Ali's uh, like, get me the fuck out. <laughs> and again, just, uh, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but um, a little bit of disappointment again for me where old man is looking at the console, and Gihan is like, oh no, and then he, they replay the scene of him being like, hey, I've got a yeah. tuber, I've not got long to live. Yeah, it's like, kind of, come on, uh, that's exactly what we're <laughs> thinking about as an audience, we know yes, this. I get it, yeah. thank you. Uh, you don't need to do you that. Give me, little, to give me a little credit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and honestly, like, I thought he would hit yes to make us feel like, yeah, I'm sure he wants to play. I think That's most same. people did. Yeah. But the main reason I thought they would is like, they're not going to waste our time by sending us out of the game. Like, that's not yeah. going to continue, obviously. Um, yeah. But I'm, but I'm From so... a show making perspective, you know, you'd think <laughs> that they wouldn't leave. I mean, we've got games to it's play. Squid Game. That's, yeah. The, yeah. that's the, the game. Show, yeah. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I said out loud when, when he was last, I was like, oh, well, they fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure that's what um, I said. But yeah, uh, certainly if we were only considering the context of episode one, but I think that, you know, you could say similar things, but I think he decided, as much as I would continue, a hundred people don't want to, and this feels unfair to them. Uh, presumably that's Which, why he hit no. Mm. Yeah, that's I th I'm thinking that's why assume. he. Yeah, that's what I. I thought he. Wondering. I thought he hit no because I. Th I thought he forgot the rules of how. No. Like, which, which one? <laughs> like, does X well, mean, yeah, I thought don't the red one meant games? continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't <laughs> stop the games is the red, and green is to continue. Right, I thought. I thought it was like X marks the spot, like a pirate ship treasure. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, it, it, might like worthwhile, it might be worthwhile to mention that um. We will talk about it, but there are a lot of people who don't like the ending reveal. Um, yeah. and believe that it's detrimental to the show. That's going to be a big conversation. It, this yes. particular choice, if anything, highlights uh, one of the the reveals that that twist has, and gives this a lot of extra meaning. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get back to that. Oh, we'll, we'll get there in twelve hours. Quick question: <laughs> we'll Does anyone there. does anyone find it? Uh, what would the word be? Um, I guess Blue. moderately unrealistic that oh. it's a perfect even split like that. That so many people would want to continue. Uh, I mean, it's I, obviously done for dramatics. Unlikely. Obviously yeah, done for suspense. It is unlikely. Yes, it is mm. unlikely. I'll I, I'll go with it. It's possible. I don't know. I think, I, I I think, think most maybe people I'm, would nope the fuck out of there. Yeah, I think so too. I, maybe I'm too optimistic about well, yeah, humanity. The, the, well, the, you really got to consider how just how, her, the, <laughs> again, the episode's called Hell, how bad these people's lives are on the outside. Um, for example, Gihan, who is facing his organs getting pulled out of him soon enough. It's like, hmm. And even he voted no. So you have to imagine the people who voted yes had some really fucking terrible lives. And then you get immediately, they're like, hey, fuck the people who voted no. Can we continue? Because it's like, yeah. mm -hmm. especially if you just played Squid, uh, it's not Squid Game, Red Light, Green Light, where you're like, I can do this. I'm pretty sure I can do this. It's another five yeah. games, it five and that many. Yeah, it's. I think it's very meaningful, not meaningful, but purposeful that they started on a game where you're like, I could do that. I could do yeah. that and not die. Yeah. yeah, it's risky, it's crazy, but I mean, I think it might be worth it. And once they show you how much money you're getting, yeah, it's like, yeah. man, yeah. that's it's Being that deeply money. in debt, having to spend you practically your whole life trying to pay that shit off, I imagine it's all like, well, and Why yeah, not uh, death rather than suffering? Vast majority of the people there are likely gamblers as well, which yeah, yeah there. Lines up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be an issue where people are sticking around for greed's sake. They're all mm -hmm. there because they need that money for something, not mm -hmm. just I want to be rich and I want money. Yeah, and for the sake of the um, I don't know what you might call the message or the theme of the show. I think it's interesting. And smart writing that uh, at least a lot of the characters, not all of them, that we see, that we understand their backstories, they're there not just because everything about, you know, 
society sucks. A lot of them are there because of their own terrible their decisions. Their own problems. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. I was going to say that episode two is basically ep the first half of episode one, but now for all of our supporting cast. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just I didn't expect this. I was like, they, they've left. Like, we're done. Okay, damn. And then <laughs> the, the gears in your head start turning, and you can sort of pick it up before it even happens. That like, oh, are they gonna go back just because they realize like ultimately, yeah, okay, fine. I do actually think this is the better pathway. Mm. Um, and yeah, so we've got. And in, in, in most cases, not only it's the same, like it, it got worse when they came back. Oh yeah, back. yeah. Well, uh, thug worse. guy's life. He's soon to be torn to shreds by his yeah. the people he owes. <laughs> yeah. And so when you're at that point, yeah, Squid Game is the better option. Um, so that's, yeah, that's basically what this episode's about. Uh, we have everyone is dropped back off, and um, uh, we see Songwoo and Ali are just, like, looking to get their phones charged, and I think that when um, uh, Songwoo gets his charge, all he has is just infinite notifications of uh, repayments necessary. Yeah. yeah. Just depressing as fuck. <laughs> Question: Why do they why do they pick them up individually and isolated, but then drop them off in pairs? Presumably that they were dropped off just in the locat. Like there's areas they can drop them off, and maybe there's more than pairs. We only saw two pairs. It could be that some of them are dropped off in fives or however. But many. Ali doesn't live anywhere close to the um the wealthy well, guy. I, I think they, they probably just away. didn't dump them off. It's about an hour's to... bus ride away. Uh -huh. yeah, well, they probably didn't want to dump them all. Or... Yeah, well, I, I, I got no answer necessarily for that. I, I, I guess I just, I don't know why they did it that way, but I guess there's no harm in doing it that way. Um, well, well, I think it does pose some amount of risk to this, the secrecy and um, integrity of their organization. I think isolating them when you pick them up is smart, and I don't necessarily understand why you drop them off in pairs. Hypothetically, let's say, because we see at least one person, our protagonist, who goes to the police, and that so, wouldn't matter where they were dropped off, though. No, but if they're <laughs> dropped off together, you then know, you have two witnesses rather police. than one. Yes. Um. Well, theoretically, they could still find each other, especially the ones that know each other. Obviously. Yes, there are. I mean, I think part of the reason for isolating them is that a lot of them don't know each other, or at least this early in the game. There's the couple who we'll see later. They obviously will know each other. Yeah. But I, I it seems an unnecessary risk to drop them off in pairs instead of individually, to me. Um, as someone in chat suggested it might be because they want someone to be able to help them uh, get out of their restraints. Yeah, or they could gas them and leave them on like a park bench or something. True. You know what I mean? True. Um, that though requires I... more than, that, that requires them like getting out of the vehicle more and- I will right, assume- And seeing that pink suit. Um, I will assume the organization is at the point where the risk of leaving them in ones and in groups is essentially the same. They have to have control in some degree of secrecy that can account for several of them getting together and making a point to the police or whatever else. I like, would imagine. Yeah. I would. Well, you yeah, have, but... You have to, yeah. Yeah, how would they do that? Well, we can... I think when we get through a little bit of episode two, we can probably start talking about the potential will building because we'll get more details as the show goes on, so I wonder when we should have the large conversation ultimately about how the show tries to convince us this exists in this world. Um, That's fair. Uh, we'll lay that as a seed for that mm -hmm. discussion. Yeah, that is that is an element, and we'll we'll keep adding plant. as we go. We'll plant that seed. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Songwoo, I think, does he buy him food, offer him the charge, and give him money for the bus? Uh, yes, he does. And we will come back to that in a moment, because I was talking to Fringy the other day about... Um, why that might be happening beyond just generosity, but I do think Sangwoo is being generous here. He's just like, hey, look after yourself. I'm not going to ask you to pay it back. Yeah. Um, yeah and and so when you're 79 trillion dongs in debt, <laughs> what's a few more, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Gihan immediately goes to the police, naturally, and he's like, look, I know it may sound crazy, but everyone had to play red like red light and got killed. The police are like, okay. <laughs> I just... That's good, uh, <laughs> And yeah, uh, they give him give him a card to phone, and I guess they redirect the number back to just a normal number or whatever system they've got going. We could that's another seed to be planted to talk about, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So the police, there's just nothing for the police to work with. Um, but he did hand the card into the police, um, and they keep a hold of it, which I'm not. I guess I'm not sure that should have happened, but I guess it, you know it did. 
and uh, yeah, we see just some guy walks in with a with a perp that we don't know. Is a detective man, and he's like, "Hey, buddy!" And he looks down. They make sure to show us with the camera that he's noted that card. Like, okay. And uh, yeah, uh, Gihan's having no luck with the police. Uh, we should be able to get through this episode pretty quickly because you can summarize sort of what they're doing in each of these scenes. Um, pretty quick, but the idea is that we're going to be skipping between different characters going back to their normal lives, including um, our protagonist heading home and his mum isn't there. How mm. very odd. And I think he says that the door was unlocked, um, which is a bit worrying. Yeah, and then we see um, Song Wu is looking at his mum, setting up his stall, and looks like he doesn't have the courage to go and see her. And uh, he bumps into Gihan and they just have a little chat. With a coffee and a cigarette, and there's this, uh, they have a nice back and forth, including that he, he mentions it's futures that he's uh, lost loads of his money on, and Gihan is like, what do you mean? Did you, like, get a girlfriend? And, like, <laughs> the implication with that dialogue being that he got a girlfriend and bet the future of his life with the girlfriend, or something, like, is, he yeah. just doesn't understand well, I mean, you know, and he's just yeah, like, it's not a unreasonable, <laughs> you know. Well, uh... uh it would be bizarre if that's what his perspective is, but I can believe that's his perspective. Like, I, yeah. I, how would that possibly work? And I think that's just what he's asking. It's like, how does... Yeah. Well, maybe maybe it's like, that's what I did in a sense. Maybe I found someone and I had a kid and it didn't work out. And that sort of was like, maybe my future and things didn't work out. So maybe in his mind, that's what it goes to. Not like financial futures, things of that nature. Well, yeah, it's clear Gihan doesn't even know what financial futures would be. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, He's yeah. not the brightest bulb. Well, yeah, the that's bunch. the the fun difference between these characters. It's like yeah, a com it's, it's the heart and the mind essentially in characters. Um, yeah, and it's not just that he doesn't happen to know what financial futures are. That that wouldn't make you dumb. No. But for example, when uh, he promises pickpocket, like no, I'll, I'll forget the money. Just please untie me. She ties the she she cuts the rope behind his hand, and he's like, "You bitch, you stole my money." And he doesn't wait <laughs> yeah. for her to untie his feet. Well, it's yeah. funny, too. It's all like, I want you to swear on your mother's life that you're not going to come after me with the money. And then she cuts it loose like, ah, give me the money. Yeah, it's yeah like, isn't uh, she like, that's what your mother's worth or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's what your mom's worth. Can, Great. You can <laughs> at least wait to get your feet cut. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> impulsive. He's an impulsive character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, during the conversation, he gets a call that his mom's in hospital. She's got the <gasps> diabetes and uh, oh, no. it's doing the thing which... Uh, it go doesn't like diabetes. It comes for your feet pretty early on. That's like one of the first things that goes. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know the process for why exactly, but yeah, she's she's basically like, we can't afford it. You fucking got rid of our insurance to pay off your debts, and uh, we got no money to pay for it. And she's got to work. Like that's just Ugh. a good point of view. Yeah, it just sucks. Um, he sucks yeah. so much. He does, and <laughs> you can tell he's desperately trying to find a way to work it, and then uh, as she's walked off, he's like, I'm gonna pay for this, I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be done. And, you know, as as a viewer, you're like, is he referring to the Squid Game? Oh my Weird goodness. Game. Oh no. It's Quorum. Quorum. And then we get a little bit of what I would call an awkward scene. We, we see the detective again, and he's in his little car, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go check on, um... I don't even think he uses his name. He's, yeah, he's like, hello, mum. <laughs> Heading over to his apartment right now. I'm going to read the literal dialogue for you guys. I'm sure he's fine. Oh uh, he dodges our calls all the time. You know what he's like. Uh, give a sec. I can call everyone who might know places he's holed up in before. Mm -hmm. If I can't reach him, I'll uh, report him missing tomorrow. And then, uh, he, he, I think the here comes the light. Yeah, I'm a police officer. Have you forgotten that? <laughs> <laughs> I will find him. <laughs> like, okay. See, so. I, d I didn't even notice that the first I wrote, and now that you read it out to me, I was like, oh, fuck, that's bad. Yeah, it's clunky, <laughs> and we don't hear the other half of the conversation. Doesn't yeah, I, th I think it would be far better if we could hear his mom on the other end. But, like, it's, yeah. it's so clunky, because there's some dialogue that yeah. I really love in this show. But that one, I was like, oh, man. Thanks for letting me know that he's to... looking for his brother, he's talking to his mom, and he's a police officer. It's like, I already knew he was a police officer, by the way. <laughs> I feel like when it comes to... I, I, didn't, you didn't, I didn't really get it in Train to Busan, but certainly in this, when it comes to expositional stuff, they really are blunt about a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they throw um, in a lot of reminders to flashbacks and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I don't know, maybe it's just a 
different style of writing. I don't know. Maybe it's just the particular writers of this. Not quite sure. Um, I know it gets it gets it gets bad to the point of cringe uh, in later episodes. But we'll get to those when we get to. Those. Oh, it sure does. So, for the sake of a future conversation about this, definitely brother, plant um, the seed for this one. Yeah. So he is living in a you know shitty cheap dorm studio apartment sort of thing. He mm-hmm. hasn't been there in at least a week, but he does generally pay his rent on time. But he hasn't this week. Yeah, and what we know is that this is concerning enough that a missing persons report is about to go out, but this is... He says what's usual is he ducks calls, but this is unusual, which is uh, curious, considering what yeah. we eventually find out. We'll yeah. have to come back to that. Um, but that is definitely... We're, we're, we're not only planting seeds for f- future conversations, but also just for people listening who have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it's just detective plotline has officially been The detective plotline has yeah. begun, and what an exciting and <laughs> definitely good journey it is. I can't <laughs> wait to see where it leads us. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm sure uh, it will lead somewhere good and not shit. Yes. Um, we'll be very anyway. excited. The interesting thing is that we are uh, now, now off to a scene I'd like to talk about, which is the... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so her name is uh, Sabiok, I think. Um, yeah, that sounds right to me. I'm likely going to call her main girl, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm going to call sorry. her Pickpocket. Pickpocket, yeah, you pick can call pocket. her that as well. Um, her number you call is also her 67 if you want. So you can also call her 67, I guess. Um, we so, can call her Andrew. Yeah, we Andrew, if you guys are up for that. You know what? We'll know who you mean <laughs> if you say Andrew. So that's, yeah. All right. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so she's been telling her brother that she's going to get him out of an orphanage for ages because I think, is it their dad died and their mum is in North Korea? Uh, yeah. 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 The dad yeah. died yeah. trying to escape, but interestingly, she doesn't tell that to him. Yeah, and she and like the other kids are saying she's a liar about getting him out of there. And uh, to be fair, this kid is on screen for like five seconds. He's pretty great. Um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely believe that shit, and and you just get a sense when watching this, like, oh man, all these different motivations that are all very, uh, very fair and understandable, yeah. and you can already see what the point of this episode is going to be. Um, I really like everything to do with her. She's, I, I, I have some minor issues with some of the other characterizations we'll talk about, but I think all the writing for her is pretty damn solid. Um, but yeah, we just. Uh, I'm uh, I'm tempted to say stuff like that. I'm just doing my best to not eventually just because every time we go over a good seat, I'll be like, I like this. This is good. Anyway, moving mm-hmm. on. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's real good. It's just very uh, clear. But now you might be wondering, didn't she get four million off uh, off Gihan? Like, what happened to that money? We're gonna find out very soon. <gasps> what? Because like, hey, the is that enough to be able to make a difference or whatever? Meanwhile, uh, Detective Man has gone back she to the. It. All in the Ouya. Yes. Oh, the, that's, a, that's a memory. <laughs> that's a <laughs> Um, So Detective Man found a card in his brother's room, the card that he remembers seeing in the, uh, in the office or whatever, and he's like... And hey, they the... flash back in case you forgot. Yeah, in case you forgot <laughs> that he's like, hey, policeman, <laughs> the guy who brought that card in, give me his address. And for me, I was just like, oh, is that going to be how this starts? You just happen to see that card right as it was put down, like... Okay, fine. Yeah. I'll let it have fine. Fine. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. He'd going be on. a bad detective cop if he didn't follow up on that bit of luck. So true. We'll take it. It's in like, character. We'll take, yeah, it's in character. Well, it you know what? Weird. The six of us can decide whether or not we think he's a talented detective or not by the time <laughs> we hit the end of this. Um, yeah, he's the we... wild card detective. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to Ali. And uh, he's off to like a industry works thing, just a place that they're making. I don't know what they're making, but it, you know, it's just a standard sort of uh, industrial stuff. Sort yeah, of. yeah, industrial stuff. They're making industry. They're, they're an industry factory. Yeah, or there um, it is an industry factory. And he immediately goes to his boss. And he's like, "Okay, enough. You got to pay me my my shit because uh, I need money." And then he's like, "Oh, you know, I can't pay any of you until I get money." And then he's like, "So what about all the work we've done?" And he's just like, "Do we don't we don't?" And I think he signposts here. He's like, "I couldn't even get money for the surgery." Lifting up his hand, and you can note, um, which by the way has been noted already. I forgot it. Um, when Songwoo passes him the money, 
they make sure to show you that Sangwoo notices that he's lost two of his fingers on his... Uh, is it left hand, I think? Left hand, yeah. I'll yeah. be honest, I did not catch that at all. I completely missed it. I didn't that. Well, either. so I no. didn't actually <laughs> either I, that first I didn't time, catch yeah. it until it becomes relevant, but when you rewatch it, they very clearly show you Sangwoo noticing it uh, in episode two, which is going to be... Uh, I oh, say okay. important, it's going to be informative for what happens later. Yeah, um, I, I noticed it later, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and so he's like, give me my money, you owe me my money, and the guy's like, ah, blah, 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 and then grabs uh, an envelope, and it's like, I gotta go, leave me alone, and it's like, very clearly, this <laughs> probably the money. Ignore the money in the yeah. envelope. <laughs> uh, they get into a scuffle, Ali pushes him, and he ends up having an accident himself, which is pretty fucking gruesome in terms of just, when it's a workplace accident, for anybody who's worked in any environments like this, you're like, ooh, that could probably yeah. happen. Ouchies. You, what Ouchies. he got, it happens he got, very quickly, too. Oh, yeah, shocking. yeah. He got herberted. Herberted. What's that reference? Yeah. Yeah. Monkey's paw? You, you just keep saying yeah, but like... I, <laughs> I want to give you time. Herberted. I want to give Vietnamese. you time. I want to give you a moment. I, we said monkey's paw. I'm not familiar yeah. with the monkey paw original that's story. A, that's all right. It was, it was obscure to begin with. Um, so it's well. fine. It's all good. But Ali grabs the money and runs the fuck away because he's probably now in serious trouble. Um, yep. If he hangs around. He just mm -hmm. obliterated his boss's hand. <laughs> hey man, he lost two <laughs> fingers. It's totally fair. Uh, as as the emperor would put it, right? He he, he took off your arm. You wanted revenge. Simple. <laughs> he cut off your arm. You wanted revenge. So then as we're back with Andrew, and she's. Uh, Talking about how <laughs> it's, it's like what's going on, and, and basically she's talking to a guy who was like, "Hey, you know, some things sometimes they just go to shit." Um, this summer went all the way to Dang Dong and got caught by the Chinese police. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work out, and so I think we're supposed to gather here that she gave him the money that should have been uh, stolen from Gihan that should have gotten her mother back, but it didn't work. And he seems like a fucking slime ball in this scene, this guy. He's, He's just like, acting like one. oh, jeez, <laughs> no, you know, some things just don't work out. Ah, how about uh, as that? As he pours his, like, pour-over coffee, yeah. all, like, bougie, like... Um, <laughs> and so, yeah. can, I, can I ask all a question here? I, Go for the, it. I, I don't know if this is a normal question to ask, or if I'm just totally going to look like an idiot. But you know what? I'm addicted to gambling, so I'm going to risk it. Whoa. Um, <laughs> what, it what do they mean when they say a pour-over coffee? Because oh, I don't, you idiot. I don't know oh, so you take ground coffee beans and you and you put it in a thing that goes over the pot and you pour filter, hot water yeah. over top. Okay, alrighty, it, that's what it and means. it drips through that way instead of through a little machine. <laughs> okay, it, it it so it's about the nature of percolation, sort of. Yes. How it kind of, okay, I gotcha. Because I'm not a coffee drinker, I don't mm -hmm. do that. So percolation. All right, that's that's a, that's a new word for me. Yeah, yeah, I knew about percolation. There was but I didn't a fish know what, what in the coffee. percolator. Perkelorman. That's an odd place for a fish to be. Uh, it is. <laughs> so uh, it's clear that the formula was used for that, and it would have been enough to make the mission go ahead. The mission fails, and then he says, "All right, I'm gonna need more this time." And she's very, um, very, very like, like, like to herself, uh, as we've seen of her this whole time. And uh, yeah, other yeah. than the knife she pulled to uh, release them from the restraints, we've really got nothing to go on in terms of, like, any kind of aggression. So just, yeah, she's just this chill girl who's just trying to make things work. And he's like, oh, so, you know, four million last time, this time, eh, probably at least 40 million. And she's like, ah. and And we as an audience just like, damn, well, she's really going to need that squid game, apparently, then or something. But before he could finish his sentence, she pours all the fucking coffee all over his face. And he's just like, blah, blah, blah. And then she pulls out a knife <laughs> and puts it to his throat. So it's definitely a... A, a, a moment of like, oh, she ain't fucking I'll around. Percolate your face. No, she certainly ain't. Um, if you fuck her over, she will kill you, uh, seemingly, or at least threaten it. And, and for context, just in case it helps anyone conceptualize it, forty million won is dollars, uh, U.S. dollars. <laughs> you cut you, out you on the cut most out the exactly the oh, most important number. Is dollars. <laughs> it's dollars. Uh, <laughs> it's just money. It's it's money. 40 no, no, million won. 40 right, million but... won is 34,000 United States dollars. Okay. I see. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, That's and so. A lot for a vacation. Yeah. And so she's going to try and get it, but before she leaves, she takes his wallet, naturally. She'd be a pickpocket. Um, and yeah, and then there's this 
seen that um, it was only on uh, additional watch throughs that I found it much more meaningful that um, we got a phone call from Sung Woo to his to his mum. He's just telling her everything is chill, everything's totally fine. And she's like, oh, it's going to be great. So proud of you. Everything's so awesome. Make sure you don't get me anything too expensive as a gift. You always do. And he's just like, always uh -huh. do. And then uh, I think she, he's like, there's someone else. And then she's like, what? And then there's a bit of silence. But then she gets distracted by someone who wants a squid. And so uh, the call just sort of ends. And you got to think, this is the call that he has with her right before a different scene. We're going to get to it very soon. But... Uh, you could call this a goodbye from Songwoo to his mum, basically. Yeah. Uh, I doubt he's uh, thinking too much, too heavily about a lot of great prospects. But before we get to that, we get back to the mum and she's just chill, and there's this fucking line that always caught me off guard that I thought was funny as hell. Uh, she's very proudly talking about her son to a customer, and she's like, not only yeah. is he's handsome, he goes to that university, he's single, and she's like, oh, he's single, you know, I, uh, man, like, like, how old is he? I know someone he might like, and the bub just says, he's got high standards. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh. The fucking woman's face is priceless. She's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Thanks for that. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, to... Uh, the dating scene in Korea is cutthroat, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's fucked up. And yeah, these two these two cops show up and they're like, "Hey, do you know your son's a piece of shit?" That's like, <laughs> <laughs> like excuse me, <laughs> like timing. What the fuck? He's got very high standards. This is the scene, by the way. If you look at the dub for it, it is absolute cringe. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! When I saw it, I was like, "Oh my God!" Then is that that better not be throughout? Jeez. Uh, but yeah, he, she, they just tell her that he's he's been doing a fraud, many fraud. Um, can't be doing that. Fraud master. And she's like, oh, you must you be mistaken. Fraud game. Fraud game, indeed. And yeah, and then we come back to him, and he... To this day, I'm not entirely sure about this, but with the combined brain power of the cast and the chat, I'm sure we'll figure this out. We see we see this. It looks to me that Songwoo is cooking something that's generating something that's probably going to oh. kill him. Yeah. Um, but what is it? What yeah. is he cooking there? I think I it's know. just fumes. Um, it but it looks like he's got garlic, some kind of like. <laughs> uh, well, whatever it is, I assume it's just making enough gas, and he's closed the door that he's planning on it. Uh, in the same way that you can fill your own car with um, your exhaust, right? That's the way people uh, tend to go. That's uh, a little bit more chill than like shooting yourself or taking hills charcoal, yeah. maybe coal, something like Would that. Would that kill him, or did he just leave it on because he's not paying attention to it? Like, no, I, no, that's the, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to kill himself. I assumed he was trying to kill himself with this. That's what I assumed too. But I, I he learned all the best ways to kill himself at SNU. I remember because there was an episode <laughs> of Paranoia Agent where three characters are trying to kill themselves, and they did the exact same method. Mm. Did it yeah. work? Um, no, everyone, it everyone's saying well, he's doing it to build up um, carbon monoxide. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just curious what this is. I'm not sure. It looks like a urinal cake, as some people have said. <laughs> like, but I'm not sure. What... <laughs> I bet if you burned one of those, it would probably be pretty bad. <laughs> a Anything that like goes the... in a toilet is not something you want to be smelling the fumes of. Um, little... Except water, I guess. Looks charcoal. A, bit, like... a lot of people have been saying charcoal. Uh... <laughs> so yeah. It was a dry raw. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it, it, it was <laughs> charcoal. I remember now. Burger meat. Just overcooked. Yeah, it looks a. Looks it's a a, just a typical McDonald's Jesus. patty. <laughs> 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 Fumes will kill you. <laughs> An Oreo. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah. Well, Oreo. um. Either way, it, it just it runs this way and. Uh, He's, he's having himself lots of drinks too, and he's just in his full suit in a bath. I think he's he's resigned to I gotta die because uh, my debts are too much. But just before this, this is all gonna be completing. He gets um, I think a knock at the door. I'm not 100 percent sure, but he gets he given does. a card, much like the one yeah, he would have gotten it's originally. A many knocks on the door. Yeah, probably because they've got some kind of surveillance. Nobody's like, ringing the bell. Um, don't, don't fucking kill yourself, play the Squid Game first. And then he was like, alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to play the Squid Game first. Honestly, they're, they're like, you're suicidal? That's perfect! Like, <laughs> <That's> awesome! <laughs> you have no idea how this is actually great news for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously, that's one down. And then, uh, we keep moving, and, um, Ali gives the money that he got from 
his boss in a very nice way. It's the fucking envelope's got blood all over it too. It's just awkward handing it to your wife. Like it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. How it's symbolic. Not, I'm also, gonna, nah. blood I'm also money. gonna need you to fuck off and go like, really far this, away. Ollie? Don't worry about it. Well, yeah, so his yeah. plan is for them to move back to, I think, Pakistan, right? Uh, and then uh, he'll follow them once he gets more money to support them. That's the idea, yeah. so. Motive very clear. Yeah. Uh, and then we see Gihan look into his, uh, the friend we saw in episode one, being like, can I just borrow four billion wad? Which, by the way, without knowing the the prices of all the money and stuff that's just funny it's like can i just borrow four million <laughs> yeah i just four million I, when he gets it helps me and a lot of people and really i guess in any other country where they don't use yuan as currency at the very beginning he gets how much was his allowance it was like ten thousand or something was his i think so. i was it 100 remember i can't remember yeah something like that but that helps a little bit for um kind of keeping track of uh, yeah Values. It's like okay, that's how much he gets for that. That's how much. Uh, okay, gotcha. All right. Um, and he tries oh, to convince fun him. Fun fact, because I just fun fact, because I just remembered it. When he's at the race track, he wins four million five hundred and sixty thousand one, oh. which is interesting. Oh, oh. 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 that's, that's a bit of a <laughs> 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 Spooky money. Yeah. Um, but the Fred highlights what a lot of Freds do, which is like, uh, we, we don't want to be lending money to each other. The friends aren't supposed to do that. And uh, <laughs> tries That's to, good uh, advice. Typically, yeah, you don't want to ruin a friendship with uh, owed money. It could get real bad. Yeah. But um, <laughs> If you owe a friend money, just expect to not get it back. <laughs> But he does like, and this is the thing. I can understand it. He is desperate right now because his mom's in hospital. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can absolutely believe it. But before you can crack through to him, his friend's wife comes out and she's like, "Get the fuck back in here!" And he's like, "Oh man!" And then she's just like, "Why are you making this place worse by smoking in it?" Like, I think that's her way of saying, "Please leave." <laughs> just like, yeah. You're a bad influence. It's like, hmm. Um. So yeah, he's running low on options, and um. He's having himself a little drink outside a convenience store, and who does he run into? Oldman. 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 Which, plant seed, there could be a reason for that beyond just coincidence. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's, and uh, he's just like, what are the odds? It's like, yeah, a friend lives nearby, it's nice to see you, and they end up having a chat. And even uh, Gihan's more than happy to give him a drink, but he's just very concerned about his health as well, which is just a nice touch. Like, please don't hurt yourself while having this drink, obviously, with the I don't know how it works for brain tumors. Maybe they don't like alcohol. Maybe they do. Yeah. Um, and they share a ramen thing with each other, which... Um, a block of ramen. I don't think I've ever yeah. had ramen that's not been turned into, you know, noodles. I'll do you one worse. I've never had ramen. Oh. Well, I've lived like a student. <laughs> I've met for many years. So ramen is just like, like the, the lifeblood of students. Because yeah, both get, of like, my that really like, authentic Japanese ramen, that shit's pretty good shit. I don't mm. know about Korean ramen. I don't know if they're any different, but yeah. There was someone <laughs> um, I knew in uh, in my university who had they they stocked up on it almost like as a meme, but they just had this enormous. It was like a refrigerator sized cardboard box that just had loads of. It was all ramen, and the bottom was a little gap, and you just pull them out, and <laughs> it's just yeah. like this will supply me for at least half a year. It's like yep. Cost like 10, 20 quid or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the meme with them is that they are really cheap and they're relatively filling. That is the yeah. Why the golden? I know yeah. the. I know the like about it and turn. Yeah, you know, it's stu it's cheap student food that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I have relatives who are in school and they they've eaten it. They eat it quite a, regularly. Some of them, but never I never had any myself. Yeah. Well, I, I Back just... in Washington State, there was a grocery store that said t ten ramen packs for like a buck. It was pretty yeah. nice. Damn. Okay, that's super cheap. How does that feel? <laughs> yeah, yeah money? exactly. That yeah, is I know. Super yeah. cheap. But it's extremely cheap, which is why, you know, you always hear college students eating it by the pound, so. Yep. Um, but oh. yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had it uncooked. Uh, have you guys? Me neither. No? When I, I was a kid, haven't. yeah. Only because it was just fun to eat things that crunched, but I didn't really do it regularly. Like spaghetti? It's bag <laughs> well, no, not quite to that. Not crunchy enough. Because that spaghetti isn't raw spaghetti isn't crunchy enough. Well, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, it's too crunchy. Oh, okay. Like, that's, okay. Mm. Yeah, it's the yeah. He's got high crunch standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah high crunch. Too I, crunchy. 
I, I think I might have even seen in a, in a YouTube video that they sell those separately, like already with the seasoning on it, like as as crisps or chips in the packet, mm -hmm. so you could just snack on those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... As as a kid, I would I because the we would have a jar where all the the uncooked spaghetti would be in, and sometimes I'd go up there and I'd take some, and I just I I because they were long rods of spaghetti essentially and i just put it i i'd slide it in my mouth and just break it apart as it went in you know tick 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 yeah like a american stereotype with a straw in your mouth but with a line of spaghetti the farming kind of yeah 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 the weed um like all tom sawyer you know he was in the gunslinger you mean yeah 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 he was uh yeah he's a gun guy and hey you guys gotta see that before the halloween fap Chat, all right. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about that movie with Sean Connery and the Invisible Man. Oh my Incredible God. Hulk, but not. Um. Anyway, they they're, they're talking about. Um, he basically says like, I don't really want to sit around and die, and that out here it's worse. The old man, and so uh, he's told Gihan, I'm going back. Just like, damn. Um, and we've already seen that several characters have big reason for going back. And um, the old man says, hey, I got to the line before you did in Red Light, Green Light, so I might have a shot. Um, and of course that he's he's dying, so it's just, yeah, you mm -hmm. just sit there thinking like, I mean, yeah, this is good a reason to set of any, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. I mean, if you're going to die of a brain tumor, I mean, fuck, I don't want to die of a brain tumor. At least it'll be quick. Yeah, uh, comparatively, quick sure. Plus, I can make some money, maybe. So, uh, he's got a lot to think about, but I think at that point in the story, he's still not Fully convinced because we still got something else to happen for him yet. But uh, you guys might be wondering, what about Thug Man? What's what Thug, Thug Man? Man? Yeah, what's he up to? The Thug, Thug, Thug Man is like, hey, where were you, fellow minion Thug person? And he's like, oh, I was busy. So you got to update me on <laughs> all the different <laughs> things. About, like, That's what's the dub. That's it's the exactly dub the noise he makes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's so funny? I don't know why that was so funny to me. Oh, I was just. <laughs> <laughs> the devil log. <laughs> South work. Jeez. And so Thugman's like, okay, but seriously, like we gotta, we gotta go back there ourselves and steal from them. And I thought when I first saw this, ooh, that'll be an interesting dynamic because I wonder yes. what that does for the rest of the story in terms of. But then I was also thinking, like, I don't know that they'll be able to get away with it, even in the end. You know, like if they turn up as a group, first of all, the car might drive past them because it's like, no, we pick up one person, so you fucked this up. But uh, if they all have guns, you, you'd think they have some kind of system to account for that. But we don't even get that, because the guy is like, look, we ain't doing this shit. You owe Big <laughs> Boss lots of money, and, um, well, things ain't looking good for you, buddy. And then he's like, huh? And then he refers to him as, um, Dioxu instead of Boss, and he's, he, like, even notices that himself. He's like, you little shithead. And, um, <laughs> if you know this guy, Thugman, he's very unstable. Um, probably wouldn't fun. gloat yeah. to him while in a car. Yeah, <laughs> within arms. He's the reach. last person that you want to have next to you with yeah. nothing to lose and desperate, and it has a knife. Yeah, last thing in his <laughs> face as you, as you lead him into this trap doesn't seem like a wise. Like, what did he expect to happen? You know, yeah. well, he, uh, clearly he was like, "I'm going to gloat, and then you're going to die." La la la. But I just be like, "You haven't thought this out. You've really not thought this through." <laughs> So he gets all these little tee he's out before he opens the door to ditch. You like, are, what? Idiot. You are one you thug in the it. way of this man in freedom, so that is not the place <laughs> to be. Right? Yeah. Get your tee he's out as you're running. Don't do one or the other. Um. So yeah, uh, the guy is like, lol, 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 and tries to leave, and Thugman just stabs the fuck out of him. Like, <laughs> yeah. he stabs him first like in the a... leg, and you're like, he might live, stabs him in his spine, and you're like, no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and then just goes to town on his, uh, when he flips him around. The guy is yeah, he stabs him a bunch. He just really likes stabbing. He's well, a um, seasoned stabber. Mm-hmm, very good at it. Um, but then a whole team of thugs show up, and it, for Oh, moment, wait, is... Well, I think he, how many, he's, you could say that this establishes that he is indeed a backstabber. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Da, 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 da. Well, yeah, it's literally, yeah. Well, he's also a thigh stabber and a chest stabber. That's true. He's a thigh and chest stabber. Um, he will stab you. What a dingus. And so all these people show up to be like, we're gonna fucking take your eyeballs, buddy. That he's like, bring it on. And then throws his knife at them and runs away. Uh, which I quite like <laughs> I in just, terms of just... By the way, I just... I want to point this out from the chat. 
Um, bold words for someone in stabbing range. A quote from <laughs> Thug- Thugidious Stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, isn't there a fucking news report that is something like, there's a quote that's like, oh god, he's going to stab me, and the quote is from Stabbed Man, or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not gonna stab me. Stab yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. I love the way he's willing to just, <laughs> just jump over just yeah. so easily without any hesitation. He throws the knife to distract him, and it's another one of those, I would rather jump off this bridge into the water than deal with all of you beating me to death, yes. Uh, well, yeah, because you can jump into the water and live. Absolutely. I'm going to take that. And he's very um, confident, because he doesn't hesitate. We don't see him like, oh god, I don't know if I want to. He just does it. And then, so we cut from that straight to this picturesque, this perfect little family photo. That's and, a really uh, great edit, by yeah. the way. I just think that's... Fun. It becomes very clear that that's his daughter, that's the ex-wife, and this is the new guy, and yeah, he just crosses in front of the frame like, eh, what could have been, potentially, you know, just, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he's, uh, we know he's at rock bottom now, he's asking his ex-wife for money. It's just like, <laughs> oh man. And she explains that all of her money comes from um, the current husband, and that they're not even doing that great, or at least she's not doing that great for money. Um, Feminism is dead in Korea. And there's a great exchange uh, between them where she tries to chew him out for, uh, because he mentions the hospital for his mom and stuff, and then she's like, um, uh, she, she's, she's pissed off at him still because of what happened between them. She had to, she was pregnant, she fainted, she had to crawl to get to the, the hospital. So something like that on its own, we're all going to be like, wow, dude, that's pathetic, that's your wife, you know, that sort of thing. But he just bites back in relation to what he was doing at the time, and it, it, it's almost a little bit vague. But he says, "I had to watch him die. No hospital. Like, mm-hmm. like we don't even show 100 percent what they're referring to here, but uh, we'll get more on that later. And it's what apparently would have split them apart, or at least partly to do with it. Um, but yeah, no chance. And she basically kicks him out. And unfortunately, it's around about the same time that uh, the current husband is coming home. Yeah, but before we get to that, I, I had a question. Maybe it's a title translation issue but she keeps referring to him as my kid's dad instead of my husband and i it oh. seemed a little odd that she would phrase it like that except for the fact that he's going to respond negatively to that you know i'm not sure why she wouldn't just say my husband yeah i don't know it might be a cultural thing mm-hmm. um not sure but i'm i'm just flat out not sure yeah i do not know um what do you think fringy yeah about what specifically? Wow. Mm. Rags just exposed uh, you. <laughs> no, we, were, we, were, we were talking about how... Yeah, um, bet you're embarrassed now. Uh, Gihan's uh, wife refers to the new husband as my kid's father. Right, like in terms of... I've just been skimming through the episodes trying to get some of these references together in my head. I think I That's skipped right over that part. Well, uh, so yeah, no, uh, um, Cavalo's point is that had he had she referred to him as my husband or something a little bit less incendiary, he'd have less reason to be like, "Why the fuck are you calling him the dad?" You know, but I'm that the could dad. be sure. a linguistic thing. Yeah, that just doesn't translate it could, well. It could, it could very well be that. Yeah, it's just a question I had. I think that's an interesting thing when we're talking about this show is that I'm pretty sure it's been said that some of the translations are not direct. Which is um, that there is like a little bit of um. Well, I can believe it when around, the English, you know? yeah, when well, the English when the doesn't English match the English titles don't match the English, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is super interesting because I care immensely about the quality of dialogue and the fact that this show can oscillate between fantastic and terrible is like, what's going on here? Is it the writer yeah. or is it the translator? It? Mm-hmm. I feel it's like a good question because know. if it if it is just that she calls him my kid's dad just so we can have that drama it seems a little you know cheap but if that's something naturally she would say and there's just no good translation for it then it's fine yeah i think it's the writing especially when we get our english speaking characters later and how they speak i i I, we have i have thoughts on that that would it be a different explanation i just i don't know that that is a definitive because i could believe it's translation or the writing definitive but yeah, I guess um, it could go either way. That's what I'm I mean, leaning towards, but it's tough to say yeah, with this I, kind of being the only show that, you know... I guess to well, be fair, we should probably be. say just because it's X writer doesn't mean all dialogue will be of a particular quality. It can, you know, 
sure, change. Yeah, what, yeah. Um, when it comes to the dub, it seems like they're really trying to f uh, fit the lip sync and stuff. So they use tons of those typical crutch words like "Am I right?" or "Understand?" or "Isn't that right?" It's just it's it's bad. So I feel like they were trying to fit the lips too much. And um, they had but, to use other the subtitles and the dub up. aren't the same, so this is more of a subtitle. Mm. This isn't this but, yeah. that thought doesn't have anything to do with the dub. Oh, okay. Um, so he's booed out, and uh, the daughter notices that it's raining, obviously, and that there's no umbrella out there. Ripperoni. Um, so it's just I think the show is like giving her a bit of a reason to be invested. That'll come up in a second. The dad yeah. goes out, and he's like, "Here's the money you wanted." And I honestly, I I was like Gihan watching this. I was like, "Oh, it's nice of him." Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he's like, "Thank you," and I will pay it back. And he goes, "No, no, no, no. This is I don't think he says it as explicitly, but he's basically buying something. He's like, "Go forever. Don't contact the yeah, family again. Don't come back." To and, which Gihan immediately punches him in the I face. I think I think it's a perfectly fair very... response in terms of how angry yeah. he like that would piss me the fuck well, off. Well, of course, yeah. Gihan is yeah. note here that Gihan is very, very, very upset at the idea he will not be able to see his daughter. Yeah, yeah. He loves her quite a and, bit, and the <laughs> idea that this other episode. guy is like, <laughs> here's here's what you care uh, about. Money. Wait, hold on. We, we're going to talk about... I, I don't like that you just threw that in there. Like, oh, until the final episode, cough. We'll have to talk about that later, We'll get, we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... I don't like it when people impugn Gihan. It's, it's okay, uh, Fringy. A lot of like people... You don't like it. A lot of people hate the final episode. Chat's going to be yeah, raring for sure. us to talk about it. We'll get there. <clears throat> we'll get there. See, they're revving up already. <laughs> <My God>. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, all excited over there, Capolo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Freeze excited too. We're all excited. I think a lot of people are like, when do they get into the juicy topics? Like, hey, there's lots of preamble. We're we're almost Can't done with episode get two. There. We're getting there. We're almost done with episode two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you, we're almost you, back to the squid game. <laughs> if you can believe it. I don't think I could be here for all of this. Like, I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Fucking really. Come on, just go to horse places, Fringy. <laughs> really, wow. working on a Wednesday. You don't have to. Thought, yeah, I thought it was some kind of for me. It's like, sorry, I have to work, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, Disgusting. I know. So, oh my god, it's, it's, hello. A bit late for some reason. Uh, hey. It was fine. We're probably going off to work like Mel. Um, hey. Yeah, I, I just to summarize, I, I like the idea that this Gihan learns from this guy that he believes he cares more about the money than his daughter. That's what's pissing him off so much, I think. Um, when of course he has no context for the life Gihan is living, and he is trying, and just the idea that this guy, he obviously sees him as a form of, you've, you've taken a life from me, in a sense, and just uh, seeing him be like, his money, go away, it's just like, oof. But the thing <laughs> is, in that bout of anger, in that expression of emotion, you might feel pretty righteous in that fuck you even throws the money back at him, which uh, it just shows the integrity of like, yeah, fuck you, that's not, that's not what this is about, just like, oh, I want money, leave my door. But then his daughter in the distance says, Dad, why? Like, oh. Why did you telepunch my dad? Because he was acting a fool. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so um, I think you can call that rock bottom. That is about as low as it gets. He owes everything. Yeah. His yeah. mom is dying. His daughter just saw him beat up her own, like, well, the current uh, dad, I guess. It's just like, oh, fucking hell. So yeah. he, he goes home in the rain, pretty fucking miserable. And here comes Detective Man. Like, hey, buddy, you had the card, right? My uh, brother had one too, and he's gone missing. Needs some help. And there is what I think would be a pretty important line. We'll try and come back to these as we sort of reach conclusions about what the show is trying to say. But he says, uh, "Why do you think I'd be useful to you or anyone else?" Mm-hmm. It's like, oh man, he's definitely yeah. got them. Now mm. he's doesn't even care to the point where he's like, nah, nah. I just made that story up. Just fucking leave me alone. Yep. And he commits going back to the Squid Game, and you're like, "Oh yep. my goodness!" And, and uh, as it turns out, go. a lot of our characters have made the decision. To yeah, all the back. ones we've been looking at in this episode are all going back, and they have a nice little yeah. edit where they're all <clears throat> sort yeah. of in the same position but different locations and stuff. Yeah, it's a um, cool shot. And uh, mash cuts. Yeah. Oh, and also something that I literally just noticed as I was skimming through it: as soon as the car pulls up before Gihan, and then the door opens, the red light switches to a green light. That has to be on purpose. Ooh. It's just like Spider Man. Yeah, just like Spider Man in <clears throat> that great scene. Nobody's beaten that, that great scene from that really scene. awesome movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that really great movie. That's right. Yeah. 
man, that movie's. I also great. feel that that movie is relatively Spider-Man good. Yes, action film. It yeah. sure is good that we got a great Spider-Man movie. Yeah, what's happening? And hey, look, he's got a great arc so far. It's um, right, gonna yeah. flip over. <laughs> Talk about Spider-Man again. <laughs> Why do you <laughs> Spider-Man when Spider-Man is coming out? Yo, what's um, up, Spider-Man? Spider-Man would fucking dominate at Squid Game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's this in- supposed to be poor, so put him in fucking Squid Game and he can take all the money from everyone else. Yeah, there you go. Kill yeah. There's Fine. this incredible um, meme somebody did where he superimposes Tobey Maguire into all of the Squid Games and he shoots, <laughs> he shoots the web into the, into the robot girl's eyes and makes it to the end. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. I'll have to find so, it and link it to you later. Yes. I love it. He might well uh, just... still fuck up the honeycomb one, though. That one might trip him up. Maybe, yeah. Someone in chat is saying, essentially, why are you talking about Spider Man? The Eternals is coming out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Something that somebody has definitely said on <laughs> I, I was talking to my, uh, my, uh, my dad the other day, and uh, he was asking about you know stuff we've seen, uh, movies and things. And I was like, man, I don't. I'm so glad to just be done with Marvel, sort of. <laughs> I, there's a part of me that's just, I need a break. I'm so glad <laughs> that we don't have to cover all this what if crap. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, crap, but we, we got shit coming out. I was, was going to say, as well. much as we no, don't have no, to cover it, what if, we've got Eternals, Hawkeye and Eternals. Hawkeye no and Spider Man. Yeah. I know there's yeah. stuff coming out, but I'm just and like, then next year, not... there's like five movies and shows. I like this break, and I don't. I'm not rushing to it. It's a nice little lull for sure. Yeah, you've yeah, been having is. loads of Happy Meals in a row. And we're enjoying some Korean food for now, but we're gonna go back to Happy <laughs> Meals soon enough. Yeah. Um, Asian food's great. Asian food is delicious. Uh. So there's shit. two details left about this episode, <laughs> and both of them bother me. <laughs> so we're, we're doing Same. I would say we're doing pretty good uh, with episode one and two it's good stuff but um, they show Someone us the right. one the the, uh, the Andrew that's, yeah <laughs> we're really <laughs> coming into that what's, what's up I gotta stop you right there someone is saying that I say man weirdly man? do I say man weirdly how um, it can sound a little bit it? like the, you extend the A man man like that, Man. yeah. Because now that my mind is thinking about so it, I'm, I've M-Y-A-N. painted the sample. Mian, 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 <laughs> Mian. Is that how I normally say it? I don't. I don't I, know. Because of, of course, it's not weird to me. So, but and now that well, I'm thinking about, no, it, isn't weird to me either. But now it is. <laughs> you know <laughs> it is. No, it, it isn't, is. Mian. So, I, so who knows? <laughs> It seems like I'm missing what, the Andrew what, what reference. We, okay, so we're calling Pickpocket Girl Sabiak. She's called Her Andrew. Name is Andrew. Okay, it's yes, Andrew, thank you for Andrew Ryan. Her name <laughs> the is The famous Andrew. socialist. The Just famous Andrew. socialist Andrew Ryan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, he was big into the collective stuff. So she, <laughs> unlike everyone else, just sort of goes with like the, yep, yeah, knock me out, bitch. Let's do it. She seemingly puts like her her collar i'm doing it right now above above her face and that protects her <laughs> entirely and that's good enough yeah no <laughs> we need to about. we need to look at like i'll show it to you guys the gas this shit looks thorough like yes, yes it does what does it is it flows i'm going to it's a very Gaseous gas. This That's gas, a, that is this, a gassy gas. If there ever was a gas that gas. Well, I will. Gas. What I'm. I. They must have borrowed this gas. Look at that. From oh, yeah, yeah, they did. No, that's a gas right there. That's gas. That gas. is that is malignant level gas right there. <laughs> now, this is let me tell you. Let me tell you as a. Let me tell you as a German. That's some good gas. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, now, oh. Somebody, oh, somebody, oh, in, uh, somebody oh, in chat oh, said oh. she helped. Someone in chat said she held her breath, dot, dot, dot. Now I'm hoping those dots are cappers, because if it was just holding your breath, and it was that so, easy... I was about to say, man, like, chatter, like don't, don't, you, don't you understand the problem? So it's, it's not... It wouldn't be that that is a, um, an impossibility, that you can't have gas go into your system by holding your breath. It's like, no, we know that. That means the problem changes into, wait, squid game wow. operators. People just have to hold yeah. their breath. That's it. Because mm, if people yeah. know that they get gas the first time, the second time around, yeah, just so, hold your mouth shut. 
You need to have it. Why didn't the driver just pull his mouth shut? Again, to clarify for that particular chatter, whoever they may be. And again, the dot 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 may have been your version of Kappa, so I'll grant you that. I'd imagine not. Dot 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 is usually I'm annoyed now. Yeah, that's the only explanation. So the reason I, I assumed they showed us that she did that with her mouth was to account for the fact that this gas is the kind of gas you can't simply hold your breath to avoid. It, it, it will fill the car for a while, is what I thought the point was. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not... Well, there is... A, they, it doesn't fill the car for a, an incredibly long time because they do show him rolling down the windows, letting it clear, and then rolling them back to up. To be fair, though, we don't off. know how long that, that passage is, necessarily. Right. That's true. That's true. Good old montage. Though I think cuts. he wouldn't want to wait there incredibly long, you know, dressed in a pink outfit with a car full of drug people. <laughs> I mean, it's it's at night. It's the windows are rolled up. Maybe they're darkened. You don't know what's going on in there. Um, but no, you're right. It, that, that's what happens. Um, so basically, the the point of this is that she's now awake. It's like, mm, okay, <laughs> mm, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> And this is the thing, if you have little things like this, you're just like, I guess I'll let it go, but um, I feel as though it, they, these may stack as we go, who knows. Um, mm. And before you can deal with that, you've got Detective Man is following Gihan having gotten into that van, and uh, apparently... And he's doing a very bad job at it, but the movie don't He care. is close yes. as fuck, if you've watched anyone talk yes. about tailing. <laughs> Fucking Simpsons oh Hit and Run isn't even this bad, they'll probably tell you, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Look how close he is! That's ridiculous He's for like right tailing on your cars. Ass. Especially <laughs> when they're in the more remote area. Or yeah, nobody's around. Just, nobody's no, fucking no, around. Sorry. Now, I'm not sure if you... I mean, you guys, you might be reminded when the remastered Grand Theft Auto comes out, the spooko meter in the tailing missions. Yeah. <laughs> That spooko meter, oh boy, that is a big fucking spook. It's just <laughs> like in terms of how close he is. There are lots of movies about this, and there are lots of movies where people are being tailed and they can tell because they're like, I can see that fucking car is following us. It's not hard. <laughs> and you've got to assume. Well, and also, because we're about to get into the next episode on <gasps> just an isolated fucking road, this same car yes. is being <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, oh, he must, he must he must have a house out here too. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must he also must be, be going to this port at two thirty in the morning. He yeah. must be working well, for Squid Game. Like the, that's the thing. Uh, I had a friend I was watching this with who was not on the cast, but uh, was very much loving it. Thought it was great, but that was the first moment where he went, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> uh, specifically, this this part right here. He and comes running straight up where there's no at, one else. Right? <laughs> that is heavily that suspicious. Extremely that suspicious. So yeah. bad. Us. And of course, if anyone what? needs us to it's... explain it, this is bad because it means that they should be able to account for this and prevent Detective Man from getting any further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you now, think they'd have some guards posted or something? Well, you think you'd be just having basic. Yeah, you like, think I they should would. Look. Yeah, I should use my eyeballs. Now, what? No. I have heard praise of this from several people that I, that I enjoy the company of saying Detective Man was rewarded for his great intelligence throughout this season. And I, I... No. <laughs> 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 Detective oh, Man no, is a lie. roller coaster of competence, we'll say that. <laughs> well, so this is literally yeah. like the third or fourth scene or whatever with Detective Man, and we're not doing good. We are we are lucky, and we are reckless, so let's yeah. hope it gets better, I guess. But um, it just keeps going. He keeps following them all the way in to another the show, Yeah, In another show, he would have to turn in his gun and his badge, because he's a loose cannon. Oh, and here's something <laughs> nice. as well. Um... The the car that he tails seems to be the last car that like comes in. Lucky, true, yeah. yeah. That's Ooh, I lucky. know. Didn't he get? He wouldn't have got caught in the caravan. True. Yeah, imagine if he got caught in the caravan. That's <laughs> yeah. There's a that man be behind us. Be people got to do. Excuse me, this is not your caravan. Can you leave? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to play it cool. Wait, I thought it's this was a funeral procession. I'm sorry. I, I got I was up showing somewhere. solidarity it's, for the deceased. It's really <laughs> super simple. When I saw this the first time, just this shot here, I was like, no, there has to be gods. Why aren't there gods that would see him? Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. 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 But, but no, there are. He just fucking sneaks up on the fucking car. The guy doesn't look in the mirror. If he did, what? he's fucked. He's hiding behind a little guard station. Yeah, it, lo it looks like there? a place where guards would be. 
it was just it's hanging. weird that there isn't. Yeah, it's weird that this guard station is Sans Guard, considering <laughs> this operation. You know? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, someone said, is that why Drinker isn't here? If you watch Drinker's video, he makes it very clear the detective plotline is not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which is a shame, because yeah. I really want to like detective I love detective bunch. stuff, yeah. I really, yeah. yeah well, I it's like, my favorite I genre so cool. of anything. I love detective stories. I want this detective to be like, <laughs> I'm going to really try and get to the bottom of things. I, like, I want things to work well for our detective character. I want to call no. this guy Detective Fanning and find out how many people in chat will get the reference. Can I just... Oh, are you referring to the actress Dakota Fanning? No. And how she too disappeared? <laughs> she too is a detective. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, Wait, I, I had a quick thought before we get to uh, other things that happened. Look. Well, so I just wanted to look at, look at this shot and just look <laughs> how awfully he's doing this. He's literally lined up with the fucking mirror. Like... If the yeah, guy... that one was a big oof. Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating, because the thing is, you're in a queue. There's a good chance you are looking around, and if you just looked in the mirror, it's like, oh, yeah. there is a guy attaching himself to And you have nothing to else car. to do. Oh, man, yeah, that, yeah. that honestly, that would have made you look at the mirror, because it would have gone by it. It would have been a disturbance. Yeah, it your... yeah, it's a flash yeah, of red light, because the brake lights are on, too. Yes, Mr. Taco, you are correct. Thank you. Anyway. Um, um, yeah, what were you going to say? Sorry. Uh... Oh, just, okay, so let's say uh, the car drives off and he starts tailing them. What happens if he pulls them over? Not saying he... he would necessarily, but if he's like, okay, you're driving a car in a strange pink gas mask outfit and there's a bunch of drugged people in the van, <laughs> what happens then? Are you, wait, are you suggesting that that could have been a thing he could have done? Like pull them over uh, and just get them He could have. Yeah. Um, it, I'm curious to know what would have happened in terms of protecting the integrity mm. of the game. Not that it was necessarily this, what he definitely should have done, oh, but I, you're I want to know how what do they account happened. for this, if that happens. Yeah, because they've no been idea. doing this for, uh, some time. We'll talk a while. About it, but a while. Yeah, a long yeah. time. Um, long and time. it also I... makes me wonder why the driver is still wearing the mask the entire way he's driving. Um, for similar reasons, it's a little suspicious. Perhaps. Oh no! I just realized this is the next scene. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Look, hang on, before we, before we go there, did he already contact the police department chief guy? It, oh, it, that's that that really annoyed me too. He texts him, "Hey, I can't come into the today. I'll let you know more details later." Instead yeah, of I'm saying, saying that's yeah. all he says. "I'm going undercover, a really important mission. <sighs> I need. I'm going to need backup. Where I Here's am. where I." Yeah, yeah, here's where I what I last was. You can find my car. That's evidence, at least. Yeah, I'll send a picture of this weird line. At there are license plates attached morning. to these vehicles. License plates. Yeah. yeah. Okay, someone says the police are in on it. That the show is about corruption. I don't uh, know that's established at all. I don't know that. But well, the thing is, is that if you are part of the police and you're about to go on this undercover mission, it might be worthwhile also, to like let them know. Well, yeah, and and Cap's point stands. You still have to account yeah. for good cops. Yeah, how do exactly. you do that? Because this is a good cop, so you're gonna have to account yep. for this guy. Um, anyway, at the very least, this is a lucky cop. <laughs> oh yeah, so he, he um, you have to account yeah. for lucky cops. Yeah, the vehicles are all lined up in this ship. He climbs out, and then he's just keeping a lookout. And he's lucky that the side of the car he is on is not being monitored while the others are. They've got yeah. people just sentries looking. Um, there is so many things to this scene that are kind of broken in terms of luck. We have to go one by one. <laughs> so the way this works yeah. is uh, everyone gets out at the same time, the drivers, and then they are supposed to enter the back of their cars and scan everyone in them to log them into the system, presumably. Um, yeah. This is possible because <laughs> of a chip or because it scans their DNA, DNA or something? That's it's got to be a chip. It's I, a mad... I don't know if it has... I don't know if it do you has think to. The, it's just... I I don't know. Because if it were uh, a chip, all in the exact car. same spot. Why? How? What would it scan for if not something? Well, they do try two part. Remember, that's he tries one side of a neck and then he tries the other side of the neck. Um, I wonder if that's. I'm just yeah. curious what it would be detecting to identify them if oh, not something. Well, so because we're because this is a fantasy thing, we could argue it's just technology that detects DNA of person being scanned and then logs them in. Or I don't know. Um, like, is this is this a fantasy world where? Well, they can have. Oh, like, they, did you see that a, doll robot? I mean, well, that's just, you know, that, um... That well, is, I mean, that is like pretty high-tech. That could be considered science fiction, tech. like, high-tech, yeah. Well, and, and I was gonna say, is you it? could have a grounded story with one piece of sci-fi tech. You could do that. Yeah. 
You so, could. You could. Uh, prestige I, it's, it's kind of does that. I guess it's it's just not that consequential, really. Yeah, because yeah, they could have been scanning is, anywhere else. They well, could have scanned anywhere else. It's not like it's, you know, well, they just yeah. chose these things scanning behind the ear for style, or...? You're right. They do, they, sometimes they scan behind the ear, sometimes they scan the neck, though. So if it were a chip, it would be really weird if they're placing it in different areas of the body, right? And you have to guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. No chips are mentioned, and there's no scar either, so... I think it's just they scan them. Hmm. And we have to believe okay. that it detects... Uh, and it's not sure. just detecting them and scanning... It, it like, it combines... It tags them within the system, There's a right? log. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it has That's to be odd. a log for it to match. It doesn't really matter whether it's a chip or not, but I just... I assumed it was a chip. Well, so the reason why I probably would have it against it is because um, that's more evidence to find. You know, it's like, I have a chip in my body, explain that shit, and be like, yeah, that is weird. Mm. What the fuck, why do you have a chip? Yeah, I guess... Well, no one knows they have it, but yeah, I know. I get what you're saying. Um, well, there'd be a... a yeah, it's, it's a... It, you If you chip for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people... What, some of them are going to notice a scar, or yeah, especially if they can if they can yeah, volunteer out, smart. and then uh, yeah. two yeah. hundred of them are like, we all have chips, we all have the same story. That's very dangerous <laughs> for this institution. Yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. physical evidence would be unwise. Yep, I see. Now, what you're saying. all of the side doors open. This is important. They open first so that he can climb in and pretend to be a knocked out person, and then the driver doors open. <laughs> now, this is important because had the driver doors opened first and they open the side doors themselves, he's fucked. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that no didn't chance. happen. Um, so then he <laughs> pretends to just be just be down and out. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird because our guy is scanning all the people in this truck, and for some reason he takes so long that by the time he gets to our dude, it seems like most people are kind of done. And uh, this is important again because had he he doesn't do this, but had he screamed, gone oh my god, blah, 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 yeah, really loud, mm -hmm. yeah, um, mm -hmm. our guy would be fucked again. And only... it's pretty reasonable that somebody would do that. Oh, absolutely. I don't know why he doesn't. This is huge. We've yeah. got someone is awake right now, and he's not scanning in the system. This is a huge mm -hmm. breach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Instead, he just goes, rrr, 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 and then he's like, oh, you got me, <laughs> blah, 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 and just gets strangled <laughs> and dies. And it's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And you can't oh, help yeah. it at this point. Even, be like, even man. before that, when he comes out from under the van, he slinks from one van to another. And it's like everyone is still in the car. Like they're looking in there. Like uh, there's people up at the, there's a higher level of people with guns looking down on everything yep. who probably could yeah, have seen it. There's people too. who are sitting in the driver's seats of every van there. And it's just, oh. they get, cut to this big shot of like all the cars and just one of them is doing this rock back and forth, back and forth. It's like, really? <laughs> oh, no one's noticing yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, nobody's noticing. Yeah. Like, hmm. Nobody's noticing, hey, why is it taking that one guy so long to fucking do well, this? At least that happened next to the first aid kit. Yay. Um, and then, we're supposed to believe, right? Everyone's already <laughs> gone up to, um, to just, you know, we're done. That's the job. It's real quick, actually. You go scan, 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 done. Everyone's yeah. up. You see all these people, look at them all lining up. One guy's missing. He manages to strip himself down, the guy down, and then reclothe back up both clothes, of them. Yeah. Which Both I do not them, want to yeah. underestimate how long that would take in an enclosed space. He was space. wearing a button-down shirt, too, so there's yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and just imagine trying to do that inside a van filled with people. Like, you're just, <laughs> just awkwardly like... Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah. Um, and none of them wake up because of that. It's like, damn, those drugs are some strong shit. Well, I can believe, I can believe that. that. They, yeah, that's fine with <clears> me. <throat> um, and so he then climbs out after it shows that the people have only just made it to the top of the stairs. It's like, are you telling me he did this in, like, five seconds? Like, <laughs> no fucking... This isn't hit bad. Like, you can't do yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah, I takes, can't undress that fast, and I don't wear clothes. And the, mm -hmm. and look at the clothing mm -hmm. they're both wearing. These these are not the simplest of outfits. Like, you gotta do yeah, a lot of... Yeah, these are, uh... <laughs> and so, um, he puts his own ID on the body and tosses him out into the water. Just the moment he lets him go, someone goes, hey, what you doing over there? He's like, oh yeah. man, I'm seasick. It's like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, fine. <laughs> and the, okay. the next quick, quick question, quick question is, why does he dress him and put the ID on him? That's gonna. It's an interesting thing you say there. Uh, we can assume mm. he just did it for whatever reason, but it's gonna be relevant in episode six, seven. Uh, seven there, right. I have a lot to say about that. Yeah, no, uh, I guess. that'll. We'll put a pin in this. He put his clothes and his ID on him, and then he dropped him out. 
I wonder if that'll be relevant later. We'll, we'll think about it. We'll, 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 <laughs> it'll be ready for conversation. Don't worry. Um, Don't now, worry. if Don't you were hyper suspicious of this circle doing some weird shit, would you not just go, let's have a look at the camera. Let's see what he was doing. And you'll find that he's tossing a body overboard. <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> what the fuck? Hmm, yeah. You think that with all those people monitoring things, because they have devoted so many, so much of their personnel and manpower to cameras and monitoring the contestants. And for good and reason. And keeping it all hush hush. And, and every in in the room of every one of the staff, there's cameras too. So I'm like, man, how do you get away with fucking anything here? And uh, that's a good question. And Not only, just, yeah, he gets let off. They're like, just uh, just report to your place, like a good boy. Like, oh. And I guess there there was an earlier shot when we when we first saw him slinking behind the vans. There were people up on the higher level. They had guns, and they were just facing yep. towards the vans, standing there. And I guess they all left by the time he had to pull a body out and throw it overboard. So, yes. um, we're really not doing great at this point, and this is barely into the detective story. Uh, I'm he sure is, it's all up yeah. here. He's earned his way fully into this with complete horseshit, and it's just, as a viewer, you're like, mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's in, you know, so there's that, we'll see. I um, mean, the luck, but also, like, he takes so many insane risks that I don't understand the motive or reasoning for it all. It's not just that, it's not just luck, it's that, why would he take the time to redress the other body? Well, when... listen, his heart's in the right place. He wants them to be clothed. <laughs> I suppose you could argue maybe it's easy. Well, you could just toss the clothes overboard. You don't need to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't know, man. I really don't. Uh, it'll come in handy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it'll come very in handy. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what was this? That storyline, by the way, I was already annoyed with how it was beginning. So I was like, mm. but um, I thought already that we should be spending the B plot on having one of the members of the Squid Game team, if you will, like one of these guys growing a conscience enough to decide something different, and we yes. could follow one of them on their day to day, so we get an insight on how the back end works. But Big also, agree. I totally yeah. agree. Um, and we can do, a, we can intertwine a bit. But I saw someone in chat. I don't know if this is true. Someone in chat mentioned that the detective plotline was added on as a request from Netflix to be able to make the series longer. Man, if that's true, mm. <laughs> because oh, he barely yeah. interacts with the plotline, the main plotline at all. Yeah. Um, um, if if true, you still hope he could do a better job. Oh, absolutely. It, but but uh, yeah. I'm just curious if that is true, because, man, it kind of explains a lot. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I was really hoping. Oh, I still think it could be very, very interesting if we follow it one person who didn't choose to come back and is maybe trying to figure out what what's going on with the organization and you know you know instead of a instead of a random detective who find the card if someone who didn't choose to come back is going to the police and trying to contact other people that were involved and we see to what extent the squid game organization can and how they try to cover everything up because you have to assume, because this game goes is this is not the first time they've played this game, that they, you know, that it, this has happened before where people try to report them. So like, how do they deal with it? I would like to see that. Yeah, you have to have a lot of because you're this is a shockingly massive operation. I, I don't think that could be understated enough. This yeah. is not some small covert. I mean, I guess it is covert in technicality. But mm -hmm. this is quite the um, this is quite the operation. A lot of people yeah. in chat are saying it was confirmed in an interview that he was a last minute addition to the show. Which holy shit, man! You well, feel it? That explains it. so <laughs> much. <laughs> that explains, so that much. explains a lot because uh, we'll be talking about him more as we go. I've seen someone say as well. Doesn't it make sense that he would put the clothing clothing and ID on him so that it's like an identified body instead of being something that's just mysterious and strange? Um, well, when it's your ID, well, the problem doesn't that is raise more if questions. The squid game people, yeah, like if the Squid Game people find us, like, wait, why didn't we? Why weren't we told that a cop had snuck on board? Yeah, because mm -hmm. if if you're supposed to assume from that that someone tossed him also, overboard. Presumably, I know it's a cop game... because this is the ID of the cop. Yeah, that's how simple it, it works. And also, right? yeah, they wouldn't look the same either, right? If they're ID and they've got the photo. And plus, yeah. surely you know who your employees are. 
Yeah, that's like, a big you thing. Would know. <laughs> yeah, as you much know, as they you do the whole to show their faces to each other, but you know who they are, right? Yeah, there's no way that the higher ups don't have everyone's details on yeah, files, exactly. which we know they do. Absolutely. I mean, they have for the contestants. Well, for pay. I mean, you, <laughs> well, no yeah, way. also that, yeah. I mean, you've <laughs> gotta know who they are. Um, and yeah, they show us uh, the process this time, kind of, so we can understand how they get from A to B, but um, something again that's just kind of like, mm, all right, is that while they're taking the clothes off, uh, Andrew, she pops the knife into a pocket, and then when they put her clothes back on for the Squid Game stuff, she pulls it out of the pocket, and it's like, wow. Yeah. Man, risky. And I will, like, I will admit, yeah, she's a pickpocket, and they can be very fucking stealthy. Um, but I wasn't impressed by what they showed us. I kind of wish they didn't show it so overtly. When she drops yeah. it in, she drops it in, like yeah. yeah. You notice when things in. fall into your pocket of that, that weight. You feel that, yeah. That wasn't stealthy mm -hmm. at all. Um, or if slick. they hadn't showed it, and then she just produced it later, I live left it to the imagination. Like, oh, the pickpocket thief found a way. Okay, I can believe that. Well, how we know something else was smuggled in? I could have believed that she did that. Because <laughs> yeah. the um the knife is really small. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Instead, they show that, and it's like, mm. Mm. yeah, that leads us into um, reawakening. Ooh. Because, and I think they say that there's a ninety-three percent return rate. Um, pretty high. <laughs> that is pretty yeah, high. That is pretty high. Yeah. And I, we have the old man's POV this time as he wakes up, and Gihan's already there. Like, hello, buddy. We're back. Hello. <laughs> hello. Want some ramen? Mm. Yes, sir. Oh no, I haven't got the subtitles going yet on this one. Damn. You idiot! How am I supposed to know oh what's happening? Goodness. God, you fool. You're not. Um, it's up to your imagination. Yeah, it almost feels a little bit weird as a show, but I think the viewers at this point are like, I'm ready for some next games. Let's do it. Even though it's just like horrible. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I guess they're all kind of like, they're a bit more determined now, instead of just terrified animals running around headless sort of thing. Now they're like, right, we're here to do a job, like, well, we're gonna win. We have chosen to come back, it's, we're in it for, we're in it to win it now. And, um, something interesting happens. They, Ooh. we see an effort to make teams is starting to happen. It's like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because, uh, Makes Ali sense. and Songwoo show back up. And I think um, uh, Jihan is kind of making a joke about it, but he's like, we're, a, we're an army team, I'll be the sergeant, uh, Sungwoo can be the lieutenant or something like that, because he's smart. Ali will be our new recruit, and the old man can be like the... He's like the, just the old guy who's been in the here old, for years. Yeah. The old general man, mm -hmm. something like that. And it's, all, it's, it's just pretty chill and wholesome, and you're like, man, I'm sure yeah. nothing bad will happen to any of these people. Yeah, I'm, yeah I hope nothing <laughs> bad happens to these people in these games of life and death. It'll be great. Yeah, and they they spot the girl. She's like, "That's the girl who wanted to see a kid or whatever." Then the old man is like, "Do you think she named her kid yet?" Like, because they're just like, "Who the fuck knows?" Because she's a uh, who who knows what she really cares about. Like, um, but yeah, Sangwoo does not have his glasses this time around, so um, much harder to understand that he's a smart man now. I have to rely on his like dialogue and stuff. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then I think at the same time, interestingly, uh, Thugman is like, Hey, Andrew, join our team. And Andrew's like, I don't trust fucking anyone. That ain't happening. And she even says, there's a back and forth that I found pretty interesting. Um, she explains to his current set of people that they shouldn't be following him because he's in here because he was stealing from all of his minions until he tried to steal from the boss, and that's what got him in trouble. And she said, in a derogatory sense, do you know what everyone would call you? And he's like, what? And she says, a damn revolutionary. I assume that refers to, like, he's almost redistributing the wealth. Because his response is, a uh, communist bitch. And he goes to, like, hit her. Which I found a little confusing. I was just like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, that's not what I... I thought she said it slightly differently. I don't know if you have different subtitles than I did, but... Um, maybe. Uh, what did you gather from it? Because I was a little bit confused by it. Uh, like, I thought the idea was that, like, in my hometown... Like, in your hometown, revolution. what? You cut out? Oh, am I cutting out? Try again. In your hometown... <laughs> yeah, like, in North Korea, they would have called you, like... Uh, I forget, it's like... 
I forget. I forget. I'm the impression I got was that she was like, "Oh, in my hometown, we would have called Nary <laughs> scum because they're what." You cut out again. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. It's not an important point. Let me reset my wife. I just. Do... Oh, okay. A lot of people saying it's a reference to North Korea. Um, bad people are rebels and revolutionaries, and they're communists. <laughs> Oh, yeah, th honestly, I didn't quite catch what was happening in this scene, so the other thing I wanted to talk about that I found interesting was um, that before he can, like, beat her up, I guess, uh, the other girl cuts in. And I've wondered, this whole time, was she doing that to help her out? Or was she doing it because she has her own interests? I'm not 100% sure, because it seems like she just mm -hmm. accidentally broke up a fight there, or was she looking to do that? Um, either way, she's like, I'll join you, you don't need her, because she's super thin. I um, believe that she was looking for a place to insert herself. Mm -hmm. Seems yeah. to fit in line with kind of her looking. Where can I, you know, make myself known? Where can I be? Yeah, with a strong crowd. That's sort of thing. Let's try Singapore. So, uh, what's a robot? Okay, is it, are you roboting now, or is it just me? I was going to send up Singapore. Pop, pop, pop so this to Singapore. Hopefully, that saves the day. Yeah. Totally. All right, Cap. What were you saying? <laughs> I don't even remember anymore. Uh, it's, not, <laughs> it's not crucial. We can keep moving. Yeah. Well. Okay. Um. So I was gonna say we probably should try and step on the gas a little bit, but. All right. Uh. Yeah. She. She's like, let me join. And um, at first he's just like, what can you offer? And she's desperately trying this, that, and the other until he's basically like, sex. And then she's like, hmm. And then he's like, um, it gets a little bit more threatening until the uh, conversation ends, and it's, in retrospect, it's enough that she's probably figuring out at that moment what she's going to need to be doing to survive, potentially. Uh, while, um, Andrew is just, like, sitting there like, huh, that was a thing, but I'm fine. This is going to be 24 hours? Nope! <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. I mean, no, no way. So yeah, they're all lined up, and they get themselves what I would call, yeah, it's a meal. It's a chill, isn't it? You got, like, I think it's egg, rice, and a couple of other things. Like, yeah. Um, and this is our character building scene. They start saying, like, since we're a team, we should share names. Before we get to that, I have a quick question about why they would give them crappy food on purpose. Well, we get, we can address that when they do. I don't know that this should be considered crappy food. Well, he says that it's cold. That's, and mm -hmm. so okay. that doesn't affect the nutritional value, though. Uh, no, 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 I don't, I, you know what I mean. Like, that I they give him cold... I mean, it's, that's what I mean, like, I would, I would, I, I, it's I would fine. He said he'd prefer it, uh, hot, but that it, it's still good food. Well, their their would, portions I, I are small. Go... Okay, we, we, can, we can talk about it more when they start giving them less food. Yeah. It's just a question I had. Continue. Mel, what were you going to say, would... you fuck? Well, I'm you trying fuck. really hard to say something. You gotta push but... past these people, okay? You gotta push past, you gotta punch <laughs> them in the face. Gotta push him down the, the You never abyss. survive in Squid Game. Nope. <laughs> oh, I would be on that. That would be different. <laughs> uh, I would go the other way because I would just say they they get little food uh, further further ahead, further on. Right. Yeah. It's probably the last proper meal they get. Yeah. For the duration of the game. Um. Like, I think mm -hmm. the, like the, but yeah. So. I don't go into it too much. What um what they then just again they're just doing names and stuff and uh it's pretty chill up until we get the good old fashioned when do people speak and why and it'll give you nice pieces to think about um they're uh they, he's bringing up the past uh uh and, and, and like each of them is sort of reminiscing about the the meals they would get when they were younger and then he asks Song Wu about it and like. He just cuts in, and he's just like, let's try and stay on the subject. Let's think about what the next game will be. It's like, hmm. Yeah. All right. And you can tell he's a little bit down about yeah. everything. Okay. Which is perfectly reasonable. Um, okay. And yeah, so they, they obviously figure out, well, if we've been getting red light, green light, there's a good chance that we might get more children's games. It's time to think about all those ones and think about how we prepare for them. And I think he splits them up into male and female in terms of listing them and how they might go. Um... The hopscotch, biso, jibaji, donkatsu, freeze tag. I know freeze tag. Um, Ooh. I know didn't. hopscotch. Yes. 
And um, yeah, so they're just like speculating on that. And uh, there's this little great moment where Ali is like, I don't know what fucking any of those games are. And Sangwoo just cuts <laughs> in and he's like, listen, all those games are easy to learn and we're going to teach them to you. And then it's, um, Ali takes that very positively, like, oh, that's great. Thanks, man. While there's a second yeah. reading of that when you think about Sangwoo as a character. It's not necessarily that he's very invested in a person learning and having the best chance. It's, I think it's more so about... We'll teach you um, so that we win. Yeah, it's important yeah. for the team dynamic. Which, again, you can see in Sangwoo's face when the old man is like, hey, can I join your team? Um, and he's like, yeah, man, you can be our uh, major or whatever. Sangwoo's face in the background, he's just like, mm. Mm. Yeah, hmm. it was just about strong and healthy people. Like, it always wants to get the best ones. Yeah, it seems... The apparently best ones. Seems to me that Sangwoo compared to last time, is coming in with a much more specific mindset, even just from these little yeah. interactions. Like, it's already very clear that he's thinking very specifically about how this is going to go. Um, I think you called him a com computer, basically, when we were watching it together. Well, I, I like to think of him and... Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, him and the protagonist is sort of representative of, of, of letting your, your heart sort of run with it and your mind sort of run with it, and uh, we see the yeah. dangers yeah. of that in both of these characters. Um, good old dichotomy, as they say. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, I think they're just we're kicking on. Uh, we get a little bit of Detective Man, because he had a key in his clothing that had a number on it. He knows which room uh, belongs to him. And so that's good enough for me. Um, you can fake. If you follow everyone going to their respective rooms, you know which room is yours because of your key. That's, that's fine. But um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets a look, I think, from number 28. He's 29. And it's just like, mm -hmm. hmm. Is 28 looking at him because he struggled with his key a little bit? Or is he looking at him for another reason? I imagine mm -hmm. we're going to find out. Bum, bum, bum. He seemed to be looking at him before he started turning the key and screwed it up. I think that mm. on your first watch through, you're supposed to believe, though, it's just the key. But we will discover. I, I, don't, I never bought that. It just seems to... Like, you're going to get suspicion on someone because they had a very minor issue with the key in the lock. Well, that's the that's what I'm saying. I think it's just to give a viewer a reason for it before they give you the actual reason. Um, yeah. And so anyway, we, we cut to nighttime, and a crazy lady is about to pee all over the floor because she needs to go to the toilet and they won't let her. Um, <laughs> which to me is like, you must have a system in place for this, right? Like, surely. Yeah. There's, yeah, you, exactly. theoretically, you theoretically have... 500 people in this room and you know what mammals do so they don't <laughs> you know those endotherms um she finally it, gets it's it. very strange that they they act like they're not gonna let her go pee because it's past yeah you know, curfew uh, plus if this was meant for people to watch particularly you don't want to see people just peeing and pooing everywhere <laughs> yeah you don't want to know no, some people do see that yeah. Some people do. That's true. Some mm -hmm. people do. They um, like that. They like that sort of thing. Not me. Oh yeah, and we got uh, talk about suspicious, right? We got he gets his meal. <laughs> our guy. Oops. And he awkwardly Straight looks at the camera, <laughs> <laughs> and then looks back and slowly takes all of his stuff without ever looking at it. And I think the thing that made it for me in terms of just oh come on is that we we see that someone is staring directly at him, like. I think he's got like a big screen. I guess we're supposed to assume it's it, what he's being stared at is one of the people who is in on it, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the best faith oh, interpretation. Yeah. yeah, but we could talk about mm, how that works. It's so fucking <laughs> lucky that he looks enough like the guy he took the place of that they wouldn't be able to tell from that uh, image here. Wow, Asians are racist. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that even if it is, you know, the guy watching at the screen right now is also in on it. Uh, good thing he's the only one that ever looks at it. I don't know why they showed us this. Like, if they had made it so he had his back to the camera at all times, I'd be like, okay, but that right there, it's like, oh man, you can pretty much make out the face now if you know him well <laughs> enough. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Why do you, why do you gotta do that? Um, is the cop would be avoiding cameras looking at his face. Well, I mean, that, that this is the, kind of the angle here that's like... And, and I think at this point in the show, you might be like, so what's his plan? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to get to you that. You might be like that. Um, I also, I think I noticed a small mistake here because uh, I saw something <gasps> shine. Uh, hang on. Uh-oh. 
It's, it's an awkward place to find a mistake, but don't worry, you won't see anything. Um, what's supposed to happen here is Crazy Lady pulls something out of her um, extra pocket. Let's put it that way. And uh, <laughs> the thing is, before she grabs it, uh, you can see she's holding something in her hand, and that's going to be oh. the thing she pulls out. Uh, yeah. There you go. She did Which, not dedicate herself to the craft, see, is what we're saying. It's just awkward. She's holding it in her hand there, and then she puts her hand all the way down, we pan up, and she's like, oh! So it just comes across as she's putting it in. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Ram it <laughs> yeah, you think that you would just cut away to her face going, and then you would have a, a, a bend in the next scene. We we in the next, we that's the, like that's, kung fu moves. That's the sound. That, that's that's the fucking sound they make when there's something really big in there. Mm -hmm. And we trust we me. And so then when then you cut back to her pulling it out is a new scene, and that is like basic stuff. I don't know why they showed her putting it in, you know, her hands in her pants with it. Very. Very unusual mm. editing, but it's a bit of a nitpick. I know what it's it's an editing mistake. And, uh, it's I think Metal, you you were open uh, we'll, we'll, we'll more uh, thinking about this, but I think everyone has kind of a similar thought. It's like of all the things you could smuggle in, it was cigarettes. Okay, I guess. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, hey, listen, it's an addiction. It is. It is. You want to get them ciggies, but um, you know, a lighter. <laughs> Once you have the idea to smuggle in cigarettes, shouldn't you go, oh, what else could I smuggle Exactly. Mm. Um, and I even had the thought of, like, I know it's disturbing, but surely they would want to check to make sure you're not doing this? Mm. You'd think. Yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd probably do prison. a cavity search. And this is a lot like a prison in some ways, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you were like, no, that would be that would be gross or whatever. It's like they're killing people. Let's be real. Like, come on. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They apparently are surprised that these people have to use the bathroom. So, I mean, <laughs> it's weird. You they get go, yeah. When you gross. when you summarize all these bits and bobs, he's like, it is a bit. Mm, all right, yeah. Um, but yes, uh, Andrew's plan is to use the knife she had to unscrew a vent, climb up it, and have a look if she if she can get any details about what's to happen in future. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, you're gonna have to luck out to get anything you can fucking use. Like... Oh, yeah. 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 You're crawling around in You've, vents. She's got, like, 30 seconds at most, and it's super risky. I was just like, this. what could this possibly lead I to? I thought you'd just try to escape or just hide and try and find yeah. a way out or something, which would be weird because you came back voluntarily. It's weird that yes. you would try and escape, but, like, right and, now, but I, I just don't... I. Uh, no camera in the bathroom, yeah. and I know again people be like, "Well, that's a violation of liberty." Let's be honest. <laughs> like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> that would be yeah. they, were, they, were, they were rather yeah. fine with burning that one guy alive. So yeah, I think they'd be okay with standing and watching you pee. Honestly, I think absolutely. I, I think they would be willing to go in with you and be like, "Yeah, this is how it works." Oh, yeah. Bitch. Yep. Stand outside your cell but and everything. This storyline honestly relies on like you wouldn't want to come in here because I'm pooping and that's gross. It's like, Ew, come gross. on, like <laughs> <laughs> you would. Oh, bitch. oh boy, there's no toilet roll. I'm gonna wash my butt in the sink. You wouldn't want to see that. It's like why are you? Why are we five years old? Come on, like they're not gonna care. They kill yeah. you on the regular. Yeah, yeah, they'll, 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 they'll step in anything. just for sh her shouting so damn much. They'll step on it like shut the fuck up. Um, yeah. what she sees is that they are they are making something up. It involves lots of sugar, like hmm, <gasps> sugar. sugar. And it's funny because um, with how their meals work, my assumption would just been like I don't know. It's just like fucking making something for food. I don't know. Like the automatic assumption yeah. is this is the clue for the next game. And I remember when I first saw this, I was like, oh, okay. I guess. Oh, that's a clue for the next game. I had, yeah, yeah, I was in the same boat as you. I had no idea yeah. this was supposed to be a clue for the next game. Was Why the would first it be? thing that you, yeah, the <clears throat> first room that you can peek in through and they're cooking something. I assume that that's your next meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, they have to, they have to get the food to feed you. I assume that's what this is. It's some mixture that they're going to give you, which technically it is, but not in the way I mean it. Um, but yeah, uh, we get a little bit of tension. We will they won't they be discovered? And guy eventually gets in after she's seen that, and he comes in right too late. Where they've already put it back up, and um, he's like, "Oh, how awkward, poopy." Oh man, why does it smell like cigarettes in here? <laughs> and why does it not smell? It doesn't smell at all like poop. It's like, hmm, I guess you have really nice smelling poop. <laughs> There's a distinct lack of poop. 
Um, and yeah, and well, had they very suspiciously in general. Yeah, they're all incredibly suspicious. And just <laughs> fucking one. If they had a camera in there, it's over. You'd be like, you two have cheated. You're out. Yeah. And of yeah. course, mm -hmm. crawling through a vent is never quiet. <laughs> well, yeah, someone notices it, and then someone else is like, hey, get back to stirring the sugar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I just refer to, like, because I remember there being an actual Mythbusters episode where they tried to have you climb through the vents. It's just the noisiest fucking thing yep. ever because yeah, those Adam yeah. aren't even meant to carry shit. You gotta remember, right? Adam Jensen has augmentations that, like, make it so that he can climb through ducks stealthily, but you ain't Robocop, all right? You ain't climbing through these <laughs> vents. Uh, you know, Ro Robocop right? would not climb through vents quietly. That wasn't a good <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, Robocop wouldn't, but I, you, how familiar, ah, uh, whatever, <laughs> never mind, that's alright. Have you seen Robocop? No. How, <laughs> how, he how, doesn't how, refer to the character Robocop, he's referring he's to saying, Robocop. He's like a robot cop. Adam Jensen If, if you Robocop, say Robocop, but, people well, will I, think of sure, Robocop. Well, but also they'll think about all of the other things you just said leading up to that point. <laughs> and then, and then you get to the words RoboCop, and they think, "Oh, RoboCop!" Right, yeah. as opposed to all of the other references to ex explicitly to a different character. Everyone thinks everyone everyone thinks RoboCop when it's you say RoboCop. It's his name. Augmented episode. <laughs> RoboCop's a neat movie. That's what I think. That's it true. Also, someone movie. saying Adam Jensen is not a cop. So, yeah. He he was a RoboCop is but, it's in the name. No, he wasn't he a is. cop either. He was the head of security for. Uh, no, he he was Air a cop, and then he became head of, and then he became a security guard. Okay, fair enough. I'm well, gonna eat some food. Fair enough. That, that's just anyway. Back to RoboCop going yeah. to events. That's right. That's a good Question. movie, RoboCop. Question <laughs> I had. So she comes. She comes out of the vent, and we get a close up that indicates that there's a screw. Oh, wait, is not yeah. put all the way in, which and amounts to that nothing. Seems like and I, a setup. I guess oh, there's yeah. a screw in the bathroom, nothing. all right. I guess the reason they showed us that would be like, wow, that was close. Oh, mm -hmm. when I thought it was, mm -hmm. oh, someone's gonna find out. Well, yeah, thought, yeah, as I if so someone too. is ever gonna check the fucking screw on one of the vents in a bathroom <laughs> to see if it had been manually lo I like I yeah well yeah you'd be like yeah and why I would we think check that would notice and it's, and it's like well it is strange that we got a close up of it I think yeah well, and, and like I, think, I think they would, would be get looser and fall surely there's an employee for that because you'd be like why would we check it it's like well it's a direct access from the fucking toilet area to us <laughs> I feel <laughs> like we should probably have an eye <laughs> on it maybe we should just put a lock on it. Um, <laughs> lock on a vent. We should it's not the silliest poop. fucking thing in this facility, so why not fucking yeah. do it? <laughs> uh, so I found this quite amusing. Maybe I'm on, on on a bit of an island with this one, but when he's typing his notes into his phone, this makes you think that if Frodo were in Mordor, he would type uh, Mordor orcs lava. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. fine, but like it just yeah, it just felt awkward. And he hears a cough. A cough. What? 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 Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, you know, it's fine. We'll move on. That's a loud cough. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Sounds like he's dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Help me! Help me! I'm dying. <laughs> then he dies. So who? Who are these pink people? Obviously, we don't know. Wow. Wow. Yeah, never wow. demand. What's the deal with these fucking pink people? Never demand to know the white people. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's definitely. You know, framed like there's something akin to prisoners too, uh, based on their living conditions. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're prisoners, but that there seems to be an implication that they're not much, they're not thought of much higher by the people running the organization than the competitors themselves. And right. I'm just, I have a lot of questions about them. That well, the show never answers. That's uh, that's that's theme, presumably, right? That's what theme okay so my response is because you're talking about the in-narrative reasons um yeah. i assume they're paid extremely well and they're told if you don't follow the rules you can be killed yeah. i would assume that is the, that's fair. the I think that's what i would assume yes we Are will they... give you lots of money also we will kill you mm -hmm. I'm just that would work I, for I... me yeah yeah, it's it's interesting though because I, I wonder what kind of people they get. Not that it's a problem, but I, I'm very curious what kind of people because unlike the contestants, 
that have the sort of distance between them and the moral moral responsibility of all the people who are dying, because at least up until now, they haven't been killing anyone directly. But the people with, you know, the, the pink people are obviously killing them directly. So I wonder how they've managed to get all these that, people to do this decade after decade. Yeah, I think it's an issue of, and I guess we're going to have to have that conversation about this whole operation. But yeah, not sure when, but we will. Okay, we'll, we'll call that another planted seed. That's cool. Yeah, yeah we'll plant that seed as um, well. We're going to have a fucking crop at the end of this. Talking about the clunk, uh, the two girls come back and we get Sangwoo's POV and he just hears the conversation, which is, hey, what did you see? Come on. What did you see? And she's like, I'll tell you tomorrow. Why tomorrow? <laughs> tell me now. You were up there for really long. What did you see? Hey, what did you see? You must have seen <laughs> something. Come on. It's like, oh, man. Yes, yeah, so Songwoo gets the idea that they have seen something useful. Uh, in case yes. that wasn't clear. Well, what did you see? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, and Detective Man meanwhile has woken up for his daily. He has no... This point is so strange. He's just like... What's the plan, bro? I guess you're just gonna have to keep pretending to Buy just be time, one of the many, or, yeah. I guess? Yeah. Just exist you know, here, hopefully. the extent of what they're doing, you know. Just gonna have sure. to try and luck out more and more. Because obviously as the days go by, you just have to be a sponge, I guess, but at the same time, like, you're gonna slip up eventually, and do you have a plan, or you're just gonna cross that bridge when you come to it? That's probably the idea. Um, I guess. So yeah, she says that what she saw was them melting sugar, or at least that's her theory. And she's like, melting sugar, that's it? And she's like, mm-hmm. That's the, that's the clue. Not? I had 30 seconds in event, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Chill out. You're, luck <laughs> you're lucky I have anything to tell you at all. Yeah. She could have just walked well, forward, I saw nothing, and come the, back. The... <laughs> yeah. um, also, this doesn't lead to anything, them knowing? Yeah, it does. It does. Oh, in terms of wait, what, what am I forgetting here? Song um, finds out because of her. Yeah. About the sugar. It, it clues him onto what game it is, which he is very important. Out, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought the clue was when he well, he figures it out once he gets in there, and then he sees it in person. So you get the shapes plus the melted sugar. That's the two clues. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um. Yeah, he's just doing his thing. Uh, number 28, giving him a weird look. And he's just like, number 28? Are you, like, gay for me? What's going on? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> I don't know. I feel we'll have to find out. And they get given their, um, like, a, a bread and milk. Um, I think Sangwoo gives his bread to Ali. And, uh, Jihan gives his milk to Ali as well because he's, uh, allergic, I think, is what he says. Or something. He doesn't like normal milk, I think. Just uh, more sharing of them fun things, but there's a character who digs into his bread and finds a note. How very interesting. Oh, oh my goodness. And yeah, I guess we'll find out more about that soon enough. Um, so yeah, off to the off to game two. How exciting, we're finally there. It's only taken us three and a half hours. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so for those who just have no context because they listen to us because they like listening to us break stuff down, they enter a big oh old goodness. playground with giant versions of like uh, the, I guess a playground set, um, and they're all speculating on what the fuck this could be. Um, but at this point, uh, Songwoo has already gotten the the sugar information from um, Andrew, uh, and then they see the shape show up. You get a circle, triangle, star, and umbrella. Now. Ain't gonna lie, when I first saw this, and I was like, if I'm going with a random shape, I don't know. I honestly was like, what about the umbrella? That just seems so unusual that maybe that's the correct one. Uh, yeah. yeah. So odd and specific. You don't want to pick the umbrella. <laughs> that's no, it. you do not. Um, <laughs> really don't. Yeah, song we realize is what the game is, which is, you have to, you get given like a um, honeycomb candy in the form of a circle, but there's a shape inside it, and you got to break the shape out without damaging it. Um... So the one you want is probably the triangle because you get given like a needle to cut it out. Next yeah, up, yeah, probably... triangle or square that'd be a good one. I don't think you get a square. Uh, so next triangle, up, circle, oh, no, you don't star, get a square, and either. umbrella. Yeah, umbrella star being the worst one. Star is like it's pretty simple. It's just a lot of time, um, and then umbrella is like just the worst. 
because it's just it's uh it's not <laughs> it's the worst by far it's so it's yeah. gonna get so fragile on the uh the handily part of it the and yeah it's gonna be tough so uh Jiang... well, well hold up hold up wait is it um we we have to we have to say to you is this an umbrella or a parasol umbrella umbrella because it has the, but I, I thought the parasol had the hook at the bottom, right? I, I think umbrella is no. one that has a Most hook. Most umbrellas do. Yeah, have umbrellas have like, the hook. Because I, okay, all right. Not to mention, don't umbrellas usually have like the spikies all along the they... bottom end? Yes, I think so. Oh, I think yeah, so. Yeah, parasols they fold. don't. Well, parasols yeah. fold, don't they? Umbrella. Yeah, but not in that. Parasols not with that fold. many spokes, you know. No. I, I assume you can have I'm, different ones. I'm, I'm I don't care. Okay, 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 fine, that's fine. So, uh, Jihan suggests they do it as a team and they all select the same shape. Songwoo is like, no, 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 we should, we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket, we should separate. Uh, which when we know that he knows what this game is, that's very suspicious. But at the same yeah. time, at this point in the show, you might not know like what he you may, you may still not know what this game is. You can still believe for a second that maybe that's helpful in some way. You don't know yet, um, but you can yeah. tell from his body language that something is up because he's like, "I'm gonna go for the triangle," and then Ali is like, "The circle reminds him of um, something from home." I think he says, uh, "Like the sun or we moon." Have circles in Pakistan. Yeah. Moon, um, I think it was. Yeah. And so then it's down to Old Man and uh, Gihan choosing between, and when Gihan says, I'll go with the umbrella, because I was always losing it, and my mum would get really angry at me, and Song was immediately like, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, okay. And it's like, hmm, wow. And it's clear that if the scenario is Gihan or Old Man end up with the umbrella, you know which one Song would want to happen. Yeah, uh, he wants the Old Man to yeah. get that umbrella. Yep, because he's useless to him. Uh, I want you so to die, Old Man. He just looks guilty as fuck for the rest of this, these scenes. Super awkward, super oh, yeah. like, hmm. And uh, there's a particularly fun shot where they all walk to their respective shapes and uh, Andrew is looking at him from off to the side because she knows that he, he's just recommended them go to the, the sh these shapes. Or at least the, they w nobody would willingly choose Umbrella if he's giving the information that he has. So, um, something, yeah. he's doing something there and, uh, Let's just say that it's not just his own guilt he's dealing with. He's got a, a small audience that knows what he did. But um, mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't see that she's looking at it, uh, them, though. But it's just it's just information she has, you know? And so, yeah, they get their shapes. And it wasn't until they literally explained the rules that I was as shocked as Jihad is. I was like, oh, you've got to do that. Because when they were looking at these shapes, I was like, I still don't get it. Yeah, yeah me neither. Did you just yeah, call him no Jihad? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would mispronounce both the words at the same time just to say that, but maybe. <laughs> I will take credit for the joke. Uh, yeah, they just have this this shot where the the camera does. I don't even. I'm not even sure what this is called. But when they expand the back with the focus, just because he's realizing that, as he says, he's dead. Oh, it's a dolly zoom. That's what it's called. So you either push the camera in while zooming out, or you pull the camera back while zooming in, and it gets all floopy. Hmm. Um, so yeah, we, a lot of the characters we're familiar with have triangles, so they're probably going to be alright. Um, Oldman has a star, which is a little bit more complex. Same for Crazy Lady and uh, Thug. Then our lad has an umbrella. Oh my goodness. Know, what's going to happen now? That's um, no bueno. This is one of those games I'd be curious to play, though. I just want to see how difficult it is. Yeah. I yeah. think I already saw sets for those being sold somewhere. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, I'd wonder about the whole part about like. Do you think it would be better if everyone just had the same shape? Makes it a little bit. Uh, that would be better. How? Better in terms of your feel. Like if you were all randomized, you'd just be like, "Well, that sucks that they got the easy one. And I got the." Meanwhile, if everyone got an umbrella, I feel like that would be more interesting. Yeah, uh, it does it, undermine. Yeah. Uh, the stated idea that this is sort of equal and fair. Well, yeah. well, well. That's a topic we oh should my goodness. probably... You, you, brought up, you brought up another seed! We should probably delay that <laughs> one Let's for a while. Let's just plant that seed. To to All bed. I will say oh. is... Fairness All these seeds is, are growing, Metal. Fairness is complicated. Yeah, I have to go... Yeah, you have to go before any of these seeds can be eaten. Yeah, I'm very upset about this. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Uh, yeah, well, well, just keep it in mind, the fairness stuff. We will try and come back to all the examples as we get further along, but, uh... Everyone's doing their darndest to chop through these these dastardly honeycomb treats. And, um... And I, I do like the random cuts to just the eagerness of the people with guns, just looking at them with their guns still just at the readiest. <laughs> like, yeah, I know, okay, I'm still, I'm fine, leave me alone. <laughs> just making sure. Go on, fuck up already. Mm -hmm. Fuck up. Yeah. Um... And yeah, and I think uh, it's the guy on the slide is the first one to... He fucks up his umbrella. It breaks in half. And uh, yeah. I think at that that is the moment where you go, I regret coming back here. <laughs> like, this was a mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's just like, please give me another shot. It's like, nah, mate, those is the rules. Badoom. And he has a very dramatic slide down the slide. He there. crawled all the way up there. That's that. He was like, "This is the spot where I'm gonna, gonna do my thing." And you know what? Him doing that meant someone had to climb up there with him. Just be like, "All right, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go climb up and check on the slide guy." Why? Why'd we fucking even have this slide here? It doesn't even have anything to do with anything. <laughs> and yeah, I think in reaction to the gunshot surprise, someone breaks their uh their biscuit. And they're like, "No, no, no, no!" And yeah, we just see a couple people get shot. Hoover. Uh... Yeah. I like failing. how the uh, the old the old guy. Um, you notice that he kind of like licks the tip of his needle. He's like the first to do that in order to like kind of mm -hmm. help him along. Yeah, I think uh, Thug guy does that as well at one point. Um, makes sense. Uh, there's different strategies to try and get through this, and uh, obviously triangle people are getting close to finishing it already, just because triangle is to the point where you dig in and then you can snap it off. We even see that happening. It's just mm -hmm. like oh, so much easier than everyone else's shapes. But we enter... It's interesting because circle is kind of deceptively hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, it seems um, like yeah, a simple shape, really, but it would actually be really quite difficult. Snap it, yeah, uh, well, Ali's strategy true. is snapping small amounts all in a circle over and over and over yeah, and over again, just, seems to be. Like approximating yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Now... So, how the fuck is she not getting caught? This is pretty awkward. I know! Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you're using a lighter, you can not only hear it, but you can kind of see that shit <laughs> pretty easily. Yeah. Um, also, that guy's right there as well. We're just well, seeing. Mm -hmm. The show's making sure to show, like, no, she's keeping an eye, so she's doing it when he's not looking or something. It's like, oh, I don't know, man. You still need a lot of luck for this, and you can't cancel out the sound. So, well, yeah. and the final and evidence, the fact that she's got the only honeycomb that's fucking burnt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did you burn it with your needle? It's like, yeah. ah, the mysteries oh, of no. things. Essence bit. Oh, and everyone in chat saying you can smell it. And there's cameras too. all over the place. And there's yeah, cameras. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that True. the whole idea? So we've got like <laughs> five layers of you're not getting away with this. Um, yeah. And they do not look kindly on cheating, as we discover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, it's it's like, you don't smell the burning either? Yeah, that's what, a lot yeah, of burning. Yeah, someone that's brought a lot it up. Of things. Uh, so that's not a satisfying cheat, that one. Uh, you're just like, okay, no. good for you, I guess. They just sort of let you do that. Uh, then, um, as we as we progress, like I said, I think the triangles start winning, which includes uh, Andrew and Sangwoo and the Doctor. Yep. I'm going to start calling him that just because that's what he is. Um, he's the one that yes. had the note, and uh, I think his note said honeycomb, which, by the way, wouldn't be anywhere near enough information for someone like me. <laughs> I feel like yeah, honeycomb. yeah, the info. Yeah, you think the info should be pick the triangle. Yeah, yeah, that would be way better than Honeycomb. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd yeah. be way better. Yeah, that way you know <laughs> that no matter what, pick the triangle, not Honeycomb. Because if, <laughs> if my clue was Honeycomb and I was looking at shapes, I'd still be like, okay, uh, and I don't get it. Yeah, uh, Ali has successfully gotten his circle out of there as well. Yep. And... Uh, he looks panicky as fuck until the announcer says, Player 199 has passed. He just smiles. It's like, yay. <laughs> because I think there's going to be a great feeling, but then you sort of turn around, you're like, good luck, everyone else. Uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Don't slip on your way out. Yeah. Uh, Do not perish. And I think that's kind of the idea, is that all of the triangles are going to be getting out pretty quick, which... Yeah, you can't help but feel like that doesn't seem fair. Now, lucky for us, we're not going to just get bogged down and bored by the A plot line. Detective Man is here nope. to make the plot more interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He walks in here, and a square scans him, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're supposed to be dealing with bodies. And he's just like, um... He scans him from behind, too, which is yeah. strange, but I guess that's more sci-fi tech. I guess line. the suits are lined up with the numbers as well, just not just the masks. Oh, that's, yeah. I could see that, I guess. Um, maybe, maybe. And so he's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm confused. And like, t I was like, <laughs> oh my fucking god, I hate this. Like, it's so crap. You're just like... <laughs> I don't know what's happening, do you? <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> what are we doing here? Um, and yeah, so this square is like, uh, meet me after this game and we'll talk about your confusion. It's like, oh shit, finally repercussions. Um, now that's that's gonna Maybe have a great payoff. Out, yeah, yeah I, uh, keep that in mind everyone, finally repercussions. So we, uh, <laughs> we see the, I guess, probably the triangles and circles exiting, they've, they've done their job, but um, at the back is the doctor, and he pops off to the left, and he gets guided into a completely different room. And I think hmm. that alone is like, really? How, do you... How the <laughs> fuck are you getting away with that? Uh, yeah, you've yeah. taken a whole ass player out of fucking competition. Like, that's. Man, you must have a lot of people yeah. in this institution that are on your side rather than the institution's side. Yeah. Hmm. But okay. Um, and I guess they don't count them when they get back into the room. I feel like they, they did a better job with this later on, because it's all dark and everyone is already settled everywhere, I guess. I can believe that more but then, then again, but doing it at yeah, that point... Yeah, but there's still cameras everywhere, but this exactly. point is insane. And just the idea they wouldn't Imagine have a, the a constant just player count. Like, surely they'd have a constant player count uh, in the room. They'd be like, there should be X players, it is incongruent with the current yeah. players, you know? Yeah, the guy whose job it is to look at player da 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 should be going, wait a second. Well, I He's guess here. this is so. This is the thing that the show has on its side is you're supposed to just believe anybody who would have caught this is a part of the evil team or at least the subversion team, and they they're doing what they need to do to prevent anyone from finding out. But I just think that stretch is pretty far when the further along we get. Um, oh yeah, and even right now, I think that him moving away at that moment, like that's they're all already on the Oscorp payroll. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we got three minutes left. It ain't going good. He's basically chopped out the top of the umbrella, the easiest part. Uh, with plenty yeah. left to go. And uh, before Song Wu leaves, he gives him quite the, uh, uh, man, sucks to be you face. <laughs> but And so um, it's probably worth wondering at this point, we probably address it, why did Song Wu do that? What is the, the assumption we're supposed to make as an audience? In terms of the, the look he gives him? No, why did he not tell him you should go for the triangle? I guess to... Let me see. He probably feels um, a little Guilty threatened. Guilty at like this he, point? Or he's no? either... Well, no, uh, like he probably feels a little threatened by uh, Gihan's... Um, the closeness he has to Gihan. And the old like man. if he's... Um, no, not the old man, his friend. So it's like he's got his friend in the competition, and if he can get rid of his friend, the less compelled he is to try and, like, you know, kill him and feel bad about it. You know what I mean? It's like he, he, so got he some... he's afraid that he's got to pull back on his friend, like, in some emotional sense. So it's like, if he dies now, it won't be me that has to kill him, and I don't got to feel bad about it, you know? Uh, so we've got, we got a lot of theories in problem. here and in chat. Uh, my take would just fully be that he's just going to not work to help anyone now. Um, unless, of course, it demands it through teams. But uh, yeah. at the same time, okay. I think it's very fair to assume he was hoping to kill the old man. I would assume so, too, based on, especially with that look he had earlier when the old man was made part of the team, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, oh, he's going to be he... our, our, our antagonist for, for, for now, at least. Like I would have assumed thug, thug Boy is definitely the more overt antagonist right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, I would, he's he's just a bad from phrased, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Should have phrased it differently. I mean, like he, he's uh, he's gonna be the shady one who's gonna be like doing the questionable sk sketchy, sort of motivated shit. Yeah. And just I think that makes sense considering it ramps up as many him. people as possible. Well, so um, a lot of people are trying to speculate like possibilities and whether or not this is inconsistent with his goals. Like, why would you want to erase the people who are likely going to help you? But the thing is, I think Songwoo has already resigned himself to the point of, I will win this. 
Uh, and just, yes, the, the way but he... go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say his um his compare him to the first game to now. He's changed quite dramatically. Uh, in terms of his approach, he's very much much quieter, and um, specifically, all of his dialogue relates to winning, basically. And uh, all we have to believe is that he believes that the the less people who survive, the better for his situation. Um, but at the same time. Uh, I think I swear I think I think he was gunning for the old man. I think that's the idea here. And uh, yeah. someone, someone said the old man does. Uh, the old man is called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. And the what? and what's interesting about that is that I think that the thug's name is Jiro Nightmares of Ass Rape. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> If you if you get that reference, I definitely get don't get that reference. Points. You get ten. <laughs> All I heard was ass rape, and I don't want to get that reference. To be honest, if <laughs> if you get that reference, you get ten pooch points. If you laugh at it without re knowing the reference, you get five pooch points. No, they should get negative pooch points at that point because they're lying to you. They're <laughs> no. lying. That no, that's not true. That's not true at all. No, I laughed at the pure uh, absurdity of it. Yeah. See lies. Okay, so Cal, what were you gonna say? <laughs> oh, I yeah, I wonder. I, I can get him trying to get rid of the old man, especially if he sees that him as a weak link for the team. I wonder why he doesn't say something to um, our protagonist because you you would think that he would alliances tip his hand, surely. might. In, in the it sense could. of... It, so any recommendation he gives, he'd have to be able to couch it in some other reasoning than the true reasoning, because mm -hmm. at that point he gives away, he knows the game, and he should have been telling them. Yeah, Because maybe he's more analytical and not so creative? I, I'd yeah, imagine I so, see. yeah. 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 I think he thinks that we'll go... I, he probably thought the triangles will pass, the stars will likely pass, the circles will probably pass, the umbrellas are fucked. If I can make it, or get it at least, to the point where the old man gets the umbrella, we can knock him out and I don't have to be a dick. Um, it's very possible. But that's the thing, It's I like this a lot because we get to speculate quite a bit, so none, none of it's yeah. uh, explicit. Um, it's interesting. Oh, to the person in chat asking if I could say that again in Spanish. Unfortunately not. The only Spanish I know is no niños en la canasta. That's the only Spanish I know. So you're out of luck there, unfortunately. So anyway, uh, our protag realizes, <laughs> hey, the, gap, the, the line that makes the shape is obviously thinner than the rest of it. So if we were to lick it and thus kind of melt all of it, the shape will come out before breaking or melting apart. That kind of makes mm -hmm. sense, right? And so he goes mm -hmm. ham, just licking up a storm. He's going in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then uh, and the other people take notice and they start doing it. Yeah, and they play quite funny music. The old guy. Because this is so abs absurd fucking scenario that you have to lick to survive. Uh <laughs> Because, of course, the, the stars are all uh, mostly making it out, too. But um, Oldman had a star, and uh, it becomes clear that he, he probably would have died if not for the licking advice. Or, well, uh, help, I guess. Because he doesn't overtly tell anyone to lick. He's just licking, and everyone spots it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's just... Oh, those camera angles, just getting all that sweaty licking. Beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. I love them <laughs> licking sweaty, like, honeycombs. <laughs> And it's, yeah, because a couple of the people you see licking are all uh, thugs from Thug's team that come come into play a little later. Uh, we saved them as well. I Yeah, I like the idea that it just spreads. You see someone doing it, and then you do mm -hmm. it, and then other people see you doing it, and it just, and it just spreads in a real way. Because you're like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm doing that. Because I imagine there'd be a lot of copying in this situation like this. Oh, you're always looking around like, what are other people doing? What are other people doing? The people who win, you're like, how did you do it? Before you leave, tell me how. <laughs> I licked it, motherfucker. Oh. So, yeah, Oldman makes it, and right at the last second, Jihan pulls Jihan the umbrella it. out, and it functions. I think... Uh, Man, he makes it in the nick of time. Yeah, and... that's twice oh. he's made it yeah. on the line. Wow. Yeah. Quite a bit uh, of that. That's kind of his thing. He, he, in fact, I think in every single game that happens to him. <laughs> Not minutes to the last second to waste. Well, I don't know how tug of war would count, would it? 
Well, I guess Tagged War he, wouldn't Well, count. yeah, he almost wouldn't died. It? Oh, yeah, well, I so... I guess he did almost. I thought we were talking about in terms of the time. There's no timer on that one. Like, it's just a matter of... There's no timer, yeah. but he kept, he keeps coming out of the skin of his teeth one way or the other in these games. Yeah. Last, yeah. last second or almost died. Now, we have yet another part that I am not a fan of, because I love that whole bit, and yep. how he wins. It's all great. Fucking yeah. really weird thing happens. By the way, part of this isn't weird. Someone realizes they've broken their umbrella and they're hiding it, and so the guy's like, show me, because obviously as soon as you show it, you're dead. So what does he do? Fuck it, I'm gonna tackle you and take your gun. Which is something I thought hostage. was... I figured that was a possibility for a long time, and I was glad yeah. that I saw it sort of run out, but I which do is, wonder yeah. why they don't have a better system to prevent it. But something really weird happens, and I'll get a freeze frame. Here we go. Can anyone spot the weirdness here? Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Oh, you mean the needle that doesn't reach anywhere oh, in his face? The guy, uh, when yeah, he puts he the needle in, he's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. It's just like, that's not even touching you, mate. That's not even on your skin. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not touching you, and yeah. It, mm. They probably had it stick out longer just so the audience can see it better. Yeah, if they yeah, put it further in, maybe, but needle. what a strange and specific thing to pull off, if you know what I mean. It's that like, is... That would probably be, uh, yeah, to get it in that way. He's like, hang, hang on, I gotta thread it. this through. Hang, hang, wait, <laughs> there, no, there we hang go. on, no, hold still. Um, so yeah, I, I laughed uh, when I first watched this on my own, because I was like, what? <laughs> like, you can, <laughs> what is happening? Um, and then, if you pay also, close attention... They have attention, the revolvers and the MP5s. So yeah. Dang. I, I guess one's for killing and the other one's for killing. killing. Uh, <laughs> so he grabs the pistol, and then, and I want to be very specific here, there are people in chat who know what I'm referencing, he grabs the nearest dude, okay? He doesn't grab someone for any other reason than they are the, look at that, nearest dude. That is why he grabs yeah. this person. I will not accept just so any other lies. Just so happens to be the guy who is going to discipline the cop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring that up in just a moment. So he's got him, and he's like, I'm gonna uh, blow his head off. You guys are sick. I hate you all. Then something else that's kind of weird happens, and I can't remember who I was watching it with that brought this up. It was one of you fuckers. But they all, all turn right. around and gun down every other person. Now... I saw that too, yeah. I don't... Like, a lot of people bring up, it's like, did I... they check all of their things? Well, the I timer went off, right? The logic the timer's well, yeah, but the timer went off with they Jihan. You know, yeah, but, but so they have to check to see if they finished in time. Yeah, you have to check to know yeah. that they failed. Yeah. Yeah, so time's maybe up. They, maybe they all. already got checked and they said, hey, just stand over there, all right? It's a bit weird, right, that they were checking. <laughs> oh, I, know, I, 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 I don't think so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so <laughs> I, I feel like this is weird because we, we saw with Jihan that he's like, look, mine's done on the timer, and then the guy's like, all right. And then we saw someone else who's like, I broke mine, and he pulls the gun, but then he gets taken. So everyone else, you, we have to assume that they were all checked, they failed, and then they were like, stand there, please, we will shoot you in a moment. Like, that, um, that seems yeah. good. There's no okay. way right, I'll be here stand there and let them, think. yeah. Well, Enjoy wouldn't the, the logic... Life. Wouldn't the logic be that, like, they would have seen their completed thing by then, if they had finished? No. Like, right, whoa. Not necessarily. Yeah. So... I'll, I'll say it again, and, and for those in chat who aren't following as well, we see the process for both failing and winning. Winning is, they look at your shape and go, nice. We saw with Jihan, the timer ends, and they see his shape and they go, nice. For failure, they see his shape broken, they go, wrong, boom. So why, with like 10 people, did they go, wrong, stand there? We'll be back. <laughs> well, that yeah. Yeah. There's no way that they would do that. That doesn't seem quite right. Waited. So my assumption is actually, that's what I worry about, is like, oh shit, did they get the things checked? Because if they didn't, that's not very fair. That's not fair at all. That would be very unfair of them to do that. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure. I think best faith analysis is, no, 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 they all failed. And you're like, okay. Mm. All right. It's just, it's just a bit strange with how we sort of run out. Strange. This um, breach in procedure, but okay. Yeah, because I'm willing to believe they all fucked it up. I just don't know why it worked that way. How it's... Yeah. Or not even that they all fucked it up, but they all didn't finish or complete the task. Uh, someone in chat said no witnesses is... for the incident? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Right. This, again, doesn't seem very fair, right? Yeah, and also I'm just like... Yeah, because it wasn't them who pulled the mask off. And also, let's assume that they saw his face. What are they going to do? 
Uh, yeah, and, and this is before the mask is pulled off, by the way, everybody. Also, oh yeah, that's yeah, true. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Um, that argument, benefit of the doubt. But yeah, next up, he says, lose the mask, fucker. And the guy, uh, which I found kind of interesting, he does just take it off, and it's like, but if he knows that this will kill him, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you think yeah, he just instantly he's a square. dropped prone you think or he, something? Yeah, he's a higher level pink guy. Yeah. So, I, I thought that he would know? be like, you know, I know that they'll kill me if I do this, so just shoot me then. Because, like, that's, it's either I get shot or I get shot, so. But no, he just take it straight yeah. off. And there's a, there's the reveal here of he's pretty young. Um, and I think the guy says, like, what did they do to you? Because, uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought, is that if they're, their main, all their foot soldiers are actually just super young, and I guess maybe in, taken from a young age to be indoctrinated into this system. Um, specifically, Something, that's how they can yeah. control them. I don't know. Yeah, they're all proficient with weapons, it seems. Um, extremely loyal. Uh, yeah, I, get, I can't wait to get more backstory on this. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and I, I think it's a nice touch. Kill himself? Oh, because I think he just sees there's, no, there's nothing he can do. Well, then why did he give up the hostage? Um, I think part of the fact that he gives him up is because he recognizes that he's a kid, and that this whole system is fucked, and that there's all these people aiming their guns. I don't know, it actually seemed like, I'm not sure that I would have made a different decision, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know, it seemed like he had really strong self-preservation skills until that moment, and I, uh, I'm just confused by it. I assume it's not because no he, one would do that, but... Yeah. I assume it's because yeah. he just what realized done, but... that he's gonna yeah. die with the umbrella, so he lashes out, and then after a few seconds he's like, there's no way I'm getting out of here. At least I get to go on my own terms, presumably. Uh, I can I see how so. some people would do that. I certainly wouldn't, but that's, I guess that's him. I don't have or an just, issue with it. Yeah, or just because kind of randomly didn't... shoot at the triangle men just, just to take a few out before you go, I guess. You could try that. Yeah, I, well, the I, one thought is that he, um, he has him as a hostage and they don't immediately shoot both of them. So clearly him having the hostage is working to a degree. Now, whether he could ever, like, fully escape is a whole nother thing, but I just don't know why he gives up. I thought there was a level of, uh, he doesn't even like the fact that he's doing this with what looks to be a teenager. Yeah. He, he, I he suppose sees he does let him go before he knows that. Does he? I thought that he's like, don't make me shoot you, take your mask off, and when he sees he's a kid, that's when he's like, rethinks this. I guess, yeah. yeah. Maybe he totally realizes confident. they're just all kids. And yeah, like, and oh, that this, this is all fucked. Maybe. Um, I suppose. Regardless, yeah. shoots himself, and then uh, our square there, for revealing his face, gets shot by the front man, very unceremoniously. The one thing I did like about this, by the way, is when he shoots himself, the kid doesn't move an inch. Like, he's so unfazed mm -hmm. by it, because he's just presumably yeah. seen a lot of death at this point, which is just, yeah. That's well, I hard. imagine it's all like, well, he he's probably just numb, like, realizes, well, I'm dead too, so. Yeah, yeah, Fuck that could it. be it as well. Um, yeah, uh, he's dead, and he explains that when they see your face, you're dead. They can't know you. Um, a lot of people like that. There's comments to be made about all of that, I I would say. Once they find out who you are, you die. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> I, I don't know how to just... Mm. So, Detective Man, he's wandering about. He walks up to the corpse of the square... And then it plays the sound, the 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 seed. It replays yeah, I, him saying, "We will, I will talk to you after the game," as if to tell the audience, "You see, he's safe now because this is the one who said he wanted to speak to him." It's like, oh my god. Uh, also, how would you how would you determine that? I guess he that was the only square in there, and he knew that that was the one. It wasn't guess the only one, square in there. There was another one behind. I guess he um, had an eye on him man. the whole time. But why was he allowed to stay in that room if he wasn't supposed to be there? I guess because the guy said see me uh, after the game's done, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but why would he wait? I don't know. I do uh, not fucking know. Um, you know, I don't think this makes sense. Well, you know what else <laughs> doesn't make sense, right? He picks up the square what? mask and just keeps it. How the fuck are you allowed Promotion. to do that? Promotion! You're on camera, dude. How the fuck could you pause it? Yeah, he's hugely on camera, but second of all, that's if that's as simple as it is, those things should be taken care of very much so. Like, oh, a square hat's yeah. just dropped down. Better grab it before someone else just pretends to be a fucking square. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, you would you would think they know how many squares they have, and uh, that one of them was just killed 
and that if they just see another square like out and about it it would raise some questions i would say it should do that to the least um yeah. I was very disappointed with that payoff when I saw that episode because I really loved it, everything with the game, but... Mm, mm, yeah. What in the world? Because he, he picks up the square and I think the show's vibe is like, hey, isn't that cool? He's used his ingenuity to rise through the... Like, no. <laughs> no. We didn't. He was the luckiest. <laughs> but arguably, he has made his job even harder because now he has to be the one giving instructions instead of just being told yeah. what to do and doing it. Uh, you say that, mm -hmm. Rags, but a lot of other people will be like, oh, it's smart because he can just walk through and no one will question him because he's a square. He can just do whatever he wants. Oh, those people are wrong. Very wrong. Some, All uh, of the circles will be like, some... sir, hello, what are you, like, you're our what, manager yeah, here. Yeah, what should I be doing? Yeah, what tell are the, what yeah, tell do. us what to do. You have to organize us. You have to do all these things. Whereas if you're some peon whatever, you could just, you're like, oh, just do the thing. Gotcha. I'll do mm -hmm. it. I'll just do my simple menial task and that'll be nice and easy for me. And you've got, as people you point out, it's like you have an extra square now. What the fuck? Yeah. How do you not take account for this? You guys have to be. We have lost one shape and gained another. How yep. interesting How did this, this happen? <laughs> yeah. Square didn't die after all. Yay. Man, we should shoot more of our people. We'll just get free labor. <laughs> well, now he's just got to shoot the front man and take his mask. <laughs> like, um, like, that'd be funny if he was still wearing the pink jacket, but he had the front man's mask on. <laughs> and they still just treated him like the front man because of the mask. I changed my clothing. I prefer the pink. Uh, so, Dr. Bro is moving through, and we get this, this, you could call this explanation, I don't know about that. We see someone see them on the cameras, and then he presses some buttons, and they are now on a loop of some kind where you can't tell that's what's happening, and I'm assuming he scrubbed the record of them. But this, you don't I really throw, that. yeah, I hate it too, it's too, it's just too, too, like, there's no way you're getting away with this. They the, have like the, arcade controls. He basically just pressed B twice and it deleted the footage and replaced it with the loop. And it's like, give them yeah, computers was, yeah. at least. No, yeah, well, every yeah. button is is really multiple buttons. You have the press, a double press. You have a press hold. <laughs> yeah, we learned so this really from Mark Brown. So really take what you see, multiply by press. three. Mark Brown told us all about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I really don't like is this shot because it's him being like, I hope no one in this room notices. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. You're telling me no uh, one else when nothing is fucking happening. Program this. Uh. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's another thought about this because, okay, so <gasps> we, we will find out. I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but we will find out that there are people. Last of our worries right here. now. <laughs> there are people watching that aren't here. And for any of them not to see what just happened, this can't be all live broadcast. So this has to be broadcast out later. So how does that work? How how does no one see the disappearing people? Well, yeah, the there's how someone does, out there tape, who will have been like, show. I like this doctor guy. He seems pretty... Wait, why does he keep disappearing every time the game's... What's that about? Yeah. So many holes. Um. Anyway, back to the good story. Jihan is going back and he's thinking and they replay <laughs> the scene of... Song Wu not giving him the information that he could have, and he's definitely not happy about it. But his thought is cut off by the old man being like, Hey, dude, you saved my life with the licking thing. And then he's like, No. <laughs> and it's, it's just a nice little juxtaposition, and we can just sit here happy as audience members, like, Yay, old man. Yay. Yay, licking. I mean, what? I'm, I'm pro licking. I think that's pro right. Pro licking. I'm very mm -hmm. fucking pro licking. You have no fucking clue. I bet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Ali is like, yay, our team! And Sogu's like, yes. Yes. Y yes. Team. Good. Yes. You both live, you mm -hmm. piece of shit. <laughs> uh, super awkward, but understandable. Um, yeah, and I just think it's cool that uh, Ali is just so happy to see them. It's like, oh, <laughs> Nice little team we got here. Um, what are we, some side? Yeah, uh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, kind of squid squad. <laughs> some kind of squid squad. <laughs> uh, squid. Uh, I like it. Squid squad. Some uh, kind of squid squad. Sung Woo suggests that he was wrong 
for, for doing the separating. And Jihan gets a choice here and he goes with, ah, it's fine. You couldn't have known. Choosing the what umbrella with my call. It's like, hmm. And then this is just the, mm. the beginning of Sangwoo constantly looking guilty as fuck. <laughs> just like throughout the whole season. Just like, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, and so we got winnings to go through. Good stuff, lads. A lot of people got killed. Excellent. High fives all around. Good times. And uh, it's it's pretty much just like we're in a flow now because everyone sees the cash pouring in. Lots of people smiling. Lots of like I think uh, Thugman puts his arm around the girl like, oh yeah. And it's just like, man, I guess we we've given up on the horrors of this. We just go with it now. It's like money, money, money. Yeah. <laughs> money, like money, money, money. Um, and then we get the dreaded moment of egg and water. And it's like, soda. Yeah. hmm, or soda, yeah. Uh, and he's like, bullshit, I want more. And then Lady is like, hey, if we line up twice, we can get food again. And this is going to cause issues, because apparently they only provide enough to give one of each to every person, but there's no rules on how many times you can queue up. So that means someone's going to go hangy. Um, which causes problems. Now... <laughs> yeah, we want to introduce the idea that you are actually allowed to kill people when prior it was implied you couldn't if you remember someone muscles around with someone else and they put a gun to his head and he's like oh shit and it's, it's just implied don't mm -hmm. attack people is kind of this implication so we need a way to signal to um, the players that that's a possibility now so these guys taking some food leads to someone going hungry leads to them complaining um, and then knocking the drink out of Thugman's hands until they, they have a bit of a, a tussle. And he kicks him... Because he punches him in the face first, but he's still alive after that. He kicks him in the chest several times, and that kills him. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm surprised he was surprised killed he him. was killed by that, but I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. It's not impossible, it's just a not little... Not impossible. Well, so I, the... I, I think you should have solved that a bit more. I, I mean, you had, the, you had the, the, the broken bottle right there to stab him with. But I wouldn't... I don't, yeah, that's not... If, that's not if we had Thugman with. punch him in the face, like, fucking six or seven times in a row, I'd be much more okay with it. But he looks like he's just kicking him in yeah. the belly, and he's going, oof, ah, oof, and then it's like, he's dead. And I remember when I first watched this, being like, really? Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's gone. And then you realize it's actually very important in the narrative that this happens, because they don't chastise anybody. They simply take the body away and drop money into the in the bank, which means... Yeah. There is an alternative. You can kill each other. Yeah. Which I, I think they could have done that better. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very clearly setting that up. Which, by the way, that's hugely important going forward. Obviously. Yes. Don't worry, guys. If you just follow the rules, you can make it to the end. <laughs> it's that easy. Well, so, yeah. I guess that'll be another seed for talking ultimately about how the rules work and what fairness means in this world. But we'll have to get a little further before we talk about that, probably. Um, yep. So yeah, that guy's out, and he's like, this Thugman, he's a bastard, he killed them, boo! But then it's just become clear that that's fine, actually. It's like, oh. And so, <laughs> now everyone already starts talking about all this, like, tonight's gonna be bad, because if you can kill people, the Thugman team is probably gonna try and wipe people out. Mm -hmm. Um, But before we talk about that, this is the- Yeah? I'm, I'm willing to give up the pretense now. There are two plot lines in this show. One of them is really entertaining and interesting. Yeah. The other one is ass. The other one is <laughs> yeah. ass. Yeah. And it here didn't we have to be ass. Didn't even have to it, be. it's not ass in concept, right? Yeah. Even it if is. it ended the way ass it did, it didn't have to be this ass. It didn't have to be this ass. It could have been really interesting. That could have been our way of how do we, as the audience, learn about this organization? It's through the detective who's infiltrated mm -hmm. this place, and he's doing the best he can. Also, we have our other cast of characters who are in the game. Mm -hmm. I thought originally that was kind of what they were going for, which sort of is the case, but again, the execution, it is, it is, it is ass. It is ass. Not as, ass. Regular good old-fashioned ass. I know <laughs> ass, and this is no good ass. Sorry. No. Um, this is bad ass. But in a bad way. This is bad, bad ass. <clears throat> yeah, really disappointed with detective. Right, because I'm, I, I'm glad we don't have to push I, too I hard on the detective stuff. Seems a lot of people are already on board with it. But we will explain all of it. Don't worry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Mm. I was just 
kind of ignoring everything that happened with him, like <laughs> all the inconsist inconsistencies. I mean, like I was like, oh man, I wonder where this is going to end up. I was the same oh, on man, my first watch was... through, and me too. Where, yeah. where it ends up is why I take so much issue with all of it. Yeah, and now that yeah. we go back, knowing what happened, I was like, man, oh, what a waste such of a life. shame. <laughs> um, Plant a little seed. Oh. Yeah, so we're seeing everyone deal with the with with, with the good old um, coffins. Off to the side is a circle who just looped off his mask and he's popping on the square one. And like, how? No issues. How no are issues you allowed here. to do that? How is this system... How? <laughs> and uh, I think we're supposed to believe, and this is something I've gotten from people who like this show, that he's pocketing the circle one and he puts that back on when he needs to go to sleep and stuff. So he just pops on the square one whenever he needs to be authoritative, but nobody notices a thing. Even though they have specific amounts of squares and circles in any place at any time. Seems like something you just wouldn't be able to get away with. And no. it seems like something that not only you couldn't get away with, it's not something that you'd want to try and get away with. No, you might even because say it's pretty fucking stupid. Know this place. Absolutely. Yeah. The smart Keep decision. Keep your fucking head down and yeah, obey. The... Just do what you're told. Nice and easy. Don't rock the boat instead of, yep, I'm going to be given the orders. You betcha. Smart decision I'm in charge. would have I know, been. I know all I know. of them now. Holy yeah. shit! How lucky am I as a detective that the one person that fucking found me out died? I should take this as a chance to just be a normal circle. Instead, he's like, "I'ma take his mask." You're like, this. <laughs> what a smart move, detective man. Anyway, <laughs> he uh, someone's yeah. like, "Hey, you." And I think the show thinks it's so clever because he's like, "Why aren't you doing your job?" And he turns around. He's like. You have to have permission to speak to your superiors. Like, it's the thing that they say to him when he first did that. It's like, oh, yeah. look at that. He's <laughs> lending. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I guess you can say it's, that. Yeah. <laughs> how, we, how we got to this point is the issue. I'm Very just much so. he's done. I don't believe this character is smart enough to do that. <laughs> I like the idea that the triangle is like, wow, there's not supposed to be any fucking squares here. But okay, hello, sir. <laughs> yeah, I also find it strange that the whole operation functions smoothly and effortlessly when the, like the, you know, the circles can't tell the squares anything, you know? Like you have to you wait for them to have permission being... to speak, yeah. I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an odd choice. Especially if a triangle sees a square being really uh, suspicious. And like he Sucks. wants to go tell another square and just stands in front of him waiting for permission to speak. Uh, maybe they're allowed to say sir? I don't know. Maybe. Who knows. Um, but yeah, uh, you're able to infer it before they're explicit about it, but Doctorman is chopping up bodies and getting organs out of them. And you're like, what in the world is that? Disgusting. Oh um, That's not kind. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a moment, but yeah, all the groups are, are speculating on like, so we're all gonna die. This sucks. Uh, we gotta group up and fight. And um, yeah, I think Sangwoo was just like, everyone's gotta, you gotta team up, be strong. While uh, Oldman is like falling asleep in the background. And so it's like, eh, you know, please help. Um, and yeah, uh, Jihan offers Andrew um, a chance to join. <laughs> And yeah. and she's like, fuck it, I don't trust anybody here. And then he says, um, I think he says, you don't trust people here. You trust people here because you have to, or something like that. Um, just meaning that if you don't work with someone, you're, you're donezo in this place. Uh, That's actually probably important for a conversation about theme. I've read yeah. an interview or two where the uh, writer-director has talked about that that idea specifically that you don't trust people because they're trustworthy you trust them because you have no better choice um, yeah which is basically what he says an interesting thought go trust somebody I'm sorry it, wait is like yeah i was about to say like i'm sorry he feels that way um well no he's uh, talking about in I that guess, squid inter... game specifically i don't know if he's oh yeah about that, that in life. that case all right okay because well okay, the director like definitely feels that way you can tell from interviews the director is very cynical we can talk about oh you know in, uh, oh. authorial intent. I was gonna say, if he really feels on. like that about life, that sucks, because I've met plenty of people that are that does thoroughly suck. trustworthy. Yeah, like I'm legit. Yeah. He needs to find more cool people. Like Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, Santa probably cool. too long. Like, Santa Claus is really fair about the whole naughty nice thing, you can trust that. 
pretty good rules. Um, but yeah, they scan, and uh, number 29, or 28, sorry, is in the, the organ room, and it's like, oh, wait, if you guys remember, number 28 was the one that was looking at 29 funny. And then they're like, where's 29? It's like, 29's not showing up. And so, I almost want to talk about this when it gets to be a little bit more content, but yeah. we'll put a big pin I, in I that. I understand, yeah. Put an enormous we'll put pin, pin in that. The pin we'll, is huge. We'll, it's a, it's we'll a, water yeah. that seed. <laughs> That seed is we're almost fully grown. We we are almost to the point where we'll have to talk about this. We've yeah, we've got like, fruit mm. on that vine. Oh yes. Well, yeah. We'll just keep that in mind. Um, they pass uh, the doctor an egg, and that's got the clue in it. He's gonna have a little note for the next game. However, they like just make sure you focus on surviving tonight. And he's like, "Whoa, what do you mean?" And he's like, "Tonight they're gonna weed out the weaklings," which. <laughs> I have questions about that. I, I have. Might want to hang on to that statement until <laughs> we talk later about other stuff. Yeah, okay. And it, and they follow up with saying it's all a part of the game. It's like, um... This seems like it's... Mm. That doesn't seem like it's part of the game, but okay. Mm. All right, yeah, fine. Doesn't, doesn't. Okay. And they say, stick with the strongest. That's the only way you'll live. And uh, to mm, me, stronger. that's a little bit more overt in terms of maybe a point they want to be trying to make in general, but uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll we'll let that happen for a moment. We'll come back to it. Um, gets his note, and he gets to join the thug team by giving them that he has the information on the next game, which makes complete sense. Meanwhile, yep. mm -hmm. God, it's so frustrated. Squareman is just walking around, seemingly awkwardly, away yeah. from where other people are going. He doesn't know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. He's just walking. You <laughs> Which is he's the same in swimming even, downstream. Even as a as a square, like they all have assigned roles they have to do. Yeah, and he apparently because mm -hmm. it seems like they're like a strict schedule of everything to get yep. this all done. And, uh, but then he's just running around and no one bats an eye. Was this like, look hmm. right here where he's like, "What's going on? Oh, there's a space for me. <laughs> okay, I'll go here." It's so, like, come on. I guess, I'll, I'll guess this was made <laughs> just for me. <laughs> Guess I'll check it out. Uh, yeah, some my designated location is right over there. Apparently his body language, his voice, his lack of any weaponry, like, none of this is a problem. He can just walk the fuck around and do whatever he wants. This is like, god, oh, this is so lame. Yeah. But fine, mm. I guess. Someone in the chat pointed out, how exactly did they get a note inside of a hard-boiled egg with a shell on it? <laughs> they injected it. <laughs> right. You can inject yeah. notes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe they. How did I not think of that? It's so stupid. There's that, and also the fact that they didn't just tell him. They, uh, you're absolutely right. I've never understood this whole. We give you these weird because the clue I assume reads tug of war, right? But you could just be like, yeah, tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't the note just say you will have to form a team and play tug of war to win? <clears throat> well. I, I, I'm, I understand they've got limited uh. space, but we're literally, it's less evidence and more detailed to just say it to him instead of putting <laughs> tug of war in a note in an yeah. egg. What the fuck? Yeah. How do you get I a understand. note in an egg? What the fuck? Exactly. But from what I understand, by the fourth game, I believe they just don't tell him. <clears throat> and like, that's what causes there oh, to we'll be get a there. big fat problem. So yeah, yeah we'll get there. Um. So that would be why they're not, at least that's why they're not being be told back. straight up by the third game. Now we get a scene. So Go we'll ahead. go because we'll, go we'll get to these things, okay? The seeds we have planted are already coming to fruition. We get in there. Um, this is that we're almost halfway through now. How scary is that? <sighs> Only at four and a half hours. <laughs> oh man. I'm and very upset really that we're because I'm, we've got very I'm really long upset we're not doing this on a Saturday now. <laughs> well, uh, so I've, I've caught the floops, haven't I? Hmm? I Sorry? I'm the I'm the floop this time around. What where, do you mean? Uh, Discord Discord uh fucks with it. What do you mean? With what? the audio coming through. Oh, you sound fine. You know how, oh, okay. You know, it's You're just fine. usually in every call there's uh there's one floop who doesn't like I haven't noticed anybody. I was somebody else. I haven't noticed anybody this time. Um, well, yeah. Ah. But anyway, it's probably worth saying that uh, you you might be. By the way, I I haven't noticed it yet. Uh, oh well, everybody noticed. everybody in chat. <laughs> Some people are saying that it's uh drowning it out. I will I will keep an ear out for it. What I will say though is um 
very unlikely we're going to be able to do Super Chats today uh, when we're not even through Episode 4. Well, yeah, what I was going to say is um, we're not through Episode 4 yet, and plus, we're holding off a lot. Yeah, lots of, of discussions. Um, a lot of discussions, yeah. So, next we get a scene that I thought was pretty neat. Um, the Not necessarily for the wider context, just for the... The, the way the lighting works, and just trying to uh, follow the, the action, but then all the things that the individuals do in this scene. Um, okay, yeah. hold on. Before, right, right before we get to that, so they decide to start building barricades uh, around their little corners. Or I don't think they've done that in this. Might... No, that's, no, that's, that's after, that's after oh, the fighting. You're right, you're right. I yeah. jumped the gun. Um, everybody in the, at this point is fearful something may happen, and they're right. Yeah. Like, people start dying and screaming and stuff. Um... I think they said, if anything should happen, we should meet up. Because I don't think everyone's convinced that there'll just be murders, but there are. Uh, specifically Thugman, just digging his glass bottle into people. So, um, the flashing lights are happening, it's like, confusing what's happening with everybody, and um, Thugman immediately goes after good old Andrew. What he doesn't expect is that she's got the knife, and so that gives her, um, let's say, a fighting chance, and... Uh, I think that's where you would say that's why it was important that she has that knife, not just for the vent and the clue, but also the fact that she may have died without it. Um, so it's significant as a consequence for her to be able to have it, which I don't think they very well justified, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, she is just kind of escaping. I think Jihan is noticing it all fall apart, and then his like set of beds is pushed down. And we get into... I don't know that I would claim... There's some longer shots in this that are pretty cool. Um, despite the fact that it's hard to quite make out everything that's happening because of the flashing. But uh, lots of people getting torn to shreds. Terrifying stuff. Um, but there's this moment of like back and forth thing where I think... Uh, someone goes to hit Jihan. And um, as that's happening and they're pretty successful... Uh, Ali grabs their weapon... And then Sung Woo hits that person when they've lost their weapon, and then he gets hit away, Ali follows up, like, there's a lot of teamwork in this bit that's pretty cool. Yeah. Just, um, our lads looking after themselves. And yeah, the three of them are like, we gotta find Oldman, and Oldman's disappeared. Don't know what's going on with that. Um, and I think the next significant event is that, uh, Andrew walks up to them and is like, yo, uh, I would like to join the team now. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, this isn't going as great. I think she said something like, you said to meet here, right? And um, uh, Jihan actually pushes her out of the way of Thugman. Uh, another big, big old fight breaks out with lots of people sort of following up for other people. Until Ali grabs like a big pole and like swings it back and forth just to separate out a line. <laughs> it's kind of neat in terms of just like, again, strength boy. Um, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I think uh, Thugman is just like, just give her up, let us kill her, we're just thinning the herd. And then Jihan is like, bro, she's on our team. And uh, a nice little shot of her realizing that, which is big for her, because she doesn't trust anybody. But uh, she's clearly seen ah. these lads, but despite barely knowing her, actually defending her with their lives, so... It's gotta be worth something. Um, and I think uh, that's when Oldman gives a speech about please stop fucking killing each other, this is horrible, we're all gonna die, please don't. And, uh... First run through, you see Frontman noticing that, and then he's like, okay, stop, which I think second run through is kind of, there's an extra angle there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And yeah, the, the lads walk in, and Square is, like, leading them. It feels so weird, because you know that he has no idea what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. charge, I guess. Ooh, I don't have a surely weapon. Surely <laughs> he's expected to give orders, but he doesn't. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah, lucky that this is one of those times where the square doesn't have to fucking say anything at all. But this is the one time, possibly the one time, I can't think of any others, where the, the plots cross over and he simply walks up to Jihan and says, Hey, do you know where this person is by name? And then Jihan's like, they don't do names here. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Super interesting. Right. Which is why I can believe this was tacked on, by the way. Uh, yeah. Just, it's just no consequences. Just, yeah. um, but Thugman loses the knife that he took off um, Andrew, and I think... I don't know if they... Do they get a lighter, or does she still have that? I can't remember. Uh, don't remember. Um, well, the Thugman gave it back to her as they were walking back from the game. So she... Hmm. 
I don't remember. Well, if they, they do have a smoke. They they do have a smoke yeah. after they have their sexy time. So I guess they still have it at this point. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. I wonder if that was always a, a backup plan. Burn the rope to separate the rope. I don't know. <laughs> that probably would work because hmm. they would just. I don't know. It could fuck up in a lot of ways. Anyway, uh, so that happens. A lot of people were killed. I don't know the exact number. Um. Yeah, our team is just. Uh, I'm pretty sure if there were like a hundred, basically like a hundred people left, and then it was eighty afterward. Yeah, it was a hundred. Yeah, something like seven that. before, and then it ended yeah. with eighty. Um, I guess that's convenient that it's a nice round even number mm -hmm. for the next game. Well, well, I I'm sure that they have plans if you know because half the time this these shenanigans happen, it will be a, an odd number left. So they. I'm I'm totally fine with the idea that they have plans in case there's not a yeah, proper number would, of people left. Sorry. Some form of a contingency. Yeah. Um then like our a team different game. Maybe Or they just <laughs> There are reasons or the, against or that. Or the odd person out just gets to pass. Well we saw yeah, we saw what happens when there's an odd person in Venice. Yeah, and that's, I hate that's that. one of the reasons. We'll come back to it. Um So they're all like, Yay, we survived. Now let's share names with each other. And, um, Sabiok, like I said, is, is her name. That's probably not pronouncing it mm -hmm. properly, but that's the best I can do, damn it. Uh, We're trying. Fine. Yeah, me alone. And, um, they're all like, Oldman, what's your name? And spends a decent amount of time trying to remember it, but can't. And Jihan sort of laughs uh -huh. it off. It's like, ha, ah, I don't even remember where I live sometimes. It's chill. Yeah, sometimes I'm stressed out. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice thing for him to say. He's fucking really good to the old dude. This, uh... Yeah, you, you, friends you know what they're up to when <laughs> they're writing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I th I think at that point as a viewer, you're like, oh boy, I hope this the brain thing doesn't play into one of the games at some point because that's going to be tragic as hell. I think Mel, you literally said that while we were watching it, actually. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. said it again. What did I say? That uh, you you're worried as Alzheimer's is going to fuck with one of the games. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Dun, dun, um, dun. Someone in chat said this goes nowhere. I'm not Wait, sure what goes nowhere? I'm not sure what they're referring to. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the money is is pushed in, and um, then Oldman and Crazy Lady have the big sex, and I would argue it's specifically because she would have realized from episode two, three, that um, that's something he wants. And so it's probably good for survival strategy, because as soon as they're doing it, she's like, yo, we're going to last together, right? Me and you? And he's like, sure. So, um, worth, worth giving that a shot, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and back to Detective Man. Smart move. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He's, he's having himself a little sleep, and he's updating his notepad, as you do. <laughs> He's got shapes, rank, mass leader, gun massacre, riot, abetting murder, my brother. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> These notes are shite. Yeah. He needs a he needs a reminder that that's who he's looking for. My brother. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I mean, these are or notes that is, of shit he's or. seen. It's like you haven't seen your brother. Shut the fuck up. But like, why not write notes that make sense to someone who finds them in case you don't make it? I don't know. Um, no, so he hears the coughing again, and he figures, hey, that could be Morse code. And um, he has a look at it, and it reads out number 29. So the guy coughing is trying to get number 29's attention. It's like, okay. Wonder where that goes. I know you all you guys don't know. Hmm. Uh, no, I'm, I'm curious. I'm just as curious as you are, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about time, I think, that we... Prep for this next game. Um, yeah, 29 and 28 giving themselves looks at each other. He's put away his square this time. He's putting on the circle. Like, keeping it on, I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll catch up with more on that in future. But here comes the shocking anti-feminist moment in this show. Where he, where he says, collect men for our team. We don't want women or old people. Like, oof. Oof. Because, um... Yeah, uh, Song was pretty straightforward. He just says, "Look, whatever this thing's gonna be, it's more than likely better to be a strong guy, young to middle aged. That's just what we want. So do it." Everyone in our current team 
of which he's not happy about, by the way, having a man and a, and a, a old man and a lady. He's like, everyone yeah. go grab a guy. Um, I think after, oh yeah, uh, so they're all, they're all sent out to grab an able-bodied uh, person, and it's just interesting to see the results, but um, one of the things he says to Ali before we're going to do it is hide the fact that you've lost two fingers because it'll make you look weak. Which is uh, a little harsh, but potentially true, well, so maybe it's worth it. Yeah, it's good advice if you want them to, you know, you don't want to look weak so people will join our team, yeah. I think it's the idea with, with Song Wu, it's just like, that's a little bit insensitive, but it may lead to our victory, it's, so... <laughs> it's yeah, like, it ain't the place yeah. for sensitivities, necessarily. Not quite, no. Uh, and so, I think Ali finds someone relatively quickly, and... I think it's because, do they share religion? Is that the connective piece that he, um... Gets him on? I think, I'm not sure. Because, uh... Obviously oh, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. Um, Oldman's having no luck at all. Just like, nobody's gonna talk to him about anything, obviously, which sucks. Uh, and Sangwoo is like, hey, dude, you can join us. And the dude's like, um, yeah, if you can bring my wife. And he's just like, we have too many women, bye. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's like, oof. <laughs> and the, fa the fact that he says we have too many girls or they have one. Like, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's definitely making sure he gets this shit know. done. Um, <laughs> you know what? It's funny to rewatch, but uh, you guys remember the religion man? Uh, yeah, yeah. Later yeah. episodes. Uh, uh, that's oh, how the one. I forget. That, yeah, that's uh, uh, Jihan brings him in on this, uh, the rope thing. Um, and yeah, and there's a girl who's just chilling out on her own. No one's chatting with her, and uh, uh, Andrew brings her in, and so. That's essentially our results, knowing there that we've got four dudes, but we're missing, or I say four dudes, four people who have been brought in, uh, but we haven't, the old man wouldn't have brought anybody in. So, like, how's it going to work? Meanwhile, everyone has sorted themselves into teams with Crazy Lady being booted out by Thug Team, because they would rather have nine, ten guys than nine guys and a girl. Which means, who ends up with her? I mean, it seemed it was kind of nicely done for me because they, they were they were all discussing the fact that they had died, and then she just walks into frame like, "Hey!" It's like, "Ah, oh no!" <laughs> and um, yeah, I think Song Wu was like, "I told you to get dudes," and um, the bonus girl is like, "I guess I'll leave then." And then uh, Jihan is like, "No, no, 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 stay." And it's just representative of the very much dichotomous perspectives right now. Because you don't want to be that guy, but at the same time, you're like, dude, we could die. Like, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. It sucks, but okay, yeah, let's just be nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, they get a third girl, because they've really got no choice. And then you find out the game, as we've kind of mentioned already, is Tug of War, which tug is like, war. oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool environment, um, but this would be an example where you have to have losers. The other games you didn't, so far. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Technically, yes. This kind of dramatically shifts it in that respect, and I think I think uh, especially it should shift the idea in people's heads about like what what chance they have of making it to the end if they just follow the rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh... like we're getting into zero sum game territory. Well, so that's, uh, that will come up, actually, I think, in the next episode, so we can talk about it. But, uh, yeah, this is a moment of everyone's looking at their teams. Thugman's team is just all dudes, and then our team is, like, strong dude, strong dude, girl, girl, old man, girl. <laughs> like, uh, hmm. Pretty fragile. Um, and so, of course, in the, in the way they pr should probably do it, we get to see an example game first. Uh, I think it's Thugman team versus... Just set of ten people I don't think we really recognize. Um, this is a pretty high-stakes game of tug-of-war. I'm assuming you guys have all played tug-of-war IRL at some point, maybe. I have yeah, played tug-of-war at some point, absolutely. Um, yeah. so I said this, I can't remember if it was to Fringy or all of you, but um, this was an incredibly satisfying episode for me because I learned in good old PE strategies for tug of war that go well beyond strength. Ooh. And I was like, I hope these come up because that's going to be the way that they escape this because they're not winning on strength. And that's going to be the point, I think. 
And um, mm -hmm. obviously, yeah, so we first get an example of the team, they just get dragged off. They have like a guillotine sort of thing that chops the, the, the rope. And I did wonder at one point, like, imagine it didn't quite cut it. That would be yeah. fucking <laughs> terrible. It'd be like, holy fuck, you guys got a bit of hold on. Um, <laughs> until we get it reset. But well, yeah. I guess they're chained to it. They don't have to hold on. Oh, no, not those ones. The the ones that are pulling on the other side. Oh, yeah, the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, be stressful. But yeah, uh, it always chops it. So, yeah, it's fine. But um, yeah, we get our team versus team of dudes. Um, also, in the meantime, we spot a circle sort of smearing a cross of blood on one of the coffins. Now, that, um, we see it later, and it's dried really well. When you put a dab yeah. of blood on a glove and write a cross with it, that shit is just probably going to dry clear when it's that thin on a black box. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But, whatever, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like, it's, you know what, it's a part of the detective plot line, so we'll just ignore it for now. Uh, okay. So yeah, our teams go up, and they're all like shitting on the old dude for being like, he's gonna be the reason we lose. And then he's like, let me tell you the things I know about Tug of War. And he basically lays out everything I knew about Tug of War. So I was very satisfied by this, meaning... Yeah, and I, I didn't know I, this, so it was nifty for me to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it all made, made sense when I listened to it. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I can see that being a thing. Yeah, yeah you... And uh, then was like, yeah, that is a thing. I was like, oh, nice. For those listening, you got you put your strongest guy at the back. He's like an anchor. Then you put, um, I think, he's like progressively stronger as you prog so like then weakest, and you you go to strongest by the time you hit the end again. You need mm -hmm. people alternating each side, which I think if you look at some of the ways people set up in this, they have like seven on one side and then three on the other. So it's very much like they're not really thinking about it. While our team does it like uh, every other one is on each side. Then there's a, when you start, you don't uh, pull per se, or you don't like try to tug it forward to your end, you just, you just hold your position. Um, yeah, you squeeze it under your arms, and then pull back, and then like stay there and anchor your legs. So the, and, and he specifically says, because this shit is going to make the enemy confused or frustrated, and then they will slip up, like inevitably, because they're going to be like, the fuck, and then... Um, it's all delivered quite, I quite like the way they do all of this, like we see all of it unfolding as he's explaining the rules and by the time he reaches the first sort of idea of how this would work, we start to already see it tugging, so it's just all, it's all really lined up really well, paced well I guess I should say. Um, and yeah, one of them slips, and so Jihan lets them all know and they start tugging, they're doing real well, until we get a problem which is that they recover and this team's raw strength is just not pulling them through and they're starting to lose, our team. And there's only one thing else I knew about Tug of War, which is like a, a, a risky tactic, but that you walk forward to uh, make the other side fall, and then you pull back. Um, and I was hoping they'd do it, and they did. Yeah. And that's, um, that's the climax for the episode. We see them walk forward, and then it cuts. <gasps> What I gotta wonder is, the person at the front of the line of the rope, like, how did he not die from, like, falling on all of the bodies of his friends? You'd think that, like, the guy in front of the line, who's about to die, all of- everybody else hits the floor, but he's gotta land on all the bodies, right? Do you mean the one at the back would theoretically fall on all the bodies? No, no, the guy in the oh, back- Oh no, you're right, it would be the front, yeah. Because they're dangling, yeah. right? The guy in the back is hitting the ground first. Right. So imagine it's like the guy at the front of the line, he's the last to hit the body. He'd probably like land on the bodies and he'd be fine. He's I don't like, know if he'd be dead. fine. Playing? Yeah, but he I could mean, he survive. wouldn't die right yeah. away. Well, if you remember, uh, there's a guy who does survive, right? And they, they take him in for the doctor. They just kind of cram him in the box anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've seen that before in episode one. Even if you're not dead, they'll just incinerate you anyway. Oof. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun life. Um... <laughs> But yeah, uh, particularly tensionful, which is quite the thing to celebrate for this show, considering um, we're, like they would never kill all of the main characters, but at the same time you worry for them, or at least I did. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Once again, Gihan almost dies. Oh no! He do indeed. Oh, he get pulled right oh. off. Um, and yeah, and I think this was noticed by several people I've watched this show with, but uh right when it's pretty much clear that they're going to win um, because of the progress they've made and that the other, other team are going to lose, I think we get a shot of Gihan's face like understanding yeah. that is the case and he's not exactly happy. No, not happy that he's... 
re responsible for the deaths of the others, pretty much. Yeah, it's right there. Like, once they've knocked them off What's balance, they're pulling them off, he looks genuinely concerned. While Songwu is just like, yeah, rawr, yeah. kill them, <laughs> piss on their corpses. Argh. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, uh, it's pretty rough because in order to win, you have to kill all of them. And this is the first time that that's been more explicitly true. And yeah, it takes a toll, which is good because mm -hmm. it should. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can sort of breathe a breath of fresh air. She's like, fuck, our team did survive this, even though the odds were against them. But I feel like they really earned this, uh, writing wise. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, uh, it just gives you appreciation for Oldman and uh, Song Wu, because he's the one that mentions this three steps forward thing, which gets them through. Um, and we get, I think, in the elevator, uh, Godman is, is praying, and girl who we've known for very little is like, fuck you praying for, that was these two that got us through that, not God. And uh, I think she even says, yeah. like, you've sent them to heaven or whatever, those people, does that make you, like, she asks a whole bunch of questions where it's just like, I don't know. He's just praying. <laughs> like just, he's just, just God's just dumb. Alone. You know God's dumb. God's dumb. <laughs> you, God well, dumb, so though. this is this is the thing. I actually would have found it a little bit cringe if not for what we hear from her later. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, I have no fucking problem with people praying to leave him alone, but at the same time, she has very big issues with religion. Uh, Indeed, she does. And yeah, I think most of the team is just like, can we go home? This sucks. <laughs> this has been horrible. <laughs> Meanwhile, Thugman team are all like smiling and laughing. They're like, yeah, we did it. We beat the fuck out of those. It's like, God, I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> our team uh, yeah. walk, like our team like stumble in and Thugman team's like, what? Like, what? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> we go again? How is Oldman alive? How is Girl alive? It's, it's all, they must have cheated. That's what it is. Um. But yeah, we don't actually see the third game happen. Uh, not like we necessarily need to, but hey, you know. And, uh, yeah, we're seeing more of whatever happened with that blood cross unfold over time. I I don't know how to... I guess we'll just try and do this as the scenes come up instead of... Um, before we leave this uh, room, now might be a decent time to bring up the fact that uh, illustrations of the games are on the walls the entire time. Well, we were going to bring that up at some point. Um, this is I, the time I think everyone there is kind of verging on dumb for not having noticed. Because so, when, when they come after Tug of War, everything's been rearranged. Yeah, and, I know what you uh, mean. Um, I'll do you one even better. When I first saw that they were on the walls, I thought that was really neat. And then I thought about it for longer and I was like, actually, no, someone should have noticed this. Yes. Uh, and not just now, but literally um, from as early as the start. Exactly. Especially Anyone who had a bed right up against the wall could have seen him. Yeah. If Only anybody was going to notice, it's going to be Song Wu. He's been paying attention the most. Somebody has to notice. When you're in notice. that room all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, you ain't got much else going on in your life for most of the day. So. That is such an amazingly bad design choice. I think they they wanted it to be a neat reveal, but it just it just makes me think like, oh man, someone should have spotted that. And some of the diagrams are very clearly the games they're playing. Yes. And the tug and of no war one, one ever brings it up. Yeah, tug of war one's huge as a giveaway. Just stick yeah. figures holding a rope. It's just like that's tug of war. There's not really much else so, to interpret there. So the so the guy who is operating, who um, who is like, tell me about the game, tell me about the game. Do you think the guys in the mask were like, hey, should we tell them, should we tell them? So that's actually <laughs> where it creates a more legitimate problem outside of the one we just mentioned. Yep. Uh, I don't know that I believe that they, well, we're getting there. We're very close to that now, so we'll get, this is actually yes. the thing. Episode five might be my least favorite episode. For me, I know a lot of people have different picks, um, but I remember it as being the one that was kind of shit before episode six. And it's, there's so much detective plot line in this one. Um, there's some good character stuff, but oh, we're gonna have to talk all about the organs now. Organs, <laughs> organs. I love me. I I love. I'm pro organ. I love organs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else? Or did you, yeah, that's right. That? No, no. Just I just wanted to publicly express my my like my preference towards. I'm pro organ. I I really like organs. organs you might even are, say you're pro organ. Kind of great. No. Uh -huh. 
You're not pro-organ? Damn. All right. That's, yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm pro-organ, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. Yeah, I, 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 didn't catch, I, I didn't catch the games on the wall until they were only three people left. And that's the thing. I think that's fair for us not to notice because yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not in the room. Yeah, we're trying to pay attention to the story and characters. We don't live in that room mm -hmm. for days. Because yes. I, yeah, I saw I it, I was like, are they, are they in the same room than before, or are they in a different room? Uh, I will probably, say it creates be... a very, very frustrating viewing experience when you notice right after the tug of war game, and then wonder why none of our smart characters ever bring it up. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So, where was I going to go? What was I doing? I don't even know. Uh, they, she's kind of a uh, crazy lady. It's like, wow, we work so great as a team. And then Ali's pointing out, you fucking suck. You were like, nah, let's not do the plan. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, you were whining like me, 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 like that. If you guys listen to the dub for this, it is cringeworthy. I just want to die. <laughs> I don't know who dubs crazy yeah. lady's voice, but I've seen so many clips of her. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> Please have mercy. Um, I I don't think I've wanted a character to die so much in quite some time. Have you seen Train to Busan? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. There's a guy in that that I assume everybody always wants to die over and over again. Uh, oh, for sure. I find her more obnoxious anytime she appears on screen. She might be more but, obnoxious, uh, but she's much less of a horrible person. <laughs> like, oh yeah, don't don't. Don't get me wrong, it's just anytime she appears on screen, I go, uh... Yeah, well, like, Darth Vader's a horrible person, but I wasn't like, yeah, I can't wait till this guy dies. I'm like, more of yeah. him, more of him, more of Vader. Yeah, but Vader's cool. He, he wears black She mask. is no... What we're trying to say is, she is no <laughs> Darth Vader. I can see that argument. I can see that she is not Darth Vader. There's a lot there <laughs> that I can see. She is no understand. Darth Vader. <laughs> on our villain tier list, she is significantly below Darth Vader. Um... I guess I'll go. I'll go to bat for a little bit. I don't. Um, I'm more interested in the fact I don't hate that it, though. she's clearly um, doing everything she can to survive as a person that doesn't have a lot to offer. Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't have an issue with her as a character uh, in that regard. Um, I understand fine annoying. No, she's, she's no Darth Vader. Poorly I written. I just can't stand her, and I want her to die. I think that was the idea, pretty <laughs> much. She was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and there's there's a good little moment here where they're talking about their plans now, and the fucking the god dude is like, "We should find a weak team and go after them first. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, okay. And she says, I'm "For down, a resident geez. priest, you sure are bloodthirsty." And then he just says, "Everyone's hands are bloody." It's like, hmm, the way to justify it, I suppose. But yeah, everyone getting closer and closer, just being cool with killing everyone else. I assume that's relevant to the overall point being mm. made. Um. Mm. So, yeah, uh, I think they decide they commit to uh, barricading, which makes some sense. Uh, it's the best thing you can do in this environment, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Especially being locked in the <laughs> fucking room. And, uh, uh, hey, look at that diagram on the wall. They're like, I right know, next to I them. know. That's interesting. There's no way they wouldn't notice. It's impossible. Uh, specifically, I, I, like, I'll agree with you. Like They should have noticed before, but now there's literally a tug-of-war image. Come on. <laughs> hey, <fine>. guys. Uh... <laughs> What's this supposed to be? Um, but something I do like here is is Thugman's like, lol, I'm, we're gonna come kill all of you. And then he's like, bro, you're like teamed up with a whole bunch of people who want to win, and you're the strong one. Don't you think, <laughs> you know? And when I was watching this, I was just like, yeah, I'd be worried if I were you. Also, is, is the stream down? Oh, oh no. No, we're good. Yeah, it's a, a little, little hiccup, but it's, it's, it's oh. all good. Okay, apparently we're good. Uh, Alright, that's good. Definitely good uh, that we're good. a good point being made by Jihan, though. It's like, you should be more concerned. And what I think is less said here, but very true, is that uh, Thugman concludes, probably shouldn't weak out the weaker one, uh, weed out the weaker ones, because isn't it better to have more red shirts for myself, in a yeah. sense? And I think that's yeah, what he concludes. Sure. It's like, yes, team, we could go and kill all of them, but then I don't want to split my team in half and start killing that half. It's like, we'll just keep them around so that they can always be the ones that die. I think that's the angle. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just complicated. And, and that's the thing that, that makes me question why they deliberately, the, the organization deliberately starts a fight so they'll thin out the weakest. Like, that's their reasoning, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's an incentive strategy that will 
definitely thin out the weakest, especially if anyone has the idea to kill the stronger contestants. And I wonder from an entertainment standpoint, like the people watching this as a show in universe, are they entertained mm -hmm. by everyone killing each other at night? Or would they be like, no, 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 I want the games. I want, the I want them, yeah. I like the games. I like them participating uh, in games. Yeah, not just there is a lot to each talk other in about the that. Yeah. yeah. We're getting closer to it. Knowing they that. Don't seem, they don't yeah. seem to care much for actual gamesmanship and sport, uh, but we'll get into that. So, um, I think they're just talking about their shifts and they eventually commit. Meanwhile, uh, oh yeah, I think fast forwarding, we just have um, Song Wu and Ali are the first on on shift. And I think they share food again. Good, good happy lads. Song food. Yeah. Nice. Um, I think they share some history with each other here. Um, this is definitely a series of character moments, because this, this whole episode we're not going to be getting another game. I think that's how they try and pace it out. Um, I guarantee you, it could actually have been that the original series had, like, game, and then episode two, getting them back in, and then every other episode was a game. And then Netflix mm -hmm. were like, it's gotta be longer than just the six, seven episodes, whatever. Um, yeah, it's possible. We didn't, learn from, we didn't learn from Chernobyl, and it's five episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Midnight Mass was seven, you know? That, that was great. No, it was six episodes <laughs> and a mistake. <laughs> six and <laughs> six and some weird thing that happened. We don't know. We don't talk about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, like this sequence is, I think, them explaining to each other their motives. Because Ali is like, need money, family flumes. Um, which is interesting to think about in terms of other characters learning about what other people have at stake. Um, he basically says in Pakistan, like, all of his family are going to be reliant on... Uh, him being able to make some money. Uh, meanwhile, some other people here may not have situations like that, and it's something to think about. Um, even Song Wu is having trouble listening to him say, like, he's got a one year old he's looking out for, because Song Wu's biggest investment, I would say, is going to be his mother in case the loan sharks come for her. Mm -hmm. But um, ultimately, a lot of what he's doing this for is to pay off his own debts. It gets. It's something to think about, right? It's like. Is it. Is it more comp is is it more important that you survive or the person that's got many people looking after the sort of reliant on them i don't know i imagine that's part of what the point they were making but anyway mr 28 hmm. guides mr 29 into the secret organ place so at this point i think it's we need to explain hmm. what the fuck's happening here indeed <sighs> Within the situ within this this company, this institution, this this underground black market crazy squid game, we have a group of workers who are secretly running a an organ harvesting operation. They have access to many portions of the building. They have people on cameras to be able to cover for them. They run. They're just. They're running this operation. That already for me was a little bit hard to swallow. I know a lot of people. I think uh, Gary was like. I think it's, it's cool that that's kind of running there, and he thinks that that's something that would likely come out of it with all the people that get you know cycled through. I just don't know that the security would have ever allowed for this to ever happen. Yeah. Especially yeah. They, I they, don't know they, why you would. They, yeah. They security like the, is expensive. The whole, now this is the problem. They have like the whole, Can I please? <laughs> what? I was trying to talk, like, again. I was getting cut off. Uh, hello? Go ahead, Hi. Metal. Oh, yeah, well, oh, this I, is your weird, yeah. No, I thought I actually thought I just flew down my, my Discord shut itself. We can hear you. Uh, You're good. Especially if they, uh, they, they build this whole thing where they have this mechanical release in the furnaces and everything. Like, how the fuck yeah. did they build this there? That they is built, a like, good question. Well, they, they 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 built this whole thing behind the fridge as well. It's like when. <laughs> so you got to be like, careful about the nature of the criticism here because you'll have a lot of people and they will be in chat saying the company knows about this. So you've got to criticize it either that they should have been found out or they should never have been allowed to conduct this. All right, it's one of those two. You have to accept mm -hmm. one of them. A lot of people are like, well, that is, you know, in fairness, like, like he says, he doesn't care if they're selling body parts. That's a little bit later. In fact, that's this episode, I yeah. think. Um, that does not sit well with me at all. Same. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think that it does he would be... seem a little unprincipled. 
I would just also care. say it's a huge, it's a huge security issue. Yeah, it, it, there's loads yeah. of ways information can leak out through that. You're literally having them deal with fucking organ people on Outsiders. the side. Yeah. yeah. This, this is, is an incredibly, risk. incredibly high risk operation they're doing. Yep. On top of an incredibly, yep. <laughs> incredibly high risk organization. It is frustrating, to say the least. Um, but for those who are a little bit confused how this works, people die in the games. One or two or three bodies are taken each time, put through, they put into a furnace, a specific one, mind you, that has a button on it that makes it so that the, the coffin falls through a, a contraption that then gets pulled into a secret area. It's so like part one is already like, wait, but wouldn't there be evidence that the mm. coffin... Eh, I don't know how you... I, I guess you had to build the, the build it guess, this way. Yeah. This is this doesn't seem like something you can build after the fact, you know? No. So that's, that's <laughs> a big wonder already. But then they have the doctor come in and harvest the, the, the bodies to take out the organs to store them. And it's like, wait, so this is all reliant on having a doctor among the players? What if you didn't mm -hmm. have a doctor? Hmm. Yeah, oh. mm -hmm. I guess this batch... Oh, I guess we don't get to organ harvest this game cycle. Yeah. Tell all our black market organ clients that we just don't have anything. I'm sure they'll yeah. be fine. So that's, and they, you, they're they explicit about how like they need to get these things going that's important. And it's just like, so what do you do if you don't have a doctor? I don't get it. Um, then you better hope that doctor survives the first game. All of the games? Yeah. Uh, like, ooh, sorry, harvest is over early, guys. Ooh. This is, because this is weird back and forth at one point where they're like, I think I could do this. It doesn't look that hard. And I've heard on the news that nurses do it as well as doctors. And you're like, Harvesting organs. You really think you could just <laughs> casually <laughs> harvest? Okay. Uh, they probably need to work once they get where they're going, so maybe uh, it's important not to fuck Again, them just up. Just cut out body parts? Okay. And so they, they cut them out, put them into little bags, put those bags into packages that are likely just, you know, I don't know. So there's, there's I've seen people bring up that there's, they, there's no way that the organs will get to where they need to be before they go bad, quote-unquote. Uh, no matter how they're they transported. don't get it. shredded by the games either. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, so, the uh, I don't know about all organ time or how long they last. I'm not going to pretend like I do. I'd have to do some Google in there. But I've seen a lot of people saying that what they present in the show is absurd and that the organs would never be useful with the way that they're doing this. Um, I don't know. It's Possible. a black market. I don't know. They do actually say at one point that the eyes were useless. So I'm assuming that there's high risk here and it might not work out. But um, yeah, apparently they're not paid enough, or rather, there's so much money on the table with this operation that they're really willing to risk their lives to get the money from it. Um, I don't know. That's just, yeah, I yeah. guess. Now, that's that half of it. That's explaining the actual existence of it. The people involved include numbers 28 and 29. Of all of the people he took control of, our detective, he took number 29, which means he's now involved nice. in the black market organ transfer system. Like, really? <laughs> wow! Uh, yeah, coinkadink. Uh, now, someone might be saying, hmm. well, what? Th th is, that a, is that convenient to him? Isn't that just more so just an event in the storyline? It doesn't necessarily help him or unhelp him in any particular... It's like, it gives him access to the VIP room. Full access, I might add. Yeah. And that's uh, incredibly important for a storyline, but yeah, we'll return there in a moment. Um, it's, uh, when we go back, uh, it seems that the shifts have changed. We've got uh, Jihan with uh, Oldman. And he's um, having a bit of a flashback to the riot that would have happened in his workplace. Uh, where presumably a co-worker slash friend was killed. Which is obviously, this This mm. is kind of informing everything that was uh, alluded to in episode 2. And I, I think... he missed that first time. <laughs> well, it's just, uh, it's probably what destroyed the relationship with his wife. Um, yeah. Or part of it, anyway. Um, this is a conversation that's... A little bit more interesting on a rewatch because of something we know, but we'll just go with this for a while. Hopefully, we come through on that as a planted seed. But Ooh. Oldman is uh, very interested in this. He's asking him a lot about it. Um, I think he says uh, that he heard about it um, because the strike was they fired a whole bunch of people at once, um, and he uh, Jihan says he was employed there for more than a decade, and so they they did a strike. And then they were beaten down. Obviously, we don't know any more context than what we were shown sort of in the flashback. Um, 
But he said the job was really important because he had a kid on the way and he couldn't afford to lose the job. Um, and I think, yeah, Oldman says that like this was big news. A lot of people had heard about it. Uh, but he doesn't look... He looks pretty sad when he's describing the story, and I think that you can interpret that one way and another way when you rewatch this show. Um, potentially... I don't want to say any more than that. I'm assuming people who know what I'm talking about might be able to infer something there, but... Uh, yeah, he's just talking about how scary it was. How fucked it was as a situation. That they were... Uh, of course, and someone dying there. Um, and then Oldman has a bit of a, a head moment. And uh, he's, he's put to sleep. So, something then... we get See, that, that, that stuff is way more interesting. And then it's like, back to detective. And it's like, do we have to, though? Can we just not? We really do. We can't escape him. He's always with us. So there's this weird fucking part where one of them is describing that someone wasn't quite dead when they were getting his eyes, and he, like, got up like a zombie. It was horrifying. Um, okay, we'll have to talk about this first, actually. Put a pin in that. So mm. they say red light, green light was annoying because we could barely sa salvage anything because of the, the fact that they were shot. Meanwhile, tug of war meant that we could salvage a lot. And I was thinking Even to myself... They fell very far. I don't know. I feel like it would be the reverse, if anything. Um, That's a big when I, ball. If I get shot in, like, the head, man, my organs are just ripe. Go grab them. Uh, obviously, except yeah. my brain. <laughs> However, I mean, your I, eyes will probably still be fine. Very, very could be, yeah. Um, and now, if I fall from a huge height and slap into the ground, I think all of my organs are fucked. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would guess them, yeah. so. <laughs> That's my basic understanding of how, um, as long as it, gravity does less than a bullet, like, I don't even know that that's true at that height. <laughs> like, gravity yeah. is going to fuck you up. I'll take kind my chance with a gunshot them. than falling from that distance. Yeah, and some are every gonna bullet up, hits really every fine. organ. <laughs> someone, someone in chat just wrote squish game. <laughs> Squish game. Uh, Gogo said it depends on the height, so we're talking a huge height. Big old yeah, boy. Yeah, that's a uh, long um, fall. Someone said that's not true at all, so give me more. More. Yeah. Don't just say it's not true. <laughs> Unless they're talking about the people in the show. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Um, bullet damage is localized at least. Yeah, right. So if I was shot in the heart, I would presume my kidneys are still salvageable? Yeah, now there was going to be some pathway changes that occur when a bullet goes into you. It'll mm -hmm. move around a little bit, but for the most part, yeah, if it's not in the path of that bullet, it'll probably be probably all right. Um, oh, I agree with you guys. Okay, because that's just, I have a basic understanding of this stuff, and when they said this, I was very confused. I was like, how, I would have thought you'd have the pick of the fucking litter with red light, green light. You've got wounds mm -hmm. everywhere. You just pick the ones that were shot in the head, and well, if you need eyes, pick the ones that were shot in the heart. You know? Like, it just seems easy to me. Meanwhile, tug of war, yeah. I'd be like, I don't know how much we're salvaging with this one. Maybe the back people who fall on the bodies, <laughs> that could be something. Maybe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they imply in this conversation that the fact that they were shot ruined any chance of getting organs. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me at all. Nope. And then they're harvesting like one or two or three at most. It's like, man, red light, green light should have given you fucking like 50 bodies to work with at least. Um, so that's... Well, I mean, it's how many they can actually get into that specific shoot and uh, well, yeah, but... avoid being incinerated. So they, yeah, but it's all relative, right? They say like, oh, we couldn't really harvest much from red light, green light. It's like, that's the game uh, where yeah. I assume you could harvest yeah. the most. <laughs> Because there's um, 255 yeah. people, yeah. Well, I guess the other one would be uh, the the honeycomb, because most people got shot in the head. Well, but That's again, true. if they they want eyes too, so I assume the oh, there's risk right, of the true. eyes being fucked from being shot in the head. So that's what yeah. I mean. You have the pick. You have everything you want in red light, green light. It's yes. all there. Um, yeah, strange, but I guess we'll move right along. Um. They mentioned that there was a zombie. There was a guy who got up off the table with his eyes still hanging out. It was horrifying. Wow. I guess they're just sort of, you know, making chit chat. That's how they do the do. Uh, and our guy is like, zombie? What, uh, what happened with that zombie? And we, I think we find out either now, you could figure it out now or just get it. But he, he believes for a moment that the zombie is his brother. And that's who he's looking mm -hmm. for, right? 
So he wants to know what happened to the zombie, because presumably they may have killed him. And they ask, and then the guy explains, like, well, we... I think he says we... Hang on, I want to make sure we're not getting too far ahead. I'm pretty sure it's in this scene. Yeah, there you go, okay. Um, they're like, what do you think happened? We were in a hurry, so I beat it to death with that. And he looks over at a... I guess a crowbar? Yeah. So... This is a really weird scene, because then someone else goes, hold on, why do you need to ask? You were there. And it's like, mm -hmm. wait, so then why did the guy that beat him to death with a crowbar explain it when he would have known he was... It's... <laughs> it's very yeah. like, wait, how did... what? What is this conversation? The fact that he alone... He, what he was like, what do we do with the zombie? It's like, the first thing should be, what do you mean? You were there. Not, yeah. oh, yeah. I beat him to death because he was, like, spooking me. I used that weapon over there. By the way, how do you not know this? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you forget? Yeah. Oh, dialogue. And that's the thing. With the way this scene runs, it looks like that is the accurate dialogue. It's not, like, a translation issue. Because, mm -hmm. like, it, we have to, the blocks of the scene have to kind of go this way for this to make sense. And what he tells them is, man, I was a bit out of it back then. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, you're a bit out of it? Yeah, okay. And, um, okay, that explains a lot. And so they get it's really suspicious. Nothing. And by the way, this is a guy who didn't turn up for a whole night as well. It's like, and he doesn't yeah. talk much at all. And he sounds different than he used to. Like, how much more suspicious do you need to get? Um, <sighs> and he goes to pull his gun because the jig is up. But the doctor goes, hey, stop chatting. This is my operating room. And that's it. It's done. All right, well. Wraps that up in a neat little bow. Oh, yeah. so bad. Like, it's none of this is working microdose properly. Microdose of cancer. Microdose. And someone says he does catch on to him in the, in the end. It's like, yeah, that's great. Oh, in the end. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm. It's super awkward if he had caught on to him well before he had the chance to escape. You know, but it's fine. Yeah, old man struggling. He wants to give him, a, like, a wet cloth for his head if he's ran out of water. And, um, and Andrew offers her water. I'm just like, ah, that's nice. Um, it's nice of her to do that. She, she tries to sort of, I think, make it seem less, uh, gift-worthy, if you will, by saying, you you owe me, you know? It's just like, you know, she obviously did it because she felt bad for the, for the old man. Yeah. Anybody would. Yeah. Yeah, I think she says, it wasn't for free, uh, you can pay me back tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. Yep, she's starting to open up a bit, though. We're yeah. getting that little, you know, little bit of stuff that's coming through. I like it. I like it a lot. And see, you you settle back in, and then it's like, right, off to the detective. You're like, no! Off to the shit! You're like, no, <laughs> no. go away! <laughs> yeah, and so they have their organs, off they go, and you're just saying, okay, because I just don't believe it anymore. This, I think at this point, the whole organ thing, I was totally <laughs> out. I was like, this detective storyline is balls. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where we're going with it, but it is balls. Um, so yeah, they just go through this, oh, God, it just keeps getting worse. So he's like, what's the game <laughs> for tomorrow? And they're like, we don't know yet. And he's like, okay, like, to cut a sh long story short, he basically says, I'm going to kill you unless you tell me what the game is tomorrow. Which I found really odd, because he, like, two times he's discovered the game has been right before the game, um, in the show. This is the night before. He's got plenty of time. Like, so I, I don't, I don't know why he's, like, th fucking throwing a fit. And the fact is, yeah. these guys want him alive, okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> he can't assume they're tricking him. And he's, he's like, pissed. He's like, you fuckers better tell me what it is or I'll kill you. It's just like, what are we doing? <laughs> um, and so he gets so mad that he, uh, uh, like, like he's like, go and find out. Go to the control room and find out. Which, by the way, we haven't even addressed the fact right that... Right now, yeah. Feels like they probably should know. I don't know why they don't. You'd think, yeah, I, y these things clearly require an insane amount of prep to do. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, and they're all in the fucking walls. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> also that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, he's like, go to the control room and find out. And he's like, okay, but I need the key. And it's in his pocket. He's like, oh, you could get it from my pocket, trust me. And he goes to look, and then he, like, knocks him over, grabs his gun. But before he can, you know, efficiently <clears throat> fire it at him, he is stabbed. And uh, Dr. Man has taken the life of a circle. Or triangle, I can't remember. I don't really care. Um, Taking the life of a circle. 
and the other one tries to hit him with the crowbar. He does successfully, but he manages to escape, and he's just running around the facility. Um, this is intercut with stupid... De I don't even... Whatever. Um, stupid detective. I'm <laughs> just trying to figure out how to best do this chronologically right now. Um, so yeah, he, run he runs off, basically, and he runs around the fucking MC Escher land until he finally ends up in the place MC they played the Honeycomb game. That's where he ends up. It's like, all right. All of that fucking commotion, and I'm just sitting there waiting, like, there's no way they're getting away with this, right? And luckily for us, they don't, so that's nice. Ah, um, yeah, it's good to know that there's some sense left in the world, however small. And at the same yeah. time, Detective Guy hasn't gotten away with it. Um, they turn the lights on, and a guy pulls a knife on him, and he's like, Yo, you're definitely not number 29, are you? And it's like, fucking finally. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> um... And yeah, the guy basically says, hey, like... Hey, for an organ harvester, he sure does need a brain. Oh! <laughs> oh, we do have fun here. We do have fun here. Uh, <laughs> so, he's like, take off your mask. And then he does. And then he realizes Detective Man's got a pistol on him. Now, um, we may as well have the conversation again, because I think you and I did, Rags, but uh, I was saying that if you have a knife to someone's neck, and then they pull a gun on your belly... Um, in this scenario, I feel like the best thing to do is to keep that knife on their neck and say, if you fucking shoot me, I'm going to push this into your neck. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. the thing is, a lot of, a lot, this is one of those areas where minute details are going to determine what the outcome will be. If the gun is to your head, then all he has to do is pull the trigger and you can't do anything as a result. It happens just too fast for you to react. True. It depends where the gun is and where the knife is. Um, I'm trying to show it for the yeah. He's look at where he's got that <laughs> knife. That's uh, he's fine. But um, <laughs> he relinquishes his leverage. Yeah, look at that. It's because this is the thing. If you shoot me in the belly, I'm digging this thing into your neck. Do you want to take that risk? It's like so, at this point, we're at a yeah. standoff. Yeah, your gun should not be pointed at that person's stomach. It should be pointed at their fucking brain. Should have aimed for the head. Mm -hmm. Always aim for the head. Because uh, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, cool. He's got a knife on his neck. He's got a gun at his, uh, his belly. It's like, now what's going to happen? And then he just gives his knife up. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so he asks him about the zombie. And he says the zombie was uh, a girl. So it couldn't have been his, his brother. Um, and then he shoots him. Uh, just gets rid of this guy. After, not, but, but not before him saying, if you go all the way up the ladder, you enter the VIP sort of area, the control center. And I remember being so fucking sad when he said that. I was like, you're not serious that this stupid little <laughs> underground operation leads to a cave that goes out into a ladder that leads directly to the escape access for all the important people of the island as well as their control room. You are fucking kidding me. Nice. That's everything the detective could ever need, and he has stumbled across this through a series of insane coincidences. Hey, at least the show ain't inconsistent. Yeah, I mean, he's consistently lucky. Yeah, boy. Um, but I can agree to some degree that, like, <clears throat> maybe having that emergency escape is, like, the reason that's there? For, like, the VIPs? I don't know that the VIPs would be cool with a giant hole in their ladder system that leads to an underground organ, organ operation. <laughs> like, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? There's just a... Oh, the there's organ not operation? Even a, yeah. There's just a big so hole. It's not, even, it's not even meant for escape, really. It's just all purpose. So, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> I love the idea that the VIPs have a back escape that leads to, like, you know, ways to get off the island. That's great. But having it so that that ladder system is interrupted by a big fucking hole... That leads nice. directly to this. It's like, things. come on, not cool. Bro. So I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. They're going to meet the organ smugglers, right? They're like coming in a boat to I think pick so, them yeah. up. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I meet on the beach I remember, or something. Because I remember someone earlier said that, like, oh, well, organ donors questions where they got it from. It's like, yeah, they're coming to the mysterious private island, though. That's just information. Yeah. Like it's, it's for for a, for a big secret organization that's lasted this long, you don't want to be seeing stuff like that. You want to be like, no, 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 we we have no leaks of any information anywhere at any time. But the, this yeah. shot is kind of what I'm talking about. There's just this big fuck off hole in the middle of the escape ladder. 
area. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, where does that hole lead? Well, actually, this leads to the, the kitchen, but it's covered up by... You know what I mean? Like, the second one of the VIPs ever sees this, or frontman, or whoever's going back and forth in this area for maintenance, it's like, why is there a giant hole here? Where does it go? <laughs> and then it's like, turns out the organ people are using it, too. It's just like, put one camera there, or seal it off with a lock, and they're fucked. Okay. Huh. <sighs> My mouse keeps double clicking on its own. It's annoying me. Oh really? Oh, yeah. you're yeah. gonna want to know mouse that pretty soon because that's that's just gonna keep happening. It's very annoying. I hate it. Ooh, webcamschat.com, hot girls and boys. <laughs> yeah. I want to click that. Man. Oh man. Over on my bases. Aww. You you got it before I did, mm -hmm. James. <laughs> you fucked him up. Um. So yeah, the guy tells our our detective about all of that. And then he gets killed, so that's just a great lead for him. Meanwhile, mm. Dr. Just, Bro... Just... Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Dr. Bro is like, Look, this has been stressful. <laughs> this has all been very stressful. <laughs> Lily. Uh, but I, I still, like... You know, I, I just don't quite buy that he flipped the fuck out because they wouldn't tell him what the game next game is when they didn't know what the next game was. Like, it, it all seemed very forced yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, there are way better ways to handle this. Way better ways to handle this. Uh, Instead of, you need to go and find out right now. Like, I, I can't. Like, we're lucky we're, we're able to sneak out and do this as it yeah, is. And, and they could be like, dude, we've told you when the game is before the game. Man, like, previously, we've never told you this early. So calm down. You're going to be fine. Yeah. You'll have the time you need to be able to prep. Do not worry about that. Um... But no, he goes nuts. And then this guy's like, look, I'll take off my mask and, um, and my flumes. We gotta get out of here because things will get way worse. And then he says something that I think we're supposed to assume is a lie. I fucking hope it's a lie. He says, when <laughs> workers go missing, no one cares. But when the players go missing, everyone does. And I was like, when the workers go missing, no one cares. I feel no, like those would be the ones to worry about the most. Because they yes. know... Where we are, what's happening, the logistics of the, the operation, guns. the guns. So, um, because this guy's clearly tricking him in this scene and he does try to kill him, so I'm willing to just agree it was a lie because I feel like if it wasn't a lie, holy fuck, that's dumb. Let's just all agree he was lying to him to trick him. That's fine. Um, but before he can strike, the front man shoots him in the hand, knocking the knife out as well. Uh, and I think he, the front man is just pissed off. Like, you guys are cheating. You know, I can hear that you've got a thunderstorm in the background. That was so perfectly yeah. timed for when you um. said shoot you. <laughs> Honestly, for a second, I thought, like, is someone moving a cupboard in his room? <laughs> just, like, <laughs> excuse me. It's, uh, it's, I'll, I'll keep an eye out, all right? Yeah, it's super loud. Um, yeah, and he says, you ruined it's the most funny, important though. part of this place. And that is equality. Oh boy. Everyone is equal while they play this game. And it's like, okay. Mm, I mean, you yeah. say that, but... Like. And he says, everyone who pl plays a fair game under the equal conditions, these people suffered from inequality and discrimination out in the world, uh, and we're giving them one last chance to fight fair and win. That's a very interesting perspective, my man. It's <laughs> bullshit. Well, uh, so the, here's a, here's an important question. I think is he does he believe this, or is he like is does he believe this and he's delusional, or is he lying? I assume delusional. Uh, mm, the thing is, there are layers of fairness. For example, we actually uh, we'll talk about this a little bit now because I just thought of something that I brought up a while back, a different EFAP, but I'll bring it up again because it's one of my favorite episodes of Game Grumps in their first year. Ah. Uh, they what you mean. <laughs> they both play a game called Nickelodeon Guts, I think, is what it's called. Uh, I might be I wrong. So, yeah. Someone in chat will be able to correct me on that one. But um, they both go in blind, and JonTron is dominating Aaron because he knows a particular button does a particular thing, and Aaron doesn't know how to figure it out. Aaron says it's unfair because you had way more information and advantage, and John said, no, we came in with the exact same knowledge. I figured it out. So, <laughs> as I asked back then, we'll ask again, who is, who's right about whether or not that situation is fair? If you, if the idea is that, because 
it's never truly fair in a perfect sense. Yeah. So we have to go with reasonably fair. Um, and I guess it depends on what principle you're trying to execute here when it comes to fairness. I think that's an important aspect of it. So if we keep in mind the idea that everyone in here is fair and has a, a, like like as equal a, as equal possible a chance of winning i suppose to try and get rid of the variables out there from mm -hmm. you know from the compared to the outside world there's a lot of like mm, um huh i think it's super interesting i think that um it's by degrees as well for example if i'm playing a game of like you know fucking throw a ball and land it into a hoop against, let's just say, Fringy, and uh, I notice that A is, like, high, B is low, and then if you press A and B together, it's mid. And so every time there's a mid hoop, he can't throw it because he doesn't know what the mid button is. I figured it out. Now, do I tell him? I'm like, hmm, I guess I probably should. Um, but if the game is already tight enough as it is, I, you know, I, there's a chance I might be like, well, I figured it out, he didn't, let's see how the scores turn out. However, if we're playing like a platformer, split screen or something, and I, I know what the jump button is, but he doesn't, and he's like, hey, what's the jump button? And I just go, I'm not telling you. It's like, well, there's no competition. He can't even fucking cross the first platform. What's the point? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are lots of degrees to this. I see a lot of people in chat saying John was right. Um, when you go in blind to a game, and you just, like, your first game, and if there was like a pretense of just, you know, do what you can, try and figure it out. Um, I think I'm okay with it for the first one, but at that point, after that, you'd be like, you may as well tell me, otherwise I'm just not going to continue. I want to know what you know, so that it's fair, uh, going forward. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to think about. Now, the reason I bring all that up is that there's a lot of that in this, where people know things ahead of time, or people know things more than other people because of their history, or people have more bodies that are better suited for the challenge. Or they luck out and grab something that other people, had they known what they knew, they would have done the same thing. Degrees of fairness, as I was saying. There are, no. I guess a good parallel is there, so, escape rooms, right? Our family's done escape rooms before. You know, a mm -hmm. little thing. We've done, you know, four or so. And one of them, that ended up being our least favorite, was that we, in order to get a clue... You had to to move on to the next stage because these are like steps. You do this and then you do that and you do this. And there's some level of overlap where you help work on this. Point being that in this particular escape room, you had to, this was not optional, you had to be able to solve a Rubik's Cube. Mm. If you did not know how to do that, then you could not progress past that point. Done, finished, no way. So if you don't know, you're not... I. I don't know if it's possible. Maybe if you're super fucking smart, you can figure out how to do one of those things without being told on the spot, without being taught how to do it, especially within a time limit. And we thought yeah. that was shit. We told yeah. them this, by the way. Um, th so this is like one of those. Oh, it, and it's one of the reasons I don't like crossword puzzles. Uh, I don't like crossword puzzles because if you don't go in with the prerequisite knowledge of what the answers are, you can't progress. Sure, you can get help by other ones that you do know, but there are some, like, if I don't know Betty Gerbil's second husband, then I'm just, I'm out of luck. I just flat out cannot complete the puzzle because I don't know that piece of trivia. Mm -hmm. Um, And to sort of, like, tug of war kind of applies to this. Was it fair that they go against people that are more powerful than them? It's like, well, that doesn't seem fair. It's like, was it fair that they went against a team that knows how to better play tug of war, to better leverage what strength they have? Like, um, because some people will know more about tug of war than others. For example, I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. So if, like, Rags and my families were racing each other, and the fucking, like, final door was solve a Rubik's Cube, it's like, well, Rags, you fucked. <laughs> like, so you can't really win. It's like, well, where's the fun in that? Where's the competition? That's just pointless. Um, yeah, it's like, do you, yeah, it's like, it's just, if you want to avoid the idea of the contest is decided before it even begins. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, fairness is an ideal that we all try to strive to whenever we're creating sort of environments like this. Um, and I think Frontman is not doing anywhere near enough to make a fair environment. No, yes, I think not at he's all. even actively sabotaging it at times. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, so, yeah. If, also, so if I can, we'll, we'll say we'll, no. Keep going. We'll save it till later. 
the the key criticism people typically have is like this game isn't fair my concern isn't whether or not the game is fair because i think there's a lot to talk about in terms of what that may mean it's whether or not it's consistent with what frontman thinks is fair as a character mm. it seems to me he's full of shit <laughs> like, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if he's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, he seems like he's full of shit, and it doesn't make a ton of sense based on what we learn about him later. Yeah, but um, yeah, we can go over this, but that's, that's a taster. It's a teaser, if you will. Uh, we'll cover more as we go. But Also, muddies the theme, but and the uh, allegedly biting social commentary. I think some would too. argue it supports the theme. Yeah, but um, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll yes. Get to that. Mola has a weird humming. That's probably my fan. It's keeping me cool. Mm. Uh, so you right. just have a person back there. You just hire someone. Yep, mm. it's a fan of the channel. They're back there, just saying, "You're cool." It keeps me cool. You are immortal. <laughs> so yeah, frontman says you violated the 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 equality. Fuck you. Boom, dead. But he's also pulled off his mask as well. So that's probably another reason he's dying. Um, and then Doctor gets uh, executed too. Um. I suppose, like, we do learn specifically he did it because he cheated, that's what it's considered, and, uh, cheating then, at that point, definitively includes having information about a game before starting the game. Which, um, we know that, uh, the Doctor would have told other people that. You can easily look at that through the tapes, and you can know that from how they pick the teams before the games are even revealed. This is something Song Wu points out. I'm surprised that there's nothing in the show to account for it. Like, like the front man's like, yes, you die because you cheated, but all the information you gave to people that's allowing them to cheat is fine. It's like, okay. Yeah, I guess I wonder, you know, at what point do we say, yeah, like, oh, the cheater got out. Can we, do we kill all the people who figured it out? Is no, it, I know. I mean, we, we clearly don't have an issue killing people, but I mean, they were... Just, I mean, you can't blame him in a sense. Um, Absolutely, especially if, especially if he, like, fucking told everybody or something. It's like, what, is the game over? It's like, well, yeah. I don't know, but it, it doesn't this fuck with your... Because he makes it very clear this is a hugely important, like, big deal that is the integrity of the game. Many players had the same information the Doctor did. And the Doctor got killed for it. Um, yeah, and as the game progresses, I'm not sure if that is... I'm getting, I'm getting mixed messages. I, I, by the time I get to the end, I'm like, would you have killed that guy for cheating like that? Because you kind of fuck mm. around with shit yourself, and the people mm -hmm. you're entertaining, they don't seem like the most sportsmen of folks, so I'm just not... I, yeah. Eh. Eh. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Detective Man goes up to the, the control centery room and just has its free access to Front Man's bedroom, basically. Um, and they discover the body at the bottom of the stairs... Um, and this, this frustrates me to no end. It's twofold, and I just, it sucks the detective plotline takes up so much time because it's so bad. They spot that no tanks It'll be or, worth it. It'll be worth it. No scuba gear is missing, basically, so there's no way that he's gone. Which, first of all, that's an interesting conclusion, that because there's no scuba gear gone, then that he has to be on the island. It's like, we don't, we're not sure. We don't know how he got here, necessarily. So, I yeah. don't know. Just wouldn't be sure of that. Secondly, yeah, why didn't Detective Man stow away a scuba gear suit to make it look like he used one to escape? Would have been that, a smart thing to do. That would have actually mm. been a, oh, nice one, Detective. That's, that's a good thing. And then, they know <laughs> that the hole is locked off. They know that the imposter was here. None of them go up the ladder to check if the fucking access to the control center has been shot, <laughs> because it has. Yeah. If they checked that, they would know he's probably up there. Search it, find it, kill him. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You would flood that. You would wake everyone up. You'd yes, flood you would. that place with fucking squid men. <laughs> we'll just go to the squid squad. Squid squad. Squid squad. Yeah, squid squad. You would, uh, you would flood that place with squid squad, and you'd say, shoot the guy. Go in, go in teams so you don't shoot each other. Because we have this interesting system of attire. And then if you see anyone that just isn't your team, you just fucking kill them. And I'll give you a bonus or something. I don't know. Yeah, man. Um, and so someone was like, well, what do you like about the detective plotline? I'm like, that's a great question. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> I like that there is someone trying to uncover these things. Um, Absolutely, yeah. In theory. In theory, well, I have no problem with nice the concept it... of the detective plot line. <laughs> yeah, this would have been nice if it made a little bit more sense. Another alternative yeah. could have been that it's a detective who's been looking into this for as much as maybe a decade, maybe more. And he's got all yeah. this information, he's spoken to all past winners, he's spoken to the people who've come out of there, out of like voting against it, he's learned loads about the facility, the games, the people, and the security. And this is the game that he finally decides to try and sneak in, he uses all the knowledge yeah. he has, you know? He's in, he's in trouble with the police department, they think he's wasting his time and he's being yeah. crazy and he's not following protocol and stuff like that. He's like, I know it. I know it. Something's happening to these something people. Something to do with squids, because, damn it. You know, yeah, something about these <laughs> hundreds of people that go missing every fucking year. Maybe there's something we should look into. And they all, <laughs> the, the, like, this is the this is part of the problem with Will Billy. I don't know when we're going to get there, but it's like all these people, you would have found a common story with all of them. There's these cards, there's this yeah. weird game I play with a businessman to, about flipping All these disc people things. are horribly in debt. Yep. Hmm. Hundreds go missing Curious. every year for decades. I have big at curious. the same oh, time. Actually, actually already I don't on the... believe you. Go ahead, go ahead, Bill. <laughs> actually, already already on this scale, like just on this game alone, you have the yes. cop looking for his for his uh, brother. I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, and no. then he's gone for multiple days. So the chief would probably call his relatives or his parents or whatever is like, hey, we can't find your son. Oh, yeah, he was looking for our other son. <laughs> Maybe there's a connection. And then they go to the room. It's like, hmm, there's a weird card here. If he didn't take it away, I don't remember. But something would have happened. <laughs> it's like, oh, Maybe yeah, he the also detective sent could me have a weird have actually told his boss where he last was. Or, that would have know. been a really smart choice as well, yeah. That could be interesting. Um, it's like, oh yeah, he sent me a weird message. Maybe we should look into this, and then they probably would have found something to some degree. It's uh. Someone mentioned like it doesn't mean uh, that they take place in Korea every single year. There's a good chance that we they're doing it in all different places all the time. Um, that raises more questions. I don't I know how they get away with this worldwide, different. and think of the operation yeah. at that point. Uh, exactly. I, I do I... heavily, heavily imply it's worldwide. <laughs> yes, they do. But how? But it makes no sense. Why would they have an archive here specifically if it's worldwide? This, maybe this all is the, the first one, things? or this is uh, maybe this I is mean, the core base. I don't know. The implication I'm, I'm seem to be that pretty. this is the Korean one that there are. Yeah, I got that so, vibe too. But then I, I, I thought maybe the files like, I don't... the files get moved to wherever they end up going for the season. Maybe. If you know. maybe. Maybe. So, so there's know. multiple facilities like this with like huge ceilings they can move. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, maybe they all. I don't. Uh, no, I don't know. Well, I was gonna say maybe they all happen on this with different populations of people, said, um, but someone said, sure. in fairness, five hundred thousand people went missing in the U.S. last year. Well, Korea has fifty-two million people in it total, so significantly smaller. The fact that all of these seem to be a fairly central location, they all seem yeah. to be based in the same location. Within a week. And there are, yeah, 450 people go missing at the same time in the same location, essentially. That it, it, and this happens every year? Nope. Don't, I just, I don't <laughs> believe it. I just yeah. don't believe it. I um, don't believe that this is a state of fucking emergency for South Korea. And so, uh, he's searching through all the things, and he finds that there's games as early as 2007, I think, is the earliest date we see. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's it's in the oh, 80s. 80s. Oh, 80. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah it's been going on for finds, some time. He, find, he, he finds a binder specifically, and this is where he finds his brother's name of past winners, and this binder full of past winners begins in 1980 i want to say five or six i don't remember exactly wow well yeah uh the obviously the big reveal being there's been a shit ton of games and you're like oh man mm -hmm. like we're talking a lot of games uh which kind of doesn't help with the whole 
Because if this was the first game of its kind, I could buy a lot of stuff being the way that it is right now. Yeah. yeah. I And that's how we operate for most of it, you know? But then it's like, no, this is our favorite so far. That, that's the, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Also, can I point out an interesting little detail? Do it. Um, no. when, he opens, no. when he opens the binder for this year, um, you may notice, just go ahead and let him open up the binder there. You just go to the clip there. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Oh, when he first opens it? Yeah, when he just first opens the, the first binder he finds. Yep. Oh. What's missing? Uh, you're gonna have to help me out because I'm not sure. <laughs> Where does it start? Oh no, not that one. Oh no, sorry, it's not the first one he opens up. It's the what? It's the current year one. Current year? Oh my god. Yeah, current oh, year man. one. Current year. Uno momento, por favor. Come on. I know, right? Come <laughs> on, open the book. Open the book. <laughs> Good work, come on. Ruining it. I saw you do it already. <laughs> I know you can do it. Just stalling. Oh, he's taking his sweet ass time stalling to the end there. It's like, hang on, oh, it's gotta be 55 called minutes or so. Squid Archives as well. Squid Archives, yeah. <laughs> Alright, is this what you're looking for? Yeah. Oh, the one number one is missing. It he's not, with, yeah, weird. there is no number one. The old man. He's not in the book. Yeah. Um, I guess you're right. I, I don't know if there's another page to the left there. I'm assuming it has just been took out, uh, taken out, yeah. Well, he just he just popped that binder cover right yeah. open, and uh, there's no I mean, number you would one. Have, you would you would see the uh, the page on the rings. Mm -hmm. if it was yeah, the, that's fine. That's, that's neat. Yeah. So he yeah, so number one's not touch. there, and that that was the very first time I noticed. Like, okay, hold up a second. Something is definitely up with number one. Now I'm <laughs> suspicious of him, like big time. Mm. Big time. Um, but yeah, uh, they through having noticed that 28 was like killed, they check 28 and 29 is missing, so check that. And they're like, Yep, so 28's accounted for, 29 is missing, and there's an imposter in the place. So the, 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 the bad guys are finally catching up with the de uh, detective. Thank goodness. Um, but then they say he's not on the security cameras. And you know the one place that doesn't have security cameras, which is another opportunity for you to give me reason to think the front man is smart. Be like, oh, I know where he could be. But no, no one fucking thinks that he might have gone up the ladder. Nobody concludes that that's a possibility. That's Excellent. Not what ladders are for vertical Yeah, that's a silly that's thing not, to do. That's, Come on. That's a, that's a bit far fetched. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the bathroom, that's true. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. They can, go to, they can go take a poo and pee, so you don't have to worry about. <laughs> They'll never find it. Tom, Tom. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, with with this down. having happened and a game on the way, they um they just root rounding up everybody. But um, Oldman, for a moment, I thought Oldman had died, and I was like, oh god, this will be really sad. But it's uh, he doesn't want to leave yeah. his bed because he d he done peed himself, Un mis m m unfortunately. Um, yeah, and you can't help but feel a little bit sad for him. Something is um. I don't know, as small as that in relation to everyone getting killed. It's just like oh. Yeah. I think that ends the episode. So, uh, yeah, we're we're on episode oh, six yeah. now. Episode oh, six. Yeah. Mm. All right. The famous episode one. Episode six. It is famous. It is famous. It is famous for the right anybody. and wrong reasons. <laughs> well, I'm aware of the the former, but not the latter. So. Yeah, me neither. I'm actually not aware of. Oh, the... never mind. I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking of seven. Never mind. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, that's, idiot. That's, I can understand that better. <laughs> God um, damn it. So <clears throat> six kicks off. Dare I say, real strong with making me love Jihan even more. That he takes yeah. off his coat and uh, ties it around uh, the waist of Oldman to make it so no one could see his his trousers. I was like, oh, that's that's really nice of you. And uh, even smiles about it as well. He's obviously appreciative of it. And it's just um, indicative of the heart that he has, that he's concerned enough about that to make that kind of move in the middle of being rounded up, potentially to be fucking murdered or some shit. You'd never know with this squid game. Uh, humanity. Just, just sparking through, you know? I like someone in chat is like, put the subtitles on. <laughs> As if they're like <laughs> watching it through this sort of system. Yeah. I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend Squid Game this way. This is not the greatest way to no. watch it. 
<laughs> it is good enough to warrant watching on its own. Mm -hmm. Even with all of the, it's it's like it's like that other thing that we were talking about, where the plot is tis me, but the characters are. It's like the Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good comparison. Uh, maybe if we get to the end of this season before everyone dies, uh, we'll be able to <sighs> conclude in such ways. Um, but yeah, they are trotted out, and they are shown the traitors. They are, like, <gasps> lined oh, up execution-y style to be portrayed as, like, look at these fucking pieces of shit. This is what happens when you cheat. Yeah, don't be a cheating loser. Don't, uh, yeah. yeah, don't be Steel thieving. Dongle. Cheating. Don't be a thieving man. So, um, yeah, this is a bit of a message sent. And, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Thugman is like, damn, my guide is dead. That sucks. But, hey, I wasn't cheating, okay? He was. And, uh, a bit brutal, and I'm just surprised they got away with it for this long. Even one of them still wearing the little organ and apron. <laughs> like, the little <laughs> organ <laughs> apron. And someone had to set that shit up at night. It's like, get up, you need to hang some corpses from the ceiling. <laughs> Imagine being that <laughs> dude. Like, why am I always the high. one that does these jobs? Like, <laughs> these weird jobs. Alright, would you better hold the really tall ladder for me? <laughs> it's, really, it's like really, really wobbly. <laughs> oh jeez, oh four of them, yes, your doom hole. So, um, <sighs> the, 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 this is, I'm gonna spotlight. Uh, if I remember correctly, Fringy, you thought it was really neat that um, you noticed that he'd put the receiver down the wrong way, and then the the frontman noticed it as well, right? Um, well, yeah, I was like, yeah, you put it down the yeah. wrong way. It was shot really well, and then he reacted mm. to it in a really subtle way. I noticed it immediately. We did not need what follows. No. I've got more problems than just that. I'm dis I think it yeah. shows a serious lack of intelligence on the detective's part that he fucking didn't remember which way he picked it up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you'd want to make sure that you're doing it exactly the correct way. You had one job. It is not hard to come across as though you're not in that place, and yet he to fucked it up. Leave things yeah. as you found them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a very organized place, yeah. you know? Yeah, there's only like nothing. It's the only thing you're interacting interacting with, really. So, but we'll we'll get so to. So, question: They 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 have a sort of like everything shuts down. They go into the room to make sure the intruder is not in there. They still haven't. They, they're just going to continue on with the games while there's an yeah. intruder afoot. Uh, well, to be fair, they've not even checked that room, that area. They've just decided, nah, he's not there. <laughs> And all they had to do was check the latch to the ladder, and they'd be like, oh, there's a bullet yeah. hole through this, he's probably here. True. It's... It does make me wonder why they would continue, like, regardless of whether they did anything close to a decent job of looking for him, they didn't find him yet. They think he's not. He's still there, and they're like, alright, we're well, just gonna keep playing until he shows up. We'll see what happens. Well, someone in chat said I, just, I wouldn't have I remembered the phone thing, to be fair, so... He's a detective. His whole job is to be yeah. undetected. <laughs> he needs to be and undetected. Also, remember, you're at a place where you want to make sure that you're not leaving any. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it yeah. is Imagine your sole focus at that moment. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't have noticed watching the show, but if you were there, you'd definitely it's like be the, paying it's attention. It's like the murals to that. on the wall. Yeah, exactly. Like, I didn't notice the murals on the wall. But also, mm -hmm. I'm paying attention to characters and subtitles, yeah. and you know the dialogue. And My life isn't on the line, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not. Like, I'm not little... living in there for days. <laughs> I'm sitting comfy. You're there for like a, mouth, uh, like an hour uh, at the most. That guy yeah. died. Lol. <laughs> Fries. Oh, he said. To be honest, not to be fair. That, I'm just saying that um, you, as a viewer, would be forgiven for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. A detective, yeah. no, not so. Not letting that happen. Your whole fucking. This is exactly what you're here to do: is to discover what you can without being fucking noticed. You can't even do it. Not even with a receiver. Is diversity higher? <sighs> All of them. All of them. Uh, they, they needed. They needed uh, an Asian. It would have been funny if the detective character was played just by an American white guy, and he's an idiot like throughout the whole thing. <laughs> um. So yeah, our team is told. To go into groups of two to find someone to work with, and uh, unfortunately, this is going to start to create issues because it's pretty clear, especially after the prior game, 
You're gonna want just able-bodied man, bro. That's pretty much what everyone's gonna mm -hmm. want. And you can. What's great about the characters is just everybody knows this is true, but nobody really wants to say it because it's just so lame in terms of just like talk about unfair. Am I right? Am I right, folks? Mm. Am I right? Mm. So, speaking of unfair, uh, they're being deliberately active again in the language. Because they talk about, like, find a partner, find a teammate. So that's actually what I would give yeah, as a compliment to the fairness. On our what we know right now, it seems unfair. But what it ends up being, pretty fair, actually. Uh, in terms of, you, the, the marble game isn't exactly one that requires more strength or more. It's almost exclusively luck. No, I mean, ignoring the, the strength and physical, you know, or intelligence advantages people have. I mean... They're told to pair up with teammates with partners, and then they're playing. They're they become opponents, so they mislead them into thinking they're um, forming partner. Teams. That's actually the kind of vagueness that I actually appreciate. Uh, I think that it, it's cool. I don't know to... if that's vague. Uh, I think that's deceptive. Yeah, I I'm kind of on Capital's side here. I'm leaning towards that. Teammate is a pretty. If they use the word teammate, that is, is that they use that as partner, a... I believe. If they say partner, it's fine. I'll we'll have to check the language. I don't know if that's... I don't know. They said know you'll be partner. playing in teams of two, but is that a translation thing? Teams of two. Teams of two, find your partner. Yada and yada. Find and someone to play with. Yeah, and they say you'll be playing together, which isn't a lie. Yeah. Teams of two, though. It implies what is a is team? Your... Yeah, Sorry. a team, a no, team can on. be just collectives, right? Yeah. Let's see. Mm, no, I think they're all working towards the, the you know, together. Like, a, I can't... I don't know yeah, so you have become partners. A, a team is a group of players forming one side in a competitive game or sport. The verb is come together as a team to achieve a common goal. Yeah. And then it says I'd, shake I've hands never... with your partner. Uh, well, shake hands with your partner. Are... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are always used as a being on the same side. You're not partners with your opponent. You're not teammates with your opponent. It, yeah, this one's mm, it's not checking so out. So I'm just, me. I'm just, you know, there's not a not necessarily. What's the uh, what's the criticism though? This this isn't a criticism in and of okay. itself. It's just a seed for later discussions and theme that they're right. <laughs> that they're being deceptive and manipulative and not. Um, vague or yeah that's yeah it's just but, they're I mean, lying to I them guess deliberately the question is does that change anything about what their perspective is on the concept of fairness or anything in relation to the game well we can talk about it because um I well, no, I, I well i mean i guess i'm not I don't know, like, is it, does it ruin the fairness by no, telling okay, people you're so, playing as teams so, while well, just kidding, you're playing against each other no, not not that aspect. No, it does not. I guess more what I'm thinking of. Uh, I guess it has less to do with the the fairness element, but um, it does have I'd to do it's, with. It's, I guess it's not fully honest. Um, well, yeah. Been, so no, so I guess they've done that I'm for every game. More, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So they sort of ride a weird line, but actively deceptive and vague. I like the vague stuff better, but that's just yeah, sure. preference. And then there, it does get to a point where it seems like no one seems to acknowledge that how can we trust anything they're saying about the teams? Like, they're probably lying. They're Like, we should probably do the opposite. That sort of, there's, I don't I know. Think, I feel like I would well, want this, the characters this more in, to be. This right. would be the game in which they learn that, and that can't do anything for them going yeah. forward. The, the last two games. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We have to look at the, what principle is trying to be exercised here. Because you have one, we're not like the outside world. Everything is fair in here. Like everyone's yes. getting a you know a decent shot. And at the same time, or do or we or we or do we go with if everyone gets lied to? That's fair. Well, I, I mean, Which, I guess it's just what is the unfairness here? Um, you've been told, hey, you're you're playing as a team. Lol, just kidding. You're not. It's it hasn't changed anything about how fair or unfair the particular game would have been, regardless of who you picked, I guess. And maybe no, it's I, even I, a thing of, of saying, like, well, yeah, your assumptions were wrong. You pick teams thinking, oh, who's strong and stuff like that. But no, if that's not the game that you're playing. 
Yeah, it's less to do with whether the game is fair for everyone competing in it in this instance, mm -hmm. as it is to do with what this says about the general theme or idea or the ethics of the people running the organization, and then what the show is trying to say about how this game compares to the outside world, and also what what this does or doesn't do to change the mind of competitors going forward about how much they should trust what they're being told by the organization. Again, well, with that one, though, that doesn't change make... game 5 or 6. Or, yeah. Some... Sorry, I just saw someone in chat say it's causing you to make a bad strategy, but everybody's making bad strategies. Because everybody assumes that you're uh, you're working together. So in that sense, it's it's unfair to everybody. Yeah, so it's equally unfair out. to everyone. It's, it is interesting how it affects... Um, the idea that like you're not watching as a, as a VIP person watching this, you're not watching people play games strategic. I, I don't know. It's it's you're deliberately misinforming them for the um, drama of it. I guess, but I mean, is there anything to be said about whether or not that evokes? Because I mean, of course, in narrative, it's really great in terms of bringing out some interesting conflicts. Well, I, just, I just also think it matches the uh, the design of the games, being like, they're gonna rely on information they've garnered from previous games, so we're gonna subvert them completely. Yeah, which they and do on a few occasions. I'm not even sure that I totally buy the whole- because, like, I was in- when we were training for, um, uh, when I was in tech support, we had to split into teams of four, right? That's how it was- because we, we did other team things. Uh, one of them was we had to build a giant, like, Lego sphere. I have no idea what else to do with tech support. I think it was team building. But um, <laughs> the, the teams had to compete against each other, right? There's another one, we had to form in teams of four, and then we were all given um, a piece of paper with a paragraph, and the three, one person reads it as uh, at the speed they believe to be like um, efficient as a speaker, and the other three time it, and then the person, they framed it as the person with the fastest wins, right? Um, but at the end of it, they revealed, no, it's not about reading fast, but reading clearly, and the, then they revealed what the actual speaking time should be, and the person who came closest to that ended up being the winner when they thought that they were, like, one of the losers. Point being, is that we split into teams to then compete against our teammates, and that didn't come across as strange at all to me. Like, yeah, the, no, the, I, I, the, I, the I implication think you guys makes... gave was that a teammate is not an opponent, you can't use that word to do that. But it might have been a mistranslation. Well, that too. Um, um, maybe, yeah, that might actually really be the case. Because if they just said partners and kept saying partners, it's like, well, that could mean a lot of things. Well, or much, just much like playing with that person, it's like, well, yeah, that could mean a lot of things. I, I guess I'm just saying that even in real world examples, I don't know that saying someone's a teammate excludes them from being someone that you can compete against. Right. Um. It. I don't know if I agree with that, but it's ultimately well, so I know that that's true because game... it's happened in real life, but that could just be examples of people using the words wrong, I guess, which would then be used as validity for this. It's just like they use that word and someone in the in the crowd would be like, that's not what teammate means. And the Squid Game people would be like, OK. Look, we, you know, we kill you, right? Yeah, I don't think they're that <laughs> concerned about it. Um, yeah, I, I guess I it would it would certainly have been I don't know. The verbiage, if it was super tight, in a sense, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. At least I, no, guess, I, I, I think guess I, I, just... I completely agree. I think if they had kept referring to them as partners, um, but then again, I guess someone could argue, isn't your partner not supposed to be someone that you fucking fight against? So it's like your, your, um, <laughs> your... all I really wanna, all I really wanna plant here is that they're deliberately giving them deceptive information so they can't make the best in, or the most strategic informed choice for the drama and entertainment of it, which is interesting. And they're all equally affected well, by this. So it's not unfair for everyone. It's just, this will be relevant for future discussions of what the message is and what, uh, how, go ahead. I would agree with that. I, I think it's just, um, this is probably an element of a lot of the games, right? We'll talk about it later on, but um, in the fifth game, you know, the numbers, you have no idea what those numbers mean in relation to the game that you're playing. Yeah. Depending on the choice you made, you're fucked, like, just mathematically. Yeah. And there's nothing I... you can do about it. To correct chat, they're like, you're expecting ethical behavior here. Hmm. It's like, I think what Cap and, and Rags were saying was more so consistent rather than ethical, strictly. Yeah, yes. there's, 
because if because you get the because I think that's one of the issues. You sort of get mixed messages in terms of you, because I was really interested when Square gets killed and Frontman says, you know, it does this thing about, you know, fairness. And that, that's the most, that is the most important thing is that the, that these games be seen as fair and that we're fair and that we're not, it's not supposed to be like the outside world and that sort of thing like that. And then mm -hmm. when you meet the VIPs and when you see stuff in the games after this point, that just sort of that super interest that I had in that concept where, you know, how do we justify this whole thing happening? One of my thoughts was, oh, maybe a super principled group of obviously mega rich people are doing this to do something or test something or da, da, da. like it planted that idea that that would be where it goes, but it gets muddled by itself later. Yeah, it, it muddles what their ethic is. Not that, you know, the, the ethic of gamesmanship and sportsmanship and what they're looking to see out of it and what that says about the message of the show. Um, that's well, assuming, yeah, that's we'll why I went to eventually. Uh, mm -hmm. We are at six hours. <laughs> um, but we're on yeah, episode six. I, 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 I yeah. think I have to go, I'm afraid. Right on episode oh, six. Like, yeah, right on episode I'm very, six. very upset about it, but I have to get up in about six hours or so. So. Oh my goodness, that's your lucky number. Mm -hmm. or your unlucky mm -hmm. number, I guess. Yeah, and we do another. We have to do is now a strumble tomorrow, mutually. And we uh, is, we is indeed a loo. I need, oh, I need mm -hmm. to do a nap tomorrow somewhere. Strim, I don't know. Strim, <laughs> it's gonna be, gonna be a tough one. Uh, yeah, I. Wish I could stay, but not feasible, I'm afraid, because of this oh. gosh darn work. I'll be yourself a nice sleep now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, whatever you said. Okay, uh, anyway, yeah. Bye bye. Uh, okay, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, God. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Um, all right, so if we go go back to these these events, what I do like character wise, they're all like, well, we gotta get them strong strong folk. Um, and I th think the the crazy lady appeals to like many people in the team, but she realizes that nobody wants to be teamed with her. That ain't happening. Um, and then before uh, it can, what was that? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> be <laughs> before it, it can be like figured out in terms of what the best idea is. Um. Song Wu uh, asks Ali to uh, Ali to be his his teammate, and it's like, oh, because the obvious thing of that is, if he's your teammate, then he's not my teammate, and neither are you. It's like, okay, and uh, it, it's um definitely you'll get it, it. Just it feels like they tried to evoke the like uh, on the playground where there's three friends, but only two can do a thing. It's just like, sorry, you're gonna have to go third wheel. Bye bye. Yeah. Um. And yeah, uh, the the crazy religion man and just other guy. I think that we haven't really gotten to know. They team up. Um, lots of people start teaming up, and I think uh, our protagonist is like, oh yeah, and he looks at Oldman. And it's really awkward because I think even as a viewer, you're like, oh man, I don't need to team up with Oldman because you'll never have a chance at that point. But at the same time, you're like, but that's really mean. <laughs> just to do, <laughs> just like every other guy. Um, and before he can say, I don't want to be your partner, uh, the old man is just like, take my jacket. You wouldn't want people to think less of you by not having one. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> and he just, he just walks off. Because, yeah, he, he just, he's like, nah, no one's going to want to be fucking teammates with me. I get it. It's fine. Um, which sucks. Then we have the moment of just having a look around. And there's this dude, oh, uh, obviously, uh, Thugman is teaming up with his second-in-charge Thugman. Makes sense. They could be Thugmans together. Um, yep. And then Andrew teams up with the girl she dragged in for Tug of War. Seems to make sense. Why not? And um, Why I, not? She says as a pitch, like, I'll make sure that you win this. It's like, oh, all right. Mm. Sounds useful. Um... I don't know about you guys, but my thought when I was first watching this episode was that we were going to be subverted into a game that girls were going to win. Like, it would be something to do with, I don't know, agility, maybe, or, um... Hopscotch yeah, or some shit. Or... Yeah. Maybe even sprinting or something. I have no idea, but I thought that was going to be the, 
the, the oh, no. old trick we don't, we, Yeah, we don't know what girls are good at on EFAP. Nope. If someone, <laughs> someone will have to, if anyone someone in chat, chat. Let us, we just don't, I don't know. Um, keep a, yeah, give us comment below, like, and subscribe. Yes. Leave an essay. Uh, cleaning competition. Wow. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, there's this guy who was like, I was waiting for everybody to partner up so I could offer you to to, to our main dude. And he's just like, eh, really? <laughs> okay. Um, and he's like, I'm a math teacher. I'm pretty young. Like, he's like selling himself. And uh, he said, like, look, we got to partner up because the last person, there's an uneven number here, which means there's going to be one person remaining. And uh, that one person, you know, not going to want to know what happens to them. And he's like, well, what, what, what would be that? And he's like, well, they'll probably get killed. Um, and he just says, I'm guessing it's going to be the old dude. And he's just sitting on his own in a corner. It's like, oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a really great shot, too. <laughs> Nobody wants to be friends with him. And yeah, It's just... a great meme template. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he puts a hand out, and then we see a hand come down for Oldman. It's like, yay! Kind of, <laughs> kind of an interesting sort of feeling, though, because as a viewer, if you're being completely honest with yourself, you should feel like, man, Protag might die because of this. Yeah. <laughs> is that yeah, what's going to was... happen? Are they going to... Is, is he going to die for... Mm, is being nice going to be what gets you killed? Mm-hmm. But um, that would be really that's bleak. Always, that's always <laughs> satisfying. But, but I, I always like as it, it's we've sort of finished the choosing of partners and it just cuts to her in the middle on her own, being like, "You're all stupid. <laughs> like you should all mm. be my partner." Yeah. Uh, and she basically appeals to everybody until she ends up on the ground. Everyone's gone, and she gets pulled away. Which, um, yeah, it's been fifty-fifty with the people who I've watched it, assuming well, she's dead, and some have assumed no. I think they wouldn't kill her because this, uh, as would be cited, too unfair. Yeah. I I was thinking that she would be alive. I don't. Part of it was because I think they're really starting to play up a resolution between her and Thug. Yes. And I don't know if they set that up so much just to have her die randomly. Um. But also, I do think that if no one, the odd person out, just like pretty much any sport, if there's an odd number, the, they get a they get a freebie. If you don't have an opponent to play with in that bracket or whatever, you get to go on to the next round. You get lucky, mm -hmm. and lucky in your favor. Um, yeah, that was the main reason why I thought she'd live was we wouldn't pack that much yeah. work into her as a character just to kill her like that, would we? Like it's possible, but it seems like we could get a bigger payoff. <laughs> I really wanted her to die so badly, and I'm so annoyed that they kept her alive. I, I wanted her alive because I figured it. I figured she'd get back at the thug. So I, 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 I like the alive. thug. You like the thug? I, know, I hated him. You like? Yeah. The thug? Well, I I like him as a competitor. You know, and this is where a I villain think, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, we're watching the sport of Squid Game, and I'm like, oh, I hate him, but he's he makes some really right. smart moves, and I want to see how he plays the game. Well, uh, who else would uh, Who else would kill him? Who else but Quagmire? Well, there are who other else ways. Arya of, Stark. Of, there are other ways. I hate the way he dies too. We'll get to it. <laughs> All right. Well. um... Yeah, there are other things. There are other well, ways. Well, to well, partly, also, you know. partly uh, the reason I don't like that. The thought of her surviving, even though she didn't play the game, is a. Is it fair that she doesn't have to play this game when everyone else does? What other choice and do B, you have? Kill her because she's <laughs> kill she, her because she the, well, didn't well, get hold any on, opportunity on. to play. No, she had plenty of opportunities. Just everyone fucking hated her. So and you deserve to die in the Squid Game world because nobody wants to. Yeah, play with because you. you can't form an alliance. Why would that mean to, anything? To be fair, someone won't. Is it always going to be because they're hated, or is it just going to be ultimately? Well, I because... think. I mean, I think if 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 built into the, the game is man, like the old man, like he he could have died, and it's like, oh fuck him, I guess, right? He uh he couldn't form an alliance. Even though if he's the old. If the concept is, even in its own strange way, sportsmanship and fairness, I think it would be bizarre that the person who is left out in terms of they, there's not a teammate, if they killed that person. 
This well, game is that, not that... fair. I know it's not fair, but what I'm saying is that from their perspective of fairness, is it fair? Ah, uh, sorry. No teammate. You die. You don't even get a chance to compete. I, well, I that would like be doubly really strange considering yeah. his dichotomy with in and out. And, and the thing is, uh, I can see some end. weight to the idea that she doesn't get a partner because everyone fucking hates her. I understand that. But, like, they that's not always going to be the case. Old, old man was the, almost without no. a teammate, well, but, not but because of any other reason is, than he's old. And also well, the meaningful reason why neither of them get a partner is because there is one person has to not get a partner. Yeah. And so that mm -hmm. person doesn't even get to compete. Like, from the perspective of the people who make the game, it makes more sense to me that if the option is you get to advance because there's no one to play with, or alternatively, you die because you get nobody to play with. I feel like they just let you skip. I disagree, especially when how willing, when it when it's revealed how willing they are to just let them kill each other, and in and, and like they just let them murder each other in the night, and they're like, ah, fuck it, okay, now you can stop killing each other. I don't, I don't think they're concerned with. Like, oh, well, you know, it's not your fault, really, because eventually someone was not going to be able to find a partner. So you don't have to go through this particular trial. I, I feel like there's a difference between them killing each other and person who doesn't get to join a team through the lack of numbers should just be executed. I feel like that's a step further. Yeah, because the problem is, and I think as well, it's like, remember, it probably would have been the old man. And like, like that, it's they're devising the games, it so it's it's like you know we have thirty people and they go this is a twenty eight player game, so two of you got to die. It's like wow, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all right. Okay, well, well, didn't we? Okay, so I'm I'm a little confused now. I don't mean to change the topic, but we talked about before if they didn't have the perfect number of people for say tug of war that they would have contingencies we, for we that. We did, and this would be the contingency. That, that she just doesn't have to play this game? If we had 63 people, and they split into teams of 10, and there's three people left over, they get to skip. Yeah, that because if it was like 59 people, I don't know that they would let the whole team, they'd just have to pick something else. So I imagine it would be by degrees. Okay, so then, I, well, there's another option on the table, potentially, that she is added on to one of the other teams. That was In an this option. game, how does that, how is that? How would that work? Well, there, there, are, like obviously, what, what we discover in this is that you can play Marvel a bunch of different ways. So there are ways. I mean, they so, could yeah, have. but how I, well, how would you enforce that on another team though? Like another team. All right, one of you now has to play with her. You have to. You don't even get a choice in the matter. Uh, well, they don't get along. Over. Yeah, but they don't give a fuck about fairness. So really. th they they believe that they do in, in a, a way that is flawed in a form yeah in a yeah. flawed format they believe in it which is one of it's our issues fair, but but it's operating yeah. under that you know and um to be fair some people are saying like well if they figure this out then they're just going to choose to not be in teams so think about tug of war if you want to get a team of guys that are barely and buff and one of them is like i don't want to join because if i don't then i can just skip and it's like bro i think you have better chances here than hoping no one else picks you because you're a big strong dude and that goes the same for a lot of people might be that if you understand the game you want to you think you have better chances of that than not being potentially like forced into a group beyond a lot of people who are trying to escape it i think there's this kind of works uh works out but the thing is there's so little games that i don't think people realize the uh the skip option even exists before it's too late to even make use of it yeah, yeah. Mm. and and also uh, there's the I aspect can... of they probably want to keep as many people for as long as they can yeah and that's uh, why why, it's would they with... each, why would they incentivize yeah. them to kill each other in the night if they well so i don't actually like that i, I don't know if you guys want to talk about like that now that um I think it's bullshit. <laughs> like, I I agree. I agree. I just think it seems to conflict with the idea that they went as it just is late in the. I guess possible. it. I'm trying to think of what it facilitates story wise. It makes for a pretty strong action scene. It, it convinces uh, Andrew to join their team. Um, it creates a lot of paranoia and concern, and it's often it's going to be cited as part of the point that people will tear each other apart rather than work together, sort of thing. Um, mm. But I, I don't. So what I, what I really hate about it is when they describe it as it, it will get rid of the weaklings, and it's like, I mean, yeah, maybe I you agree. might just get rid of random people. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. But like, why are you trying to get rid of the weaklings, quote unquote? Yeah, when it's a game like marbles. Was, yeah. Oh gosh, exactly. we don't have weaklings for marbles. 
or the the um stepping stones <laughs> even the jumping one yeah like it doesn't really yeah. matter how strong or weak you are for that one in fact the slimmer and thinner whatever you are for the stepping stones potentially the way better yeah you know? um so yeah i, I can i can yeah. totally buy that there's a way in which letting her skip is more fair than um killing her but the, I, the thing i don't like is that she doesn't have to endure this horrible traumatic thing when everyone else does because she basically walks away with an advantage here it's like she's rewarded for being unable to find someone to partner up with because everyone hates her but that's the specific totally information reasonable that they go it could have been the, that they do what they do and alternatively, totally again, you keep talking about her. It could have been that the old man gets rewarded because he's old and everybody just assumes that he's worthless. Yeah. I could just frame it like that and it's positive. No, it, yeah, it, it could it could have. I'm just sure, but I, you keep framing I, it negatively. So, that's and all. And the problem like, now yeah, is I'm starting like to wonder, do you just want it is the fact that you wanted yeah. dead seeping into what you believe they should pick? No, it's you not really just, want her I, dead, it sounds like. <laughs> I really don't like her. I'll admit that for sure. And I just see I see the fact that she was the only one left out as a reflection of her failing to play a certain aspect of the game in which she can build alliances and that anyone would want to play with her. That's well, so, Except that's what, so if the, there were 40 people, then she would have had someone to play with. I was about with to say, moved anyway. had, like, this is the thing, she, I, I doubt she was outcasted by literally every person there hating her. I imagine most people didn't even, well, a lot of people wouldn't have known who she is. Um, and the fact is, if some, if they, like you just said, if there, if there were 40 players and there was just, just one girl left over, one guy left over, whatever, and they're like, well, I guess we're partners, I doubt they would have gone, I refuse to play with this person. No, no, Plus, for sure. Nobody for sure. likes the thug, but they all want to be on his team. Yeah, the thug is a piece mm -hmm. of shit, but he's probably the most popular so, pick. So, yeah, right. Like if you could, you could be playing the game really badly in that regard, but just physical advantages, like being strong, like helps out. <laughs> I just got for here. Sure. Why are you guys mad at Fringy? Don't... They're not mad at Fringy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say they're mad at me either. No, I. I. What I'm. What I'm saying is that I concede what you're saying i just narratively there's a part of it that i find really unsatisfying and that it's and, and that it's you know because of these circumstances she gets to skip what ultimately is a very very brutal and traumatic trial that everyone else has to go through and in terms of uh, narrative satisfaction though setting her up with the thug and then ending yeah. her like that would have been way more unsatisfying I, su I, I suppose they spend see, a lot of but time. I see why you would say that? Well, yeah, they spend a lot of time with those two, and you know, getting them to be pitted against one another with the betrayal. And, and I yeah, don't no, like. I, I don't I, dislike her. Yeah. I I I, I wanted see to see her would... kill that man. I I see a really? human being in her. I'm sorry. Yeah, I see I, I see Absolutely. a person that's been really trying She's to make this all work. She... Yeah, she's yeah. clearly, she's doing what she can do to survive, and he's just, like, evil. Because I can totally believe that if Thug was not as evil as he was, and he wasn't that backstabby, she would have absolutely stuck with him to the end. Oh, yeah. Well, she's willing to stick with the, the good guy team, except that, obviously, they get split into pairs, and then she's pulled off it. Yeah, I, I... think she, she will, yeah, I totally see I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have, I didn't like see her as someone... Um, who's incredibly loyal in that regard? Um, I wouldn't call it loyal. Um, I what well, I thought Rags' point was more so that she's less like she's not invested she's in being an evil as, person. I would. I guess it's, she's not as actively uh, disloyal as she could be. Um, yeah, and and plus there's that aspect of. I can see this person operating as a good person in society or a normal person in society. Thug is just a bad person yeah. through and through. She's an opportunist. He's just a fucking a thug. He's a piece of shit. He's a bad man. She'll backstab probably where she feels she needs to, but if she can get through life without doing that, I feel like she probably would. She's just annoying, yeah. like it with a lot of her dialogue. Um, no, I definitely. I'm not. I'm not basing this solely on the annoying character. I. I disagree. I would find it. I don't like the fact that she killed him. I don't find it as narratively satisfying as you do. So I'm, I'm you know, not that's 
Because I, I feel like, like that's all that was set up for her to be, really, at the end. Especially when you have, like, well, the scenes where I, she says, if you betray me, you know, I'll kill you. It'd be really weird to have yes. those scenes. And then she just dies here because she didn't get paid. I would be... Know? I, I have very specific problems with the way that he is unable to prevent her from it, killing um, him in that we'll, way. We'll, we'll, now, get, we'll, get, we'll get to the episode, yeah. don't worry. Uh, so I, what, what you're saying there is that you don't find it satisfying for different reasons to what we're talking about here. Like, in general, of the two options, you still don't like the one that ends up being for more specific reasons in the episode. Presumably. Uh, that was uh, th there's a lot of vagary in the sentence, so I didn't quite follow what, what I'm saying, saying is like you're you're saying that as much as it makes sense that she would knock him out, you don't like the way that it happens. Well, that's definitely part of it. Yeah. So you know, I I I I've, I concede it is it is perfectly fair and reasonable that she is allowed to skip this. I as a matter of taste, I don't like it for the reasons I specify. Um. I'll be completely honest with you, when I was watching it, I felt like if she got killed because she didn't get together in a team, that it would have been pretty lame. I was like, that's a really... Yeah, just, that I would just have been sucks, pretty darn disappointed. I would have accepted it. I think I could have rationalized yeah. it away in my head, because they're not they exactly hyper-consistent. Um, but I think it made way more sense that, uh, that she gets spared as a result of everyone assuming that she would be a horrible person to partner up with. It's almost like an irony. Especially because just the fact that she's in that room waiting for him pisses the thug guy off. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. But um, I think uh, arguments can be made that they would do both. Both of those things could have happened, and I think we could still square away the, um, well, I don't know that we will be able to square away the fucking philosophy of the people who organized this whole thing. Um, Definitely. No, yeah, we won't be able to. I don't think we'll be able to. Uh... But yes, we'll do um, our best. We have our teams, and uh, the the complication, of course, is just the what is this game going to be, and how are we going to win? And and um, the hope is it's going to be a game that the old man has some experience with, and that they can maybe have a chance because it's not going to be muscle related. And uh, it turns out they are correct. Marbles. I, I don't know if it has a more specific name. I think it does, right? Um, uh, isn't it called uh, Nob like G Ganbu or something? Isn't that the name? No, Ganbu no, is something no. else. Oh, that's oh. best friends. That's the friend. Name. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Ganbu. Ganbu. Maybe it's just called Marbles. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, pretty it, much. It might be that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. It's not even a specific game. Their whole no. job is to come up with a game and then just take yeah, each other's the, marbles. The, not the by common, force. The common game played with them, apparently, is the one where it's like wages of how many are in your hand and stuff. Because a lot of people mm -hmm. are playing that one. Um, but then there are other ones. Yeah. Which, to be fair, I would probably opt to not play the chance one. I'd be like, let's play. I'd rather play the one where you throw the ball into the hole sort of thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, or against the wall. Yeah, I'd prefer that too. Um, and yeah, as they enter, the old man is like seeing all of the the brick, the fences, and everything, and he's saying it reminds me of his old neighborhood, which is just gonna slide us in to a development that's gonna keep happening here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're really happy because together they're both pretty good at marbles. They know it, and uh, they can probably take out other people, which is interesting because they know that they would be killing them, but they're just happy to know that they can survive um, yeah. as a result. And yes, they are Gunbu now, which means real Gun good Boo. friends. And then he said, let's, we'll let's give each other everything. We are best mm. fucking friends. Yeah, now. we share everything and, and you do pinky thing to make it official. Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> yeah, Gunbu. And it just, yeah. I'm you, glad you, pinky swearing has cross cultural. Yes. <laughs> relevancy um, and it's nicely done because I think up to this point you sort of look back and you're like yeah I'm glad these two are, are together they're, they're, they're cute I'm, this is gonna be great maybe <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah he's like we're gonna take all the marbles in this town it's gonna be great excellent and then the announcer's like hey you uh you all done doing the happy moment cause about time for it to end. Fuck uh, you! You gotta play Are the game of choice with your partner, and the player who, uh, to take all ten marbles from their partner wins. Um, oh no. Yeah, uh, this hit fantastically for me when I was first watching it, because, um, yep. all the teams mm -hmm. were built 
with the idea of like a trust or a love uh, and working together and now they've been told that one of them has to die and it's going to be down to the, the team to decide it essentially with a game or something else um, which is incredibly cruel and creates many forms of, uh, of drama yeah we've got yeah. conflict everywhere to yeah we got we're basically doing a different thing with every single pairing because with like thug man maybe this is jumping ahead like thung thug man and thug his man. buddy there's there's is definitely more of the like overt conflict one of like all right fuck it now we gotta we gotta beat each other um, yeah. yeah, they seem pretty then, chill about it. I think he even just goes, yeah. shit, man. Um, like, meanwhile, like, <laughs> uh, Song Wu is an Ali. At first, he wants to try and just, like, all right, let's just play. Let's try and do it and not get too emotional about it. Yeah. Um, and of course, until that Ali later starts on. totally destroying him. Well, yeah, I guess we'll get to, <laughs> we'll get to that part. <laughs> well, so this and is going to um, be a, this is a tough one to do because. As you go, it, it progresses each story piece by piece, about six scenes each yeah. or something like that. So I'm not even sure how we should go about this, but I was thinking maybe do one pairing at a time, or should we do it some other way? Um, mm. we, the pairing at a time would be a, yeah, that's yeah. probably the way to go, I think. Well, we'll leave too much old man, no, we'll leave we'll, we'll go old man to last. We can go in order of the, the, the way the episode does the payoffs. The first, obviously, being Thugman. Thugman is the low stakes yeah. one. We don't really mind who wins that one, but we're still interested in seeing what happens. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for those, um, for those listening who have no idea what this episode is even about, just to make sure you understand, they were told to pair off in, in pairs that they believe would be like a powerful pairing or a trusted pairing and stuff, and then they're told that they have to compete. Um, and the winner obviously wins, the loser dies. Which is pretty rough for a lot of the people involved, and you, if you were listening, we got the pairings of the ones we just listed, but we'll probably go through them now, um, because the way this episode works is literally just showing them with their games and what they talk about, and then the result. Um, I guess you could call it pretty low action-y. It feels almost like a bottle episode, it's not quite, um, but it's, mm, it's yeah pretty meaningful uh, in terms of what we're dealing with, so... Yeah, I figure it's going to be hard for me to get the right visuals for all of this, because I don't, I don't know where each of the seeds where everyone is, but I guess we can start with Thugman. Um, does anyone they else want to... Playing... Well, I know that the, st the story with the Thugman is that they're playing, and it ain't going too great for Thug. Um, and then partway <laughs> through, he's like, fuck it, can we, can we change games? Which is, like, allowed. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I think will... that makes sense pick and choose the games that you to play. frame it right it would have been play a game get the marbles and then his his thug friend would have been like right then we're playing marbles right and this is like that's the marble game marbles it is and then he was like you chose that i didn't choose that i want to choose a game yeah yep which you know he, lines up get to play a different one and it starts to shift away and things start to change um and then th they're, they're throwing their little marbles into the holes and thug man is losing but then the other guy throws his marble and it bounces wrong and it knocks Thug's marble into the <laughs> hole and he wins. It do um, be like that sometimes. I just yeah. want to highlight, because I always when I was watching this fucking episode, Thugman 2, I guess we could just call him, his fucking face when he realizes yeah. he's knocked <laughs> his ball in. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. If, I would, if I was uh, Thugman 2, I feel like in that situation, he would be totally trying to be like that's not part of the rules that doesn't count that's not how it goes but he just sort of accepts his death i feel like that's <laughs> perfectly reasonable that he would be like i've definitely lost yours is in there time to run instead of thinking yeah. through it and yeah. being like how could i argue this from a rules i think song Wu would do what he, you're talking he about freezes and of yeah, course the fact injured. that he's sitting there trembling it's like right so you know you've lost really like you do <laughs> You can't, you can't talk your way out of this. You recognize that you've lost. Yeah, the actor looks like he's passing one of the hardest shit. He does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. And then, yeah, he tries to run away, and, yeah, he's dead. Um, it is kind of awkward in the scene that is shot, though, where, like, there's a... The, the guy who was meant to kill him is standing behind him as he gets shot with the machine gun, or the SMG, and it's like, hmm, you could have killed your own buddy yeah. there, you know? Like, it, is, it is a bit awkward. Uh, I'll yeah, show it. Yeah, why now. would you shoot it like that? Why? Why would you not? Why do that? <laughs> like, well, um, let me get it up because I remember um, 
thinking yeah. about it. So you, if you look at the, the angle, um, I think one could argue because the guy behind him is just showing up, you can see it on our end. I think the one shooting doesn't even know that guy is there before he's firing yeah. anyway. Um, but the way this is shot, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's like, oh, any Man. one, of those, any one yeah. of those bullets could have gone through and shot him. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, it would have zero consequence because, like, yeah. fucking Triangle Man is dead, I guess. Like, whatever. Uh, oh, didn't only... he make, like, sweeping shots, too? I didn't, oh. I didn't call how, like, he was firing, but he looked like he was sweeping the barrel around. <laughs> I was like, Jesus age Christ, dude. Um, I only have one one complaint about the whole thug and th two uh, plot line here. Die. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's <laughs> that um, they there's a moment where the idea seems to come into one or both of their heads. I can't remember exactly how it plays out. That like, can I just beat the shit out of you and steal the marbles? And they act as if, no, violence isn't allowed. You have to play the Marvel game fairly. But the only thing is the, the games, uh, the rules of the game never explicitly say that. Correct. So I wonder um, why he couldn't just punch him, well, steal the marbles, go, hey, I have all the marbles. Song Wu There's and... a rule for that. Song Wu laid it out. Well, I was going to say, Song Wu and Thug 2 both reference this rule. We never hear it, but I think, just to be good faith, we have to assume that was said and we just didn't hear it at some point or whatever. Really? Because we all... I feel like Two characters referencing it? Other. Yeah. They wouldn't have made it up. I, I guess, yeah, so you're saying the idea is that it was said, but we just didn't it hear it. It was between scenes or whatever. We, we have to assume that that's the case, yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, I, I guess I would have preferred it was I, explicit. This, yeah, I'll, I think yeah. because nobody resorts to violence, none of the groups resort to violence. There must be an understanding that's so strong, none of them do it. Mm -hmm. I it would have helped well, me so much if well, all they did. I, was wait, hold on. But in the uh, when Song Wu he grabs Ali and starts screaming at him, he gets a gun pointed at him. True. Oh yeah, that's another good uh, point. So all all it would have really taken to fix that for me is if they just said it when yeah, we yeah, heard I, the played well, over the some people in chat several people in chat have said they say it I'm trying to find when they say it because I, I wasn't mm, no, sure of that I okay so and also p people mentioning that like the gods are there for a reason right they're all with well, each the, pair you can argue the gods are there just to execute the leaders. yeah true, true yes that's true and to inspect the games make sure nobody's fucking around I guess. I'm just trying Players, to... please take one bag each from the staff member instead of ten marks. Please check to confirm the number. Um, and then the and then they say a couple things. We come back. Well, I guess uh, the thing that throws a wrench into it as well. In this that, game, um, using Wu... your set of ten marbles, play the game of your choice with your partner. The player who manages to take all ten marbles from their partner wins. And then she repeats the instructions. That's it. Wait, and also didn't because Song Wu when he because I was about to say like he stole the 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 marbles. He said like I didn't use violence to get them. Why would he yep. say that unless there was an assumption? Where have you been? I referenced that already. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know how I blanked on it. Yeah, my bad. No, I didn't. Someone asked if I watched the dub. No, this is based on the it. subtitles. It's never. I'm basing this on the subtitles, maybe I don't, unless it's it could it be said well, and not subtitled. I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of people say in my subtitles it's there, so now I'm wondering. Oh, that's weird. And the thing is, like, this is such a fucking problem. I've also we don't pulled up a transcript with. that I a transcript, um, and it's not listed there either. It's just I believe that that would be something they would place into the game to avoid that. Yeah. Um, all I I just wanted to hear it once. That's, no, that I, I understand, so but much. the thing is like. Seeing it getting enforced and having characters acknowledge that it exists, that's good enough for me as uh, yeah, being that's, something that... That's three I had, I had forgotten the part where it was by the guy who pulled up the gun. I had forgotten about that, so mm -hmm. I, I see what you're saying. Um, but it could just be that maybe it was said and the subtitles didn't cover it. I don't know, but I, I would have preferred it be explicit. There's no reason not to include that. It helps us as viewers just make sure we understand, but there are Many people have said there are different subs. That's very strange. There are different subs, yeah. I think in the file I have, there's three English options. Oh, fuck. Why? And I've got Forced English, Track 10 English, SDH English. Oh my I'm not entirely sure what the differences are. 
All right, that's so, fair. We can um, keep going. <laughs> since, since we're doing the groups, uh, I don't know, rags, das, caps. You want to take the next grouping and describe what happens, or? Uh, well, I guess we can do. I think we'll we'll save arguably the best for last. Yeah. Uh, next up, let's take um, let's take our two ladies. Sure. Let's take Andrew and Andrew I too. <laughs> Andrew and Andrew too. So Andrew, we've spent uh, quite a bit of time with since the beginning, but Andrew too is a fairly recent addition to our cast of uh, lovable characters, and. I think it's in a very befitting way because they're both kind of distant and uh, you know, it befits their personality, I feel, where Andrew essentially just says, uh, let's just fucking get it over with. Um, and then Andrew, too, says, well, you know, we got 30 minutes or however long it was. Um, I mean, we can just decide it at the very end. Let's just uh, you know, let's wait till then and essentially just have a chat. And they we we learn about you know a lot of the backstories for both of these characters, the tragic backstories for a lot of these characters or for both of them, which informs what ends up happening at the end. Where I guess uh, you have Andrew two, right? Uh, Andrew two, her she had an abusive uh, abusive parents essentially, particularly the father really, uh, and he was a pastor which informs why she is very not keen on people praying around her. She's kind of uh, soiled on that idea. Uh, Pastor is implied that he molested her or abused her, essentially, and killed uh, her mother. And she didn't. She got sent to uh, God. What happened to her after that? She got sent to like, she a, killed the dad. was it? She killed the dad after that. And. She doesn't really have any family, nowhere to go. There's just nothing for her. She's just alone. There's nothing happening. Uh, and kind she was of in picked her up life. right when she got out of prison or juvie or whatever. Yeah. Maybe. Fresh out of uh, fresh out yeah. of the slammer. And she believed at the time that she was being picked up to follow through on her father's debt. Um, but rather, it was Squid Game people being like, "Hey, want to join the game?" And he was like, "Yeah, okay," which um is not. A fucking great backstory. Uh, and by that, I mean, it's not a fun fucking life to have lived. Uh, she lost yeah. her whole family. She may actually be hunted down to finish off the debts her dad has. No one cares about her. Not fun. Nope, not fun at all. So, that's uh, that's one side of that coin. And the other is, of course, Andrew. Andrew has a history, this is where we learn about all the North Korea stuff. Uh, I believe the father died getting out of North Korea with her. He died of, was it, it was complications or injuries that he had sustained? I think so. Um, and the mother is still in the North, and her, br her little brother is here, but he's in like a foster home or an orphanage. Um, I think it's an orphanage. And she's looking to get the mom out of North Korea later, get a, you know, family for the kid, that sort of thing. Get the family back together, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and she's doing that through using whatever means that she has uh, available to her, which in this sense is going to be, she's, her, she's got some, her frisky fingers, as we have seen with her sneaking things in and out of, uh, well, into Squid Game with her cutting pockets and pickpocketing multiple things from people. Um, so that is Andrew's sort of backstory. And so she's also not had a great life. Uh, she's definitely in the process of making her life better. Uh, but you know, she doesn't trust people. She's kind of learned that she needs to do what she needs to do by herself. Uh, relying on people is not a, it's not a reliable thing to do. So the two of them, you know, have their chat and chit. And time passes. We get their conversation throughout the episode. Time is winding down. Tick tock, tick tock. There needs to be a winner. You have to decide the winner. So at the end, they just decide. All right. What we're going to do is we're just going to come up with a game here. If you throw a marble at the wall, I'll throw a marble at the wall. Whoever's closest wins. Right. And gets all the marbles. And so Andrew makes a shot. It's not too good. Right. But who knows? 
Uh, now Andrew too, she steps up and she's got her marble in her hand and then she goes ahead and lines up her shot and then she drops it right in front of her feet. And this, this, this makes Andrew very upset, right? This makes Andrew very upset that she's essentially giving up winning. She's, she's, she's essentially sacrificing herself so that Andrew can continue. Um, because Andrew too, she says, I don't really have anything to live for. Uh, I ain't got much going on with me, but you, you've got family, you've got stuff to do. You go ahead and you go on. Um, oh, I forget. They talk about what they're going to do with their money. Yes. Uh, a, a little, you know, nice little thing that they do where, you know, Andrew lays out, I'm going to, you know, get my mom out, help my brother, you know, to try to start a normal life. You know, reasonable stuff that you'd want to do for your fam uh, up in the north. She wants to go to Jeju and, uh, Island, I think, right? Uh, yeah. And um, there's the thing about the mojitos in Honolulu, right? Or Hawaii. Maldives, I think she says. No, Maldives. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but. That is, I really like this pairing because we get a lot of slow buildup with Andrew little by little opens up, starts to kind of learn to trust people starts, starts taking a little risk. Like here you have the water. I'll help you out here and there. I'll take a risk. But then we finally get to see that deep down, she really, really does kind of value people around her. And she just expresses that in a much more reserved way. She doesn't, she does, she really keeps her emotions super close to herself. Yeah, I think it's the first um, time we see her shout. Yeah. Uh, good pairing. Feel free to add whatever you'd like. I'm not good at recounting events. She, yeah, um, well, it, it's, it's just, it's really well done. Um, I've already seen people in chat saying they actually found this one the saddest moment in the show, which is uh, fair. Um, yeah, yeah. I was I was about to say the you know the I was about to say save the best for last, but arguably there that was a very that was a tactical arguably mm -hmm. I think because there's so there's that's a that's a good one there. I think this one and uh, with our protagonist are the two two best. I think uh, just for hitting the hitting the heartstrings because boy this was a, a misty eyed a lot in this episode. This was really good one. I really like this so. Um, yeah, so just to uh, make it clear, she she chooses. Um, some people are still confused. Sabiok, I believe, is her name, but I keep butchering it, so that's why we went with Andrew as a joke. Okay, but she's uh, <laughs> she basically says like, "Go get your brother, meet your mother, make the family. I have nothing. There's fucking no point in me living instead of you." The uh, just some cold calculus of the emotionalisms i guess and yeah she just tears up quite a bit because yeah. um it's just harsh as fuck and yeah you've got oh the way they line up the payoffs in this episode man just uh pretty relentless at one point but yeah we see her walking away and they frame it just right so that she's behind her she can't look at her as well obviously but um this skills performance is pretty good as well considering the very limited time she has yeah, they um they make a lot of use of this character. They, this is really efficient. We don't get much of her at all, but they really make us feel for her. We're sad for her backstory, and it doesn't come across as a contrived backstory to make a plot happen. The acting is phenomenal for the character, who isn't a very... I was thinking, this character isn't particularly like vibrant and jovial, although I don't blame her considering the circumstances, but she's kind of flat in a sense uh i don't mean that negatively though she's kind of reserved like this pairing of characters they go really well because they're all they're very similar to each other in the way that they express themselves um but at the same time you could tell them apart in the words that they use you know neither of them seem excited and energetic but just the the dialogue that they make like if if you got if you blurred it if you blurred out the names and you just got text versions of their conversations, you could tell them apart just by the text. You could tell them apart just by how they communicate. Um, yeah. So and uh, it's a strong juxtaposition already with the early one being a uh, brute force trying to beat each other. This one is sacrifice, just straight up. And I think your last line is, uh, "I'm honored you chose to." Uh, be my partner, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. So good. Damn. That was uh, that's oof. my favorite that was, uh, of oof. this particular episode. Really, really strong. Nothing but good things to say about it. Uh, mm -hmm. so who wants to take Ali and Songwu? I'll take this one. Um, so I, w I was hoping maybe we can uh, also kind of clear up a confusion that I had throughout this no. uh, exchange. <laughs> okay, fine. But um, so this one starts out. Ali and Sungwoo are together here, and they're going to go ahead and play the even and odds game that both um, that the old guy and uh, Gihan are already playing. And um, Sungwoo is not doing too well in this one. Ali here is mopping this game up, even though he's never played it before. And Sungwoo starts to eventually break down the more he loses until he's down to his like last one marble. He starts losing his shit. Sungwoo starts getting angry he stands up and he starts shaking ali like rather violently asking if he's cheated and that he's lying to him somehow and then that's when one of the triangle men comes up and aims his loaded revolver right at sung woo just to break the fight up so we've already inferred that they've tried the violent the, they've tried violence just a, even just a little bit and uh They've realized, oops, this is uh, this is not how I have to go about things. I can't just throttle Ali here and yeah. just get the marbles by force. I have to be more clever about this. And that's what Song Wu is all about. Song Wu breaks down and he's like, I'm so fucking sorry, Ali. Listen, like, I don't want to die. Please help me out on this. But Ali is like, no. Dude, I've got a family to look out for, too. Yeah. So I can't just give up here, dude. And so, you know, after a good amount of begging from Song Wu saying, like, look at what I did for you. Look at this. I gave you bus tickets and I stood guard. I did this, this and that. Look at what I've done for you. You can't do this to me. Ali's not budging. So Song Wu decides that he is going to try and make it so both of them win. So he's got a plan and he's going to try and tell it to Ali. Now, here's where I get confused on what Song Wu's plan is. And I'm hoping maybe we can discuss what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. From what I've gathered, Song Wu here is saying like, OK, here's what you do. We're going to grab our marbles. We're going to divide them up again. And you're going to hang on to your marbles. You're going to go around and you're going to see if there are other players who are have still not decided who the winner is. And you're going to play with them and try to gather their marbles. And that way, both of us have 20 marbles in the end, and then we both go home. Not quite. Am I... Okay, so go so, ahead and clear that up for me, if you will. Yeah, so the deception in full is, first he says something that I think is pretty agreeable, but then also not in the, he's like, we're gonna have people at the end of this who haven't decided a winner, and what are they gonna do, shoot them? That makes no sense. And then Ali's like, yeah, I guess so. When it's like, no, that could that might be what they do. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, they would just shoot them probably. Um, By the way, yeah, yeah every I do other think game. that's what's gonna happen. If yeah, if you don't, if you, especially because violence is off the table, if you two don't essentially cooperate to make sure one of you lives, you both die. Which is, so, I think, part of the that's a key thing and what makes this a super interesting uh, game. And so mm -hmm. he says, we. I'll keep, we'll keep our 20, you can hold the 20. And what I love about this is he's like, you can have my remaining one as a sign of trust, and then he just puts it in his own pocket. Like, mm -hmm. Song was a little bitch. <laughs> but like a clever bitch. <laughs> uh, so it's just giving a sense of like, yeah, you can trust me. Um, and so yeah, he's, the idea being that you, uh, we, we need to find, I think he wants them to find the weakest teams, right, in prep, and which ones who aren't finished. Mm -hmm. So he's like, you know, you search the left side, I'll search the right side, and we'll meet back here when we run out of time, and we will fight them with our 20 marbles as, as a team like we intended to. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he just convinces Ali that that's going to be the, the, the scenario, that's how this will turn out. And obviously the leverage yeah, I, gives... I th when I was listening to the explanation, I, I was a little confused as well, but I thought that the whole point of that was that it was a little confusing. Yeah. I think so. Just because he was trying to do something. Therefore, I didn't try and super hard core try and understand it because I, I I thought that was kind of the point that they were going for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's I think the idea is he just wants to find the right people to fight to get a win. 
And so um, right. he says, like, you got to look out for who's prepared. Look for one that I think he says is it. They want to find one that's old, under yeah, yeah like older. over fifty or under thirty, something like that. Which is just like criteria that'll take time for him to try and you know look for. I thought. Like, I, that yeah, was I, just, I honestly figured he gave him that, that was, criteria because most people here don't actually suffice in, in terms of that bracket. There's a lot of people who are literally that bracket, so it's going to take him longer to be able to find the right team to fight, sort of thing. Yeah, buy a little time, have him go off on his thing while I'm doing my dastardly deeds. Indeed. And this is where Thugman 2 gets blown away by like a big old bunch of rapid fire, which gets Ali's attention. And in this moment, Sung Woo swaps the marbles while Ali is looking toward the action. He swaps yeah. the marbles with another bag and then he gives it over to Ali after he's done tearing his shirt up for a nice little necklace for Ali to wear, right? Keep it safe. So he's like, there you go. Keep your bag safe right here. You don't want anybody stealing it from you. So here's my shirt all torn up for you in a nice little necklace. Now get on out there, buddy old pal. And so he is left to wander aimlessly with this bag around his neck. Song Wu then leaves the area. He heads on up to the guard and he says, all right, here you go. I have acquired all of these marbles and I didn't use violence to do it. And uh, so as he's leaving, we go ahead and we cut back to Ali, who is running out of time. He goes he goes back to where Song Wu told him to meet up, which is where they played. And that's when he makes the horrible discovery that those marbles in the bag were not, in fact, marbles. He was he had filled this bag full of a bunch of rocks out of a little garden that sounded enough like oh, marbles pebbles, because of the yeah. smooth surface. Yeah, and so Ali can see the hasty droppings of all these little pebbles just all over the ground from the garden behind him. And uh, he completely duped Ali. And uh, Ali's left there to let tears well up in his eyes, realizing that he's been duped before he gets shot in the head. Yeah, it's a, I found that shot so fucking powerful where they just show him realizing it and then the camera just pans to the side. Yeah. Um, and it's it's rough as fuck because Ali is nothing but a fucking legendary person. Yeah, he was yeah. he was nothing but kind he was and too trusting good to win. That's yeah, that's that's, that's what they argue. I think with this yeah. is that he yeah, was, exactly. Too, too he had no, he really win. had no chance. He um, was too naive, being, despite yeah. being an incredibly adept player in terms of just each of the games he does quite well at. But um, yeah, he was I, have, I have one. Good. I have one question about this, and I, I do Ooh, like yeah. everything they're doing. One question is why he, why he believes that if they haven't finished the game that they won't just shoot them. Because it seems like all the evidence would point to the fact that they would just shoot them. Literally just that he, he was told by Song Wu that wouldn't make sense, right? It's an, I think it's, that is enough to make him think, like, I guess so, yeah. Because all you have to do is have his brainwave be like, yeah, what if everybody jams up, then... You wouldn't just kill everybody. I guess the game yeah, that, continues. I well, think there's a level Ali... of trust that uh, Ali puts in Song Wu's yes. assessments yes. of the situation, For which sure. he definitely I, plays yes. off as. Yeah. Not to mention, I, has Ali really expressed any deal of skepticism very much when it came to these games and these plans? I don't think so. He's yeah. Uh, he's not. He's been naive. He's not. Yeah, that's why. That's why I think his flaw is he's too mm -hmm. trusting and too nice. Um, yeah, which is what it is is tragedy. That's the thing. He's he's that's it's a tragic tragedy. story. Yeah. Um, he's not stupid. He's not like smart. He's that he like his intelligence is never really something that they talk about either way. It's just that his problem is that if you could call it a problem, I guess you could. Is he's too trusting of other people. And he reminds yeah. and prior Ali. to all this. He reminds him of all the things he's done for him and how he should trust him. So it's, it's... yeah, yeah. He doesn't yeah. want to take advantage of other people, and he doesn't want to hurt other people. He's doing it if he has to do it. It's because he has to. Yeah, uh, Song Wu so buttered him up a way great deal. That, yeah, because so often during the show, he has been very reverent towards Song Wu. He has been oh, very for sure. thankful yeah, yeah. for all of the things he calls him sir all the time. Yeah. He's very very respectful. Um, so that's, that is, and again, that's what just, it just flows. I, I, Go ahead. 
no i i do get it and i'm not saying it's a problem it's just definitely on a first watch the the what seemed like overwhelming evidence there's no way they would just not kill you if you didn't finish the game or complete the game seems so obvious that it that in my head it kind of outweighed the other factors that you just That's brought the thing. up. I honestly I think, think it wouldn't have worked on people like us. We would have been like, no, we're finishing this game uh, the way that yeah, we started it. With, yeah, there's no way that they're going to be like, oh, all the people who you didn't finish? Oh, you, you're you both fine then. Just go back. No right. way. That's the That's thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll do sudden Ollie. death even though we've never... You know. I just uh, I think that's um, part of Song Wu choosing Ali, not just the strength, but also he can manipulate him quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. then I guess someone is pointing out Song Wu is a financial fi financer who cheated on people, hence his debts. Um, he, I think, oh, I absolutely was... believe he would do it. I, I, oh yeah, I, wished, I mean, I, I, wished I would fucking Ali, do it. Yeah, I wished Ali. <sighs> I don't know. I, Wait, there is well, there is something in Ali. When I first, that is... I'll just say, I'll just say, the first time I watched it, it seemed like they were making him a little too dumb. But the more I think about it, it's I I I, I lean more towards what you guys are saying. That's all. I yeah, I have a hard time with the word dumb. I don't. I wouldn't classify Ali as dumb. Just again, or that this my my first watch was the well, this was kind of a dumb moment, and then thinking more about it, I can see. How Keep in mind, character sense. Ali is a character who has consistently worked at a job where he's not receiving his pay because he's been told he'll get it. Mm -hmm. like, and then when he sees the guy with it, he doesn't let that shit slide. Yeah, and that's what I think is happening here, which is so fucking tragic. That tear is because he knows Songu was lying to him the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Um, his, his best was, friend yeah. in the whole game. Yep. The person that I who helped me that I really, really respected the person that you know, that I, if I, if only I'd have kept those marbles, you know, I, I was played, I was tricked. And yeah. it was because I was too pure. And I liked um, that along with it, Song Wu loses the part that's gotten him in here in the fucking first place. He, he's terrible at gambling, like, I guess. And he, the gambling game of just, I'm sure it's this, it's not. And he gets fucking angry because a 50 chance, a 50 50 chance to lose and he loses, what, three times in a row? He's like, no, that doesn't make fucking sense statistically. And it's like, you must be cheating. It's just like this is probably the fucking shit that got him in here. Like you yeah, just that keep... is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A if yeah, getting getting a fifty fifty three times in a row is a one in eight chance. Um, Something uh, one one of the things I thought when I was watching it is that is it Sung Woo? Am I saying that right? Yeah, I think so. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. That I I think part of my problem is that he. He didn't make the case convincingly enough for me, but then the more I think about it, the more that I think the language barrier helps him or helps make sense of this a bit more too. You know, that yeah, he it, was the first person to tell Ali that he will explain the games to him and he'll get him through this. And yeah, up to this point, he would have. So yeah, no, I think I think that makes sense. Yeah, but I, when I first watched it, I, I came away with. That they made him a little too dumb, but I, uh, I've, I've changed my mind. I think, I don't know if Fringy was the same. I remember thinking about some of the things, but like when they paid those two up and revealed this, I was like, yeah. So one of these characters has been characterized previously as naive. One of these characters has been characterized as fucking ruthless. I know how this is going to end. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they showed I... that he was losing the betting game. I was like, oh, Song Wu's going to do something. Yeah, the, um, and I, I don't blame him. You know, it's one of those things where you're like, I, I, I don't blame him. It's like well, you, we, you, you walk out of this and you hate Song Wu for taking advantage of a really good person that you really like. And then you think about yourself in his shoes and you're like, oh, I mean. Uh. Fringy, you can do it, man. I don't think it'll be that bad. Do it, Fringy. Come on, Fringy. Yeah, what's what? What does your Australia hail sound like? <laughs> <laughs> like a machine Angry gun outside? Or... Do, 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 do. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Everything is worse. Fringy, are you, you going to do it? Can you do it? Do it. Let's hear it, Fringy. We believe in you. 
Uh-oh. Well, for context, it's hailing where Fringy is right now, and yeah. he said well, he has stuff to say. It's like, well, before yeah. we leave this barn, I was going to say we, we can't move on to the next speak. one until he has his things said. Well, Fringy, exactly. And say it's it, Fringy. That bad. We have to. You have to do it, or fucking type it. If you're not going to say it, we could get yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you think like as soon as he typed that out, he, he got up and went to get a coffee? So he just, all of this has fallen on deaf ears. Just like oh, maybe, <laughs> he has no yeah, idea no. what we're saying. Or maybe. Uh, or maybe a hail golf ball just kind of blew through the window, and now he has to deal with that. I wouldn't rule it out. Frankman, Fringy, are you alive? Prince Fringy. Ali, naive is he? Ali <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! That is that is cruel, though. <laughs> Fringy. I guess we're gonna have to move All on. All right, well. Yeah, I guess so. Which leaves. I that's the same. Um, just hit the un just hit the button, hit the 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 mute button to unmute yourself and then begin speaking. Yeah, for it's the little button. You can do it. You can do uh, it. Do it. Um Do it. We're gonna, we're gonna have to, until he rudely interrupts the person talking about the next <laughs> thing, we're gonna have to wait until then. Um Yeah, Cap, that leaves you and the Oldman story. Oh, uh, do I have to summarize it? I, mean, I can do that. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. Go right ahead. All right. See, I, 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 on a rewatch, I only made it up to episode five, so I haven't rewatched any. But I will do my best. Son of a bitch. So, Four. so base basic idea is that they play the version of marbles where it's the odds or evens version of the marbles game, and uh, things are not going well for our protagonist, and he sees signs of man's dementia. Creeping in, and so he thinks to himself, "Hmm, um, I wonder if I just a little am bit I too skipping fast. something." I was gonna say because the way it That's starts is Oldman is like, "I love this neighborhood. This is great," and our character is oh, like, "Hey, see. we got to play yeah, a game. We got to play a game." And it's it's interesting <laughs> from a character standpoint that he's like having loads of fun. He's like, "I don't want to play the game," and then he fucking pushes him against the wall, and he's like, "We got to play this fucking game." Uh, and I yeah. think he says like, "I can't. I have to get out of here," and it's just like. Mm, we've already we pushed our character a little bit, and uh, mm-hmm. you know the the core values are starting to overtake any sort of superficial ones that may have been there. But you know it's 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 interesting to think about. But carry on. Um, okay, so uh, he decides after seeing that uh, our old man is not quite a hundred percent there, or at least he perceives it that way. He decides, oh, maybe he can convince him that he actually said odd when he said evens because he doesn't remember what he said. And so Well that wasn't min- Oh see sorry. if I'm missing um, stuff, I think <laughs> feel free to jump in. Well see that wasn't well, that wasn't the protagonist's we, we should... idea from the start. Yeah the that to be fair the, the way the man suddenly gave him that opening. Is, and which I think is important when considering bonus contexts that were both both in this episode we... and later. But um worth mentioning that I think it's fucking amazingly done. The camera just sits on him, realizing he's lost, it's all over, because he guessed odd when it's even. And as the camera's creeping closer to him, you just hear Oldman say, which one did you say? And he's just like frozen oh, until he right, slowly right, looks right, at him, right, right. like, because that's an opportunity right there. Um, and that's how it starts. The deception is mm-hmm. given as an option, and then he starts to facilitate yes. it himself. Um, I think you should keep retelling it because I'm clearly <laughs> forgetting. Yeah, yeah I mean, our, basically the this basically all of this can be summed up in one sentence, which is: as the old man gains his marbles, he loses his marbles. <laughs> well ah, said, Ryan. The giddiest. So uh, I mean, I, you you want I can. Uh, go ahead and because I've been go I've been kind of catching up. Go for it. Yeah, I've been kind of like watching in the background uh, while you guys were going over the the two the two Edwards or whatever we're calling them. I forget. Andrews. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> so, um, all right. So the old man has then given him the in that he's going to start playing with his memory in a sense. Like, oh, oh should no, we, what did have you done the Genbu again? thing? The Genbu thing is later. Um. So the odds and even game continue to be played and the protagonist keeps on using this in because the old guy's like, oh, what did I say? And he keeps changing his guess whenever he opens his hand. And so he keeps winning and winning. And then eventually um, the old guy 
comes up with only one marble left. Or rather, first, the guy thinks that he's won. He's got all the marbles because the guy dumped out his bag. All the marbles came out. He bet them all and he lost them all. And so the old guy's like, oh, dang, I'm all out. Hey, tell you what, can you um, can I borrow marbles from you? I want to keep playing. But then the but then the protagonist is like, nope, I'm uh, I'm I'm done. So he goes up to the guard, hands him his bag. But then the old guy pulls another marble right before that. Mm -hmm. The old man is holding open his hand. He sees three. And he's like, right, next round, just closes it. And is like, how many do I have? It's an our guy's just fucking tearing up because it's like, yeah, I, he's, you he's just losing showed it me. because he can. You just showed he's me a hand. He's watching this it's progress like, of, yeah, of really uh, extremely yeah, poor memories. Yeah, and he's, he's, he has uh, already come to terms with the fact that this was a choice he made and this is the end point. Um, and because mm -hmm. when he's like, oh, I don't have any more marbles, let me borrow one. Is that shot where they show it, like the full screen is filled up with his hand holding the marbles and he's just crushing it with his hand. And he's just like, I can't. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking it's like, sad. I, 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 gotta, I gotta get out of here. But then the old guy digs into his pocket. He's got one more marble. He's like, hey, I've got one more. I'm still in it. But then as the protagonist is ready to go back, go and sit back down, the old guy gets back up and he continues wandering around like he was earlier and wearing yeah. out the clock. Oh, it's, it's, it's even better than that. I, I remember moments yeah it's even better episode. than that yes. <laughs> <laughs> because he's like he's counting his marbles thinking that's 20 and he goes i only have 19 and he looked back over at the old guy and he's just wandered away yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah and so just yeah he's, he throws the marble so on the much. ground counts to 19 yeah, yeah yeah you're right and for like an atmosphere so, yeah, he, he just came to terms with having screwed this guy over and now he's got to go back to finding him reassess and getting back in the game and tricking him again like it's just like oh for fuck's sake because there's, exactly. yeah, because he can't possibly not guess it at this point. He only has the one left, so he exactly. knows. He knows. Uh -huh. But see, he, he's already like completely mentally broken down at this point, and he still has to keep doing this. So the old guy wanders further out, and then he recognizes this spot. And the old guy's like, "Yeah, this was my house. We had wonderful children, and we did all kinds of wonderful things." He goes wandering into the yard, and Gihan is just. He's like, I really, really need that marble, man. We have to keep playing right now. And Yihan is so mentally distraught at this point that he's grabbing and shaking the old guy. Like, we have to keep playing. We, I need that marble. And old guy's just talking about guy. how, as a kid, he would watch his like brothers and sisters play games and how fun it was. Mm -hmm. and how Yeah, his... it's kind of been a consistent thing of his where he reminisces about his childhood. Yeah, yeah, and, and back just and, back and, and specifically watching people play games and enjoying games in general. He loves he loves his games. Yeah, so theme the um, theme exactly. So the old guy then says, "All right, well I'll tell you what. Let's play one more time. We're gonna bet it all. One wins, we just win it all. My one marble for your all your marbles, and we just bet it all. And then Gion's like." Well, wait a minute, what? I, so all 19 marbles go to you if you win. And he just kind of nods his head like, yeah, we're going to do yeah. that. And Gihan's like, yo, dude, what the hell? That doesn't even make any sense. Then the old guy busts this out on him. He says, that doesn't make sense to you? Like tricking your friends to win the game? And then Gihan's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, he doesn't really say anything. He's he didn't... just frozen because of that. Yeah, he's just completely mm -hmm. frozen in that moment because he realized the old man hadn't actual was completely cognizant of what he was doing, and he had essentially thrown the game on purpose. And so, it's complete. Like I don't think Gihan says anything at all anymore at this point. Well, yeah, because like, I adore this moment because of the fact that, in a neutral standpoint. Me having to put up 19 while you put up one doesn't seem fair, but it's like, but how did you acquire those 19? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, calling him out for that. This, this righteous indignation of, I shouldn't have to put up 19. And then it's like, you fucking stole them all from me. And it's like, yeah. Got him. And he was, because obviously he was operating with the information that he believed the old man had. And so it's just like, yeah, you should. And then he's just like, I have more than that. And it's like, well, there goes the wind from my sails. Uh... And yeah, he has to sit there for a moment, understanding the person that he is, um, because it feels incredibly fucked. But at the same time, yeah. I feel like 
pretty much anybody would have fallen into doing this. Um, mm-hmm. If your life's on the line. Yeah, and he's, so got, he's looking to... for his family and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so Gihan's done. He's not saying a word anymore, but the old man continues. Earlier on, they were talking about Ganbu, about that we're best friends, and best friends will share everything with each other, no matter what. And he is reminiscing on that moment. Uh, let me see if I can bring it back to where it, exactly what he said. He says, uh, oh, he's really slowly putting the mark. So the old man eventually just grabs Gihan's hand. He puts the one marble in Gihan's hand and he says, go ahead, just take it. Remember what we've talking? It's yours anyway. You remember what we were talking about earlier? We're gone, boo, man. We're just talking. We we're gone, boo, aren't we? Yeah. Don't you remember? When you and I swore that we were Ganbu buddies. Yeah, you just Ganbu always share everything with each other, no matter what. And Gihan's completely losing it. Yeah, he's just he's just yeah, sobbing so in the old man closes his like... fingers over his uh, uh marble and just hugs him. And he says, Thank you for giving me such a wonderful time. You made all this very wonderful for me. And uh they, they 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 squeeze each other for a good long time, and Gihan's just sobbing his head off. And the old man seems a okay with all of this. He he's just says he's had fun, he's made a friend, and everything's okay. And uh, as the as Gihan slowly leaves, you see one of the pink suits aim the gun at the old man. Camera pans away from him for a good long while. You hear the gunshot. The PA says player one has been eliminated. And we just leave over a big wide shot of this load of death all over this cute little set. And uh, that's it. Yeah, it was right after he gave his name as well. Or oh, Ilnam. Mm, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which obviously, he couldn't remember it in episode three. Yep. Um, he was ready to get his name now. Yeah. Uh, I, so that's easily my favorite episode from the show. Um, yeah. I thought it was favorite. fantastic. The only flaws I can come up with are just very, very minor and almost preferential. Um, super impressed with, with how much they did with all the dynamics of these characters, and I feel like they justified how they got them into this situation. And I think that it works as well that the people in this world would want to generate these situations for the entertainment factor. Um, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it means more to us because we're very invested in these people as people. And then to have built characters that are so different that it generates completely different scenarios that have incredibly strong payoffs, I would argue, but in a different emotional ways. I was, I was just I was pretty blown away. Uh, it's one of my favorite episodes of TV, just in general. It's good, good, good stuff. Uh, one of the only things I don't like about this episode is something I wish it did that it just didn't cover is that I would have really liked to see the couple deal with this particular thing. You do in the next next episode. I don't, Uh, I don't disagree with you, um, but I don't know what we're cutting to put them into this. I agree. No, for sure. I, I I wouldn't want to cut any. Ah, uh, the the thug is, and thug two stuff maybe. I like but thug like, and thug two. Um, no, no, I wouldn't cut it completely. I just i i would have i would have really liked to see the couple deal with this issue. It's not really a flaw at all. I just really want to know how that conversation went. I, I mean, I'm with you in a sense that I think we could have made the episode ten minutes longer and we could have included that. Um, at the mm-hmm. same time, I do think it's powerful to have seen them realize it, and then we just see him later. So we know um, maybe there is a sense of value in being able to know that something else is happening this whole time that wasn't just regarding the characters we've come to know. Um, yeah, but and not to mention, time, we haven't followed either one of them throughout most of these episodes anyway. I still would have liked to seen it, but I'm, it's not really a criticism. It's just uh, do more because this episode was good. So I you're want, saying I it's want... a great episode. Make it better. Um, and I, I don't know if I don't know if adding that in kind of ruined the pacing and the timing of all these great reveals. So I don't want to say 
that it needed it. I just, I really want to see that conversation mm -hmm. because it's yeah, be fascinating. You. That's all I get. That's all I have. Um, and there are additional things to comment about in this episode, but only once we get the context of the last episode. So we shall return, Chad. Yeah, uh, that's that's the one other thing, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, seriously, I, I yeah, couldn't praise this particular episode enough. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and they is, end. Uh, Too bad incredible. we have the next episode. <laughs> I like the next episode, but man, do I have criticisms for it. Um, I feel bad the that Fringy... The next episode's called VIPs. Fringy hasn't been Fringy, able to Fringy, unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, Fringy, where'd you go? Fringy. Where'd you go, Fringy? Fringy, Fringy we don't even know if it would actually be loud or not. Fringy, was, what, did the hail get you? Were you killed in the hail, Fringy? Because he hasn't been able to talk about the song we pay off or the old man pay off. I feel bad. It's a, it's a really good one. He, let's just... He was pretty moved by it. I, I was like, oh, Freaky, where are you, buddy? I think we'll just have no! to... <laughs> that was me, sorry. <laughs> that actually scared me. <laughs> <laughs> the emus got him. Well, <laughs> I wonder if Rags cried. I did. I was uh, I was bawling through this whole thing. I was uh, tears were streaming down my cheeks. This was a uh, really really great. They definitely spent a lot of time and effort and talent to earn this uh, from me. It kind of it made my face hurt. I was like trying to not cry, and my face hurt afterward. I mean, it's just exactly what I want out of my stories. It gives me all of the feels. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. Um. Fringy, what did you think of that payoff? Yeah, Fringy. All right, well. <laughs> when he finally he's gets back, people will love to know his thoughts. He is truly speechless. He's, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, our... he's crying right now. He's just trying to compose himself. That's what it is. Yeah. Our, our wonderful uh, summary has just moved him just out of the room. Um, so what I'll say now is that I think... Madeline Rags saw this episode, and then uh, we had to sort of try and find a different time to watch because obviously it was fucking difficult to fit all this in within time. But Mel, I think, didn't see the next one for for a decent chunk of days, right? I I was I originally watched this all in one. I was just so gripped. I wanted to know what happened, even with the detective storyline. Can you believe it? Um, mm. <laughs> and but so the way Mel watched it, he was like, you know, that last episode when he starts up episode seven, he's like, oh, you know, that was a. Uh, Oh, that was quite the episode. This one opens with just yeah, the shot go. is Ali's corpse. And he was like, right, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> no! just like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. We're it's, back. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I just feel like it's a good visual to be like, yeah, how fucking rough was that? Anyway, moving on. We gotta keep going. <laughs> Bet uh, you loved him, huh? Because now... Yeah, it gets to the point now where we're just like, fucking hell, remember when we had like 400 plus people, now we're down to, is it is 18 now, is it, or 16? Some like that, I Some think so, yeah, getting 16, real small. And uh, yeah, I think, so funnily enough with this episode, um, this was the one where a lot of people, I'd say a lot of people were surprised with uh, Thug's demise, and they didn't think, they thought he was going to be the end villain. Um... I honestly thought it, it could never be Thugman because he's not an interesting um, final boss compared to someone yeah, like Song Yeah, he's Wu. just yeah, he's just like he he's a good uh, archetype, and I, I like that he's in it. He's a good villain, it. yeah, but he's just he's not an interesting villain. If that makes any sense, I, if it were him, he's versus... definitely not more interesting antagonist set against yeah. you know protagonist than. Uh, actual guy whose name I can't remember. Oh, you're right. 17, but one kills himself. And, um, yes, chat, I'm so fucking sorry. This is the episode where the VIPs are introduced. Um, it's become a meme for coverage on this. Everyone hates the VIPs, and I'm not gonna be disagreeing with that very much at all. Uh, I hate them, too. We'll get there. Hey, we'll get there. hey, look at all the illustrations of the, uh, games. Yeah, now it's become fucking clear as day, but whatever, we're never gonna have them be acknowledged, even when all the beds are cleared, they're not gonna acknowledge I it. I hate it. I know. I hate I'm it sad. so much. When the guy kills Cause... himself, he's literally... I know. And they're looking right at him. <laughs> um... Anyway, we find out Crazy Lady is still alive, and they're all just kinda like, the fuck ever. Like, they're all, they've all just gone through what they've just gone through, so they're probably just like, ugh. She's just really happy, and she mentions how it sucks when you're like a kid and left out in that way. And um, I think she said that factored into their decision or whatever. 
Well, that they mentioned it. The, a rule they have, or something like that. Uh, she said, yeah, she said to, to prevent a kid from turning into an outcast. Um, amazing, isn't it? Regardless, uh, this is where <laughs> Frontman realizes that the receiver is in the wrong place. And it's funny, because this is what I was trying to get at, but we couldn't get here yet. Uh, there was praise given to, ooh, nice noticing that. I'll give you a plus in terms of that's cool that he noticed, but I think it's a fucking negative that he announces <laughs> to the person, I have noticed you put the receiver down wrong. <laughs> I will now hunt you. Like, what are you doing, you idiot? I, I know you're in here. It. Your gun is a Smith & Wesson revolver. Why it is he saying it? Revolver. Why is he Reverend, saying Reverend, any Reverend of that? Man. Yeah, why can't maybe he just it's start to demoralize the, the detective to be like, see, I'm really smart and I'm coming for you. And so look his... how smart I am. I figured out all these and things. And I'm gonna keep talking so you know where I am. <laughs> also, I'm not calling in my, my so also, squid army to so hunt here's my, you down. I'm gonna squid do my squad. Squad. Here's my ultimate <laughs> suggestion. Just be like, hmm, lovely normal day in my office. Gonna go downstairs. And he just goes down. <laughs> and then he comes back up with mm -hmm. an army and he's like, everyone check each of these rooms at the same time. Find this fucker. And be like, yeah, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and I think that would yeah, be really I fucking cool. Uh, yeah, yes. I appreciate a good, smart, ruthless fucking villain. But instead, he goes if after he didn't him. Say a, even if he didn't bring an army, which he should have, even if he didn't say a thing and started opening doors, I would have been like, ooh, that's great. Because then I have to lean in and, and discover what he noticed that maybe I didn't notice. It's you know, some, like, oh, what is. It's, it's baffling to me. That you, as a one man with no armor and a pistol, are going to try and hunt and kill a guy who's got- he's hiding from you, specifically, with a gun, and <laughs> would kill you. Like, wh And is waiting for you. Yeah, why- like, to be honest, like, front man, what are you doing? Like, he could kill you. <sighs> Especially when he find out that he won this competition before. Yeah, he's, You would uh, think he would know a thing or two about survival. It's weird, um, and it annoys me, and it annoys me on every end. There's just barely anything in the detective plotline that satisfies me. I'm always just frustrated. Speaking of which, uh, he gets a call. Here it comes. Here We've, it comes. We found a body, sir, washed up on the island, northern coast. It's the. It, it has an ID on it, which is Detective, whatever the fuck detective's name is. And it's like, there we go, mm -hmm. sweet. And that is enough to convince Frontman that he must have. Attempted to swim out there and got killed. <laughs> Fucking amazing. He, he really... Yeah. And the timing. I, and the timing. And the timing, yeah. I guess and I also, really didn't know how to scuba dive. And I don't, I don't want to diminish how important those two points are. But also, if we remember, the guy pushed the body... The guy who... He's, the detective stole Pink Man's outfit threw his body with his clothes and his ID over the boat very soon after they got on the boat. And now they're at a private island, presumably somewhere far away from South Korea, maybe in the middle of the Pacific. And how did the body get there? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I'm also, to add to that, we got the two points, your point, and now a fourth point. If you have a medic on staff, which you, how do you not have a medic on staff? You have a medic on staff. Have a medic mm -hmm. on staff. Any Got medic it. with this salt will be like, this guy died a while ago. This was not recent. And you said you saw the imposter, mm -hmm. what, a day ago? Yeah, this ain't him. Yep. Yep. To be fair, you probably recognize that as a normal person. I can tell by the crabs. Yeah. So, someone said that the currents brought it there. The, uh, All right. Really? I mean, I'd the been... island would have to be like within eyesight of the coast for that to work. And Did if it it's within the eyesight of the... or the endpoint, it was the north it coast the of the island. island. So either okay. the island is actually very coast, close to the coast of South Korea, in which case, how are they keeping? The... Or it's a private island somewhere in the Pacific. That far from the jurisdiction of South Korean police and detectives, and in that case, how the fuck did that body get there? Well, maybe we don't know where the island was because it wasn't in the. I'm trying to. Oh, fuck, I, I'm trying to formulate this in my head. I was so excited for it. <laughs> maybe we don't know where the island was because it was in the Pacific Ocean, not the Pacific Ocean. Nice. <laughs> 
Also, uh, this guy really does look vaguely enough like Detective Man that he can get away with this. Imagine he didn't. <laughs> Imagine it was a black guy. Yeah. Imagine it was a guy who's bald or had a mustache. Well, not not a mustache wouldn't be it, but I don't know. This I know you could be like, well, maybe he lost all of his hair over the course of however years that ID was made. I just hate the fact that he looks just like him, and that this is enough for them to believe it. It's like oh, I'm pretty sure this is the same guy. I guess we found the imposter. Woohoo, we're done. Like <laughs> lame. So yeah, I was. Everything I was, about this is wrong. I don't um, think there's anything about it that works. I, I think I watched this episode with Drinker and the prior one, and it was funny because. I was like, he loved episode six, and I was like, yeah, man, you know what else wasn't in episode six? He was like, well, he's like the detective. <laughs> like, he was <laughs> fucking in it. So, turns out, I feel like, could you imagine if there were like three detective scenes in that episode just sprinkled through? It'd be like, please leave me alone. I'm busy. <laughs> uh, he knows it's not him, Mola, so he stops searching for the imposter until they confirm the, the imposter again. So I assume yes. that's uh, the it show is telling like you us. Keep that, looking, yeah, until you confirm that it's the imposter. Not we're not going to look until we confirm that this isn't the imposter. Um, it's super yeah, that dumb. doesn't make any sense. He has to think it's him, or else why would he why called off the he search? Just go back to his office. Yeah. yeah. Um, um but, someone someone has said uh, had mentioned earlier. Um. Uh, how, do you hate seeing people walking into rooms with guns at arm's length? Yeah, I do. I really hate that. It bugs me immensely. That's it's just I'm <laughs> I'm coming. It's it's like it does bug me to see that people have was, these. Uh, um, like, they're searching around corners and rooms. Open. They're they're opening up doors and staring into darkness of dark rooms. In particular, with a pistol out at arm's length in front of them. I'm like, okay. I was actually asked on Real BBC, gonna... like, what is Rag's thought on the gun and gun gun work, gun usage in this show? And I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that in general? Uh, weird usage? that they use the revolver specifically to kill people when they carry around submachine guns. Like, why? Why have the extra thing? You know, I guess is it just more more stuff you have to have? Is that ammo more... efficiency or is it not? No, I mean the because those are MP5s that they're carrying. Those are just nine by nineteen, and the revolvers they're using could be I don't know, probably thirty eight specials or something. But it's just why use a revolver and also have these submachine guns that you're using? Why, why the revolver? Is it because it's more fun to see or interesting to look at, or it's more intimidating to have the revolver at arm's length when you shoot someone? Um. I don't know. Is it to facilitate making? I, I don't know. It just it seems odd that they'd have both of them. Um, I mean, spared no expense. MP fives are expensive. Um, a little, a little dated, but that's all right. There's just no worries with that. Um, um I just want to uh, point out really quick that one super chatter says the island has to Korea because they used ferries to bring the cars there, and ferry. Boats likely would not reach somewhere in the middle of nowhere Pacific. That just creates more problems for how the fuck they kept this all a secret. I would agree with that. And I would also say that someone said, um, what's happening here is he realizes his brother is the imposter, and that's why he's not going to chase him now, because he likes his brother and that he knows this body isn't his. If I told you this was Detective's body, pretty sure you'd believe me. Like, in terms of just, yeah, you, why not? He looks just like him. And the idea that, are we supposed to believe then that he's allowing his brother to just run rampant across the facility because he's his brother? <laughs> like, that sounds stupid. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, you think that he would be principally pretty opposed to nepotism, supposedly. My assumption... Yeah, he's all about fairness, Some people right? were saying I cut out. Did I cut out? Did A I... number of times when you were describing the fairy. Well, I gathered what you were oh. saying, but if you want to repeat it, you can go ahead. Oh, the basic idea, someone points out, I think correctly, that the island has to be pretty close to South Korea for a ferry boat carrying via, uh, carrying cars to actually get there. You can't just be in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific, somewhere like Midway Island or Hawaii or anything like that. So if it's that close to South Korea, it creates more problems for how the fuck they've never been caught or noticed before. I mean, even... And even the aspect of how to, the, they must have built this entire fucking facility, which is an impressive facility. Yeah. Um, so Huge. Uh, it's its own thing of how this was all organized. And I, I guess a billionaire bought an island and 
I don't fucking know. I don't even want to pretend. To... And then, um, yeah, uh, he um, bought an island very, very close to South Korea, such that the body could have reasonably washed up ashore. But it's it's just far enough that no one has ever noticed that all this stuff is going on there. Yeah, and this massive facility was constructed, which will require countless amounts of men and machines and huge project to do and nothing with there's not a huge paper trail that leads a bajillion eyes to the fact that this exists and I, mm, scale of this is uh, uh, you would have to have like the government is in on it and even then it's and questionable people will resort to that in defense of the show and i just feel like there's nowhere near enough information to conclude that um we don't, I think we have anything agree. saying that the government is in on it i think it's explicitly that they're not yeah almost I just there mm, don't um, believe it. So yeah, um we now believe we're pretty much safe. It's only later once the imposter is rediscovered that they start chasing him again and I just found that to be shit. <laughs> I was like very well. Uh I was someone sent me a picture of where the map or a picture of where the island is. Hmm. Um I don't know if this is the actual island they use for filming or I'm not sure, but that's supposedly what I've been uh, shown here. I, I don't know enough about know. how all of that works to be able to point out the, the issues for it, um, but it seems not that remote. Um, or maybe it is. I, don't, I guess I don't know. I need to know the scale for like what it, what it means to be a remote island. Um, so anyway, uh, Husbando... Oh, I guess there's a little bit of dialogue that uh, I think Sang Woo just says um, he was an old man. Like, it's fine. In an attempt to make one you feel better. Um, though it's not really going to work. The one thing I, I think was already missed in Episode 7, before we even get into the, a lot of criticisms, is why didn't our protagonist ask about Ali? And what happened and how how it ended up, or is he? Are we supposed to just believe he concluded they played the game and Ali lost? Um, I mean, I. I it feels you, to I me mean, that it's it, worth him just even acknowledging that Ali's dead. You know. I can't. I I can't imagine he has much fight left in him after he just took the old man out. Um, Plus, like in maybe terms of like. Of like I know what you had you had to do I guess you're the one one of you had to win. Yeah, I don't yeah, wanna, I can I can definitely yeah, infer I, that that's the case. I guess I I just want him a bit wanna, more wanna, explicit. Yeah, I want um something for Ali, to I confirm, guess. Confirm, yeah. I agree. I it would if he just said something and then he could say, Oh, you know, we played the game and Ali lost, you know, I felt really terrible about it, but that's just the way it went. You know, some sort of indication that he's concerned. Again, uh, there, there's a lot of room to say that he's just so fucking... The fact that Oldman's dead after the experience he had that he's not going to ask about it, but like obviously he doesn't ask about it for the rest of the season. I just... Just an acknowledgement, I guess. That's all I'm after. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not entirely sure if I, exactly how I would phrase it either, but anyway, uh, hus husband is losing his shit and saying, if all of us just vote, we can get the fuck out of here. This is way too much. They had us kill the people we care about, and then... The alternative perspective from Song Wu being, uh, yeah, with everything we've lost, I think we're going to continue. Um, we're this far, and obviously, I think I think he says, if you felt this way, you should have fucking died in a place, sort of thing. Uh, Song Wu just just getting a bit more ruthless at this point, and um, mm -hmm. I think egging himself on as well. So, um, I think uh, there was there was maybe a missed opportunity. For an interesting conflict here because it would have been interesting to me not that it's necessarily what the show needed to do but if they said oh you're only saying that because if we all vote to end it now the money will go to the victims families and you're included in the victims families because it was your wife that died oh you yeah know, he could have turned he could have turned that against him and that could have been interesting like he could have made it seem like oh he's not really saying this of any real objection he's just being selfish uh so not a flaw or anything i just think it was a could have been neat 
But yeah, I, I just enjoyed the scene in general because I, I just believe it's Song Wu speaking to himself when he's like, we're here for this, this is what's happening, we've come too far. Because uh, what he just did to Ali was fucking stressful as hell. But he's got to keep going. Yep. And then arrives the VIPs. Um, uh, can we just know, skip them? <laughs> visually, like, you know, it's like, oh, look at those crazy masks. Um, and these guys are the ones who fund this, probably at least in, a, in the sense of a majority. They're the ones that want to see this live, per se, just to just see how it all happens. They've been watching the other uh, episodes, I guess. Must be weird to see the, um, the Squid Game editing team who are putting all these episodes together to send them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be an interesting environment. wonder if they add music <laughs> to tell you how to feel. I don't even know. Because uh, that's another thing I've seen people say. is like, uh, you guys talked about the soundtrack at all. It's like, yeah, I, I like the soundtrack in this. Um, a lot of unusual pieces of yeah. music. The, yeah, uh, I like the yeah soundtrack. I really liked it. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of... Out. It was neat. There's a lot of gentle ambient tracks that get used for a good bit of tension. I dig it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Now... Everyone seems to pick this up pretty quickly. Uh, the people I watched it with certainly did. <laughs> what is going on with the American people in this? It's It comes across, like, there's a couple of explanations that might fit it. The one I thought of was, is this the fact that they picked up what were American people working in Korea for a long time and they've kind of lost, like, the, dare I say... Americanism. I yeah, like, like they, they've spoken Korean for so long, but they're still actors that can play Americans, but now they sound they fucking weird when they do. They talk like they're in an uh, anime. I I would say it's probably for the budget, and this is actually isn't a very considered. This is what? Sorry, these are probably the whoa, best. Whoa. Did I cut yeah, out? Yeah, you cut out. Yeah, try wow. again. Uh, I think for the budget, and this not an incredibly high budget show, all things considered, that these are probably the best American actors they could get living in South for Korea, and there just and there just aren't many good. American actors living in South Korea because all the good American actors are living, you know, in Hollywood and other places. It's, well, it's I, the writing and the delivery yeah. that means like, yes. it, it probably is both the writer and the actors because I think the actors, they don't talk or inflect like Americans do. No. no. Or like any, really any Western speaking English, like any of us here. They don't, they sound bizarre, like they're from a cartoon. It's like a person who doesn't know um, how a language, they know the technicality of the language, mm -hmm. but they don't, they, they're not surrounded by it. They don't speak it. They don't hear it enough from uh, maybe native speakers in native lands to where it sounds off. It sounds like an alien is writing dialogue. It sounds like it, it sounds like a video game NPC to me. Kind of. Um, <laughs> when they say when they say certain things, it just gives me like patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winner. Like that sort of. I completely I, agree. I, I would. I think. I think it's like a B movie. You guys, you guys know Ryan's Babe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. It's kind of like that. You know the dad. The, the drunk dad mm -hmm. and that they talk like he talks. They talk like <laughs> like a Tommy yeah. Wiseau wrote them like it's English. Exactly. Yes. But you're like a bizarre alien version of what a human being is. You're like a like, like Neil Breen wrote these characters. There is a really <laughs> strain. They're, they're not right. They, they're not. It, they don't sound right. Um, and it takes you out of the characters and. They they don't seem worldly. I think that's the thing that this that was really lacking. They don't seem like these are rich, affluent, super highfalutin, mega rich people like Illuminati types. These I sound totally like a agree. bunch of yeah, yes. it, which is a real shame. In in a higher oh, yeah, budget yeah. show or in a better casting, you would have the Charles Dance style, old, rich affluent mm -hmm. super mega corporate businessman or this almost like 1920s style manor baron sort of you know like these very very like top of the top of the top because these guys are secretly in charge of this whole insane series of organizations and these guys just sound like a bunch of 
loser goofballs who <laughs> yeah, a, I just can't. Big missed opportunity for me is that they all blend into the background. I don't fucking know any of these people. When you could have had VIPs, the for example, the Charles Dance one could specifically be here because he respects the human animal and wants to see them compete at the top of their game sort of thing. And another guy yes. could be like, I just love violence. I love seeing people get torn to shreds. And another guy could be like, I'm a gambler. This is the best gambling there is in the world. I just can't wait to win. All yeah. of the different reasons for them all to be there. Instead, they're all just kind of the same thing. And they, they all they like, do is lol. provide cringy dialogue. <laughs> lol. Yeah, lol. they're like, all, <laughs> all super cringy. Yeah, super. they're all super cringy and they give really strange alien dialogue. There's no real difference between <laughs> any of them, but they yeah. have enough lines just, to where you could distinguish them. Someone said Charles Like Dance. they could have been they from don't. all over the world with their accents. You could have had the mega drug cartel guy from Mexico, the, the warlord from Africa. You could have had the Japanese, uh, like corporate mogul you could have had the american oil tycoon even if you're playing on stereotypes a bit that would have been mm -hmm. better to show that this is a very worldly thing people for this is Absolutely. an international organization yeah. obviously they're not and just I totally americans agree with, i i agree with Mahler that it would have been nice if they had conflicting views of what they're there for and what the games yeah should be, because they all seem to be there to to enjoy the suffering and misery yeah and like it would yeah, be it would be great if at least one of them was like really there for the sportsmanship or like you said one of the guys yeah. was really there to make money based on really investigating all these different characters and trying to make the best possible bet you know things like that but exactly they're like, ah, yeah fuck it let's just have them suffer that's Fun, right? all the, yeah, they're all just juvenile losers is how they come across. Um, yeah. You never have like, a... Go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, no, I was just basically saying, like, they all seem to be characterized as how a college student would just portray the 1%. That's just kind of their entire kind character. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a way, like a, like a college student from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> Someone suggested, why not swap out the fucking shitty detective line for something to do with the VIPs? And I was just thinking, imagine we had... Just go with the, the, the Charles Dance one in Britain, just doing normal businessman things. Maybe even has a family, and we never really quite understand why we're seeing scenes of that here and there in the episodes until he, like, eventually just heads over to the fucking, this, this whole thing. And we're like, yeah, this is what he gets up to in his, um, let's say, more, his holidays. And it, should, it would just be a cool exactly. exposition, potentially, that he's a very yeah, reasonable, yeah, fair the... family man, but he's also very interested in this whole thing and he can afford it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have the, the, the American oil tycoon. He's just working, working, working all the time. Doesn't really have much of a family. This is what he does to relax and gamble and let loose. This is his thing. You have the, the African warlord who's in control of kind of like a whole country or area. And he's super ferocious. And he's a might makes right guy. And he wants to see humans at their most primal, you know, fighting. Um, and that he admires that animalistic bestial part of our nature. And you have the... The the honor maybe the honor it's a little stereotypical but fuck it go for it you have the Japanese corporate guy who who he he misses the sense of honor that comes he with a samurai business sword. you know yeah he's got a fucking samurai sword on him at all times <laughs> and he he's like oh this corporate world it's so cutthroat and backstabby I miss the 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 honor code of a samurai there's no you know there's no sportsmanship anymore so I just want to watch these people go at it where it's fair but none of this is in the uh, um. Yeah, it's a, it it really is a shame. I would have liked something uh something like that. Instead, one of them makes a sixty nine joke. Oh, it's not that's an, hilarious. To, just he doesn't make he doesn't just make a sixty nine joke. He makes a ninety six joke too. They thought that that again, shit was so good. They did it twice. And it's not <laughs> yeah, just the baby. dialogue. The fucking delivery is so bad. Like it's that <laughs> alien 69. delivery of strange come on 69 <laughs> oh well i guess what? he's knocked out of the competition yeah you know like it's <laughs> oh god it's there's, one, there's one in particular i i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself but involves one it, of the okay. games and they're trying to decide whether you know going in the front or going in the back is ideal and we have the main character who's yeah. narrating He's in it or in his head and he goes, oh, well, should I go in the front? Is that the best strategy or should I go in the back? And then it cuts to the VIPs and goes, well, do you think he should go in the front or do you think he should go in the back? Like, well, I don't know. They, I think both have their merits. It's, uh, cringe it's as this fuck. 
it is super yes. cringe to have these characters who just spell all of this out blatantly to one another and these alien inflections. <laughs> Uh, no, don't it, do it, you idiot, you asshole, you loser! Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Me meanwhile, if we if you wanted to write, like, what is a natural response? You'd look and go, oh, for fuck's sake. And then you'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, maybe even let them figure it out. He just storms off to his seat, you know? And they all go, oh, mm -hmm. you probably put a lot of money on that. And they go, which one? 69? And then you can maybe have one of them giggle. And then just fucking leave it, you know? Yes. Don't have him go, 69, yes. come on, 69, 69. <laughs> and they so all funny. laugh as if it's, they all think it's a Hilarious. So fucking, <laughs> a 69 joke. That is so fucking highbrow. I love it. Man, now that's, that's fucking hilarious. 69. Oh, that's like the sex thing. <laughs> Oh, they don't yeah, sound real, because to go to what you were referencing, yeah. it's like, hmm, the start and the finish, two places you really don't want to be. And then the guy's like, going first in a life or death contest, very scary. But recall, too, <laughs> that in the first game, most of the contestants in the back died after running out of time. So, you I can't remember feel when I was too watching comfortable. This and I was like, thank you. Uh, thank yes, you so yes. much. Thank yes. you. Thank you. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. <laughs> Are we going to blame this on Netflix too? Or I don't know whose writers. fault this is. <laughs> it's somebody's I, fault. I, I, feel like I, it's I think it's a combination be the writers. of writers and actors. The, yeah. the writers wrote for a language they weren't familiar enough with, and actors mm -hmm. who, who were, were just like, we just need a bunch of white dudes. <laughs> Find people, <laughs> find people that we can cast in these roles. <laughs> like, but sir, sir, we found just enough, but they're all terrible. It's too, it's just fuck, put them in. It's fine. We only have five. They made it this I far, just... they won't back out of the show. Exactly. They made we it found five seven. of them. <laughs> okay, um, well, we're, we're on the home stretch. guy, there we go. We're on the home stretch, we'll be fine. Uh, to make sure we cover it, obviously, uh, we have uh, Jesusman is doing some praying. And he's like, please look down on me with pity and forgiveness. I pray for those who sacrificed themselves for me or forgive them as well. And he's, while he's speaking all this shit, it just shows the husband looking pretty damn depressed. And um, Fringy's not currently here. Unfortunately, legitimately, he's messaged me. The storm is fucking messing with his house and he's fixing things. Um, oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> Holy shit. So oh, I, I apologize for saying that as a... Uh, he might not be able to make it back at all. Hopefully he's okay, and hopefully he's able to make it back. But I will say, um, when they showed um, uh, 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 Jesusman saying all of that while looking at the uh, showing, rather the um, the husbando, uh, Fringy just immediately while I was watching it, he was like, "So he's gonna kill himself." I was like, "Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe." Um, which evens the numbers out. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that that so was is... something they necessarily hoped for or not. I assume the game would have ran the same. Either way, it would have ran the same. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, they did it for the convenience of having an even number. No, it wouldn't matter because this game. yeah, it wouldn't it would not matter for this game. So one of the reasons I would like to see that conversation is that part of me is extremely frustrated with him for letting his wife die if he doesn't have the strength to live. Because I feel like well. them both dying. I'm sure you, you understand. No, I, Human beings are complex. It might be that now that he's lost, yes, too, no, he realizes. I know. I know. Was, I, yeah. If I, I know, was the but... wife, I would be like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, there's a, that's that's what I'm getting at. I think why I wanted to see that conversation is you could have a very, very interesting scene where the wife says, for example, something along the lines of like, honestly, if it were me over you, I don't know if myself and i'd probably kill myself so it would be better if you survived if you could if you could go on living because there's no sense in both dying you know there's our family so... needs the money you know that da, da, yes. da, we've got to get this money we've made it this far you have to do this if we if we don't make yeah. it through this then it's all for net something instead of you just what we there's got so, I guess. there's Here's, so much yeah. there and i'm honestly i'm i i'm upset with him for himself I get, I, I get, I mean, I can't really get exactly how awful that would be, you know, but I, I'm frustrated with him for doing that. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, I'm a uh, 69. I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I just I get it. But I, there is an aspect of like, man, your your wife must be turning over in her ashes right now because boy. Mm -hmm. um, and so clearly we're loving the VIP stuff. And so the film is like, or the show is like, hey, enjoying the VIP stuff? Let's give you some detective stuff. And you're like, no, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, See, this is where it gets really bad for me. Detective. Wait, you cut out. What was that? Oh, this is where it gets frustrating for me because I hate the VIP and the detective stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I also think it's the worst. Yeah, I don't think anyone. And the oh, yeah, easily, yeah. So. Wait, what did you say? You Oh, I asked, you hate the what and the detective stuff? The VIP, VIP stuff and the detective stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was, uh, by the way, I, what I said was, um, it's also my least favorite of all the games. Uh, yeah, I hate this game. I'm going to be honest, I hate this game. Well, we're almost there, so don't worry. Um, so this thing actually started pissing me off. So this is where in, in the story the detective shit was, uh, I was losing my mind. You have three people who are waiters, apparently, just walking around. Here he is, detective is just around the corner aiming a gun. And I was like, oh, okay, that seems really fucking risky of you. You just stand in the hallway and hope to grab the next person who reaches you. What if there were two? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy doesn't cry out in surprise. He doesn't take off running. It, the right person has to come around for you to get him. You have to be able to get him to the closet and subdue him quietly. Without uh, anyone which else all seeing, happens, yeah. Which all happens off screen. That takes care of that. Mm. Um, or someone but also, comes up behind you. Dropping a dude in the closet like that, that's a time bomb. That's not safe. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so I was annoyed on both counts, and I was just like, whatever. That's all I should expect from the detective now. Just, <laughs> uh. So anyway, back to our characters. They, uh, they bring in a coffin for, for Husbando. And the money goes up, and they head on their way to the next game. And I don't know how to get through these VIP sections other than just reading their shitty dialogue. <laughs> like... The serious <laughs> betting starts in this round. How much are oh, you going God. to bet? I'm doubling my stakes on this round. God. And it's like, okay, so it's it's awful, but I, I still think there's a way you can say it that doesn't sound cringe <laughs> as fuck. I agree. You know, you I could say like, the hey, you know, delivery. like there's, you know, you know, there's still a chance all the serious betting starts now. You know, like that's not great, but it's better because it's casual. We well, would know, hope. Like, the, I'm not a voice actor, but it's it's so easy to imagine a better way of saying that. Um, horrible yeah. dialogue with horrible delivery. I would change it all from the ground up completely. And the thing is, oh, like, you you uh, already uh, heard my pitch. So it's already unfortunate <laughs> because, like, if I were writing dialogue for Rags, you're a billionaire, and I'm just going to write you some dialogue. You have to walk in the room and say, "Hello, Das. Nice to meet you." you I, I feel like yes. you'd be like, "Do you mind if I punch this up a little bit?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> Read it as is. <laughs> no! <laughs> now I want you to say, you don't even know what game this is. It's like, <laughs> how much are you gonna bet? <sighs> I'm doubling my stakes this right. It's like, God, it sounds like fake dialogue. <laughs> Wait, did we skip over the part where they talk about how, like, oh, this game has been great so far. Korea is doing the best. Oh yeah, they said that uh, they've liked a lot of the games, but uh, the Korean one was the best. Is that what they said? That's what they yeah, said. Some, which something like that, which it. definitely implies that this is a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah, and the international supposed international. They're all a bunch of white English speaking dudes uh, with no accents who come in. But I was like, I guess <laughs> no. There was one. The idea that they're it was, it's yeah, the one that's yeah, there wearing was a the um, guy. isn't it the deer mask? He's oh, like, okay, okay. He talk like this, and he was like, this, "That's his accent. I don't know what it is exactly." Like a Looks Russian, -y like kind of. a bridge of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's bigger, dude! So that was that was, I think, the best one. Uh, after a lot of the dialogue, I remember because I was in a cold drink, and he was like, "Okay, not liking these VIPs," and I was like, "Yeah, I know." And then when they show <laughs> the actual place, and he goes, "It's bigger." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drake was just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, what are you just yeah. ruining it? <laughs> oh, they're hard to swallow, uh, unfortunately, for, for this show. So, yeah. Um, so, it does. So, I have a question for you, and I think this depends on, I think this kind of depends on how you interpret 
the VIPs and what they say. Are these the only VIPs watching or are there still more people around the world in different places who are betting and watching this event? I assume well, it's um, it appears to be televised to some degree because they've been watching up till they showed up live. Mm -hmm. So I have to imagine it's been televised to them and it can't just be for these five terrible assholes. It's uh, it's got to be for more than that. And also, I agree, the I, but I, I, I could, I could see someone interpreting it to be that these are the. You, uh, you're God. gone. What was that? God damn it! Uh, I could see someone interpreting this to to be that these are the only VIP, but I, it really seems like this is a big network, and these are the only ones that happen to come to watch in person. I have to imagine that with each season, some VIP is like, ah, I'll skip this one. I'll watch it at home, but sometimes I'll go out. Yeah, you know? they can only bring so many. I don't know. It, it seems like they could bring more than however, what, sure. they bring yeah. five? Seems like they could bring quite a whole bit considering this facility, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Who, who knows? Who knows? Um, one of the things I was wondering was that I would, why I... I would want, if I was a VIP, I'd want to see them all in person because this sounds like a really big thing that you're probably shelling a crap load of money out to. I would want to watch, because it, it's all consecutive in terms of days. So I would want to watch all the games in person, you know? I'd be curious Not if... Not just um, come in for the last ones. I'd be curious as a form of entertainment if the completed, sort of broadcasted one is actually better in the... Because I was curious about how much work they do for it in terms of, do they actually show, you know there's cameras everywhere? Like, do they show us a yeah. lot of, like, yeah. maybe half the episode is just them talking to each other as people in, in the room, and we get to learn about them and stuff? And that they focus on yeah, the ones that end up yeah. winning or losing or, ha- you know what I mean? They can watch the end of the, the game and be like, right, from that, let's include these conversations beforehand. And so it could be a very catered to sort of show compared to watching it live, where you're just sort of... I don't know. I feel well. There's value to and, both and of them. Storytelling, in storytelling wise, it would it would give if they were there up in the VIP booth or whatever, we would be able to learn about the VIPs at little pieces throughout the episode. You wouldn't have to drop Agreed. much, but a little bit here, a little bit there. The way that they talk to each other, we're right. only operating off of masks and accents. Right. If we include that, what could we possibly cut? I don't know. There's nothing out. There's no. There's no other huge <laughs> swaths of content that's worthless and leads to fucking nothing that we could get rid of. All righty. I guess we'll leave it. But yeah, I I vote for that idea that the VIPs were here from the get go and we get to learn about them as people who are individually yeah. interested in being here and there's some level of fucking interest and payoff to them as characters rather than making them these cartoons. Which maybe that was intentional, but if it is, that's fucking boring. You can I make agree. them cartoonish, totally but also interesting and well written, but also cartoonish in a sense. Like play off the stereotypes, like I was kind of saying. Well, like have one of them you know, be like Palpatine. Go too, don't go too far with it. Like, yeah, like one of them's just fucking Palpatine or whatever, <laughs> and the warlord, and the you know the mogul, the oil tycoon, the Japanese mogul, the you know that kind of thing. Where you're each one of them views every like maybe some of them like certain challenges more than other challenges. Uh, mm-hmm. like maybe the Japanese guy really doesn't like the marble one because it's more about being underhanded and crafty instead of a more, uh, or, or maybe the warlord hates it because he's he's a lot, um, you know, yeah, something like that. You know, yeah, that yeah, would be definitely. fascinating, and we could explore more deeply the different ideas yeah. of what fairness actually is. And, and, and uh, if I can butt into for that point because I'm remembering this and I don't want to forget it. One of the things I hate about the VIPs and how they act is that they seem totally at odds with the front man's thing about fairness. Yes, yes. How is the the front man seems to be at least they put out the idea that he is very principled in the concept of fairness and giving everyone a shot. And the VIPs that run everything seem to just be a bunch of juvenile losers who want to see people fall off platforms and gamble. Which is exactly. like, how do you guys coexist from an organizational standpoint? Like, how does how does that work out? And then they'll come man. up later when they change the essentially they change the nature of the game when one of them starts figuring it out, which is instead of being rewarded is essentially punished. And like you think the front man would be fine. I don't know. It's 
It's weird when the front man runs things, someone, but the VIPs are in charge. Someone has pointed out that, uh, what did they say? It seems like the VIPs are just there to bet. Well, surely, if they're interested in betting, they would want a fair game. Because uh, I don't want to get, but when uh, for this game in particular, there there's an there's something there's that the an front man and the VIPs do that they interfere with the game. That anyone who had been betting on that particular character that they interfere with would be like, "What the fuck? I bet on him because I thought he could do well this game, and you interfered." There's like, a lot. That's not fair. to say about that. Or actually, not to uh, yeah. yeah, or one of the VIPs is like. I will not gamble on human lives. These these people, I, I don't gamble. It's not an honorable thing to do again on human lives. I, I'm here purely for the display of honor and the the rules and you know the, some aspect of human nature that they value. Yeah, we have to believe they're all clowns, regard. basically. Basically, yeah. yeah, we have to believe they're all a bunch of juvenile clowns written by aliens, which doesn't help. And, yeah. and if, uh, if one could argue. Their money, I just want to say real quick. One could argue that the front man's aware of that, and that he just wants them here for their money. He doesn't necessarily give a fuck about them as personalities. Yeah, but as a guy who was willing to kill people to keep things fair, why would he take their money? Like, why would he give that easily? Well, we're gonna have to talk about the whole fairness thing as soon as we can get through the game. I just um, before we get anywhere closer, the line I hate the most in this whole show potentially. Fucking drives me nuts as a as a line of dialogue. They're watching them choose the fucking standard of which they will go into the thing, right? One of the VIPs says, "Gentlemen, this may be the deciding moment." It's like, yes. And then secondly, I think the order in which they compete matters most. Like what? There's nothing else. Like the order they go in. <laughs> that's, that's like the whole thing. The only uh, other element you could argue is, yeah, maybe the ones at the, at the back may run out of time. I doubt that's going to be something to worry about compared to choosing the 50-50s, you know? If I'm betting, yeah, I'm betting I, I'll take my chance five. with the timer. Yeah, yeah. I want to be the last motherfucker in that line. So, I hate the fact that he's like, you know, the key thing here is the, is the number they choose. Like, what else is there? That is the whole thing. That's just, oh god, it sucks. And these people are supposed to be people who've watched loads of games? Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's telling each other the basic fucking premise of each game. Like, good job. Oh, it's so annoying to listen to. They, they provide nothing but insipid fucking dialogue to the commentary. And the problem is, we've just highlighted how interesting it could be. Even Your from next. introducing a game, right? Being like, oh, today we're going to be doing Honeycomb, and you see, like, three of the seven VIPs go, yes! And the other four, like, don't? And you're like, hmm, I wonder why. And it's going to be indicative of their fucking characters, but nope, they're all the same, they all spout the exact same shitty dialogue to help you understand the stakes of the game, which are, are clear enough without the VIPs. They're so clear without the goddamn VIPs because we get it. We get it all from the inner monologue of our main character, who's thinking this all through. We don't need to hear them say the exact same shit over again. Yeah, <sighs> and it's like, who are yeah, you I'm... betting on? Uh, Ninety six. Why? Why that? <laughs> well, because they said it didn't work. Ninety six. <laughs> and then everyone thinks that's so goddamn funny. That is hilarious. Ugh. <laughs> I do like the mental image of a 96 where it's just two people back to back, like trying <laughs> to figure out how this is a sex position. Ah, uh, yes, the beast with two fronts. That yeah. one's, uh, that's a pretty high level uh, maneuver right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Detective managed recording while he's pretending to be a waiter, by the way, just worth mentioning for people who are listening with his phone. God. I know. Go um, ahead. You know, there's. There are cartoonish versions of real kinds of people, but I feel like the VIPs are cartoonish versions of just like a person that I couldn't possibly even kind of imagine, you know, which yes. makes it doubly unbelievable because they're not playing off of this is this kind of person taken to the extreme, a cartoonish extreme. Mm -hmm. But you're like, yeah, I know this kind of person. They're, they're just, you know, they're just a hyper version of that. I think it could maybe work if it was just one of them was like that, and then the others were all very much more understandable as people. In fact, I kind of yeah. like the idea that we've got a lot of very much straightforward billionaire characters that have their own interests, but like I said with the Palpatine thing, there's just this one that has like a cloak, and he's like, 
okay whenever someone dies <laughs> you can just be like just this, they sort of don't really acknowledge him because he pays the most or something but they're just like yeah that guy's really fucking weird yeah he's <laughs> fucking creepy but man he's got money he's there entirely for suffering i'm like okay cool that's your thing yeah but when you're meant to believe that everyone funding this operation is just there for the suffering it's like wow really i don't believe that yeah, there's, there's got to be more to it. Yeah, you I could, wish, yeah. th this is an extremely roundabout way to watch people suffer. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> it's very involved. And they're mostly boring. They, uh, the, their reactions include, Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. There goes another <laughs> one! Whoa! The plot thickens. Oh. Whoa. It's, it's like it's like, a, it's like a weird it's like a poorly written CW villain. Yeah, not even a CW uh -huh. villain, a poorly written CW villain on the CW writing curve. <laughs> <laughs> when, Someone... it, when adjusted for deflation, that is what you get. <laughs> Someone in chat said uh, so about the Palpatine one. He never speaks. He only cackles except for one instance where a character dies. He just says cringe. <laughs> 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 There's Looks plenty like you could do with that. Be getting his I'm victory royale. I would take that in a heartbeat. In fact, put him in with these mm -hmm. guys. You'd be way better. They're all these mm -hmm. weird, like, people, but then there's just the one that's dressed all in black who hunched over and just, like, gets closer to the screen as it goes on, puts his hands on it, and he's just like, die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly it's too much to ask for these to feel like real people, but if they're not going to feel like real people, could at least one of them be charismatic? Oh, that would just be great, wouldn't it? Just like just imagine, someone like throw seeing... Idris Elba in there as one of the billionaires. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean him specifically because obviously it would take a lot of money. Just a character like that who's just chill, mm -hmm. comments on how things are, but just loves it as a sport like horse racing. And he's like, "Come on, yes, oh, they fucking ruined it." And it was just, just, just talking about this stuff. Meanwhile, the rest of them are like, "Anyone with charisma, anyone <laughs> yeah. with charisma." I don't give a fuck who it is at this point. Bring in Kano. Oh god, yeah. Why Kano, not? Idris Elba, Jack Sparrow, the Joker, just have all of them commentating on it. It'd be way more funny. <laughs> that would be so strange if there's a whole bunch of fiction. <laughs> you could have one of them more who's who inherited everything. He's not even like his own. He's just he's the son of a super rich gajillionaire. And so he didn't make the money himself. So he could be the weird young and wild one who doesn't really care about anything because he's been pampered and spoiled his whole life. You know, the type mm -hmm. you could throw one yep. of those in there if you needed a young guy and his dad's in it too. Yeah. My dad couldn't make this one. So, you know, I'm coming to take a look at you. Know, that, 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 that sort of thing. You could have, um, a Smithers type who's with their VIP because they're like their main Butler helper person, but also they, I guess they're respected enough that they have like a voice, but they're just entirely disturbed by all of it. And uh, they struggle to watch sort of thing. Just having that kind of character there too. You have so many options and you didn't do anything. <sighs> so anyway, we should probably just carry on with the plot at this point. Um, the, if, for anybody in chat who's waiting for us to fucking destroy the VIPs, that was probably satisfying. <laughs> we just spent like <laughs> half an hour ripping into them. Um, yeah, so... Everyone chooses their position, except our main character, who's wondering what should he choose, 16 or 1? Because he has no context for what game they're going to be playing. Um, and someone asks him if they can be number 1, because they've been sort of hiding behind everything and letting everyone make choices for them, sort of thing. And he'd like to really take charge with this one, so if you could, just, just let me do it. And he's like, okay. Tragic. Turns out, that one was 60, uh, 96. Then it cuts to the VIP and he's like, For fuck's sake! No! <laughs> and you're just like, okay. <laughs> oh no, this is the... Wait. I've just gotten to the part with the fucking line. It's, it's just one of the worst ones. It's bigger! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, like what did he think it was gonna be? Like, I feel like he's Derek Zoolander. What is this? A mod? <laughs> yeah, is this a game for ants? Well, yeah, the, it, it needs has to be, to be at bigger. least three times this big. Man, uh, and this is the thing, man. I love the idea of what it can be brought, what can be brought to the show with VIPs commenting on it compared to not having that. But they just they made it worse. It's just like cut it out, please, please let it go. Is it possible we can hear one of those lines? I guess so. Let me uh, set that up for the old. 
people at YouTube land. Ooh. Oh wow, it's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Let's see if we can find another one. Oh wow, it's bigger. Oh wow, it's bigger. It's like, why? Yeah, but, so, guys, this is actually a a not. <laughs> this is just a model. It's not the real Curse. thing. <laughs> Is that is wow. that the meme? It's like, Lel, the billion is dumb, but it's like, no, I think you just wrote them really badly. I don't think you intended for them to be dumb. It's, it's <laughs> written Derek to be Zoolander, bizarre aliens. But it's yeah. not meant to be funny. <laughs> Most of the contestants in the Very back strange. died after running out of time, so... <sighs> what is this, a library for ants? You bid on 96, right? Oh, here you go. This will be the line you'll need, everybody. Get ready. Oh, boy. What? Oh wait, this isn't... Where are you going? Oh yeah, we'll cut back, hang on. It's alright, it's just a bit complicated because I gotta avoid copyright while also trying to find these golden fucking lines. Yeah. You fuckwad! <laughs> Piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really nice. <laughs> 469 and now 96. <laughs> 469 and now 96. <laughs> where's, where, where's 420? <laughs> oh, I, I, would, I would show you more, but obviously it's just hard to avoid copytisms. Uh, also, it's too cringe. Our yeah. cringe are, 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 we're going we're gonna to overload. Yeah, we wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Pretty soon. We don't want that. We you don't can go take down get your cringe fix in your own time. So, There's plenty of cringe compilations on YouTube. We will talk about the game. I just want to do one more topic so we can erase it from the continuity. We can be done with it. So, stupid 6996 guy wants more drinks. He notices detective guy has the scotch. He's like, please keep coming and don't fucking make me call you over. Sit down. And then he's like, you know what? I want to sex you. Let's go in private. And then... He fucking ah. puts a gun to him and he's like, I'm gonna record you for five minutes explaining everything horrible that goes on here. And then he escapes down the ladder, gets a scuba gear, and tries to escape the island, right? I, so that happens. I hate the fact that had fucking stupid VIP not gotten a boner, what is his plan? <laughs> We've just been like, well, I guess I hope I get enough from the recording in this room rather than getting them to explain explicitly everything that's happening here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. He really, didn't I, I will to, say didn't, though the explicit explanation that he gets on the cell phone video, uh, the fact that he has a gun to his head in the <laughs> yeah. video itself and that he's naked, not helpful. <laughs> it's, see, I feel like he could just say, "This fucking crazy guy told me this weird conspiracy theory, held yeah, a gun right. to my head, made me strip down naked, and said, now repeat back to me the conspiracy theory,' and so I did." Yeah, some people are saying what? I guess there are still people following us here, the oh, storyline yeah. without so, knowing. So, our our detective has, through means questionable, been able to commandeer a waiter's uniform, complete with mask, of course, and he is serving all of the VIPs as they watch this unfold, all the, the game unfold. Right, one of the VIPs is uh i got gay or bisexual and he takes a liking to our detective mm -hmm. and so even and so he decides that his urge to just have his cock sucked by this random waiter is so goddamn strong right now <laughs> that he's going to <laughs> abandon the whole reason he came here to watch this game that he's paying insane amounts of money for because <laughs> right now he needs to take this waiter over to a side room so that he can get his rocks off. And to be fair, it is at the pinnacle of the game. We have like pinnacle. five players left or something like that. It's like, wow. <laughs> you gotta In the game that. itself, drama is unfolding. They are, it is absolutely fucking absurd. I am a horny man. I'm mm -hmm. a horny dog, whichever of the lore you follow, all right? And goddamn, if that was me on that couch, when I'm surrounded by, like, painted naked chicks, and I've... You've got I've, your head in their tits I, and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pretty I am pillow. sitting on my sofa. I've got booze, which I 
cannot handle as much as I want to drink. I've spent all of this money <laughs> on this insane, elaborate operation to create these crazy games to have human beings just compete and die for so that I could gamble on it. And at the penultimate moment of the game, I just, I really, really want to have sex with this random waiter. I, I, I don't get, it's absurd to me. Absolutely absurd to me. The show needed the detective to have the next thing occur for him. It, yeah. the, the show, the universe mm -hmm. needed to hand the detective the next golden opportunity. And so he does. He, get, he gets I, him to explain it, and then he tries to leave because he's running out of time. The VIP is checked on, like, immediately after the five minutes, which I find very odd that someone would be like, hey, VIP, are you okay? Instead of just being like, he's in there having sex. I don't know if we should disturb him. Yeah. I could totally see that if, being the case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah if, if I take someone over to the side for sex, don't you fucking knock on my door after exactly. five minutes. <laughs> It's not even been, yeah, it's not even like five in. minutes, yeah. So, uh, but Detective Man runs to the VIP control room area, goes down the ladder, gets the scuba gear, and escapes. That is his plotline for this episode. I'd rather not talk about it anymore. <laughs> we'll wait until next episode. He's so annoying. That's fine. Let's talk about the game itself. So, game number five, Stepping Stones. Um, we'll probably just rip into this game together. I don't see why not. The, the idea is there are 18 panes of double panes of glass uh, one is tempered and one is not per two and so you kind of just have to guess and hope you are on the right one if you're on the wrong one it smashes and the next player will now know which one is the correct one but only for that step so as you can see eventually the last player will be the one that is going to be the most benefited by this though there is indeed a time limit and thus um you you don't want to be caught right at the end and you lose much in the same way you, uh, green light, red light worked. Um, yes. So who wants to go first for criticism? <laughs> All right. So the there is an element of it is a, it is luck. It is an element of luck as to which number you choose. Um, whereas you know because you have no idea what you're choosing for. Mm -hmm. um, not much. So it, like if you were in the first. I mean, they have to step across a bunch. Um, so if you are among the first, let's be frank, the first 10, 11, 12, there's only 16. If you're among the first, like, 10. St so remember when I, oh, remember when I said earlier that if you have a 50-50 chance, three, getting that correct three in a row is a one in eight chance, and then it just gets worse and worse and well, worse from there. Well, if you remember, there. the math teacher actually figures out what his odds are, and it's something like is it 38,000 or something? It's ridiculous. Yeah, One, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it, it is essentially pure chance. There doesn't seem to be, unless you have an extremely specific background, um, <laughs> then yes, we'll get you to that might too. be able... Yeah, yeah, unless you have an extremely specific background, this is a luck-based game. There is no... There, there seems to be... I mean, I guess unless you walk on the metal bars, that's my first it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that what no I was thinking. Tries it. So that's what, what I would be fucking doing. What we but... are definitely missing in this is for just a rule to be like: if you attempt to subvert the spirit of this game, you will be shot, and then you can have one person try it and they get shot. That's all you needed to do. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. This is a game of luck. Yeah. And there is, I'm in and it heavily, 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 heavily punishes people who are closest to the front. Yes. Um, and it isn't, it is, it's this like game that is Fall Guys game, except you can't respawn. What's that one called? You know what I'm talking about? The Fall Guys game where you can't respawn, did you say? It's, it's, no, it's the one where there's a whole bunch of tiles laid out and you have to kind of path, and most of the tiles will fall, but some won't. You know what I'm talking about? There's a there's a game in for Pummel Party and Mario Party that have those uh, games in them. They're dumb. Yeah, well, I can believe it. Anyway, yeah, the, um, it's that's what it reminds me of. That's all. Uh, someone in chat suggests as well. So the with the with the poles. So you could put your feet in such a way that even if the glass smashes, you will have the pressure of the poles, and that's that's better mm -hmm. chance than nothing, and no one tries it. But secondly, 
and this is something that I think I picked up when I was watching it with Drinker, I was like, could you just roll across the whole thing? I know it's awkward, but I mean, it's a guaranteed <laughs> life. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think there was, there was also another one that I thought of where if you, if you have to jump on one, you want to jump with your feet near the edges where it's most structurally secure, yeah. not smack dab in the middle of yeah. the glass pane. Yeah. So at least sure. there's a chance that it doesn't break. Um, but everyone just leaps, just cocksure is, well, maybe not, that's not the word, but this right into the center of the thing. There's no attempt. Lives are on the line here. Attempts to um, subvert the game to save yourself. Mm. Well, I just feel like they're, they're going to happen. And no well, uh, yeah. Happen. And almost, I almost think that's part of the problem. The most interest this game can generate is that you go, hey, I'm going to kill you if you don't take my place. And you're like, right. Meanwhile, First game, second game, third, even the marbles, they felt like they had mechanics to them. This one's just, I don't fucking know. I'm flipping a coin here. They so. were games of skill. Yeah, the first one, the first game, nice and simple. Total mm -hmm. risk-reward management, uh, control over your body and being still. Um, really great, nice and simple. The marble game is a subversion and cleverness, willingness to go through with a set of rules and organizing that with another player. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, the the, the honeycomb one was, you know, how, how little micro strategies of how do you do this? You have got a time limit. How risky do you want to be? But with, like with this, it's just, I sure hope you didn't pick a number close to the beginning because yeah. you're dead. Mathematically, you're toast. Which, by mm -hmm. the way, is very different from tug of war where it's like, did you not pick a strong team? Well, you're toast. Like, no, actually, you can win. And we saw it happen because they knew how to better use their leverage. Which is really cool. There is a strategy. Yep. Yeah. This one is like, can you cheat? Is it cheating to make someone go first? And it's like, I guess it isn't, and that's all that's gonna happen now. And then it happens, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This game kind of sucks. The only thing I like about it is that is when the thug goes, "Fuck it, I'm not going any further. You go ahead of me." Fuck. There it. is something you else know. that I like. What's that? But go, go ahead. Uh, finish your. I was more or less uh, done. Go ahead. Oh, I I like the marble. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Um, oh yeah. We'll get yeah. I didn't want to get too far ahead. Well, yeah. Well, because there's something I seriously fucking hate that happens at the end of this. You probably already know what I'm referring to. The fact that I said that. I um, you know I think I do know exactly what you're referring to. So, hey. Song Wu figures out immediately that just because we're at the back isn't great because people will start cycling through and then we're going to run out of time. I just like that he's commenting specifically on the mechanics of this in terms of his likelihood for survival. He's not really, he doesn't give a fuck about people dying. He's just like, how do I win this? Um, yeah. I find that satisfying. And uh, Jihan yeah. is, is stressing the fuck out and something happens to him that I loved because it happened to me when I was watching it. Um, everybody is cycling along and it's his turn to jump on the first platform. I couldn't remember which one was the safe one, and neither does he. I was like, <laughs> fuck. Uh, and w what a nice way of making... He has to do a 50-50 chance grab when he's the fucking person who was like the safest in that regard, or at least supposed to be. I thought it was really neat, um, but the thing that I found the neatest about it was that um, he looks down, and then uh, Andrew notices it, and she's like, mm -hmm. it's the right one. And it's like, for a moment, because of the way everything works... It's like, oh boy, and so he, he makes the jump, and it's true, it was that one. And so I think she just turns back, she thinks nothing of it, but she just saved his life. Um, yeah, she's like, pay attention, essentially. Oh, she, she says, get your, she gets, yeah, she says yeah, something yeah, to the effect of get your shit together, which is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I was a little frustrated with the fact that, like, when his life is on the line, he fucking didn't pay attention. That's but the thing, I though, did enjoy it's... I was glued to this. I was watching because I very much enjoyed it first time around. It's only when I started thinking about more of it that it started to frustrate me. But I had completely forgotten what the first one was because I was focusing on how everything was going and what everything will end up being. Yeah. Um, Though, like to be fair, you are shifting around from different perspectives and different drama, and he's just true. there sitting at the back. Yeah, um, where there's I, like I think there's less of an to, there's yeah. less of an excuse for him than there is for you as an audience member. I agree with that. Yeah. Um I think I can still um, believe he, he slipped his mind by complete accident, though. Oh yeah, Maybe. he is. Um, he's also not the brightest bulb in the bunch. <laughs> yeah, like, it would it wouldn't I, have slipped Songwoo. 
No. It yeah, would not I, have. I do yeah. like the idea that they start filling in after each other mm -hmm. so that memory doesn't, for most of them, even play into it because yeah. they just jump mm -hmm. on whatever the person in front of them did. I feel like that would be what people do. Um, but there's, yeah, I'm running out of nice things to say. Um, well, I was going to say that's my main praise. Well, this is like character stuff, too. Character stuff, callbacks like the marble. Um, well, we we definitely got at least another one that I like coming up. Um, but now we should probably talk about Thug's demise. Yes, we should. So Thug hey. decides, after what he's seen, he will now force people to take the, the steps for him. He won't do it himself, because why the fuck would he um, mm -hmm. do it for him? And so the guy he's talking to, I think, just talks to him for a while about how this is unfair, this is bullshit, and he just gets pushed right off by Crazy Girl, who is behind, and then we get like yep. a... Big ol' showdown. Crazy girl versus Thug Man. And I guess I should summarize the events and then we can go through what what we hate. <laughs> if assuming this, you know. yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So she jumps onto his platform and she says, look, I'm not a coward. I ain't gonna be letting people die for me or whatever. I'm gonna make the jump. And he's like, really? And she's like, yeah. And so she jumps on and then she turns back around to him and, and grabs, she locks her hands at his back, grabbing him essentially says that he sucks, he's a little bitch, and he has a tiny peen, and then she leans backwards, <laughs> and uh, they both fall and smash through the, the, the one in front of them, revealing the strong of the next one, and both of them are out of the game. It would be I really funny was... if they landed on tempered glass. Yes. That would have been funny. <laughs> I think they would have I... both died, regardless of the glass that they landed on. Probably, um, yeah, because it would have slid off possible. by half the yeah, would have yeah. and they would have, It would have been funnier. Because <laughs> you have to would, jump from been. one to the other. You can't just fall into it. So they probably would have fallen. But I, when I was watching this, I was fucking screaming at the TV to go, oh, no. like, 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 lower yourself. Like, like, crouch down. Like, the, the thug. All he has to do, because she has all the leverage at this point, all you have to do is fucking crouch down, like slam yourself down, lower your center of gravity below hers, and then she can't fucking tilt you over like that. Oh. And I feel like, I feel like anyone who's ever, I don't know, like not, not even like wrestled professionally as a sport, but just wrestled or tackled anyone or has any sense of the own like physicality and physics of their body would realize that you just need to fucking get below her leverage and it's not incredibly hard to do it. She's also incredibly thin and pretty short. And to be fair, I was surprised he didn't just fucking punch her. When she put her arms yeah, around him, have. just wail on her yes. face. She will almost be so dazed she won't keep those hands together. Yeah, I mean he yes. beat someone to death earlier. Yeah. Yes. So that was what was going through my mind. I was like, you haven't got him, he just has to punch you and that's it. And besides, you leaning back, I don't even know that that's enough to make him fall. What if he leans back? Like, uh, it feels it's weird, the possible. weight distribution. I mean, like, so I was, I was testing this out with my girlfriend because I was watching the show. And I was oh, okay. Frustrated. <laughs> okay, you come up on me, and we had a little, like, a little, uh, kitchen mat that we were standing on for reference. It's like, okay, you grab me around the waist and hold on really fucking tight. And I was like, okay, it's actually relatively hard to, like, you know, get rid of her grip, you know? But if you just fucking crouch down, she, like, it, it, negates the whole thing instantly and it just seems so obvious to me and i have a hard time believing that this fucking guy who seems relatively athletic you know he probably grew up playing sports i would have a hard time believing he didn't can't he understand like killing animals or something yeah exactly i have a basic i i just i cannot believe that he couldn't get out of this i can't oh it's i didn't insane. i didn't buy it really i was like okay no um I think for I mean for me generally like I like the idea that she takes him out yeah um, but I I the, it's the execution they need to play up the idea that she she's not stupid she knows that I mean mathematically as far as they have to go with her within her position she's like I'm just flat out not gonna make it but you know what I can do I can make good on that promise I can kill this fucker and I can let him know it that's something they could have really leaned further into. Um, uh, he made a he made the uh, a line earlier about how clingy she was that I don't think they play into. Um, but yeah, the, the way that this it's the way that this happens. I don't like I like that it 
the the idea that this needed to be i feel like this just needed to be the conclusion for the two of them is she takes she does take him out he betrays her he gets one of you know she 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 does that but it's it's how they have these things occur uh that i just really don't like yep yep and um, you know as much as i liked him as a competitor and hated her if she did end up being the one who killed him i'd be okay with it i just hate the way it happens it sucks definitely it makes been no a little better yeah yeah because she, you know, he screwed her over by lying and not letting her be on the team because she was small and old and weak and whatnot. But she's still able in the right circumstance. I could still, um, you know, I could still fuck you over. You know, when when it, when it comes to balance in a precarious situation, I've got what it takes. Um, maybe they could have done something where the glass was weak underneath him and she like is on him and she jumps and breaks it or something. I don't know. It's something, but they, they needed to really do something different than what they did. <laughs> I agree. You um, know, I, don't ask me why I don't even expect it to make sense. It'd just be kind of sick if Ali killed him. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> hey, <pff." laughs> Ali pushes him. He descends from heaven on a winged horse. Yep. And he just... <laughs> Fucking plows into him and knocks him over. <laughs> um, yeah, the next event. Well, at that point, there are four characters left. Um, <clears throat> the three you know, and some guy who we've uh, really not seen much of at all. Yeah, he's our la he's our last red shirt to go. He really so is. Things are things are not looking good for him. Oh, <laughs> things are not looking. <laughs> if ever there was a, if ever there was an expiration date on a character, <laughs> yeah, he should this look back at them the three and be like, "Oh, you guys are the big characters." Oh, <laughs> like, oh shit! Everyone's been fuck. focusing on you. Um, and I feel, yeah, I feel real. I, I, I feel really bad for him too because I feel he gets sort I of screwed so over. Yeah, we're, it's fucking shit. One more topic before that, just the, the dialogue again. You have, um... Yeah. Now there's a poetic ending for those two. Hell hath no uh, fury uh, like a woman scorned. Another uh, student oh, of the bard? I had no idea. Actually, it's not Shakespeare. It's Congreve. I like it better when you don't talk. Couldn't have I told like that. I like it better when they don't talk either. Oh, listening to it No, after... no, you said it, you said it too much like a human. <laughs> I, I do think so you much. said it too well, honestly, comparatively. <laughs> the dialogue is so much what? Yes, completely agreed. You see it, you're like, why? Why are we do? Why does it feel like the characters on the fucking bridge are like people, and that all the people in there are just these weird experimental droids that are just weird saying shit? Stop it. Um, yeah, like science experiments or some shit. So, um, yeah, we got... We're running low on time here, and Song Wu, we know him pretty well at this point. Uh... And so Glass... He's not the, fucking around. I was about to say Glass, man. Guy in front is, like, doing doing a peek. Doing, having a little peek. And um, someone was like, move, quick. And he goes, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. As if, as if like, don't push me. I, I used to make Glass for over 30 years. Now, when I first heard that, I think my almost animal brain was like, oh, really? But then I was like, uh, I guess when you have 500 people, there's probably one in there who's got experience with Glass. That's kind of fine, I guess. Um... Because could that logic also extend to one of them's probably going to be a doctor? But then I guess you'd you'd be like, is it common for doctors to end up in positions of debt? I don't know. Five hundred people, fine. There's a guy with glass. Okay. Now, when I saw that, I was like, hmm. I assume the system works that whatever background you happen to have may be useful to you in the games, and that's just how it works. Turns out, no, I'm wrong. They say, oh shit, he has a background in glass? How did I miss that? And then all the VIPs in the front band all say, yeah, yeah, we missed that, missed that, yep, missed that. It's like... So... I assume that when you're betting on a contestant, you look at their history. Why wouldn't you? It's like, if you have it, because it makes it sound like that's what they specifically use to guess it. So, apart from the guy who went for 69, because lol. Um... So... How do you You're miss that? You're betting millions on, on a guy? 30 years being a glass maker person. Like, how, how could you possibly miss that? It's like if the contest was taming alligators and Steve Irwin was a contestant. <laughs> He's like, just like, oh, hmm. shit, I missed his background. I didn't notice it. Ah, oh, dang. Ah, oh, man. How about that? It seems like so, it would be the in main... In all fairness to the show, 
I I won't count this against the show too much. Where the the la- one of the last guys left was a dude with a um w- with his background because I think he'd be used to I think he'd be used to pain at this point. So it makes sense he got this far. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Uh, so uh, I like that. What Good I job. hoped to just just highlight, I just think it's absurd that that's his entire, almost his entire background, thirty fucking years. That's going to be the bullet point primary thing for this guy. You, he worked in. It's glass. almost comical. Yeah. yeah, you know, like how specific, like, oh yes, I was a glass paint manufacturer for thirty <laughs> years. I'm like, wow, this is the what game for would, you. <laughs> what else would they know about his backstory? Like, what else? Exactly. Like, like, else. What would they be reading that is so much more interesting than that? How would that not come up when, <laughs> if you want to know who to bet on, and you're like, there's this guy called Song Wu. I'd be like, yeah, okay. Uh, he seems to be a decent age. Seems to be athletic to a, at least a decent degree. Got a decent head on him. But what, what, what's his history? Where did he work? Being like, where did he work? Why'd you care about that? Like, oh, I don't know. I feel like that's the first thing you might ask. Uh, yeah. But okay, everyone missed it. And then, yeah. um, so that's the thing, I was getting thrown off, and I was like, huh, how does this, is that a bad thing then? Is that is that cheating? Or whatever, but the, um, the VIPs and the front man agree, they'll turn off the lights, so we can't use the reflection of the light to benefit him in picking the glass, which... Yeah. Um, His hopes aren't it. the only thing I that are shattered. I don't, like, at this point I was just kind of lost. I was like, wait, but... You can just do that. Uh, oh, he's he's figuring out the game, which is I thought kind of the point was to see who figures it out. Yes. We're gonna actively just fucking take that away from you right now. Mm-hmm. So, because we want it to go back to the fifty-fifty choice, because that's fun. I According to his file, he it. once had a job as a glass manufacturer for thirty years, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, Maybe he made some like uh. soybean investments or something that were really exciting in his profile. That I don't know. Maybe, uh, who knows? Maybe he had I mixed up with a gang. He had six hundred and four no. wives. It's like whoa. It's like ultimately the glass. And now glass imagine, glass. imagine you are a VIP, whether you're in this room or you're abroad, and you're betting on these games, and you see this guy, and you think early on, you think, oh, okay, he has some very strong technical skills. Maybe I'll vote on him because, you know, yeah. he was a skilled laborer for many years. And then this competition arises. You don't know the competitions beforehand, but you see a game where they have to judge glass panels and you go, holy fuck, I bet my money on this guy. He's got the perfect set of skills. This is great. I like, oh, my God, that was such a good bet. I'm fucking loving it. And they go, ah, nah, fuck it. Let's fuck with him. I voted on 69. Man, you, look like, dying. you would it's be you livid. Care. You would be livid with them for absolutely the competition would, yeah. against them. Why you the change fuck? the rules midway through? And I, I think I have another. Oh, oh, fuck! This was in my notes. I don't like it that um. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it at the, at the very beginning when they're choosing the vests. A couple choose their vests, right? And then the announcer gives extra information that the vest numbers will determine your order in the game. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Doesn't seem fair. So the I can people say who that chose at the beginning. Yeah. The people who chose a little quick relatively, fuck them. They don't get that information that the indecisive people don't get or that did get. So, okay. Sucks to be you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this one fucks with a lot of how I perceived how things worked. Um, yep. And it felt really arbitrary because this game's a little bit... I think it was hard for them to make this game into something that has payoffs in it without fucking with it and making it fucky in general. Um, Maybe the game was to Yeah, they wanted all these payoffs. How do we build build a game that's purely about making those payoffs possible? So they turn the lights off, and he can't tell they, anymore. I cannot believe they actively sabotage him because he happens to have a skill set that makes his chances of winning this game a little bit better than luck. It just makes sense to me. All the people who knew the Honeycomb game compared to all the people who didn't. And then they knew yes. what shaped... Like, that's, how unfair is that? Or knowing the secret tricks to how to win tug of war when most exactly how is that any different 
It's and, not. And so there are, there are theories that's like, well, that's the point. It's not fair. It's kind of arbitrary and that the elites are just fucking with the, the lower classes as they figure things out. And so, I was like, that sounds like a cop out to me. Yeah, that sounds doesn't like sound like social commentary also. But yeah, it doesn't make sense in the universe of the game and what they're there to do. It doesn't match up. I wouldn't find this satisfying if I was watching as a VIP. I'd be like, oh, neat. That guy's actually figured it out because he can tell that. And then someone goes, nah, fuck that. I'd be like, oh, OK, geez, fine. I guess he yeah. doesn't get to do that. Huh. Uh, Yeah. And so then, yeah, all of a sudden he's a glass half empty sort of guy. You could say, and uh, he has to do the. the I, oh, also, another thing: every single one of them takes off their shoes. Every single one of them. I think that was supposed. That was what they're supposed to do. They were told. To oh, do were it, they yeah. supposed to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And I I, got I you. wondered I about why that. They were told to do that. So two things, right? Do they have any buttons on their outfits? I can't remember. No. They zipper, look like zippers. Right? They have a I zipper, remember. I think. Um, but I was thinking you could, th you know, how he needs more than one marble. I was like, maybe if they threw the shoes, but obviously none of them have them. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was like, do they have anything on their person that could be fair? Like, like, because a button would be perfect, I assume. Um, earrings yeah. or no piercings of any kind, though that might hurt. Depending, someone on could pull out a tooth. <laughs> no glasses. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that would be interesting. Any of you got a loose tooth? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that, it's a bit extreme, but you have to remember that their lives are on the line. So, well, that's so the thing. There's know. not a huge amount of time to think about it, and I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I quite like that the lights go out. There's, I think we're less than a minute left, and I think the guy is like, um, wait, I think I can figure this out, and then Songwoo's already jumped onto his platform and just pushes him off. Yeah, he's like, I'll, uh, like, I'll choose for you or something like that, and he pushes him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's this just Ihan's realization that Sung Woo's really gone off the deep end at this point. I yeah. don't even I mean, know. I don't think it's. I don't, know I don't think that. it's an insane. Yeah, I don't. If with the time clock, because they make it at the last second. It's, so, so th this is why this is what I find interesting about the show that I find is uh, often missed because so many people want to talk about the politics, or missed because a lot of people sign Sung Woo off as evil, and that's it. Um, it's entirely in line with what we've seen up to this point. There's a reason why the, turning the lights off doesn't just affect the game narratively, but look at that fucking shot. It's just like, jeez. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, just saying, I can't tell what it is. Like, I'll pick, okay. And it's not, and it makes sense that he would do that. You know, like, like you said, Rags, like they're very close to running out of time, but it is interesting because this is the first time he actually has to get his hands dirty. He actually, yeah, he, he has to push him. Well, that's you the know, thing. With they, Ali, he tricked him, and he didn't even. Yeah, yeah. This yeah there's a physicality that face. this one has. This is the next yeah. step. The next step is doing it yourself with your I, own hands. So I think mm -hmm. it's quite, quite beautiful. Uh, game one, he's mm -hmm. helping someone because, as far as he knows, that's just the thing to do. Game two, he's like, I might just try and sabotage people, the weaker ones. Game three, yeah. I am not accepting weak people into my team. I know that they may end up dead as a result. That's just, that's the way it works, okay? No. No, I might end up dead as a result, yeah. Exactly. Game four, he actively, he's lost, or at least as far as he's concerned, he's lost, but he manipulates his way into a victory and he gets a good man killed as a result uh, by tricking him. Game five, he pushes a man to his death. Game six, he is forced to battle a man to the death, or at least that's what he engages in. I think it's a wonderful progression. I agree. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is a well-built progression. And a lot of it, like, it's easy to make him out as villainous, but, I mean, it was stakes like these. Here. And, yeah, there is a reality. Do you just say, oh, well, I guess Ali's going to have all my marbles and I die? Like, no. Well, lasted. Like, not this well, guy. And, yeah. and, and they no. really, they just make it, like, um, to the edge, by the way. We'll talk about what happens after what? that. Um, sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was agreeing. Yeah, it's like I oh, said. Yeah. That remember when you think of this, they barely made it in time. Um, yeah. So, and and that's we'll talk about their argument next episode because I think it's it represents both sides very well the, the discussion yes. I have. But yes, there is one more element to this before we can continue talking about everything. <laughs> um, I think most people find this baffling. They're like, "You've reached yes. zero. Every pane of glass explodes." 
Like upward. <laughs> Excuse me. This one shocked me. I was yes. I was completely. I had no. First off, the mechanism that this happens. Yeah. No fucking clue. Not even going to get into how this happens. How they made this happen other than magic. Um, the C four slow uh, sequence that pain. takes like thirty seconds to happen. Yeah, the stylish. Um, by the way, in this episode, we get. Is it oh, our man. first slow mo? No, oh, I can't they've remember. done slow mo a fair a bit, but like yeah, I think yeah, there was slow mo I mean, during slow-mo, game one. Yeah, when he slipped in uh, the first episode, they did slow mo. Oh yeah, yeah, they did slow mo when it's like fly me to the moon. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. um, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Because I was, but I was about to just, say, the whole time this, this is happening in slow motion, you go, "Why the fuck explode like that?" And you're just sitting in that thought for like thirty seconds, going, yeah, "Doesn't yeah. why though?" Because originally why, I was thinking, so is this so that in case they don't make it across, this is what happens to ensure? But I was like, this is a really weird roundabout way of doing that. And when they could just tilt or the, 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 yeah, or just shoot them or the, the, the red bars rotate so that the, they, they break yeah. or they, or they just turn to the side and they just fall. Or if you um, want the explosion, instead, they just blow up expl- down. They explode yes. upwards into the whole, like what what the fuck is this you just wanted a thing what thing did you well, want yeah you're happen? right yeah this is when we have whenever we come across this is like a, almost a writing lesson for criticism uh chatteroonies whenever something really fucking weird happens that you have no way of explaining what does it cause that's the way to figure out why this mm-hmm. happened yeah when i don't i i really I hate what I've this causes that. too yeah, we've sort of seen enough, I guess, like stuff, movies and shows and things where we're we're kind of on the lookout for that. Mm-hmm. What did they want to happen? This is just their way of getting a thing that they wanted. What is that? I guess someone we'll said it. they wanted a cool shot, I guess. No, 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 no. They, they so didn't much want more that. Than that. They wanted a little more. I'm willing to believe they wanted a cool shot, too. But it's, uh, the de- it's more oh, than yeah. that. In fitness, that's from a person who I don't even know has seen the show. I think he's just... We will tell you what this causes. Do not that's worry. Fair. Yeah, that's um, fair. Not an insult to your intelligence, and but what it causes is infuriating. Significant and frustrating in in a couple of ways. Uh, and someone said there are explosives that can be embedded in glass and crystal. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm willing to. That part doesn't annoy me as much as the fact that it happened at sure. all. Sure. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely the issue that it happened at all. Um, but yeah, we because find. God, I, I like Andrew so much. I was rooting for her more than anyone else, and it's just like, well, so, fuck, uh, wait, that's wait, how she's sabotaged. We will glass, talk. With glass. This. We're almost there. <laughs> um, I just want to give sorry. the give the results of this scene, which is Sangwoo gets a bit of glass across his face, a little scram. Uh, Gihan gets one in his face and his arm, and then all we see of, of good old Andrew is she it, like is like, Ugh, but they don't show anything. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh dear. Well, what? she looks down and she kind of gasps and looks back up. Yeah, so yeah. very clearly like, something bad has happened. I know how stories now, work. Exactly. <laughs> um, now, if that happened, she's got a fucking slab of glass inside her chest, basically, a belly. Uh, if that's possible, you could have wiped out all three of them. Why would yeah. you do this? What a stupid fucking ending to your game. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yes. You it it killed one of them. Yeah. Remember, it almost killed all of them. Two of them that got grazed on the face. Mm-hmm. Like if if their head was turned in a different way, that could have been the back of their neck. Or blew their eyes out. Yeah. Two of them almost got killed and one of them Essentially, did get killed by it. Yeah, I'm, I when think they it's, made yeah. it across, they won the game. So <laughs> now I'm oh. imagining a scene where that actually does end up killing all three of them. The VIPs, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> this was one of the best versions of the game. What, what are you guys doing? It's yeah, like, I think they would fill out a feedback, know. a feedback card, being like, "Can we not do the stupid <laughs> fucking pain game? Whatever the fuck." <laughs> and you just know that based based on how the uh, VIPs are characterized, they would all go, "Yeah, death!" <laughs> so it's like you know, there's no controversy here. So, mm. <sighs> terrible. So, uh, and uh, someone's put in chat, which I'm going to argue for heavily. They didn't even need the glass exploding to achieve her death. No, they did not. Mm-hmm. No, it, it did was not. just a fucking weird thing that happens. 
All right, let's get the stupid detective thing out of the way first before we talk about the interesting oh God, part of this here episode. It is. So here it is. He goes to to some other part of I don't know if he's on a different island. Is that the idea, or is he no. gotten to to like? It's like a cliff on the island. There's only the one island. I, I thought, thought he, he got to a different. Island. Yeah, I thought he got to a different island. How? He swam uh, with how? the scuba gear. I, yeah, he swam. He swam with his. No, I thought he gear. came back because they come to find him on the same. No, I yeah. thought they didn't he they chase like, him there. No, I thought he went to a different island. Uh, Plus, I thought the island they were on was all like green and everything. Yeah, this one was much more. This one rocky. looked more temperate. Yeah. Uh, maybe I interpreted it as the same. The island, point is, he escapes the boat that's trapped. Yeah, let's. Him. We don't need to. What? Yes. I'm so done with the detective storyline. We're so close to never having to talk about him again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets his phone out and he's looking for signals. He starts a running. I'm just gonna skip past the actual episode and just get to all of those bits first. So. He's run relatively high up, and he's finally got one bar, so he tries to call his office, the signal's not great, and he's just watching the fucking Squidwoods come toward him. He's not <laughs> running. It drives me nuts. It's like, look at them, they're getting closer, and he's just like, time to do my call. It's like, move, walk and talk, buddy. You can walk and talk, it's possible. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Walk and talk, hit send, and throw that phone somewhere, or hide it, or that phone is everything. None yeah. of this he will also, matter if that phone doesn't get out. Also, he also talks me, I rather do. loudly. He too. does. Memory serves. He's not. And he's not whispering. There are many directions he could have gone. We have to assume that the squid people were able to track where he went. I guess. I know it's not impossible. I'm just saying that that's a particular skill set you need. Um. To know which direction he went, but they they do they and they follow him directly until very frustrating. Um, oh god, I've managed to skip past this really dumb part. Yeah, he's he's on his phone sending messages, video, whatever. He's just trying to get them all re-uploaded because uh, some of them like fail. And then he looks out yeah. into the distance and they spot him. It's like, how can you be this incompetent? <laughs> just just for reference, chat. Right, this is Squidman. His luck ran out. Squidman, and there's the detective just standing right there looking at them, and he's like, oh no, you have seen me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see you. Just a reminder, this is the most intelligent fucking detective ever, you know? Yeah. <sighs> Luckiest, too. So upsetting to watch. Like, I, I would have loved an intelligent, hardened veteran detective, man. That would have been so cool. Yes. I love detective stories, and I'm so interested in someone from the outside trying to undermine and catch the people doing all this bullshit i want to see that so very badly but this guy fucking blows it sucks <laughs> yes he does uh, so they eventually chase him to the yeah. end, edge of a cliff and he pulls his gun on them and then he's like korean uh standard is three bullets one blank and two empty cartridges i think something like that so he's used two he's only got one shot left so a blank could annoy. He could blast it in someone's face and be like, uh, "He could blind him." <laughs> so he'd be whinging like a big gay baby. I know what you're referencing. Fucking mm. top-notch movie. So the yeah, frontman's like, "Hey man, come back with us. It's chill." And this is this is it, chat. The, everything we've described to you about the detective story. You're gonna you're so excited. I can see it in your eyes. You're just like, "Oof, what is the big reveal here? Something's happening here." Frontman. I think he gets shot first. I don't even remember. I don't really care, to be honest with you. Frontman reveals that he was his brother all along. <laughs> I have so many questions. Um, I don't even know why I should give a fuck. <laughs> I, 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 I figured that out by episode four, I believe. <laughs> oh, wow. It's, okay. it's like the only thing that can happen. <laughs> Like, what yeah. else can happen? Yeah. What can a reveal be at this point? It's just like, I don't know. He's his brother. You're like, okay. <laughs> and, and like, the meaning from this is, man, turns out his brother won a game and then became a part of the machine. Okay. Wow. I don't even know who his brother is. Like, I don't know anything <laughs> about these people. I barely even know the detective. <clears throat> what was the point? <laughs> what was all this? <laughs> yeah. It, oh, I was baffled. I was just like, is this, you see, and they keep dragging me away from the last three characters, figuring out how everything's going to turn out with it. Like, why? Why do you keep distracting me with this fucking nonsense? 
He's like, oh, brother, come with me, brother. Don't don't be out here. Then he's like, I can't come with you, brother. Then he's like, okay, bye, and shoots him, and he falls off a cliff. I'm just like, right, great. Oh, great. I, I mean, I I am legitimately curious and interested in why the front man is the way he is and what he's doing here and how yes. this all makes sense, but they don't do any of it. As far as we know, I mean, there's going to be another season, I'm so sure. So right? the uh, only fuck, way... Fuck, they're not going to make it better, they'll make it worse. The only way to make use of all of this bullshit is in a season two, theoretically, because it doesn't... Nothing fucking worthwhile happens here. But for this, right, this storyline... Is he dead yet? Rags, give us your review <laughs> of the completed storyline of the detective. All right. So... I... So I assume you've discussed it all, and it's done now. He yes. did. Um, it's his brother. What? It was his brother the whole time, Rex. Oh my goodness what? gracious. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> so moving on. Uh, I was really <laughs> fucking. What? <sighs> this is all heading towards a payoff. Yes. All of this time, all this bullshit, it's just leading towards something. All of his stupidity, all of his everything, it is taking us to one point in time a conclusion it's all leading up to this there's i i thought like as as he was tilting off that cliff as he was getting he was he was he didn't shoot the dude in the fucking vital spot idiot cop um but he <laughs> when he gets when he gets shot by the thug or the the face man he falls back and he's got the phone in his hand and like he sends it as he's dying or it completes as he's dying. He was just stalling for time and it gets sent out. It, something happens. But here's the thing that here's the subversion is that nothing happens. <laughs> he just fucking gets killed. And that's it. Right. They shoot the, him in the, the shoulder. Front, They're obviously going to bring him back. The, I uh, bet you were expecting something interesting. Uh, something I, I was expecting fucking something, <laughs> but like nothing comes of this. Honestly, and like, I don't care about seeing the front man's face. I don't no, care I don't that care he's either. the brother. I don't care about like this. Just nothing. We don't get anything for this. And it's yeah, it's unreal on a second watch through that every fucking detective scene is all leading to. I'm looking for my bro. My bro's the bad guy. Oh, darn. <laughs> that's it also i mean like i guess all of the hundreds of people dying i guess too <laughs> that's, but yeah also this <laughs> also <laughs> and if he and here's the thing if he ends up surviving and reappearing later i'm just like i i mean yeah sure technically i didn't see a body but well, motherfucker looked over the cliff no i know i don't below uh, someone in chat said it's not like this well-oiled well-funded elite organization would confirm the kill down there garrett fucking tu he comes back in season two and it won't make sense he's just gonna be I like just... <laughs> i'm back baby <laughs> What's funny about this is like, oh, he's dead. That's really fucking annoying. He's alive. He's going to be really fucking annoying. Exactly. This, we don't win here. This was all a waste. And, <laughs> oh. It is so disappointing. And it just, it's just, it's amazing. He sets up the call with the chief. He's got the files that are sent. But, oh, the signal here is not very good. It's going to take time. That's our ticking clock. And he's running away. Even if he dies, he's going to send it off just in time. It's going to be yeah, a little bit, a little bit cliche. But you know what? That's fine. Because he'll be dead and it'll be <laughs> over. And at least he'll have he'll done something that affects over. the plot in some way. Imagine None of it happens. We don't fuck around with his brother bullshit. Instead, he's just like he thinks he's safe. He's right at the top of the cliff. It's it like the the bar hits one hundred percent, and then it's splattered in blood. And the camera just pans up, and he's been shot in the head, and then he just falls off the yes. cliff and dies. Yeah, and then the phone falls on the ground, and then we see as an audience the camera pans over, and it says delivered. And then you have next season, Something a veteran like fucking detective uses that information then to actually do Then his brother comes <laughs> to find out what happened. <laughs> he comes from a long line of cop brothers, They're and the next brother brothers. takes his place. <laughs> It'll be like Korean saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <sighs> He's gone. Uh. It's done. It was worthless. It was annoying. And the funny thing is, it's not like, dare I say wasted potential. 
Yes, but at the same time, it was never a good plotline. It starts bad, the middle's bad, it ends bad. This, it was all shit. They never, like... It's, is only, there... it's only good in concept. Nothing about the... Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Is, there a, is there a trope name for the type of character that, like, has to be the one to tell the backstory because the main character can't? Because I, cause I was calling this guy Detective Fanning for a reason. There's a movie called uh, Collateral with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx. And uh, there's a detective that follows their case. And he's getting the story out, going on and everything like that. He comes to figure it out. He comes to save the protagonist. And then he gets killed. And then that, that's the end of his story. And Detective Fanning's entire thing was that he was figuring the story out. So I imagine this can't be just like used sparingly. This has to have been used before. So I have to wonder if there's a trope name for this. It can't be just a plot device character, right? I don't even know what their goal with him was. I don't know. I'm assuming we'll it find has out to in season two. Just <laughs> to expose, yeah, it, it has to have been just to reveal what's going on in the background because the main character can't. He's stuck in the game and he can't I, get out. So they I have to use another character to tell the story. Frontman will probably be a character in season two. And he'll be constantly sad about having to kill his brother, he'll be haunted by it, and then his brother will actually come back because he didn't actually die and they didn't check for a body and he was shot in the shoulder, which means he's immune to death, because that's how movies do shit. Couldn't bleed out, get I, infected, uh, or struggle with swimming when you got shot in the shoulder, no sir. Fall off a cliff, and the gun's- yeah, there's a, there's a long cliff. list of things that could've killed him. I for fucking crabs ate him, I don't know, I just- <laughs> For I real. I legitimately- <laughs> I want to understand front man as a character but i don't trust them to do it well i don't want a season yeah. two uh i don't want a season two either they're gonna ruin i want to appreciate what we got that was really really legitimately wonderful and i just want to yeah i this is another the suicide squad where the plot is nonsense and the detective is holly like and go the away is <laughs> Harley, exactly. but damn we get some great legitimately grade a plus character stuff and some awesome writing that makes it worth it but hey that's a good analogy uh, the detective is harley i i agree <laughs> so yeah we don't have to talk about this in their favor and then it leads to nothing yeah we don't have to talk about the detective ever again it's done Hooray. For now. Legit, when he gets shot, For I now. see it as like, oh, thank fuck. He's done. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> over. <laughs> and I can't say I was ever even particularly uh, bothered by the fact that he got shot down. Like, I'm, no. okay, like, I'm all right with it. It was just that the, the journey throughout was the problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, he should have got shot way sooner. Um, and the thing, too, <laughs> is you normally have, you don't have those scenes with... Like, like they're up on the top of the cliff, right? He he ran at a cliff and they, they caught up with him, I guess. Okay, whatever. And so you have him at his backs to the cliff and all of the squid squad are there and they have their <laughs> guns. And then you have the front man and they're all they, they, all, they all like they all bring up their guns towards him. And then he's got his like he's got the phone in his hand. Right. And he's got his his his, his it's downloading or he's got his finger above it. They don't know. They know what the phone can do, but they don't know quite yet. And then the front man's like, no, he's like, no, no, no. Put your guns down. You know, that thing that they do like, no, no, no. Lower your guns. And then they have the brother, brother. They do nothing. Nothing of interest happens here. No, this is a totally wasted payoff in every regard. So I'm looking at the stream right now and I can't help an otherwise empty room filled with nothing but the diagrams of all the games they're playing. And why the fuck doesn't anyone acknowledge it? It's Especially driving when me crazy. The sixth game is on the wall as well. Yes. Uh, oh, fucking think. look at the look at these shots. Look at these shots. Look at all the games. Why doesn't... <sighs> I know, man. No. So anyway... Um... It, it would be interesting if the characters... Like, you legitimately couldn't see it because of the bed placement, and that was by design of the people <coughs> who run the game. So then as beds go away, but they're, like, bolted to the floor, they physically can't move them or something. So they know about the things on the wall. And as the games progress and less players are around, they see more and more of the things and they try to piece. Like, it could be a clue that they all work to piece together. They can only see parts of the drawings. There's um, something that really annoys me. I, I saw a couple articles about this. 
eagle-eyed viewers notice no, this know, easter egg i know, I know. And it's like eagle really eagle-eyed viewers hey eagle-eyed <laughs> viewers at home can you spot anything about this room <laughs> it's gonna be difficult <laughs> Like, Did you know on. that if you were stuck in a room for like a week, <laughs> you might be very intimately familiar with that room? <laughs> Not the characters in this show. Nope. Yeah, there's no... Yeah, it would have been cool to have them acknowledge it, um, and you could have done something with it. But to be fair, probably would have just not had it myself, because it, it's hard to justify them yes. not ever seeing it. Yeah, just get rid of them. It's an easy choice. Just get rid of the designs. It adds nothing. It only subtracts from the intelligence of all the characters. Just get mm. rid of them. Um, so next up, we get what well, a conversation I love um, between Song Wu and Gihan. Uh, basically, like sort of doing an audit of what the fuck just happened. Meanwhile, uh, Andrew is bleeding to death in the background, and nobody's checking in on that. Uh, basically, the argument starts out with just, "Why'd you push that guy?" And then he's like, I guess you forgot, being that you were last in line, how things fucking work. And um, obviously, I, I would imagine he's referring to the fact that this is just how the fuck it's going to happen. Either I jump in his place and die, or I push him on and he dies and gives us the space. It's fucking hard, but that's your choice. You make the I've choice. I've got to be the one to make this decision. Yeah, you didn't you have were in to. the back. You were in a very passive role during this uh, thing, but I had to be the one to act. You're welcome, by the way. Exactly. Um, and so Song Wu is basically at the point now where I think he's too fucking tired to have to justify or hide it. The truth is, you gotta be ruthless to survive here. And I think the explanation is fantastic in terms of like an airtight argument, but then Gihan says one thing that kind of fucks with it, which is, what if I was on that platform? It's like, because mm. <laughs> it gets a little bit harder to just outright say, like, yeah, I would have pushed you, bitch. It's just like, ugh. if he's trying to argue, like, as a, as these are what these are decisions they have to make. Um, and he says, like, you know, time was being wasted. Who knows what would have happened? And and uh, Gihan is arguing, like, you know, he would have done it. He would have jumped. And he's like, you can't fucking know that, especially with one minute left. It's it's all less than that. Um. Uh, and then, of course, he says he let everyone else die, that guy. Like, evidence to point to he wouldn't have made the jump himself. But the guy himself said he only did that because uh, everyone else would have killed him if they had the chance, sort of thing. It's just all this backstabbery and paranoia causing people to make decisions that maybe they wouldn't normally. Um, and yeah, and then he reminds him the only reason that they even survived as long as they did is because the, he could tell the difference. And then Song says, I'm the reason that I'm here and uh, that he's willing to do it. It's just the core differences between these people at this point. Um, and he's like, you killed someone. And then the subtitles say, his bullet is in your hands. Is that on purpose, or is that...? I noticed that too. Maybe it's a, a, like a Korean euphemism. Uh, like a bullet's used to kill people, so his bullet... Yeah. There's, whole, there's a bullet with your name on it, so, the, like, you know... So I, I picked up what they were saying, but I think that's an interesting. Might just be I, a, yeah. I was just curious if Korean. that was the correct translation or not, because I wasn't sure. Um, but I could yeah, I could buy it. Uh, yeah, the, the, just saying that he basically done did a murder, and then he's like, we got to be killing everyone if we want that money, which gives you the information for episode three. I think he did believe that everyone has to die to get the money. So uh, th that's why I think it could support that he was actually okay with Jihan dying as well. Oh, Jihan. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, he, some... he avoids the question and then well, just yeah. kind of yells at him. Well, it's great because um, it's not something... He's willing to say a lot right now. I don't think he's willing to say that he's going to kill him just yet. Because, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah, and then, and then he just fucking tears into him for that question. It's a complete nod sequitur. He's like... Yeah. Fuck you. You suck. You're pathetic. You're useless. It's like, okay, that's not what I asked you. This but. <laughs> is the problem that you answer these. You ask these kinds of questions. This is your issue. Yeah. yeah. And Gion comes back with, oh yeah, well, I'm a loser. Huh? Well, you're in the same fucking boat as me, idiot. You 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 think you're so fucking great? You're here. The with thing me? that he's been praising him for mm -hmm. for over the course of many episodes is now something that he's using to mock him. Mm -hmm. That like, I think oh, that's you, my favorite line in the whole show. It's really, really good. 
Yeah, like oh, you're you're so you're such and such from such and such, and you oh, you're the smart guy, and everyone knows you, and you're from a little neighborhood, and you made it big, and you went to the big fancy college, and here you are stuck in here with us, We're stuck with around an idiot shit, like oh. me, bitch. Yeah. Is it my fault that you're here? Which, by the way, gave me big galaxy brain think about some of the points the show is making. Um, if you tie that back to when he said I was taking him to school that got him into SNU, like, is it my fault, in a way, that you're here, consequentially? Like, my efforts to get you to school led to you getting there, being smart enough to rise enough to then make the bets that you made and fail and get up into here? Could it be... Because... I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like we're gonna have to maybe talk on this a little bit when we get there, but just how much is it the system versus how much it is as your choices as an individual? Um, is it Sung Woo's fault that he ended up gambling away everything, or was that just the life he was given by the choices other people made to do different things to raise him and put him in different positions, right? Because of all good old consequentialism. Mm -hmm. um, one, thing, one thing I do like is that it seems to be a mixture of both. I think so. And the, it yeah, it's yeah. it's not a system that is being blamed. It's just this is it's almost like this is just an inevitability of life. This is just how life there there will always be downtrodden. There will always be people who need help. There will always be people who have rough lives. And as we'll learn in our final episode, you know, kind of I guess the ultimate moral, which is I guess nothing fancy or complicated, and it doesn't need to be. But it, it's not like the, like people who watch this and think it's a critique of capitalism. That's like a that's a really shallow take on it. This this is a game that could take place under any economic system. Mm -hmm. uh, it money doesn't even necessarily have to exist. It's just there are haves and there are have nots. There are people who because of them, it might be their fault. It might not be their fault. They could be victims of circumstance. There will always be people who need help whether it be help from them, uh, they need to be saved from themselves or they need outside help or they just need money or they just need something. Um, there's always going to be that kind of person in a society. And if you have, if you have things, what are you going to do about it? Um, and yeah, I, uh, I get bored if you summarize a show like this as, well, it's clearly saying there's flaws in capitalism. capitalism. I'd be like, okay, we're just saying a hell of a lot more than just that. Um, yeah, and it is. That is a can, baby brain take. And you can be critical of capitalism while also saying it's the best we're gonna get for now, <laughs> like in terms sure. of a system, which I find interesting in terms yeah. of like I'm I'm totally preferably not that much in terms of our media discussions. We try to necessarily avoid like definitive discussions on which political system is the best. But at the same time, this this show is definitely um, used as a poster child to say, you see, not only is capitalism bad, but the people who like capitalism and enjoy this are having a lot of trouble, aren't they? And I'm just sitting here like, oh man, what appealed to me in this is the, the commentary on human nature, not the... Si Absolutely, the, yeah. The system might prevent uh, present more opportunities for the nature to be corrupted, um, but I still think that would just be more so a, a critique of where regulation should exist, uh, because anything unfettered can lead to disaster. Any political system, we know this. This is yeah, very this, obvious. This could, yeah, this story could occur under a socialist government. It could occur in a feudalist society. It's it's more human nature than anything else. It's just framed in a world, the world that exists today, which is everyone's every successful nation's a capitalist country. So I I totally agree, and I I I also resent everyone trying to pin something like this into their like their ideological worldview and their team and their camp. Because I had the same problem. I had the same problem with Parasite because I watched Parasite, and I'm like, oh, this is a really interesting movie, and everyone's like, it's about how capitalism is evil. And I'm like, what? fucking movie did you in no watch? way is it that capitalism's evil i think uh, it's never gonna yeah. be that simple i don't think any any story could be that great if you were simply going capitalism evil all right go home <laughs> like okay yeah yeah like, especially when you think about who the good people in parasite are and who the bad exactly. people are you're like this is this is a very strange critique on capitalism <laughs> if that's what this movie is about. And at the watched, same time I parasite i i watched parasite i was in the theater and i was watching it wow i feel like a lot of people aren't going to be happy with the fact that the poor people are the villains. And then I, <laughs> and then I watch reviews and they're like, it's really about how capitalism is. Evil. What fucking well, movie did you watch? 
I'm a big fan a lot of, people. of wow. personal responsibility in a lot of environments and scenarios, <gasps> and I don't like it getting pulled away to the nth degree, where everything mm -hmm. anyone does is a result of the system they're in. I think that's some yes. great a horse shit. Uh, at the same time, I understand that a system is going to have a huge influence on the life that you live. Um, and so I find it all, I find the discussion much more interesting and thorough than any simple line. And I find it just as cringe when someone says, Squid Game is a critique of communism. It's like, all right, uh, like, come on. <laughs> That's an odd one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would, yeah, because I think some people might be expecting us to do some kind of bigger breakdown than that. But I think that's probably as far as we're going to go. Um, yeah. I would way prefer to talk about the fundamentals of humanity from this show rather than does it line up with critiquing this one or this one more? Or does it not at all? I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. Besides, you can find does extensive... Does this agree with my politics or not? You can find extensive stuff like that all over the internet. We here are more concerned. Yeah. With the consistency of the characters, the plot, the world, and we haven't even, I think we'll, we're, we're getting close now, we'll probably do a summary of the, um, the world building very soon. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, their conversation fizzles out very uncomfortably. Meanwhile, uh, Andrew is trying to pull the glass out of himself and get a bandage going, and you have to ask yourself at this point, do the squid people not give a fuck? Are they just gonna let her die? I assume. <laughs> At which point, it's okay if one of them dies, but not we gotta have two at the end. But it's the, the luck of the explosion. But when is the yeah? I mean, I feel if I was there, if I was a VIP, I would want as many contestants in the games as possible. Well, so I can't really see much of a difference with what happens to her than with um, at nighttime, one of the squid people just enters the room and just puts a knife in her chest and walks out. I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, with the contestants, I can see something there, um, but when it's the fucking show that did it to her when she won the game, that just seems shit. <laughs> yeah, like, it seems okay. very against the spirit of the game. I also have a hard time believing absolutely none of the VIP, either in the room or abroad, wouldn't have bet on her. She was a very strong character. And so it's like, is is no one upset at the fact that the game fucked her over and just they by the awful design way. of the glass breaking? Yeah. Yeah, because there's no difference between uh, at the end of the platform, one of the squid squad comes out and just shoots one of them at random dead. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Because this episode is a little bit of a almost like um, a checkpoint. It feels like the next episode and the one before it were the big events. This one is like a sort of connecting piece, but one big thing happens in this one, and we're only going to get in there. They are given... Is this episode eight? Yeah. Uh, is this the one that's only half an hour for some reason? Yes. Which means, guys, we're, we've got about an hour and 20 minutes of the show left, and we're at nine hours, so hopefully we can get this before we hit the cap. Uh, do it, do it. <laughs> so they, yeah, they, they have a big meal, the, the remaining three, and they're just digging in while kind of looking at each other, and I think at one point there's an effort to eat food faster between Song Wu and uh, Gi Hoon. Like they're just both like, nom, 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 nom. and then uh, she's just awkwardly slowly chopping into her food because she's already going to be going faint, I'd imagine. I'm skipping past everything to do with the detective now. Like, it's satisfying as fuck. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> they pull away everything <laughs> except leaving them all a knife. And uh, by the way, uh, when I was first watching this, my irrational brain was like, is this the final game? Everyone just has a knife in this room. And then my brain was like, Squid Game, you idiot. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm like, hmm. So what's the deal here? Are they expected to just hang on to these, I guess, until tomorrow? And if they... Another, I guess another thing, if the final game is Squid Game, how... Do they have to engineer a way that only two people are left by the final game? That's the big question. If she hadn't been hit by a, a bit of glass, and those two had stuck together throughout the night to make sure Sangwoo doesn't kill them, what happens? You can't play Squid Game 2v1. That's fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. You would... You, what you would have to do is you would have to... You'd want to get the games that would eliminate the most people probably out first. You have to decide, okay, how many games are we going to do? We're going to do either six or seven or eight, depending on contestants. You have, like, a number of plans that take these things into consideration so that... You, because some games will eliminate half. Like, okay, that's really mm -hmm. useful. Some games will eliminate. You don't know exactly how many. You probably have some research because you've been yeah, doing this enough. Yeah, statistically, you can that figure generally it out. it'll. Yeah, 
But so you would have to know that, OK, that's that we we keep doing games until there's a certain amount. Then we start picking the games so that we can get the numbers that we need. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case uh, with this. And what if you get to the glass glass walkway and there's only six people? They're just not making it. You've just made it mathematically impossible, essentially, for them to get across. You're just fucked. Yeah. Yep. Um, Mola, remember the kids the playing Squid Game in the beginning more than one person? I'm not sure. Yeah, but it has to be even numbers. I thought that the whole point is it's even, yeah. It's a team game. It's a team game. Squid Game, anything goes, they could easily play two on one. Okay, I'm not saying it is impossible to play that game two on one. I am saying, what the fuck is the point? The two people win every time. Yeah, I, you for can't, that seems like a game where clearly the I two actually people don't win. think you can play 2v1. Well, what I'm saying is you couldn't play 2v1 chess, but like, you know, why? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I, I, so if they're defending as two against one, it's just incredibly unfair. And if they're attacking, they're done. They <laughs> make one person busy yeah. with them, the other person just does the win. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, doesn't I think the beginning game in um in the game was three v three, what we saw in the, the first episode. Um, anyway, Gihan talks to her. <laughs> if about... all three, if all three made it to Squid Game, and then they would have to fight, and she would just win because she, <laughs> she didn't have a partner to play with. There you go. Yeah, these are <laughs> these are important <laughs> questions considering the importance of the games and the plot. Like this isn't a yeah. nitpick. This is a serious kind of. Yeah, you you wonder how the you wonder how the show engineered this to be the case, and then you're like, oh yeah, random exploding glass. Okay, well, um, hmm. well, uh, as some people suggest, there is a chance here that they may have announced to them the game, the last game cannot begin until one of you is dead. It could literally just be like, out of the three of you, you've got to kill one, and then we can play the last game. It could be that they're that harsh, but we never find out what they would have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you give people knives, knife fights are fucking ferocious and terrible and everyone dies mm -hmm. because knives are quick and lethal. Um, yeah, and so if someone gets close enough to stab you, you, you can probably stab them. You're probably both going to stab each other is what's going to happen, yeah. and both of you will have knife wounds, and you might be in literally no condition to fight in the next game, which would be lame to the VIPs if you have just two people who need like three months of bed rest to recover trying to fight <laughs> or yeah. they just bleed out or like there's not a gun with a bullet in it you know like something like that something dare i say clever there's just exploding glass that takes care of that um but yeah so yeah they they have a little discussion about the the future reassuring her he's definitely not going to hurt her and just what he plans to do with the money um, it's, it's a nice, quaint conversation. Uh, she talks about the plans for her family. And then, uh, Gihan realizes that Song Wu has fallen asleep, to the point where he's even dropped his knife. And so he's like, I'ma go get him! Though, it does, it does annoy me promises to her. She says, promise me you'll, you know, if you win, you'll take care of like promise me and then he just doesn't say anything and notices that uh he is fallen asleep and dropped his knife and so he goes to attack him it's like what it, and uh, knowing that eventually he does do the right thing for the brother it's like would it have killed you to just say yeah i promise Something, i think that's you know, the, like that was on purpose though it's a moment of him taking the chance to murder somebody instead of talking about how he's going to take care of somebody yeah i don't know it it's, felt felt like a dick move a little bit well, this is the thing. Gihan is going through some some significatisms right now to the point where she convinces him that he's not the person that would kill Songwoo. Uh, which I found particularly moving. Um, and yeah, she the sort vibe, of... What, the vibe seemed to be that he was barely listening. He was barely what, sorry? For me. That he was barely listening to her because he was so focused on whether uh, the other guy had fallen asleep yet. I would imagine... He may or may not have actually heard what she was saying, but ultimately values Songwoo sleeping as the ultimate fucking thing right now. That's like, yeah, just yeah, just trumps everything else. Um, and yeah, then we have so she's basically fainting, and he sees that she's covered in blood from the glass. He goes off and bashes the door, and um, 
they do a review. I've spoken to a couple people about this. So, if you look when the lights come on, I don't know logistically if this fucking works, man. I'll try and show you guys when you see it. Um, but when the lights come on and the doors open, right, a lot of people assume it's like, oh, it's going to be a coffin. Oh, no. The thing is, the lights come on, and this is what he does a full 360, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. So he should be able to see what's happened, right? Um, we'll, we'll get another view in a second. I'll show you to kind of make it make sense. But yeah, of course it's revealed she's dead is basically the point, and these people are coming for the, for the coffin. Uh, let's get the right frame I'm looking for here. Right, there you go. So he's pretty much in the same position and looks the same way, and look at that view. I don't understand what he didn't see the first time, you know what I mean? Like, he looks over, he yes, sees that. I agree. And then he looks back like, what's well, so how it is? Like, oh, there's like, all you had to do was make him not turn around. It's just awkward, because I was like, wait, yeah. shouldn't he have seen it already? I agree. You know what this reminds me of? It's very, very similar. Where she's looking out the window and she sees Michael Meyer, you know, with the laundry out on the line. Mm -hmm. And then she doesn't look away. And then we cut back out there and he's gone. And she's like, where did he go? It's like, they, you were looking at him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, they do that in a lot of the Halloween. It fucking annoys me. I brought this up in other horror movies. When they cut it so that we're staring at their face, and then they cut back at his guys mm -hmm. like, that didn't make any sense. What was their view? <laughs> well, this will be yeah. timely. Remember at the beginning of Van Helsing when Dracula teleports and mm -hmm. Dr. Frankenstein, like, does a double take? Yes. Because... Like, the movie's acknowledging that it doesn't make sense in a way, <laughs> and the character's confused as a result. Like, it's almost like a little meta joke. It's, it's and... awesome. Because he can see Dracula's in front of him, but he's so convinced it's not possible he's here, he looks back to see if there's another Dracula or not. <laughs> it's like, how did you do this? Hey, Van Helsing is great. Go watch EFAP Movies Van Helsing. It's come out recently. It's, uh, it mm -hmm. is rather amusing, I should say, and perfect for Halloween. Um, so yeah, Song Wu cut her throat, and, uh... That essentially closes out the episode. Um, that is yeah. that is the end of her story. Yeah, and they they do not they they do stop the two from fighting. They're about to fight, yeah. but they are stopped from fighting. One is yeah, all that's allowed. And I I find it thoroughly meaningful because of the relationship these two have had since episode one. Even just this pickpocket that stole of his money, and this is the person he almost cares about the most in terms of a death. Um, good stuff when thinking about it at that point of view but I'm just not a fan of the gloss I'm not a fan of I, I don't know how he didn't see Sogwoo doing this I don't know uh, it's, it's just logistically a bit, a bit floompy and, but like I still get them feels rip Andrew indeed yep Andrew is dead. And um, yeah, uh, it was. I think it was on Fringy Stream we were just talking about alternatives and it's like you could have done it so that she doesn't get hit by the gloss and she talks to him for a while about how none of those three have to die, okay? We can figure this out. It's just us now. There's no crazy enemies, no thugs, no fucking psychopaths. We can figure this out. And she's, like, even though the, she's never trusted anybody, right? She can be the character to convince um, Gihan that there's a good ending here on the table. And then Songwoo's, like, asleep, drops the knife. And so Gihan is convinced, like... We can kill him, and then she does the same thing. It's like, that's not you, that's not us, and that uh, we don't have to, and we can work together, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, all right. And then he can go to toilet, or something. He could even fall asleep, but let's presume that they're not stupid enough to both go to sleep at the same time. So he just goes to the toilet, and he can come back, and um, Song Wu's just sleeping still, and then he can go up to her body, and he can see that she's had her neck slit. Um, and then he can look back and someone can just be staring at him, knowing that the, and and the reasoning we get from Song Wu, I think, is is pretty um there's a lot of reasons for why he does what he does. I'm not sure what you would decide on exactly what his motivation was, but there's there's um plenty you can do there. It's just um I don't know, it's a bit of a struggle. Someone said she's absolutely a killer though. Um I think it's become clear that she doesn't want to kill certain people. Uh mm -hmm. And um, I could see she her. was really upset that somebody, yeah, gave essentially sacrificed themselves for her. So she's, yeah. Mm. Oh, I forgot the scene where the front man looks in the mirror. A detective says, "Why?" <laughs> and it's like I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, I, I don't, I. It's fine. You, you do you. A detective <laughs> plotline. We're not interested. Uh. 
Um, yeah, we're done with you. We're finished. Which brings us to episode nine. Can you believe oh, it, guys? We're, we're so close. No, I, episode. I feel bad that Fring hasn't been able to talk about any of this. <laughs> yeah, this is unfortunate. Believe me, he has so much to say. House together. Um, he could leave a um, he could leave a long comment down below and and catch us all up on what he we'll thinks. Have to open. You can pin it. Yeah, we'll have to open the next EFAB with just an hour of Fring explaining all the things he wanted to say about the Squid Game. <laughs> See, here's the thing. It's bad enough that we still have to catch up on Super Chats. Now we have to catch up on EFABs, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, we've already set the one for topic and guests on Saturday. It's like, roll it along. But November will be a month where things will calm back down. Okay, Spooktober, you know how it goes. Catch up months. We yeah. love it. We love it. It do be like that. Um, doobie doobie. So, we got player right, two one. Oh my god, what? Oh my god, Friggle hey, is back. What's up, hey, what's up, man? We're just talking good. about you. Did what's, you have to paddle what's... back to your room? Uh, it's just problems, but I'm here. What? What's? What have I missed? Well, so talk we're about whatever you episode. want. <laughs> we are. The, uh, we're at the beginning whatever, of episode like, nine now. Yeah. Before uh, we before why, we start the final episode. Like that? Yeah. Well, so so no, what, why, whatever you'd like to talk about, because I figure you're not going to want to give a fucking recap of all the episodes you were not here for. So uh, pick any topic you want. I assume yeah. you you wouldn't have minded talking about because you left when you said you wanted to say something about Song Wu and Ali's sort of conflict and obviously old man's death in. Okay, episode six. well, I mean, if if we're up to like episode, oh, so I guess uh, the thing that would be worth stating is um, uh, episode six is great. <laughs> so yes, yeah, I agree. Very, very great. It's a great episode. So much, so much awesome character drama that they got to tap into. And um, I think when it came to Song Wu, the big thing was like, we where we're up to now with episode nine, with what's going to happen to him. It all, it's also very deliberate in terms of pushing him down this track. And it's. When you look through the whole show, you can just see all of the hints and clues as to, like, the decisions that he would make when things got more tense and stressful. I like when push really came to shove and then the pretense sort of goes out the window. It's just all really well done. It's just really <laughs> well just done say, drama. When he said, when push came to shove, I visualized him pushing the glass guy <laughs> and he said, and all pretense went out the window, and I just picture him smashing yeah. through the pane of glass. <laughs> out well, the window. I mean, that's, that's basically the embodiment of, um, of what happened there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I, I I'll I'll just sit around and let's 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 press on. I can't we, remember exactly what I wanted to say. We spent like an yeah, hour right. rip, ripping started. into the VIPs, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they uh they they're not that good at all. <laughs> you could say that, yeah. Um, you could say that, yes. They, they, they definitely lightly. feel like Americans as written by not Americans, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, to say the least. And humans as written not by humans. I and we're done. A little bit. We're done with the detective as well, who we fucking ripped into for a long time as well. Hooray! Thank fuck. He's done. Yeah, which means or so uh, we think. We shall we shall press on, I suppose, because there's plenty we could talk about once we're actually done with the episode summaries, you know. Um, so yeah, this game we're doing Squid Game. We're gonna decide who goes offense or defense by calling um, a coin flip and then deciding what position you want to play. I, uh, Gihan goes offense. Which kind of makes sense right now. He's pretty pissed, as you guys would have recognized. Yep. Uh, old Andrew got fridged, he died just mm -hmm. to motivate him to do something else. That is all you can say about that. Uh oh, that's a shame. Reference. Dang. Uh -oh. <laughs> um. And yeah, so they're pretty pissed at each other naturally. Uh, I think that the easy assumption to make would be that Song was just gone, uh, so ruthless that he took a chance to kill her when he had it, but. There are reasons that he's going to highlight that I think are fair to think about. Um, I thought it was weird that um, Frontman explains the rules of Squid Game to the VIPs. I was like, have they never seen this before? Well, I mean, they, um, they, they, well, the, the people organizers, uh, they don't know that they've played it. Is that what you're asking? Well, wouldn't they? I mean, these people have seen these games many times, right? It feels strange. They didn't explain the rules of Stepping Stones. They just revealed it, didn't they? No, they explained the rules. And then they have them take their shoes off and everything. No, no, they explained it to the contestants. I meant to the VIPs. 
Oh. Is oh no no the, the the VIPs yeah I don't know have they played Squid Game before I think you have to imagine that they've just never played this particular game before that seems unlikely and that's yeah I agree with that Squid Game <laughs> like but this the, like that it, I, I don't know it seems like the whole organization is based after this game um or at least in part I don't know maybe there's something I'm missing on that one it just felt maybe weird maybe it's that, like. Maybe it's Burger Game in America, and maybe it's Strudel Game in Germany, and maybe it's Sushi Game in Japan, like and game. it's 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 Kangaroo Game in Australia. Wow! It's Gun Game in America. Oh, Gun Game! To, I like Gun Game. Trying, trying to bait yeah. a comment out of Fringy here. <laughs> <laughs> There's your comment. I heard Kangaroo Game, but yeah. <laughs> uh, there, you, there you go. But yeah, he's like, uh, well, why is yeah, he guess... hopping on one foot? And then he's like, the attacker is given a handicap. He can only hop on one foot until... He... And I'm just like... He's hopping uh... because he's a kangaroo. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, so the defender <laughs> tries to block him. Yes. And I'm just like, oh, this is so clunk, man. So very clunk. Clunk and clunking all the way down the street. Um, Yeah, and I think Gihan is just describing this game, and Song was like, shut the fuck up, let's just get on with it, and he throws, uh, like, sand in his face, and just gets his, uh, two feet at access straight away. He's, uh, doing a badass right now, you know? Like, he's, he's using Song Wu's own, uh, tricky tactics against him. Yeah, you could definitely say that was kind of cheating in a way, but it's, uh, I mean, Maybe. they literally are allowed knives, so I don't know. <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is more than, if anything, this has nothing to do with completing the game of Squid Game. This is much more just about yeah. those two confronting each other about everything that's happened. And, uh, it's a little strange that in this game, all violent rules of the game, you know, you can just throw those out the window, but the other games are like, uh, no violence, play strictly by the rules. I suppose they decided that. They're okay with the knife fight to the death, or you can play the Squid Game shit if you want to. It's up to you guys yeah, at this point. This, this reinforced really heavily. It's like, why didn't they try to get around the glass game harder, you know? Um, but yeah, his first point is she was suffering. She was going to die anyway. And then Gihan's like, nah, they would have helped her. And then he says, oh yeah? Well, you're the reason I had to kill her. And Songwoo's concern was that those two would vote to end the game and they would have majority. Um, which just fucks everything up for Songwoo ultimately, like all the shit that he's done. Um, so yeah, that, you can argue that it's a couple of reasons at once, but I think that is the primary one. He couldn't risk that. Um, yeah, that would, because there's nothing he could have done against that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Gihan realizes like, she's the one that told me not to kill you. Which is like, uh, <laughs> oh, so much drama. And yeah, Gihan's now at the point where he's like, I don't want, like, I want to prevent you from winning. And Songwoo, who has been pretty aggressive up to this point, is ready for the challenge. So at this point, we just, we've classically got to the conflict of these two just trying to fucking kill each other. Um, but as the fight progresses, it gets a little bit more complicated, I would say. Got a uh, plenty of. Uh, I think like the concern for just getting to the location you need to get to to win the game is out the window. It is more so just about the knife fight. Yeah, it sort of gets forgotten, and I figure that will be picked up once one of them is incapacitated, and we can have our you know drama yeah. moment of yeah, I'm, I, now I can go and win. I, mean, I can't really capture the intensity of the fight when I can't show you guys anything or play the audio, but <laughs> like it was, it's, you know, it's, I, uh... it's intense. One thing, one thing that I thought might happen would be in in their uh, their, I guess their bloodlust to try and kill each other. Uh, G Jihan, mm -hmm. Jihan, he is like. Songwoo is about to kill him. Like they fight for a while. Songwoo's about to kill him. Like he's got his hand up and he's got the knife about to stab him. But it just so it but 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 our, our protagonist, Jihan, he has positioned himself where he has got his feet on the zone where he needs to be in. And like right before Songwoo could stab him, 
uh, like he gets shot by one of the guys or something like that. You get like you a reveal that, yeah. or some tension. Yeah. But I, I was kind of, I was, I was very pleased with this fight. I think I, uh, I thought I was, there was a lot of different ways they could have done this. Yeah. So there's was, several endings you could go with here. I like the one they went with. Mm -hmm. Um, I do. Yeah, I do. Yep. This is, and it way better than the fucking detective ending. <laughs> That's not yeah. even anything. That's nothing. Like it's what are you even supposed to <laughs> But there are some endings that are worse than nothing, Mahler. <laughs> there's um, certainly stories where I would rather just like, oh, just to, they stopped making the show and nothing happened. We don't know. <laughs> it's just it just ended. Yeah, at this point they've both been stabbed and slashed a little bit. And uh Song Wu comments that this is the fucking place that they made us play red light, green light, all of those people dead except for us. And so, again, just that the cost of all of this is all that's on Song Wu's mind. It's just like how far we've come, how many people have died for this. It's, um, it's just Some come too far. Power, we'll see, but yeah. He's fully driven by that, yeah. Um, very determined, but uh, doesn't quite pull it around. And... Um, Man, and, and Gihan takes a different sort of perspective from it in terms of like your goal, your your like he says. So it was you that killed them. You killed everyone. Just uh, it definitely just focusing all of his anger at that point. Um, and Song was pretty much done. So he's uh, he's knocked him the fuck out almost. Uh, now all he has to do is step onto the uh. The thing, because he, yeah, he, he has an option to sh to stab Song Wu, but he decides against it. Um, which, with everything we've seen, is pretty understandable. Just doesn't want to fucking do this shit anymore. So he walks over to the uh, the position he's got to get to. And then the, it, like, you don't need any, because the, the VIPs, they're like, well, I guess that wraps it up. It's like, why? It's like, yeah, <laughs> why? thanks for the update. Thank you, thank you. Like, thank you for letting us know that that is the end of the the thing. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> they really built you up. They I, so much. I just don't know how anyone treats you with any level of reverence. Um, you suck. Yeah, and so uh, Gihan says, let's end it here, actually. Um, and so I thought the ending was going to be if they vote together to end it, then all the money ends up going to all of the families of all the people who died, which is quite a decision to make. Okay. Um, that would have been an ending. That would have been an ending. There's, there's a couple possible endings, of course. Um, so he's like, if we both give up, that's how it can work, right? And uh, I think Song Wu is picking up all of this. He also knows he's fully been defeated. And then he starts remembering what their childhood was like. How their mums made them food and stuff. And um, I think it's at this there's point... Someone it it may become clear for a lot of people watching what he's going to do cuz the knife's right next to him um yeah what were you going to say right someone in chat said it would be way better if uh, if their if their mothers had the same name and they stopped fighting <laughs> i think that would have been a really decent uh really uh, great one there that's a good one brandon yeah he um gives him a hand and he chooses to take the knife instead and stab himself in the neck um, and I think it's just Song Wu realizing that his mom can still be safe. And yeah. to a degree, I think he's having trouble living with the guilt at this point. Um, and it's there that Song Wu is like the best character in the show. He's probably my favorite, yeah. Yeah, he's certainly my favorite. It's like full circle. It's a really great story from beginning to end for this character. And it all leads to a conclusion which feels natural. Like, it all just makes sense given his priorities. And he's so much more complex than a villain. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, that, yeah. I feel like that's a lame way to look at it. And yeah, and they um, kind of switch us again, because now we've got Gihan just fucking bawling over the death of the person that he basically said was the reason everyone died. Because um, it's just, everything's a lot more complicated than that. Yep. Did he feel bad for the way he chose to play the game? I, I think it's just a matter of what have I become sort of thing. Not necessarily that any individual decision wasn't um, quite possibly the best one for the, the scenario. Just It's just tough. 
at this point. It's all for the money. So many people have suffered and died. And uh, there's Gihan sparing him as well, which makes it so that his, his, his mum is... I think the last thing he's thinking about is his mum. He just wants her taken care of. That's what he keeps yeah. saying. And remember, he was suicidal in episode two. Mm -hmm. so he was. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, getting those raw ramen fumes. In the <laughs> <room>. <laughs> um, yeah, is there anything you guys want to say about all that before we keep moving with this story? Um, no, no I, I, I like just... this. I like, I think that this is, um, this would have made a very interesting place to end the whole show. The show ends kind of here and we're left to, you know, he, we assume he really does get the money. What happens? What does he do with it? What does he learn as a result? I, I think there's enough here with him and we get enough of him that I think this would have been an interesting place to, to have it end. And it ends here. I agree that it would be an interesting place to end, but I'm not upset that we got extra stuff. Afterward. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, a, um, yeah, I'm not. Upset. Well, we'll get nice and close to talking about probably what part, yeah. a lot of people have been waiting for us to talk about. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the ending, ending, ending. Um, well, all right then. If, if we try and get a summary going here, it's, um, uh, the frontman basically tells him, you guys bet on horses, we bet on humans. That's why we do, what's well, the why for all of this. He asks him, why uh, does any of this happen? Um, yeah, but they don't usually shoot the horses that are winning the race because it's <laughs> more interesting if some of, if it was more fair. It's such a, I don't know, such a bullshit analogy. Well, we I'm can... Just, um, so full of shit. We can go over it just because we're, we're getting close to the, the big topic of Oldman soon um, but we'll definitely do a recounting of like fairness, world building villainous characters all the squid game people, we'll do it uh, yeah, Gihan gets dropped off in the middle of town with a, I guess a debit card in his, in his mouth and that card opens up a, an account that's filled with the money that he's won um, then I think we, yeah, so he um, he's just silent basically uh, and moping through the whole town after what he's been through. It's kind of understandable. He, um, mm -hmm. he sees uh -huh. Song... What if I forget his, what if I forget his name? Song Yu? Song... Song Wu. Song, Song Wu. Wu. Um, sees his mom, and she's like, have you seen him? Are you okay? And, uh, she, um, she offers him some money to, like, help him out. And I was like, aw. And, and food, I think. I think I think she says for your mother as well, and it's just like mm. I don't know. It's just Mac something of yeah. after everything. This like old lady's just like, "You okay? You take some food, look after yourself." It's just like, yeah, she's she's nice. She's a really nice lady. She's a really nice lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's such a worse hell out here than it is in the game. She is not <laughs> like her son. Uh, probably she is a lot <laughs> more, I guess, pure in a way. Yeah, she says your mom needs the cash more than I do. Um, and yeah, he gets home. His mom's dead. He didn't make it in time. And uh, there's a lot of I've seen. I've just seen so much analysis of that and what point the show is making. I feel like we should try and maybe summarize a bit more before going over these events. Mm -hmm. Um, but we yeah. skip one year forward in time. I believe is it one? About a year. Uh, it's at least a year and a half, okay. if you think about it, because they're playing the games in like from June until somewhere in the middle of summer, and then when we skip forward, it's a year, and then it's also around Christmas time. So, I'm I'm thinking a year to a year and a half, something in that range. I'm not sure. Um, regardless, it's been well, it some says time. One year later. Oh well, it does say one year later, but it's also winter when it was in the middle of summer when they played the game right. so mm. i'm a little confused fair enough um it's been some time and he's summoned to his bank because they're like why haven't you spent any of your money and um i'm not sure he gives them much of anything in terms of reasoning at this point he's not really interested in having the conversation um and i think he even asked them for he asked for ten thousand one, right yeah for the bus yeah 
Uh, then he's having himself a little drink on by the side of the, the water, and there's a person with roses. I think he buys the mafia, and there's a card in the rose that's the Squid Game card, but it's like goldeny, I think. Mm hmm. So he rings it, and it's from his gunbo. Oh uh, shit! Turns oh, out, my goodness. Oldman is when not is dead. Pain? Oldman oh my God. is in a bed, not doing so great, and, uh, well, we got a big, long conversation that I feel like it's gonna be tough to summarize here, um, anyone else wanna give it a shot? <laughs> like, um, oh, let me pull it up, um, I didn't have Netflix, <laughs> it's like, meanwhile, mm-hmm. So we're talking. So we're talking about specifically. Um, well, the scene they share it's quite like long. Uh, start, yeah, oh, it is. Yeah, Gihan basically gets there, and it's like it's Oldman. What the hell? Like, how is it even possible that you're alive? Um, and then uh, he basically like explains to him that he chose to participate in the games he's actually very wealthy and he just wanted to feel something like it all um he wanted to he relive his bored. childhood of games yeah. that that's sim that super simplicity that comes from when you're young and you're just playing silly games with your friends time doesn't matter nothing else matters in the world you're just having fun with your friends and it's so simplistic and so just it's this wonderful childlike kind of thing that, especially as you get older, you miss. You can't. You can never go back to that again. And recapturing that is something that's immensely precious. And he's very yeah, cynical um, about humans or humanity. Right? And, yeah, cynical. and also simultaneously, he wants to prove to himself and everyone else that deep down humans will just fuck each other over and they won't help each other because that's what humans are like. It's a very interesting dichotomy between that aspect of his intentions and I just want to reconnect with the joy of my childhood. I mean, presumably he sees himself as different, or maybe he doesn't. And uh, He thinks it's reliable that humanity won't uh, help each other out, rather they would step over each other. And that's obviously being illustrated by the hobo outside, who is just freezing to death on the sidewalk. Um, Nobody's helping. And he wants to do a bet. A game, if you will. Will anyone help him before the stroke of midnight? Um, Gihan is not... Christmas, I think, because this, this takes place on December 24th? Yeah, I oh. think it does. So, it's, so that means that stroke of midnight is Christmas. Which is the time of it's giving. It's definitely winter, but I'm pretty sure it is. I think it is, I think it is December 24th, but you might want to might double check i'm not sure the point is it's fucking cold mm -hmm. but i wonder if there was any kind of thing they were going for or if it's just a special day it's like when he wins the 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 money at the horse races at the very beginning how it kind of matches his number i think that was just a little like hey, hey hey from the writers it wasn't like anything meaningful for the um the actual story the plot um, I mean, Christmas is notorious for a time of sharing and giving, right? And being with each other and stuff. So yeah, yeah. There's been so simpletisms there. Uh, yeah. You sure timed it right. I mean, damn. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't die before then, eh? Yeah. What timing. Um, I, I'm just because like, just want to make sure we don't quite miss anything super meaningful quote-wise. Just that I hadn't rewatched this scene. I probably should have. I guess uh, something that's worth noting is just how nihilistic Gihan is, that he just happily, well, not happily, but he bets all of his money in that bet. He just doesn't care anymore. Yeah, he's, at this point, from what we've learned just from listening to him speak, he's completely lost any and all investment in everything. Uh, yeah. He seems to have become entirely apathetic. Yeah. Yeah, the people he cared about, they died. He's got all this money, but I don't know. He feels he's super guilty about it. it it's it's guilty, blood yeah. money to him. Yeah, all these other people died so I could have this money. And I just, yeah, it's, uh, the he has survivor's for the money guilt. Is gone. And, yeah, in a way, it seems. 
Yeah, and old man just talks about he just wanted to feel again. Um, and time's it, it is, running out. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. For, for midnight, of course. And it's unclear on if he saw it, but Hoberman... He, uh, there's someone who crosses Hoberman's path, and it, it's unclear, but it almost looks as if he's, he mugs him, or at least like takes, mm -hmm. his, uh, takes his wallet. Yeah, so something. Like, Damn. Turns out, guy comes by. That guy yeah. actually went off to go and get a police car to bring back to help this guy out. So it was like, oh, yay! Humans aren't the worst thing ever. Um, but it's yeah, unclear yeah, yeah. on whether or not Oldman even saw that before he died because he, he he leaves this plane at midnight. Yes, and just in Gihon typical fashion, he wins at the very possible last second. <laughs> last second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some people have all the luck. Um, and yeah, they give us a little flashback of the guy who was wearing like the owl mask. It was the old man. It's like, yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense. Why did he survive episode six? I guess he, he viewed himself out, right? Because it's his game as well. Yeah, but there, it, does, does there that is... not undermine a bit of the emotional payoff six that he didn't actually die? You'd have to be more specific. Okay, so I think it would have been interesting, hypothetically, whether we saw this or not, if, you know, at the end of episode six, the guy comes in with the gun and he doesn't he doesn't think he should kill him because, you know, he's the head of the games, but he's like, no, I mean, I played the game. This is a risk. I chose this. Shoot me. I don't understand why he survives and they let him survive it undermines the sacrifice he makes for our main character um certainly not from gihan's perspective in episode six it's all real mm -hmm. as far as he can tell yeah um, no it yeah, doesn't it, undermine well he doesn't know but it undermines it undermines i think his he's playing he wants He's been watching the game for so long and he's like, I'm gonna play the game. Well he you know, won. I don't to have be long fair. to live. Um remember he what? won, but Gihan fucked him over and he let he just allowed him to let it seems like he really did make a, a a host decision. Um He should have died. I don't know about that. I should have died. I, I mean alive. I don't know. I, I think I would have liked it more if he did die, but in fact, I'm pretty sure I would have liked it more if he died and we got something different at the end, but I don't know, it's weird and complicated. Um, hmm. The way I see it is that, um, for all we know, it could have been that he was willing to die in Red Light, Green Light, he was willing to die in the Honeycomb game if it had it happened. But this was one where Gihan, like, cheated him to try and win. He let him get away with it. To let him continue in the game, and that he was just like, "Yeah, I ain't dying. Um, I'll just watch the rest of it now." I don't like that at all. I don't know that. I don't. I, 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 I don't, don't, don't understand considering... what that says. I don't understand what that says about his character. Well, so that whole episode is it... about what he feels is his friendship with Gihan. It's really gone beyond the games at that point. Yeah, Do you I, not I'm think not... it undermines the idea that he chooses to let Gihan win in his place and let him continue with the game at the cost of his own life if he just doesn't actually die? I mean, the, the fact is, obviously, he's a different character with the recontextualizing it. Like, he's not the man we thought he was when you rewatched the show. Um, so his life was necessary, I've... may perhaps never at stake. It depends on everything that he was intending. I just see episode six the whole time as him testing Gihan's uh, integrity, I guess. Yeah. Well, the old man was certainly attached to Gihan because of his uh, charity and generosity. Yeah, and he pushes he it to its limit. Him for being an old guy. And that, of course, is what this guy is all about in the end. He's like, okay, charity, generosity for this old drunk guy on the street. What do you say? Anybody going to do it? I, so it falls in yeah, line it, with with old man's values, and so Gihan was basically his best friend in his. I don't think it moments. falls in lines so. with his values that he didn't play the game fairly, such that he had a chance of losing. In the same it wasn't way. fair to let Gihan win. What do you mean it wasn't fair? Like he made that choice, and that 
but he, he won and then he, he threw the game he yeah. said so yeah. himself he's like yeah you you're tricking your friends eh? yeah i was aware of that by the way yes and then he says instead of like an all or nothing bet or something he says here you go you can win in my place i feel like it undermines the idea that with nothing left to lose he's gonna play the game and damn the consequences if he actually loses one of these games if he is allowed an out where he doesn't actually have to die well again you have to think about how this isn't the character we thought he was like he there's lots of questions to ask did he know all these games beforehand in which case that wasn't fucking fair to begin with was it no it wasn't i'm inclined to believe he did he actually know games ahead of time so he but, didn't know you know it's hard to say I assume if he's been doing this for this long, there's no way he's not right. aware of all these games. Well, do yeah, they all, do always do the same yeah. games? Oh, if, if, let's say they have a, a, a roster of 30 to 50 to 100, he's going to know them all. Um, isn't, isn't the implication that he started Squid Game? Yeah, the implication seems to be that he started it because him and yeah, his other people, like wealthy yeah. investor friends were just fucking bored, which is also lame, but we'll come back to that. I don't think it makes... I, I, I'm pretty torn I think on it's it lame, I think it's lame as fuck that he wasn't actually playing the game on the same playing field or similar, as close as he could get, having organize it himself as everyone else and that he was just going to have an out regardless of the game and that he would never actually die and that his willingness to give uh, to let Gihan win even though he cheated him because he has that emotional connection to him and he wanted to see and test how far he would go that he would that he just has an out and that he doesn't actually have to die or face the consequences of that decision I think that's Fucking lame. I mean, he's he's a. If you want to go in terms of like the the inconsistency or the hypocrisy of this man, it's like there's a lot. It seems to line up to me. I'm fine with him uh, bailing himself out when his interest was much more in the fun of the game, and then the fact that he doesn't believe that humanity is in any way good to itself, and then he comes across this guy who seems to be bucking that trend, and so he puts him through the hardest test. He fails it. In a sense, and then he's just like, because I, I have a feeling that he probably would have let him win regardless, out of the 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 sadness that he doesn't want this guy specifically to die. I mean, he takes a selfish path, and he still spares him, and then I think he just ejects himself so, from the game. No, but he doesn't. It, he doesn't really. I, I okay. So if 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 he lost any of the other games, would he have died? I don't know. I feel like that's I, important. Is he ever if, playing? with the risk of dying or not. I mean, I would imagine that if he Some of these, there's stones, gotta be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Someone could have killed him in that, uh, during that, um, fight. Because uh, I'm picturing, like, a scene. Well, to be to be fair, they stop Tug the fight war. as soon as, as soon as he says, like, hey, stop scared? the fighting, I'm scared. But what if he'd been killed before he had the chance to do that? Yeah, I don't know. Was, it would make it would make sense if he was playing the game on a similar or comparable level as everyone else. But the fact that he just has an out where he doesn't actually have to face the consequences, I think that's. I think the only one that he fucking definitely stupid. couldn't have been spared would have been tug of war. The others, they may have been able to prevent the trigger or take him somewhere, and we're just like, oh, what happened to him? Um, but I'm I'm relatively convinced that he would have been killed in them. It's just that with episode six. After what happened with him and Gihan, he, like, holds up his hand to the guy who's about to shoot him and is just like, no, I want to see how this plays out. And since he's the boss, I guess he just, he vetoes himself, like I said. If you, if you, like, if you're wondering about his integrity as a person, like, like, that's not fair, you didn't play on the same level as everyone else. Like, yeah, I don't think he did. No, I just think it's... I if think we it's are fucking lame that he articles. never... Go ahead. If 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 in if we are if I'm weighing up a a squid game where the old man is a normal contestant like everybody else and it plays out versus what we got if we're weighing up a, a hypothetical versus what we had I think I would have I think I would have liked it more if the old man had actually died and he wasn't like the mastermind of all of it but 
I think that that's my preference. I think I would have liked that more. I agree with that. But I think the hypothetical, I mean, maybe this, I, I'm not saying it's unrealistic that he didn't commit to the principles that would say, no, I need to play the game that he would give himself an out. It's not unrealistic, but I just think it's narratively incredibly unsatisfying. If there's an, if there's two versions of squid game, one in which he's the mastermind the whole time and that he organized these games, but he actually played them as a contestant and chose to sacrifice himself for Gihan because of the kindness he showed him, despite what he ends up doing to trick him versus the one where he didn't really die in that situation. He got to see what happened afterwards. I would choose the former. Yeah. The, the idea that the old man was just a contestant like everyone else, he does die. He does make that sacrifice. And it is in, it in some way gives Gihan kind of this, this motivating factor or it, it does something for him that it that can be used later on, specifically him. I I think I would have liked that better. Uh I feel I did I think this works for me way more, that idea. For some people are saying he wasn't chained to the rope. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah, surely he would have been, right? It looks like he is. There are there is there are some shots that suggest that like his hand is kind of covering it in some shots. You can actually see whether he's chained to it, so I'm not sure. Can I just point out, we have a comment here. Um, where, uh, I see more plot holes in this EFAP than I do in Squid Games. It's like you all didn't even watch it. Oh, I think we watched Thanks it for providing the bit. argument. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. And, uh, we, we literally are watching it, like right now. All 10 uh, hours. I, I, I watched yeah, it I've one and a half once, times. Right? You know, I've yeah. seen half of it twice and half of it once. You know, if I'm missing certain details, you know, feel free to correct me with the correct information. But uh, otherwise, shut the fuck up. Well, yeah, I, that's, I, we can't do anything with that, loyal viewer. We can't We can't do anything with yeah, that at all. Yeah, I don't know. All. Yeah, that's not very helpful. You gotta, you gotta um, do better. Someone said, Rags, just say I would have liked it better if the old man didn't broke my heart. No, I'm, I'm arguing for the thing that would have had more emotional. He's saying he would have had his heart broken more if... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I think the payoff would have worked way better, or the character would have worked way better for me if he had actually died. Um, but... I guess we could discuss it more and move on because there's a lot. To, I guess there's a lot to cover because we have the whole his conversation in the room and how does that play out with the fairness? How does that hit? Oh, I, I was bored well, with my if we want to go about with my rich people. And, we're going to get like 15 or so minutes left of the show. So if we summarize that and then we can talk about anything. So he dyes his hair red. Um, Ihan, <laughs> this confused the fuck out of many people. I think. <laughs> that it's supposed to be him just sort of kind of taking control of his own life, which is, this is a, the first step to doing that. Well, a lot of people, that's something that people do. I'm, I'm in, I'm in charge. I'm in control. I'm taking over. I'm making the decisions And a small way to express that is to dye your hair. That's something I control. It's up to me. Maybe it's also to like leave his old self behind too, I guess. Yeah, potentially. Well, after saying that the thing with rich people and really poor people is that, like, there's nothing is, like, fun or whatever. Like, there's nothing that's stimulating. Everything is just the same or whatever. I, I, I took going with an extravagant hair color as possibly the the most strange color he could go with. And that's just to try and... This is the beginning of trying to make something of his life, even if being hyper-rich can make things meaningless. Um... The I, I like your interpretation better. There's a funny interview I found where the writer-director mm -hmm. said that he liked the red hair color because it symbolized his rage. And that's really funny to me because it just makes oh, him look really? like a clown. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make me think rage. That doesn't work. No. Yeah, that doesn't work yeah. for me. Because he, yeah, I mean, he sees it on a, he seems bored when he's kind of yeah. getting it, but I guess he, mm -hmm. I like mine, wait, mine is better. Fuck it, I'm saying it, mine is, it better, is better than his. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm fo all for death of the authors, you know. Oh, I feel like yeah, mine and rags can coexist. And Absolutely. They happily Absolutely. they yeah. do now. That's what this is about, all right? Ignore the guy right. There we go. <laughs> that's that is the that's what it is. So yeah. Look, Polka Dot Man was not fucking egotist narcissist, okay? Don't don't trust James Gunn. He was fucking he was a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Um yeah, so he gets his hair done. He um I guess I'm not entirely clear on this, I'd have to watch it and really look into all the dialogue, but he gets um, Andrew's brother pulled out of presumably an orphanage and he gives the kid to um, uh, Song Wu's mom. He's adopted essentially, yeah. With yeah. money. Uh, she doesn't realize there's money in there until he's he's long gone. Um, and then Gihan commits to getting onto that air train to get to an airplane with his money to go and finally see his daughter. But on the way, he spots that even though Oldman's dead, Squid Game is still recruiting. Um, which upsets him greatly to the point where he tries to find Train to Busan Man. Unfortunately, he's already on a train. Not to Busan, but <gasps> a train in general. Well, it could, be. Know, it's out could be. Could be the Busan perhaps. train, yeah. It could be. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. They, those, oh, maybe no. that makes a big old loop. I don't know. I don't know where Busan is relative to uh, Incheon or wherever uh, they are, which is where Ape takes place. And Gihan is panicking as fuck and telling the guy, don't do it, don't fucking do it, and takes his card off him and then calls the number. Well, I think there's a number. Says, I have a very specific set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, because we're so close to the end. He goes to get on the plane, then he doesn't, and then. He's like, if you wish to play, please state your name and date of birth. And then he's like, I'm a... Uh, uh, well, he just lists who he is and his name to let them know. And then um, I think the front man is on the phone. He's like, bro, what you doing? Go see go see your family, okay? And he's yeah, like, get I'm on not that plane, a horse. He's, yeah. I'm a person. He is, he is on... He is walking to a plane to go and see his family. Mm-hmm. And he's like on the little what are they called the the little pat the little the little connecting corridor thing hallway connect connecting thing that connects the gate with the plane I don't know what they're called um, but he's there he's almost at the plane and uh, yeah. he's like I gangway can't... is that what it's called uh, possibly gantry boarding thingy I think that's what it's called boarding thing I like boarding thingy. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're like, move on, don't be doing it. And he's like, nah, I'm gonna come and get you. Don't like you. And uh, turns away, and that's the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Who knows what'll happen in season two. But yeah, Who knows? I, uh, all I know game. is that I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely watch it. I want to know if they fuck everything up. I'm curious, yeah. Um, so, um, I guess the... I guess the big thing here is I hated that he didn't get on the plane to see his family. I feel like it's... Yes. Yes. I was very um, upset about that. I was like, you finally... You've spent all this time building up. You want a relationship with your daughter, and you're doing this all for her in part, you know, in part and you've talked about how you need to win this for your family, and she should be a huge motivating factor for you, and then you're... You, you turn around to go and play the game again or try and find out about it or it, get like, revenge get revenge that. somehow i don't or know alternatively try to put an end to the game yeah but or you yeah, I mean, so gotta push back a little pain. bit here yeah um so his daughter's gonna be fine and he's now evolved past simply doing what he wants to do in his life with the money that he got from what happened he's now gonna Go to the next level and bring this system down. That seems to be the angle. Yep. Sees Fair enough. That as, sees that as much more important than seeing his daughter, I would say, which is yeah, a tough also, decision to make. He is lar he's largely an incompetent idiot, and I have no faith that he can actually do it. So well, I mean, that doesn't change. About whether, yeah, yeah, what does he believe? He he believes that he should try and... I, I'm not sure... He, he believes that he has to try and do something about it. In... Whether or not he can do it competently is like a different question. And, I, I think and there's he that aspect go see to his daughter. Well, I mean, whether or, well here, but it's not really about all... like that, right? It's about what do we think that he would do. Um, I feel like he would all... see his daughter. 
Yeah. Well, I I think one of the things that's very important here is that while he's on the phone, they are keeping tabs on him so close that they know he's about to board a plane. So I'm thinking they're telling... So they're telling why? him to get on the plane but, so there are no why, problems. Why are you all making you know, arguments of, for how it yeah. won't work? That's not a good point. Like, because uh, Gihan I makes feel... a lot of decisions that are not what this would is, this be. This is Gihan. He's done wise. this throughout his life and yeah. throughout Squid Game. Yeah, he makes a lot I, of decisions I, that are dangerous for himself, but he commits to them anyway. Because, he thinks this is the uh, right I, thing to do. Right thing. No, no, I'm, I'm not done with the angle that it's dangerous to him. I'm thinking, like, these people, they know about his family, too. And they're actively telling him to get on the plane and don't make things difficult. So you're, you're saying, then, that they would be threatening his family, but that would have to be done first? I think that's what... Well, I, think that, I think that's family. that they did threaten him by saying, no, I get, don't on think the, so. get on the... You don't think no, so? I think, no, I think they're telling yeah. him to walk away from it. I think they're telling like, him, just don't, don't, don't make fight. waves, just get on with your life, you don't have to do it. Yeah. I don't think they're worried about him. Yeah. No, they're not. Alright. I wouldn't be either. So, well, yeah, so then, but again, like, all that matters is what he believes he can do to try and make things right, not whether it's, like, the smartest decision or anything like that. And I think, given everything that happened, especially in that last episode... I don't think that it is impossible or even improbable that he would make the decision he did. You have to see him. No, I, I, I don't disagree. I don't think it's possible or that decision. Yeah, I, I can believe I he would turn it. around, but sure. I don't know. Yeah, it's really not a. It's not a question of whether it's um, objectively bad writing, whether he turns around or not. It's just that I hate it. I, th- I can understand that. Ihan, sure. I think that's. I could, oh. <laughs> yeah, I could see it happening either way. I know which way I would certainly have preferred, though. So, yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand that, and I think that if we can tweak it, I think the creator didn't want him to get to see his daughter again, but rather to make it um, a dichotomy between that and fighting this system that he's now more aware of than anybody. Um, Spider Man. That's probably something he wanted. We could have had it so that he visits. Sorry, not his sister, daughter. If, sorry if I said that wrong. His daughter, he could have visited her, and then he could have had the choice of committing to live with her and stay with her and everything works out, or go back and sort this thing out. And maybe that would have been more satisfying for you, because at least he got to see her. I, I don't know if that works better for you, but... Um, um I think it's a combination of what does he know, what's being implied, and what is the state of his relationship with his daughter at this moment? Um... It is a kind of a, kind of a lot of those things are ambiguous in that sense. Um, yeah, there's a lot we don't know, and I also think that this is all going to be made worse by a season two. I don't know how they could possibly handle it. after what we saw with the detective. I don't believe for a second that they yeah. make. They're probably going to have a narrative where he actually deals significant damage to the organization, and I'm with you. I don't believe he can um, or should be able to. He probably yeah, will. Um, there is a difference between that and whether he would make the. No, I'm not talking about that. Would, um, yeah, yeah. The, it's the plot in season two is probably going to be even worse than season one. Season um, one's got enough yeah, problems. Yeah, and, I, I don't know. I feel that. like there's also a part of if this, the idea that the Squid Game isn't just a game that it's being organized. It's just this is it. It's symbolic of how people can behave when they're desperate, and there's no getting rid of that. Like, you can't take down the squid game because it's just baked into human nature in a way. There's always going to be people who play it. There's always going to be people who organize it. It's always going to have a form. You, it's, you, can't, you can't get rid of it, in a sense. I, I kind of thought that was what they were going for. Um, but I guess maybe it is just like a thing that you could stop and that's good, I, you know, to do. So... Yeah, yeah, it's my thoughts. I, 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 I get what you're saying, Rex. Yeah. I kind of feel similarly. It's, it's, it's that when he decides to turn around and not go visit his daughter, like I'm gonna go take down the system. It's like, fucking really. I mean, it's, I don't know why this is trouble. The, he, he doesn't want to be a cog. He doesn't want to have benefited from it. He wants to destroy it. It's something that he feels as a person. No, I get it. Yeah, and I think the big no, I get why he wants to. I, do it. I think the big thing that pushed him over the edge was seeing um, Train to Busan guy yeah, the in squid, the subway. Squid Game is continuing. Like, it didn't die with the old it's man. Continuing, yeah. It just mm-hmm. keeps going, and so it's like fuck, you know. Can, 
can I allow this to keep yeah, I, happening? I have no idea what his plan is going to be. I just understand the motivation to be like, what he went through, all of that bullshit, that's going to keep on going. It has been for 20 years plus, and it will be going for more. That's, that's why it's meant to be meaningful, right? Because we know how much he values his daughter and the relationship yeah. there. So for him to be willing to turn around and try to do that, it's like, man, look at this guy. he would be sacrificing a lot, right yeah. Thing. I... Yeah. I, I, That's what I, I think, anyway. <laughs> I'm calling into question his, you know, there's how much he says he loves his daughter, and then... Did I cut out there for a second? Yep. No, yeah. we're listening. To your uh, words. Oh, we listen. keep going. Oh. Whatever you were saying. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm calling into question how much he professes to love his daughter and how much he like he does. Um, and... I think it's safe to say that he definitely does. I mean, he absolutely yes. Does. The only thing that trumps him going to see his daughter is the belief that he can make a better world and save many lives in the process. I guess it can't Doesn't fucking wait. Season two will be bad. I, okay, I, <laughs> I know yeah. it will be. I. F mm. I mean, I see people in chat saying you could have it cut to black, and it's like, you know what? If that just if that just leaves it up to our interpretation and closes the door on the season two, that'd I'd be, be okay cool. With that. I would have. I would have liked that better. Great. I don't know. I don't know. I would have liked, 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 liked it better. I think I'm just saying that I like that it would close the door on a season two potentially, like in a yeah. Well, this is the thing. It I, feels more. I am much I like less. I like the idea that it was be ambiguous. I am much less passionate about seven, eight, and nine than I am about one through six. Um, yeah, but at the same yeah. time, I just want to give a fair shake to what's being portrayed here. Yeah, uh, no, I yeah, I mean, I agree. I I I'm fine with the choice. There are changes uh, that I probably wouldn't make myself. I just like because I have seen this ending being slaughtered online, being considered like a full assassination, absolutely like boring. Not oh yeah, I, I, don't think so. I would not no, go that far for yeah, sure. I absolutely yeah, I not. get it. I just don't think I. Uh, I just yeah. I could. I, I could see both ways on it. I have more problems with the old man twist than I do him deciding to go back and fight these people and try to bring it down, because mm -hmm. I can believe he'd do something like that, especially make that impulsive decision in the moment to turn around, because he makes these sort of impulsive decisions all the time. It's not a matter of I think whether it's impossible. That he would do this, or this doesn't fit with his behavior. I, I just, I find it has a number of things with this show. I find it a little bit narratively unsatisfying. I understand. It's, yeah, as much as as much as he would choose to do that, it's just tough to have him choose that over his daughter. Well, yeah, I, 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 think I, that's I know that how it is. So. Having the year of presumably he's just a wandering bum who's apathetic about existence. I know people didn't like seeing that. Uh, yeah, people didn't want to see that. And so, to a degree, where Songwoo dies, the Squid Game ends, and that limo drive happens, and then maybe that's end credits, I can understand the appeal of that, because we can all speculate on what would have happened next. Mm -hmm. um, How did you feel about the one year of him just kind of being a loser? Well, he's, uh, he's completely lost investment in everything after everything he went through. I think that's what we're supposed to grab from it. Um, yeah, right? my, my question is, like, a year, it's almost a year and a half We'll call it a year just to be conservative in this uh, hypothetical, but that's a long time. That's a long time to not go see your daughter, to not try to do anything constructive with the blood money. It's that's a long time. Yeah, I mean, yeah to not the daughter. Of I don't know. He's been he's uh, been through a lot. Uh, not to mention his mom being dead, which was. Possibly one of the bigger motivators, if not the biggest, to uh, get the money. Yeah, I just I think he had a mental break, it's... basically. Yeah, I mean the whole reason he was got there is because he could get the uh, surgery for his mother, so she. Could well, it was that and the daughter, and but I happen. I think his mother's life is more pressing than being able to travel to see his daughter Certainly. slash keep her here. Um, Certainly. And her being dead. Thought... Uh, it's just gonna have a huge effect on him, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've... When it comes to like Andrew's uh, little brother and that sort of thing, and the uh, like, the promise that he she wanted him to make, um, I don't know. Like, I get why. I just nah. yeah, I get it's not as satisfying yeah. as a lot of other endings could have been. I understand that completely. 
it's not especially when the whole first episode is so compelling in setting up these familiar familial relationships he has and why they drive him to enter the squid game in the first place that he comes back and just fucking sits around for a year and a half and doesn't go see well, his daughter I don't see it, like, I see it less about the fucking political systems, more just about, like, he watches yeah. humanity tear it apart, itself apart, as well as seeing himself reach, like, a level of rock bottom in terms of things he wouldn't expect himself to do. I just think he, he comes out of Squid Game wondering what the fuck is all of this, what is humanity, what am I, who am I, that sort of shit. Yep. Um, and it takes him that long to get back up on the horse, presumably, especially after his interactions with Oldman. I think I think I one of those like the message of his mother dying was almost like it was like he had spent so long allowing this problem to get bad. But this is way before Squid Game. This has just been happening for ages that her dying because he hadn't acted sooner would have been like the thing to get him to you. Can, you, you got stuff to do. You know, you, you've got you know, you, you can't sit around not doing stuff or this will happen to. You know, that the the Well alternatively he did everything, he worked really hard, he won and she still died. Which could easily make him convinced that it's all fucking meaningless. Uh if he takes yeah, it the wrong I, way, right? Yeah, I think it would have worked way better with the Andrew promise at the end that eventually gets taken care of. Yeah, it I guess if well, I'm pretty sure I get the impression that the whole the reason why the mum died while he wasn't there is just like, oh, you know, like you worked your fucking ass off to get all this money, and then you just like you weren't there, weren't there because of that. It's like, man, that's just fucking shit. Like that just yeah, really like, sucks. I understand the atmosphere is not uplifting. <laughs> it's very yeah. like. Mm. Um, even with the ending of, like, defiantly going to change the system, it's, um... You, th this is not a lonely opinion. This is this is something that's shared by many people who've seen this show. Uh, I understand it. I do. I just, um... You know, I, I see that there's, there's still so I would, a through line and value in it for me. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go nearly as far as to call it character assassination or anything like that. No, I wouldn't. It's, um... I mean, it just sounds like um, it's it's not what you wanted to see, which I guess is fi fair. This is like, uh, I guess that happened, you know, I get it. Squid Game. Uh, it really does allude a lot <laughs> yeah. to capitalism, like the reducing people to a number thing. Oh yeah, which totally doesn't happen under any other system except barbarism, I guess. Do they not reduce people to numbers in barbarism? <laughs> I, guess, I guess not. That might be the only system where they don't. Because Do you if you're like a modern feudal lord system, yeah, you'd just be a fucking number because you'd be a peasant. If you're in a socialist system, you bet your ass you'd be a number. You'd be an extra number under that system. You'd be on. You'd be on a, like a big ass many lists. But uh, yeah, I don't see this. The, yeah, this again, this capitalism thing. It just doesn't. What doesn't, you mean? Like you, know, you don't like, think that? Because I know that people have been talking about the politics stuff for this show. And yeah. like, I've seen, if if it is a critique of any particular system, it is trying to critique capitalism. I was going to say, I agree um, with Fringy on that one, yeah. Yeah, but I think that, um, like, if, if you're, um, like, if there's a fundamental theme or fundamental point that the show is trying to analyze, it's like human nature, competition, yeah, like people fighting against each other to, you know, like, the decisions that people make in these sorts of situations. I think it's um, an aspect of, I, if, if it does, in the sense that it critiques capitalism, I think it's only in the sense of, well, this is what we have to critique. Right. This is the system we have. Well, so, I, I want to make this clear, and this is for everyone in chat and everyone in the fucking world, just because a thing is critical of a system doesn't mean all the other systems aren't filled with flaws, too. I don't know that this... Because I think all people yeah, automatically weirdly, assume weirdly that defensive. Squid Game takes the position that capitalism bad, therefore something else good, rather than there are things Here in the system the that yeah. accentuate the problems in human nature. 
And, um, because this is the interesting thing, like, I've talked to Fring a bit about this, but, like, yeah, Squid Game can't exist in, uh, First World Western cultures right now as it is. It's illegal. There are regulations in capitalism that prevent this thing from existing because it's fucking horrific. Yeah. Um, and remember, Andrew, an extremely important character, fled from North Korea, which is not a capitalist country. Uh, so... Yeah, I just... It's, I'd rather look it's, at this as a, a think piece rather than it's, it's against my system and I don't like it. It's like, no, 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 just... Everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone agrees capitalism is not perfect, right? No matter how much of a fervent capitalist you are. Um, there are... The, there are elements in these games where, uh, because I've seen, there's a MatPat video everybody recommended. I found it frustrating to watch. He basically says, like, the thing about this show that everyone misses is that if you just worked together, then, uh, you know, mo the most amount of people would have lived. And one of his examples is the fucking glass dude giving everybody the glass tips to get everyone across the, the panes without realizing that they turned off the lights after he did it twice. So, that doesn't solve shit. <laughs> Like, that just no. that doesn't do shit all. So it just it frustrated me listening to it. Um, and he was like, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's reflective of a system that we don't look for how we can win. We rather look for how I can win. And if that means the best option is to you know, take advantage of other people, then so be it. Which is something that comes with human nature, but is accentuated by the system. At least that's a criticism a lot of people would make. I err on the side of, fuck me, individuals. Make, make more altruistic choices, please. Because uh, the than nature of the games, they are very. This one is purely individual. This one is undoubtedly team oriented. So they they definitely play them both up. Um, I definitely I on a purely as a matter of taste, I vastly prefer something like Train to Busan, which I mean that's a lot of class stuff a, in it, yeah. Yeah, but it has a more it presents more noble characters trying to be altruistic in the face of extreme circumstances than this does. And that's why even subjectively, I didn't enjoy this show as much because it felt very cynical to me. Could uh, one... like, for example, for example, when they instigate fights so that people will murder each other when the lights go out, it's not just the thugs who are killing people. It, it more or less turns into everybody is trying to kill each other except for a couple of main characters who were just on the defensive. Everyone else is strangling each other and suffocating each other and making active, aggressive attempts to murder I each other. I don't know that we know that. I, I cause some of those no, people, well, some of those, well, some of those people could have been initially defending themselves and then it's like, well, fuck, if you're going to try to kill me, then I have to try and stop you. And I assume we're cool with like, self-defense. Yeah, I, Yo, I, I no, also... I'm more than cool with self defense. I think I think you'd be hard pressed to argue that there isn't a tone of cynicism about human nature and what people well, do in these circumstances that is in stark contrast to something like Train to Busan. I mean, that, Train to Busan is, has there... one of the most evil people in it, possibly outmatching anyone in this. And then there's that whole sequence where um where they all yeah, like, but this like, Train to gone... Busan has all true. People trying to make altruistic decisions. Yeah, absolutely. So, so does this. So does, uh, so does Squid Game. No, not to yes. the same extent at all. But no. It, do I, it does. No. I mean, that's people... that's that's a bold claim. Let's explore it. So, well, what are, what are the nobles? <laughs> first of all, I could argue this has a more realistic look than Train to Busan, where this show is honest that everybody has limits and flaws, and there's you know, there's no gods among us. There's no prophets. There's no people who will make the right decision every time, even. Uh, Gihan is willing to manipulate an old person with mental issues to, to survive. Which I think you could argue is far more honest. Could Train to Busan be too idealistic that too many people are willing to be honorable and sacrifice themselves? I'm not making that claim, but one could easily make the argument. And that when a show is maybe more raw, more realistic, it's one that you can connect to better as being an honest work. And even the bad guy, the villain, makes the sacrifice of killing himself so that the money can go to the people he loves to be taken care of. Like... I guess that doesn't because like I so, said so so here, here's all I'm gonna here's wait 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 here's all I'm gonna say is that you know when it comes to the pessimists and the optimists everyone thinks they're the realist so I think something like Train to Busan is more realistic and you're clearly looking at something like Squid Game and thinking this is probably more honest and more realistic of how people not necessarily are. I'm just Maybe, the case 
Okay, well, let's say you're making that case. I think something like Train to Busan is more honest and realistic for how people are than Squid Game is. And that's personally why I found it a bit too cynical for my taste. Now, it doesn't mean that people wouldn't make a lot of these decisions, but there are certain cases in which for the sake of, I don't want to say for the sake of drama, but the writer clearly wants everything to kind of descend into I'm being hyperbolic but for everything to descend into barbarism in for example that night when it every like it seems like everyone except for a couple of our main characters are at each other's throats I think it's a little unrealistic for example that so many people would vote to continue the game I think it's a little potentially unrealistic that so many people would come back after voting to leave. And I'm not talking about huge numbers, but it just seems to me that the show in general is a bit cynical to the point of being unrealistic about human nature. And maybe it's because I'm a bit more optimistic about what people would be like in these circumstances. But I think whereas Train to Busan presents a more noble path forward in terms of self-sacrifice. I think the only comparably noble people in Squid Game are the people that don't come back to keep playing the game. Um, well, didn't you... Because you said before that there was, like, more altruism in Train to Busan than there was in Squid Game, and I immediately thought about how Andrew told Gihan which platform to jump on when there was absolutely no incentive to do that. I'm not saying there's none. I'm not saying well, there's I none. Well, I guess what that's I'm saying clearly, is... Clearly, that's, that's a great example. I, yeah, but I guess, I guess that's that's kind of the idea, right? Is that there are there are examples of altruism peppered throughout the show. Um, and I mean, I, I don't... And the show certainly doesn't, like, condemn the... Like, Gihan's perspective in terms of, like, trying to be a better person. Of course, it gets really depressing at the end when, when things are really shit for him. But, I mean, he's he's the protagonist for a reason. And, like, there's a reason why Song Wu is, like, an antagonistic force later on, because he's just looking out for himself. I think the show presenting um, more negative aspects of human nature doesn't mean that it's, like, that that means that it is necessarily more cynical about it. Especially if, like, the protagonist is sort of meant to be the person who is trying to be more selfless. Um, selfless to a fault sometimes. Yeah, and he, and he ends up... I, I don't necessarily agree with... I don't necessarily disagree. Right. Um, th- th- cause and you just, and it, does the... feel, it does feel weird to pit them against each other in this regard, but I just think... I think it's, it's obvious to a degree that the train to Busan presents a more noble path on the whole than... Squid Game does, you know, I could be convinced otherwise. I mean, our protagonist but... starts in that with sacrificing people at his whim to care for, like, he just, he locks out two of the best people on the train potentially, because he's like, nah, it's too risky. And uh, he goes on his arc to go as far away from evil businessmen as possible. But that guy still mm-hmm. exists. And then the company itself has, like, butchered the land for its own benefits, and it causes the zombie virus to even happen in the first place. Like, there's a lot of criticism of humanity in Train to Busan as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not saying I don't want to put them at opposite ends of an extreme by any means. I you know, there's plenty of criticisms, even cynicism if you put it that way. Um in both. I'm not saying there isn't. I I think on the whole looking at Squid Game it's it's a bit more cynical than I find. Well, do you remember the humanity? the part where like all of the people basically treated our heroes as zombies because they didn't trust they weren't infected, and like all of them get slaughtered as a result of it? It's like that could be considered pretty damn cynical, right? It it is, and I uh, that's one of my least parts about Train to Busan is that- when that woman decides that she wants to kill all those people or let the zombies in. Because in a in you know in a nihilistic moment, she decides that perhaps they all deserve it. Well, whether or um, not that's good, you could like you could see someone making the argument, right? Like, hardcore at that point. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm not. Sa- they're comparable in a lot of ways. 
Uh, all I'm saying is, on the whole, I think one leans more into a, an optimistic direction than the other in a way that I find more realistic, but that could be a matter of personal taste. Yeah, because um, I'll argue, like, there's a lot of darker stuff that I like in my content because it gives me inspiration in terms of how bad things can get. You still have a little, like, the one for me, I think, is why I kind of mentioned it, was the, um, the, the, the Sangwoo's mum seeing Jihan, and she just immediately gives him things and asks him to make sure the mum's okay when she's not even doing fantastic yeah. herself, and who knows what's coming after her as a result of Sangwoo's uh, situation. We don't know for sure. Um, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, it, it's sure. to me, it's like the thesis of the whole thing is like that's the important part that there are people out there who, even if they're on the lowest rungs of society, they want to look after those who are less fortunate than them, and that's like the key. Um, I so I guess I, 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 I guess too, well, I'm guess hold it really. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There's a because I don't want to, you know, highlight people too specifically, but because of its topicality. The super chat here does, I think, bring up a relevant enough point to mm -hmm. uh, discuss if you want. Oh, did you want to read it out? Uh, the situations presented in Busan and Squid are also different. In a zombie apocalypse, people benefit from cooperation much more, while in the Squid game, uh, the games are designed to force people to backstab. Encourage people uh, to backstab. In some cases, I guess, the direct competition. Encourage. Yeah. yeah, I it's not the best one to one. Well, analogy, I would also argue as well you know? that, and I don't want to. The cross section go we've got is a little bit important to because it's completely random amounts of people on the train. Meanwhile, this is all people who owe significant amounts of money through. I'm not going to say that that means you're a bad person. I'm just saying that a lot of them are through gangs and through uh, having bet all of their money away. People who yeah, are in environments true. where they already potentially yeah. betray loved ones to get more money and stuff. It, like, they're more predisposed to backstabbing, potentially. I don't want to be too harsh there, I feel like that's a bit mean, but um, it's not or, quite the same as a random know, selection of people. Yeah. It's just, they're under a lot of that's stress a good yeah. beyond that's a good that world that um, is different to the stress that they're under in Busan. That is a, that is a good point. I guess what I'm confused about is you okay? So Mala, you look at the scene where the mother of the guy who you know came in second. I'm so bad with names. Uh, yes, she. You know, she, that's the thesis for you, right? To a degree about you know uh, the good that exists in humanity, and clearly the show believes that to a degree because it includes that scene, right? I mean, um, I wouldn't want to claim you, too hardcore, but it's it's what I find very meaningful and that I would take away from the show yes. in terms of inspiration that we yes. will make so it if I'm, we can just be a bit more kind to each other. I don't know, like <laughs> something simple yes. like that. No, and I and I would agree, and I I like that quite a bit. I'm confused as to what the show ultimately thinks about people, and I'm I'm. So one of the things, we've talked about this already, it doesn't have to be necessarily political, but as an ethical statement, I'm, I'm, I find the ultimate message or theme a little bit muddied or can... I think that's fair. Um, I think conflicted. you've... I've looked into a lot of people's coverage of this show. So many interpretations of everything. I'm not going to be like, wrong, right, wrong, half wrong, half... Um... I feel like they ran the gamut on basically all kinds of humans in this show, and results like you know, Thugman is basically just hardcore on one end. I everything is for me, and I will kill and destroy everything as long as I benefit. That's just like, full on. Um, Song Wu is like a more idealistic character that you could you could be like he's he's a nice man, but through making very calculated decisions, he's almost inseparable from Thugman from a superficial look. And that's, I think, uh, yeah. many people would draw from him. See, it's capitalism that did that to him, or the system that did that to him. While I'm like, he made very conscious decisions, he knew what he was doing, and he tried to deal with the consequences, and it was too much for his heart to bear, I think. Um, yeah. Even though the mind was his very clear. His arc began before the show. It's, uh, uh, well, and I just think it's fucking fantastic. And you could name each of the characters and everything they go through, including, like, Ali and Andrew. Bless her soul for being called that so much throughout this 11-hour stream. <laughs> Um, yeah, 
I, I just see it as a... Th this is why I, I love my media that I think is fantastic when I just see it as a view and it's presenting these um, these dynamics, these arcs, and just like, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, I just, I see it as um, these these kinds of humans, they all exist, and the, the one we would rather aspire to is this, this little lady who's organizing a little fish shop and she's looking after the people who come by every day rather than any of them necessarily specific main characters. Um... Because they all have different yeah. dynamics and aspects. Even though I would absolutely say Song was my favorite, I find him the most interesting. Same, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I wouldn't want to claim the show. Like if I said, no, the show is saying humanity sucks. I've seen that go around. And I'm like, come on, guys. I feel like it's going to be a little bit more than that. Even if the writer yeah. said that was the 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 point of the show, I'd be like, damn, I I disagree. He's he hasn't said anything so cut and dried or. Uh, black or white, but he said some things. I don't feel it's really necessary to go into the details uh -huh. what he intended with the show or what he believes personally, because I think that's a separate issue from what the work itself puts forth and argues, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm perfectly happy to look at this and say it's something akin to Parasite, which I like quite a bit that goes, here is a complex situation, uh, make up your own mind about it. And I think that's ideal. I definitely went into this tinged by the perception everywhere that this is some sort of biting social commentary. And so I think that tinged a lot of the way I looked at it, That because I, I watched most of it going, well, what's the social commentary exactly? Like, what are you actually trying to say? Uh -huh. Whereas if I went into it thinking, oh, this is just a story, you know, and here's some stuff that, that happens. It's believable and realistic. Uh, you know, make up your own mind. I think, I'd, I, think I would have had a different experience. That could explain a lot of it, because um, I saw it as a result of everyone going, Squid Game, Squid Game, Squid Game, Squid Game. But recently, all I've seen now is Squid Game is anti, Squid Game is pro, Squid Game is blah, blah, blah. Squid Game's ending, blah, blah, blah. Squid Game's trying to say that Squid Game's being promoted as blah blah blah, when actually it's blah blah. Back then it was just a story that, dare I say, went viral on Netflix because people enjoyed it so much, so I watched it all in one mm -hmm. day. I was like, Fringy, you gotta see this, let's go. And then I talked to him just about stories, not about politics. Uh, or anything, yeah. and like, yeah, the conversations definitely evolved. We're now a Squid Game. Like, I, I think I opened with this eleven hours ago that it's being used to bludgeon other people in terms of like, you're an idiot, you didn't get the message, and you, you don't even realize you like stories that critique your own point of view or something like. And I'm just like, oh, such a headache. Yeah, this this story by no means relies on capitalism being the system. It could. Oh, have I, it goes all around though. Like, yeah, it, it's, fucking, it's everything. I think the it's just brain dead fucking have takes and... in terms of like what political perspective is actually being. Yeah, I'm trying to go galaxy brain to the point boring. where forget capitalism, yeah. just people claiming and fucking anything. Like it's the it's their it's their guy. It's just like go away. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, yeah. this is actually Does this, this is piece of media agree with me. Pro monarchy. It's anti-Earthling. <laughs> it is it definitely far. It, yeah, I very little real. I, I, I see this almost entirely based off of just human dynamics and crisis scenarios, risk reward and their mm -hmm. like what this human nature stuff like there's nothing. Yeah, you could have this could take place. This could take place in North Korea instead of South Korea. It could take place in the feudal uh, fantasy world. It could take place in uh, sci-fi theocracy. It could take place in all kinds of different systems because you'll still have the kinds of people that the game needs to be around. And there will always be elites in any system. Uh, so. I guess one area where it definitely tips into cartoonishly cynical is the portrayal of the VIPs and the organizations. Yeah, I, I happily consider that, that just a fucking mess. The VIPs, they need and to I, do way more and work. I, and I definitely think that tinges the rest of it, but if we are going to ignore the detective plotline entirely, which, <laughs> thank God, and if we're going to ignore the VIPs and the world building of the organization entirely, hard to do, but let's do it for a second. If we focus on how everyone behaves in the game itself, I am, I am perfectly happy saying that it's it's a it's a realistic portrayal of how people will act i struggle with those other elements 
Well, and I think did we want to talk about did we want to talk about will building? Did we get to talk about it as much as we wanted to? I don't remember if everyone's because you know I don't want to keep I everyone here for either. longer than we need to. Um, I we, I can't remember if it we if we implied it well enough by now or not. This, I mean, in the sense of I can't believe that this organization doing this can exist. I don't. Yeah, I mean, it. without getting into more too thorough too. references, I don't believe it could exist this way without getting caught. Certainly not for as long as it apparently has, especially with how incompetent the leaders and the workers are, and how breachable it is from your average dumbass detective. I don't, <laughs> I don't believe it for a second. Yeah. Basically, I appreciate the idea. I wish they spent more time justifying it, but I think a lot of writers don't give a fuck. They're just like, oh, who cares about that? Yeah, I want to talk like, about the characters, just, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, um, I do want to say, like, I really like this show, and I adore episode six and all the thing, the feels it made me feel, right? Um, oh, and, yeah, absolutely. But I feel like anyone who's watched this entire stream, we've gone through a lot of criticisms, okay? Um, a lot. It may remind you a bit, as was referenced prior, the, the Suicide Squad, where I have loads to say that's great about characters, um... Plot line. If we if we say that because the plot line's not all bad in terms of like because we like a lot of the games how they were conducted and stuff, but then one of the games is a disaster to a degree, and um, the surrounding world building and everything to do with the detective have to be counted. We got loads of damage there too. I guess what I'm trying to lead here before we maybe talk about a couple more things before we close off, I was just gonna say if if you guys do you wanna do you wanna land on a form of a number? Do you wanna give it a shot? Hmm. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Does the fact that the detective plot line ultimately not leading to anything, does that mean it's not as big of an issue? It is a big issue because been? as much as it doesn't lead him to anything, it proves that the organization is fucking batshit in terms of true. Yeah, that is shitty. True. Yeah. 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 It really undermines um, world building. Oh, I think we got a Suicide Squad related scenario here. I think so too. I think so. Um, where we got some really great characters, but boy, the plot and world building are fucked. And yeah, uh, hmm. I'm sitting somewhere oh. between a five and a six. But That's exactly where I was sure. sitting. <laughs> I'm not I was, sure. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm going to say a exactly five. where I was. That's exactly uh, where I was sitting. <sighs> Uh, um, five or six, because that's where I'm. Because I'm, yeah, I'm drawing parallels with the Suicide Squad. I'm doing the whole characters versus plot sort of thing. I'm trying to make sure I'm not too generous and not too unfair. Oh, I. What we gave? What did we end up giving Suicide Squad a five? Five yeah. is what I settled on. I think I'm gonna give it the same as Suicide Squad. I was going to try to do a poll. I can only do four options. So do you reckon I should do four, five, six, seven? To see what people vote? Well, maybe you I should do... So. Um, may, maybe do like one to four. That was my first idea. Five. I feel like six, it's going to be not seven, what we're looking yeah. for. Yeah, because someone's like, I want to give it a four and not a one. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like I, uh, anyone that thinks it a three, that anyone that thinks it's a three or an eight. You know, yeah, I feel like threes you. and eights. That's too low and too high. So, no, not that we don't appreciate your perspective, of threes and eights, but I'm just curious if you had to vote <laughs> between four, five, six, and seven. Uh, just, just give me a vote. You can obviously abstain if you don't want. Should wanna. we do a? Should we do a one to five or a six to ten? Be like, like which which side is it on? Is us? Is does it cross that line? Maybe we can do that as a second poll. I'm just we'll we'll see how this one goes. Just see what people say. Um, how do I look at that? There we go. Yeah. Vote away. I know that everyone's a little sleepy mm -hmm. in chat. <laughs> but <laughs> I know it's. A, I can't believe we've done almost a half of an anniversary episode just talking about a Squid Game. But it's a, it happens. Uh, yeah. There's much. To I discuss. mean, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. There's oh a yeah. Lot to discuss. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff to chew on here. Both plot-wise, thematically, character-wise, this is this is some content-rich showmanship that we're seeing. And I want to say I enjoyed the hell out of watching it. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah, if it has yeah. as much of, like I enjoyed it way more my first time than subsequent times because every time I see the detective, I want to kill myself. Like it literally, when yeah, he pops I don't up. care to see it again. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like I would rewatch yeah. Train to Busan before this. Oh, I have no trouble watching Train to Busan again. That film is yeah. fucking yeah. great. Take a grade for me. 
uh, easy. I, I'm not generally into rewatching things, I guess, in general, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just not too keen on rewatching this. Um, some things I'll rewatch, some things happily, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I, yeah, I just was really uh, I'm like, okay, it's like it's done. You know, I think the world building insane. for what's there is kind of shit. The plot is like. Uh, I don't even know how to rate the plot. It's like there's there's stuff that's just just absolutely fine, but then there's also really shitty things. Um, characters are mostly really solid, with a couple of I guess the yeah. VIPs count as gaps for that, right? Yeah, I'm, they're almost like not characters in like a sense. Cardboard cutouts. Where, yeah, they don't do anything, I guess. Or it's I so, mean, do they? Uh, it's bizarre that they, they have exist some to deliver influence over how the games. Yeah, and it's bizarre that they exist to deliver such terrible expositional dialogue. Like, not even character building <laughs> stuff, just stuff we knew. It's like, thanks, I guess. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. Like, their their real impact on the story... Uh, I don't know. I mean, they were shit. Mm -hmm. They were... They, they stood out, in particular. Um, then, but th Thematically, it's like complex because there's there's lots of conflicting information at least it could yeah. be interpreted as conflicting information for sure and so it can get complicated um i yeah. think thematically it's a whole lot stronger if you ignore detective and the vips but you really can't ignore both of them well, that's well the you thing. know what? i feel like the vips are there to basically boost up the detective side of the story because in the end, the detective is the only one that really got anything out of their presence. Everybody else True. really suffered for it. Yeah, yeah he had more crossover uh, with when, the VIPs when, than he did with the fucking main cast. They made me look at a big, fat, gross guy. There was a big, fat, yeah, gross guy. Ass. When you're judging tummy. the thematic message or um, point of the story on that level, you have to weigh that stuff up. Um, interestingly, chat have seemed to settle on between six and seven-ish. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't go seven. Six is a maybe, but I'm I'm sticking with my five. I think five makes sense. I yeah. I, I don't know if I'd land on six or not yet. Um, it's yeah, it's tough. I I wouldn't say it's a seven. I think, yeah, I think when you, especially as time goes on, number systems tend to get more refined as you know what to compare it to. Um, it might even be worth some time us exploring really early entries if we need to adjust now that we sort of know where things fall but um yeah i i think i i don't think i could quite i want this and suicide squad to be on the same level because they're both so similar in terms of characters good story world or the plot is bad so um yeah, I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna keep it here. Yeah, so um, is, it, is it a high five? I don't know if it's a high five or not. Um, high five. But well, I, um... I wouldn't be necessarily opposed <laughs> to that. I mean, I'd go high five before six. So. And don't worry, we just got a small yeah. fraction of people, especially the EFAP audience, can skew in a particular way and everything. Like, so it was just an interesting little poll to do. Um, yeah. I think if, the last thing we should probably talk about to make sure we definitely talked about it was uh, the whole fairness thing. Um, the first thing I started seeing about pe from people was complaining that the games weren't fair and the conduct conducting of it wasn't fair. And the first thought I had was like, I thought that was part of the point, was that they claim that it's fair, but really it's not, as a criticism of the societies that we are a part of. Uh, again, I'm not being specific, that's just uh, fairness, again, an ideal. All societies will have unfairness, yes. Absolutely. Um, and claiming fairness, so as we were going over with the John Tron thing I was telling you about, like, uh, if is it fair for me and Rags to compete in basketball? It's like, I will, I guess, in the sense that we're just going to be playing, but, but like, you know, if I have a height advantage or if he has uh, more, he's more agile and stuff, it's just like, I, we could probably determine who's going to end up winning, actually, before they even fight, and is that fair? It gets really complicated when you start to break it down. The problem for me was that there was such blatant examples of cheating that nobody did anything about. And I was like, if you want me to believe that the angle of it being fair, but eh, not really fair, is strictly just down to thinking about these people as individuals. Like, Tug of War, I think, is where they really push it. It's like, oh, this is totally fair, right? And it's like, I mean, it's fucking, if you just have a team of women versus a team of men, that's not exactly, like, how are we thinking about this? Um, and I thought maybe they'd balance it out by having a game where the women would have the advantage. But at the same time, again, I don't know about 
like compared How do you to create a game where women have an advantage narratively. Um, like you'd have to. Well, they kept and, mentioning like, elastics, right? Yeah, flexibility. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, like, I, I'm trying to envision uh, a game. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. But they talk. They gave a couple I'm just, examples. I'm imagining who something. Theoretically, if you can't um, do the best splits, you die. Well, remember that game in, um, they played in, uh, Ultimate fucking whatever. You know the thing where they have a block coming at you and there's a person-shaped hole, yeah, but it can be difficult to yeah. slip through? Could have done that. Um, and oh, the women, yeah, that could have been neat. And the women could be really good at it. You know, that sort of shit. Balancing contest? I don't know, are women better at balancing things? <laughs> like, I don't know, they got big boobs? Um, point being, red light, green light, fits perfectly in how I perceive the fairness unfairness aspect, right? There's there's faster yes. runners or someone with a disease that makes it so they're unable to stay still. That kind of unfairness. I'm like, I can see how that yeah. And then the honeycomb one, I'm like, kinda kinda, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I'm okay with that. Tug of war, I was like, ah, oh, okay, we're pushing it a bit now, aren't we? Like this is really unfair. Uh and then uh, marbles went back to being fair, I feel like. That uh except with maybe as you guys are talking about the execution of giving them information beforehand, but again, I feel like that applies to all of them again, especially tug of war, Jesus. Um, then stepping stones. I mean, <laughs> that's just stepping that's, stones, that's, that's, but not just stepping stones. We're gonna sabotage well, the. Not only that, but let's be honest, it, it is well. hideously unfair because if you just all it is is you choose a number, and I guess you either die or live because of your place in the. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's a, oh yeah, it's I suppose much, yeah the first. Yeah. I suppose one could say, oh, isn't that fair? Because everyone's picking a number. And you're just like, I, 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 don't, I don't know, man. I, in the sense that you're just rolling the dice, but that seems just, if, that, if that's the case, then why go through this fucking charade of the game if it's going to be just so mathematically determinant? You have to really try and come up with some crazy nonsense to make it interesting. But if that happens, you have to change the rules so it goes back to being a 50 50. So. Right. <laughs> Uh, um, and yeah, the Squid Game then being the last one, which, I mean, it's, let's say yeah, we had 20 right. people that, left. Yeah, number isn't really a game, yeah. Yeah. If we had 20 people left to split into two teams of 10 for this, the Squid Game finale on a big, I guess, track or whatever, I, 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 I don't even know how I'd, that's just, I guess, that's, the, the team that wins that, I guess, would just be the stronger and faster ones. Um, or the more experienced with the game, you know. What else is there? Also, someone in chat said, I, I mean, think like, you're being harsh because of the last episode's blunders. You're retroactively judging the overall show harshly. I don't know where you were, man, but we've been ripping yeah, into this. Yeah, we judged a lot of it very harshly. Like, you you notice the whole subplot of the whole <laughs> show we just fucking hate? Episode 6 uh, was the one that I said. No, sorry. Episode 5. I said it might be my most hated episode because I hate how much the detective plotline is in that one and it's shit. Also, uh, I feel like if anything... Like, at half of us were against the final episode, but half of us weren't. So I don't know what you've been watching. Yeah, I feel like this is probably yeah, the, a pretty balanced breakdown of the yeah, show, I think so. right? Yeah. I have a lot of... Um, it's Oh, good point, chat. Someone said, glad no one was in a wheelchair. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe they you, deliberately you avoid. Oh. Well, I mean, and to be fair, if someone's like, "Well, maybe they avoid doing the wheelchairs," like, I mean, they still had the old dude. He's still, if they're willing to take old people in who are literally just unable to be, because fuck, if they have like a game where you actually have to just run, like that is the challenge. Like, jeez. Yeah, like, if, if you're yeah. building an army and each unit takes a certain amount of supply points, a really old dude and a wheelchair person, yeah, <laughs> well, you know which one's worth more supply points for your army? I don't know. And how far does fairness go when one of the competitors has an out and won't necessarily die if he loses? So yeah, um, and then having him so ardently defend the idea to the point where he's like, you can do black market organ smuggling, just don't make things unfair. It's like, okay. <laughs> Alright, so do you want to get caught? Is this your, is this your fetish? Is, that, is it yeah, the, that... the, the risk? That is like I just don't. Understand. A lot of people found that really satisfying. I just didn't. I I felt like he should be definitively controlling shit like that. When he finds out they're doing organ smuggling shit, he should just kill them all and erase that fucking part of the island. Just be like, no. Yeah, no, no. I. That would have worked in a different scenario with a different character who is so focused on something that is like, yeah, as long as you do your job perfectly. I don't care what you do when you're not on the clock. But that that works in different scenarios. It does not work in this one. No. 
By the way, there is a sense of irony. I, I hate to bring this up. I don't want it to go much further than what I'm going to be bringing up. I just saw someone vaguely mention it in chat and it's so fucking true. This show is hyper successful because of capitalism. This economic system allowed it <laughs> to get this leg up on Netflix and it's now exposed to everyone when nobody else was picking it up. Like, it is, it is one of the most successful TV shows of all time. So it's just like, yeah, that's this system that allowed that to happen. Anyway, let's talk more about fairness. <laughs> just we don't talk about there. that. <laughs> um, I I think that it's there's, there's enough wiggle room to be able to talk through it all as we've done. I just think that it doesn't hold up fantastically to scrutiny. And um, what I will say to satisfy a lot of people who are saying this, yes, it is overrated, though I don't know what show wouldn't be overrated at the level Squid Game is rated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that Squid Game is overrated. It does a lot of great, great things, and the things that it does great are the things that a lot of stuff horrifically fails at, and the stuff that it fails at are things a lot of media fails at. Mm -hmm. And I, regardless of what number I give this, which is a five, uh, which is the correct answer, um, I will, <laughs> I will say definitely so? say that I super appreciate this. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. In fact, I go as far as saying I loved parts of it. Um, I did yeah. love parts of it easily. I did love parts of this. Yeah, it is too, definitely worth given. a watch. I will definitely say I recommend this. The highs are high enough that it it is definitely worth the low lows. And it's neat to see a piece of media that, like, especially that episode six, man. Just everyone I've seen watch it has a lot to appreciate about it. It's like, hey, that's nice. A lot of people come away liking a thing instead of it being yeah. super divisive. But I think the nature of the show <laughs> is leading it into divisive land. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm it's not entirely um, a divisive audience making it divisive. There's some. I don't know. I think the nature There's, of the show lends itself to that. Yeah, it's incendiary. There's lots of stuff in here that's controversial as fuck and people aren't going to like. I get it. I do. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we've been pretty thorough in our explanations, so... I do think so, That's true. Agree. Also, chat, people do think that a five means that you hate it, but <laughs> that's just because they're not familiar with... That's because they're just using the fucking one to ten wrong. And I feel yeah, like they, most people are. They're using the IGN curve... You, uh, you guys are using well it enough. like it's grades in elementary school. <laughs> yeah, five, five is a fine score. You should you should be proud that that means I you did a whole bunch of stuff right. You did at least half of it right, in fact. Um. But yeah, I I don't know. I don't. Uh, we, we are. What is that? Forty minutes away from the cap. Just just under fifty minutes away from the cap. Uh, so That's we've still got a little bit of time for anybody <laughs> to talk about whatever they want to, but I think we can we can wrap up now. I was whenever. thinking about yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking all that comes to mind right now is like naps, y yeah, pillows, <laughs> food. Uh, yeah, I that might be too tired to eat. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else to say other than I really liked it. I'm really glad it exists. I had a lot of fun with it. Apparently, it's fucking made yeah. a shite load of money for Netflix in terms of budget versus. Uh, production it's gonna get a season two season two is gonna annoy the fuck out of me it's gonna be bad <laughs> it's, it's like gonna the, be bad but i'll give it a chance i would go as far as saying it's kind of like media at this point but i would i would I, netflix is known for this it fucking murders shows that have great season ones um we've got we got a laundry list okay i don't even want to go near it it's frustrating uh we'll see but like squid games get merchandised all over the place as well which is amusing to a degree, like <laughs> you can't help yeah. them. like get thematically the, amusing. Yes, get the Funko Pops for Squid Game. You're like, yeah, man, <laughs> merchandise for the little guys. <laughs> it's Go pretty. Wally themed star super store. Uh, okay, Mind Hunter is the next. Uh, there, there are exceptions. There are exceptions. Yay! Thank you for saying that. I like Mind Hunter. Um. Yeah, anything else you guys want to say before we, we try and wrap up here in some way, shape, or form about this show? Nope. Um, not really. I just had a good time, and any type of show that makes me want to watch it rather than work, pretty good. Mm. Well. That's kind of, I fell yeah, behind on work a few times binging yeah, the show. Yeah, has to go good. back to the editing dungeon, <laughs> uh, and the rest of us are going to go sleep. Please and feed eat. me. And, uh... No. You get a you get um, <laughs> you get a hard boiled egg and water a and an egg yes <laughs> um, sparkling water and an egg 
so bef well, before we do any heading out, um, Capital Opinions, thank you so much for joining us for 11 hours and 9 oh, minutes. Yeah. Holy manoleum. Oh my God. Um, Thanks for having me. Always nice to have you, mate. What are you up to it on the channel? What's happening? What's going on over there? Why well, should some screw uh, balloons? You might have noticed, if you pay attention to the channel, that I haven't posted it in a long what? time. Oh yeah. Why, so, you, why have you done this? Uh, very busy with work, but also I, I, I have a short film in color correction and sound design post-production at the moment, and another one that I'm trying to cast and go into production hopefully this month. We'll see. And then after both of those are done, I can finally start making Dev's episode 4 review. So not promising any deadlines, but I will get back to making videos. Uh, if you enjoy true. such things, you can look forward to that. And if you like short films by people who, you know, want to write and direct eventually, you can check that out too. Um, and you've got a whole bunch of stuff on your channel with uh, on devs, right? Have you f did you complete the coverage of devs? Or Not even close. <laughs> <I've> done, <laughs> I have done. We have done three. We have done three of the eight episodes. So that is uh, progress. Undeniably. Yeah, it is progress. They w it will be finished, or so help me. So stay tuned for that before you're dead. It will happen. Cool. Sweet. Um, I don't know, that's bullshit. Do you want to make anybody aware of any particular things? Or? Um, well, we've still got the Resident Evil 6 movies. Um, oh, shit. I believe uh, we're, we're headed, on February, we're headed to the best one, right? Or February. I'm February. <laughs> Friday! I'm just going to release <laughs> four Friday, of them in we're... October, then two on February. <laughs> okay. Right, exactly. Um, no, 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 Friday, we're heading to the best Resident Evil movie yet, right? Yes, Friday will be Retribution, Sunday will be the final chapter, Saturday will be... Yeah. the. That's your homework, everyone, watch the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. We're gonna have a nice little chat-chat about Hopefully it. Hopefully that won't take 11 hours. I seriously fucking doubt it. Uh, <laughs> but you never know. It's like Ben Shapiro... Ben Shapiro gave Squid Game a 7 out of 10 for watchability, a 1 out of 10 for politics. Whatever. <laughs> well, I'm, guess, I'm guessing he was the one that said that, oh, it's a criticism of capitalism and I hate it, right? A well, of, Tim Poole it, said it was an allegory for communism. Let's like, not. I, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm just, I just want to We're talk about the story. We're all equal in the story. Squid Game, can just, comrade. Can we just bring it back down and focus in on the story? <laughs> I I think it's I think it's pro monarchy and I'll leave it there. I agree. It's a thought. I agree. Rags, what are you working on? Wait, who's that directed at? I said rags. What are you oh, working right. on? It's oh, I didn't hear the rags part. Yeah, no, no. Oh, uh, yeah, me either. Yeah, I I got a whole batch of new assets and stuff that are uh getting worked on now. Uh, just some uh, delays with those kind of slowed it down. But yeah, just. They're they're coming when they're coming. I th that's what's just caused this delay. Else stuff would have come out. I'm just kind of, a, you know, I'm gonna get these out and used, and it'll help things up. It's well, slow now, so it can be fast later. Just mm, trust yeah, me so when it comes tight. to a lot of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's slow because uh, yeah, I, I've I've put a lot of a lot of money into some of this stuff. So uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll have that out when it's out too. Right, uh, you you're playing that slow. The creepy alien huh? game on Sunday. Is that true? Nope. Oh. Oh yeah. With Fringy, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we're gonna give that a go. I, I almost certainly it'll be better than the last creepy aliens game we played. <laughs> I think so. So, well, uh, probably. Well, yeah. It's funny. So, I was just like, like fire team something or another. Just, yeah, that just reminded me. It's like, by the way, House of Ashes stream tomorrow. I'm like, oh yes, <laughs> I'm also streaming this stupid game, the next installment <laughs> of whatever the fuck that series, Dark Pictures. That's what they call it. Uh, are you Are you really gonna do the thing where you just don't? actually interact with anything in the game to see how it plays out um, or is that a or, or is one of you gonna to. do it and one of you won't or well so maybe that's the angle one of you does it one of you doesn't you know whenever they give you an option for like say a character says hello and your options are like hello or fuck you bitch it'll be like oh fuck you bitch yes let's see what happens oh yeah always, <laughs> always play the jerk yeah uh, as for whether or not we'll do fucking the the the, the qtes uh i feel like we'll probably consider avoiding them it'll make the story faster so there's that Oh yeah, because the thing with those games is everybody's got to get an ending, right? Even if you kill everybody, you still get like more than half the game, probably. If not all the uh, game. Oh, by the way, I, 
just to chat, I will not be playing this one uh, because remember last time it was a nightmare. to get the remote play thing to work, it really was an absolute nightmare. And the only saving grace for that working was the fact that there's basically zero gameplay anyway. <laughs> so we, we could make the horrific system just sort of work. And but yeah, it, it really was just the devs fucked up major when it came to uh, the design for multiplayer. Yeah, they... Why not make the hot seat? Whatever. I don't even. Yes, me and me and Mel are gonna play through it. It's gonna be terrible, I assume. Um, that'll be tomorrow. The day after will be Eve. Out. The day after that will be Aliens. After the Resident Evils. There's just loads of Halloweeny stuff happening oh, on these yeah. days surrounding Jam Halloween. Packed. What are the odds? Yes. Speaking also, of which, check out uh, the Van Helsing e Fat movies that came out today. I very yeah, much recommend yeah. that. Oh my god. It is a bomb. Yeah, yes, it's so fun. I found so myself fun. laughing a lot at. What we laughed at. <laughs> yes, yes. So, it is so funny. It's very fun. entertaining. Hmm. Um. So yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. We of course all these super chats will be saved, and we'll be going over these probably next Wednesday. That would theoretically be the time. I don't want to make any promises. They're just stacked as fuck right now, scheduling wise. But um. And th 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 that's, we will definitely read them all out, of course. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with us for so long. So it's a long boy strong. Yeah, thank you very much. This was a long one. Thanks for sticking around and listening to us yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Mm. Anything else you guys want to say before we end? No. No, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm good. Good to go. I'm good. Glad you could join that us. It was a good time. Very well. Uh, sleep well, my massives. Good night. Good night. Oh, hi. <laughs> 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 <laughs>